Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to Plainfield, New Jersey to turn around a soul food restaurant what system are we following? that is run with an iron fist I want you guys off the line. by an owner named Shelley. Even though her restaurant is failing miserably, the doors will close. Your livelihood is on the line. She refuses to listen to anybody, not her staff. Dwayne, be quiet. Not her mother. It is not over. It's over. Or even Chef Ramsay. Shelly, I'm coming. Ugh. And while there are huge problems with the food, I need the toilet. <laughs> Holy crap. The decor. I feel like Donna Summer's gonna come through the door. And the conditions. Oh my god. Wow. The biggest problem is Shelly. I can't believe this. Can Chef Ramsay save this restaurant from an owner who is in complete denial? You have to get out of denial. It doesn't really matter to me what other people think. One thing's for sure, you won't believe how it ends. I'll punch him in the face. That's tonight. Close the damn place down. On a shocking Kitchen Nightmares. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. This is I'm off. Not. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't. Thank you. Plainfield, New Jersey, a middle-class city with a strong sense of community. And smack in the middle of town is a soul food restaurant named Blackberries, run by a once successful caterer named Shelly Withers. Hello. The gang's all here, huh? My catering business was fantastic. I had such a tremendous following. It just seemed natural that I would move on to open a restaurant. Hi, how are you? Welcome. And with her mother, Mary, investing her entire retirement fund into the restaurant, Shelly's dream came true. Daddy put the check in the bank this afternoon. Oh, OK. I think it's a parent's responsibility to be supportive of their children. I am so happy with the way the restaurant turned out. The decor is phenomenal. I'm not sure if I understand the records. And Blackberries has the best soul food in town, no doubt. Fried collard greens is my favorite. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The shrimp was firm. That's because I forgot them on the stove. <laughs> perfect location, perfect food. But where are my customers? The problem is Shelly is in denial. She thinks that the decor is amazing and the food tastes spectacular. I like it. But the food is suffering, the customers are suffering, and the restaurant is suffering. The macaroni actually fell <laughs> Shelly believes that all of her food is better than any chef out there. Too done? Too done is perfect. She feels this is the way I want it. It tastes good. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks about it. It being my restaurant, I'm going to have it my way. I don't want the food to touch. I say it every day, and okay. you're doing it to me anyway, right? It don't make sense to me. Shelly is a super control freak to the 110th power. I need you to knock these motherfuckers down. Just get it out. What, what, what system are we following here? It's no system. We have 16 people working back here and 16 people doing their own system. Table five right there in the front. Where is it, please? Guys, it's hot back here. Why is everybody back here? Because we ain't got no food out here. She thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. Tell me what I can do to help. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And that brings a lot of chaos here. Let me see that plate. She's helping the restaurant to fail even more. Not that many customers, though, huh? Things are bad. I'm $200,000 in debt. I'm barely holding on here. I got $14 to my name. Bro. Like I tell Shelly, it's just not only her if this restaurant fails, because I have sacrificed a lot to make sure that the doors didn't close. I believe in the power of prayer. I think Chef Ramsay is the answer to her prayers. What an amazing, buzzy little town. Great location for restaurants. Hello. Hello. Good How afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, Welcome to Blackberry. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I'm happy um, to have you here. Wow. Look at this place. Somebody having a party? No, no, 
no party. We're no. just having um, lunch. Okay, great. Let me seat you. Okay, let's sit over here. And this big boy there, who's this that? This is James. I'm James. James, what's your job? General manager. Stop it. With a baby face like that, you can't be management. Get out of here. <laughs> you look about 18. How old are you? I'm 30 years old. Wow. Amazing. Aging well. And this is? Mom Mary. Mother Mary. Yes, sir. You look great. Nice. Thank what you. do you do? The cakes, the pies, the desserts, really. She's our baker. OK, great. Lord Ramsey is here. I don't want to be sweating all over him. <laughs> Can I kiss him? Can I give him a kiss and thank him for coming or what? Yeah, they're about to be our own. Hey, how are you, bud? How, how are you? How you doing? Good to see you. You're running My around. Pleasure. You're busy, yeah. aren't you? I have to be. Huh? Somebody's got to get it done. How long have you been here? Oh, three years. Who I designed this place? I feel like Donna Summer's going to come through the door. That would be Michelle. I think that would be me. Oh. I absolutely love the decor. And dance, party. That's me. Wow. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Wow, well, hello, Look at those beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> I asked my fiance if I could kiss you. Fiance? He's our manager. The one? Yeah. Oh, come on. Sexy, right? <laughs> You'll get arrested for cradle snatching. Ooh, hey, general manager, say. come here. <laughs> get that beard over here. You didn't tell me that you're dating the owner. <laughs> we are, Excuse me. We are engaged. <laughs> Amazing. And was it love at first bite? Yeah. Wow. Way to a man's okay. heart is a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a little younger than I am, but he's my sexy chocolate. <laughs> Let me sit down, have a quick look through the menu, start ordering. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Gordon. I'm going to see as much as I can. OK. Uh, right, let's go for uh, collard greens. Yes. That smothered pork chop sounds delicious. Let's go for some mac and cheese as well, please. OK. The chitlins. And desserts. How's the bread velvet cake? Delicious. OK, great. Very well, thank you. I'm starving. Okay. We're going to put your order in. Excellent. All right, guys, we have our order for Chef. All right, let's do it. I really think that Chef Ramsay is going to say that the food is phenomenal. With the pork chop, put some mac. This is not hot. Just microwave it. This is the craziest decor I've ever seen. Wow, another record. Yeah, they're all over. So her first name is? Eloise. Eloise, yeah. uh, what's the Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Was it the fried chicken or the cornbread? What, what went up? Chitlins? Oh, my what happened? goodness. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. No oh, shit. Oh, my god. Did somebody headbutt the wall? It was shocking to find okay. that it was a hole in the wall with a record on it. I was just like, oh my god, like, what the hell is that doing there? I've heard about broken records, but Jesus Christ. OK, let's get out of here quick. <laughs> I, I'm afraid to touch any other records. All right, here you go. Oh, now you know that is a pretty plate, right? <laughs> Shelly is delusional about how fabulous her food is. I hate the macaroni and cheese. Just looks like crap on a plate. This is pork chop, the smothered pork chop. Thank you. Looks like someone shot on my plate. It's just dry. That's bland. Nothing seasoned there. How's your pork chop? Yeah, the pork chop is dry. The mac and cheese is way overcooked and very mushy. You think a soul food restaurant would pride itself on cooking mac and cheese, but no, it's just all... Is that heated in the microwave, though? No, I think they just put it in the, in the oven to warm for our lunch service. Thank you. What's wrong? He's saying that the macaroni and cheese is dry and overcooked. Ooh. He asked me, have we warmed it in the microwave? I told him, no, it just came out of the oven. They may have put it in the microwave for a minute. Only for a minute, though. Everything is cooked to perfection. There is nothing on that menu that is not perfect. OK, here we go. I'm taking over now. Five collard greens. Move it to the middle. Put an orange chip in the middle. That's it. How can you actually say this is a soul food restaurant? Or the collard greens are not tasting like collard greens. Since it's just like pepper soil, you know, you can't have food tasting like that. Tell Chef I said to taste those collard greens. They're perfect. Here you go, Chef. Collard greens. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. It's bland, no seasoning. It's just fried and soggy and limp. Uh, James, what do you think? You gotta eat it all together. If you eat it all together, mm -hmm. it should. Well, I did eat it all together. It still stayed bland. Thank you. Yeah. My God. What is he saying about our stuff now? Little bland. Oh my God. Collard greens. It's great. He's crazy. Where's the chitlins at? Yeah. It's in the microwave. They're delicious. If we get one out of three, we might be all right. And this is the chitlins and okra. Okay. Chitlets. I mean, I know chitlets are the intestine, but should they really stink? Before I do taste them, I'd like to pray to God before I put any of that in my mouth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You are prayed over. We guarantee you that you are not about to succumb to those chitlins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I just had to pray over Chef before he ate the chitlins. What the fuck? There's no prayers going to save me on this one. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Chitlins. Chitlins. I need the toilet. Excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Chef Ramsay is a mess. Oh, it's chickens and gross. He's like a bathroom throwing up. Throwing up? Holy crap. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, they stink. Oh. <laughs> Shall it be taking it lightly and not seriously at all? Is it in the children's bathroom? I'm not sure, but I guess with a prayer, it didn't work. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Not used to that soul food, huh? <laughs> Thank you. I want to see what's going on. Oh, Jesus. So we've got the red velvet. velvet. Mom Mary makes all of our desserts. Mom Mary. Yes. Thank you, thank you. That is delicious. Finally, some good fucking food. Wow. How do you like this? Yeah, it's delicious. Well done. Wow. I had to wait to the end. I've been saved by Mother Mary. Of course, the red velvet that Mommy makes is going to be beautiful, right? Because Mommy made it. I'm going to punch him in the face. You watch this thing. <laughs> Just show me into the kitchen, please. Yes, Thank you. I sure will. Yep. The chef is on his way back. I'm scared. I would, I would, I'm scared to bring him here. Shelly doesn't listen. When Ramsey gets back there in the kitchen, we'll see if she even opens up to any suggestions or not. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Mateen. Mateen, good yes, to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. Likewise. Portia. How are Hello, you? Chef. Pleasure. Um, this is Tyrone. Oh, that's Tyrone. Tyrone. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, so, I've just had an embarrassing lunch. Let's start from the top. Pork chop, dry, bland, no seasoning. And the macaroni and cheese was an embarrassment. The fried collard greens, there's no seasoning. Everything's just fried, so it just tasted of oil. And horrible. The chitlins, but the smell of them almost made me want to gag. I absolutely do not believe that there's that much wrong with my food. Who is the head chef here? I am. Show me tonight. OK. Well, you think you are the head chef. All right. As Shelly and the staff prepare for dinner service. Woo! The food is good, up, you know, to my standards. <laughs> Chef Ramsay returns and is greeted by an unexpected guest. Oh, what is that? Bloody hell. Damn. Oh my god. Wow. It's just 10 minutes before the doors to Blackberries open. Chef Ramsay is greeted by something unexpected. Bloody hell. That. Have you got a bin? Yes, Chef. The moves. 
Just by the front door. Huh? I, it was by the door. No. We just had the exterminator. You, you paid for the exterminator? Sure. Get your money back. OK, that's not funny. I've got an incinerator outside. Can you take that? No? As a general manager, do something with it. The mouse. The mouse? It was in the entrance as I walked in on a the left-hand side. A mouse? A mouse? We always have the exterminator once a you month for prevention. That? Are you serious? No fucking word. A uh, mouse? Come on. At the front door, not even in the kitchen. Hey guys, be careful of mice. Can you tell me where you found that at? It was at the front door. Like where? Oh, well, where's the front door in your mind? I can't believe that. I came in the door, walked in there, saw him, bang, right there. Right here. Do you have it on film? Are you kidding me? What, you thought I brought it in out of my pocket? Yeah, I think you did. Are you, are you, are you fucking dreaming? I arrived, the never, mouse was there. Never. never. Never here. Never. There was no, no, never no mouse right here. Right. OK. Absolutely. So we had the exterminator last week. They come on regular occasions. Yes. We yeah. have an issue with mice. That's why you have an exterminator. We, we don't have an issue with mice. An exterminator comes in okay. regularly. Just... Let's, let's, you and I do a little investigation. Let's go. Dwayne, when was the last time you spotted a mouse in here? I've never seen one. Never seen one. No. Good. Except that one that was under the steam table that was dead a few months back. <laughs> Almost a year back. He found a mouse in the front door. I've never been so embarrassed and humiliated in my life. This is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. And sad. I've never seen a mice in here. Perhaps we planted that uh, mouse. And you are suggesting that I brought it in? I was like, hmm, I put it together, like, just for TV sake, maybe. I, I wish you would talk a little bit of sense. Fuck the TV. Put your money where your mouth is, in front of your staff. I want a meeting upstairs with you and everybody now. Yes. Pulling mice out of his pockets and stuff. You gotta take some responsibility for something, man. How you gonna help us if everybody keep bullshitting, man? A mouse in the front door. It it's, it's, it's mice infested all over this place. It can happen. It can happen. Shelly? Huh? Can I have a two seconds, please? Okay. Uh, all, all of you. This is very, very important. So. I was telling him, seeing him, like, almost like, plant that uh, vermin. Mm -hmm. So just look at James for me, two seconds. I walked in the front door, a mouse. The mouse that you planted, I know. They told me. But it's OK. No, it's not it's OK. It's a show. It's got nothing to do with TV, nothing to do with your business in the shit. I am not going to stand there and even attempt to take that crap from you. You can take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. I'm out of here. You're out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. After discovering a mouse in the restaurant, do you have it on film? And being accused of planting it. The mouse that you planted, I know. Chef Ramsay has had enough. Take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. You out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. It is not over. Could you please shut up? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I have worked tremendously trying to support my child. And I don't understand. You know, it's, I, I don't understand what's happening today. Honest to God, I don't. Please don't leave. Yeah, no, I'm out of here. Please don't Because you're leave. exaggerating. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you, just yep. me and you? Yep. I, I take back what I said, as far as you doing something like that. 
I don't want to defame your character, but it just was, I'm lost for words that that happened and it, it just, it, it just like shocked me and I, I apologize. That's the most sensible thing I've heard you say since I've been here. Thank you. Sure. The combination of Mother Mary's plea and an apology by James are enough to keep Chef Ramsay at Blackberries. Welcome to Blackberries. At least for now. Your serving this evening will be Tina. She'll be right with you. The grandma's original fresh chicken. OK. Southern style from And I'm going to get uh, macaroni and cheese. All right, ladies, let me put these orders in. First order, shrimp and grits. Would we'll probably be a shrimp and grit night. Am I seeing right? You've got a, a free burner wok there. Is that a pizza oven? Yes, that's my pizza oven. And the wok. Hot I time. love it, Chef. Shelly, how can you cook soul food in a wok? Watch me, Chef. Watch me. Soul food is supposed to be cooked slowly. Soul is supposed to be cooked with love and soul, not in a wok. Shelly's cooking green beans in a wok, cooking rice in a wok, cabbage in a wok. We're not a Chinese soul food restaurant. We don't need a wok, OK? That's the first of me, a southern food restaurant with a Chinese wok and a pizza oven. And you have an oven that doesn't work right there. Tell me what's working, apart from you. Uh, <laughs> we haven't had correct working ovens. We don't have the correct stoves, the correct fryers, grills. You know, how can we produce really great food if we don't have really great ovens? How do you manage to fry everything you want to fry like that? Very hard. A lot of prayer. After discovering unusual and dysfunctional equipment in this soul food restaurant, Chef Ramsay turns his attention to Shelly and how she runs her kitchen. Fried chicken, please. How many white meats do you need? Fried chicken, Mateen. Well, I'm going to call the artist. You can't call Honey, the artist. do again. your ticket. I'm do doing this. this. Let's get one thing straight. OK. Can you please work on ticket one? We are. Are we? I mean, I don't understand what you're okay, doing. You're walking um, in damn circles. Shelly has no concept of what it means to actually run a proper, functional kitchen. Portia. One ticket at a time I need you to do it. That's I, what I, I'm, I'm doing. OK, just one. Just do one. That's, what, that's how I do one. Just make it and send it. That's it. Make it and send it. Unbelievable. And where's the control, the chef, the, the system? What, what system are we following here? It's like there's no system. I mean, this is a joke. If you try to get one, she wants to argue you down. You know, she wants to argue you down and make it seem like you're the one that's wrong, or it can't be run like that. But it's not making or it's, sense. Or it's too incompetent. Look right down there. Look down there. Look. It's like one, you know, two, there's three. six of them down there. I want you guys off the line. Just go. Watch out. Just back up. It's getting ridiculous get already. It's been an hour and a half. She just kind of want to get up and move. How long are we waiting, Dwayne? Close to an hour. An hour. my first time in here, and it's just dysfunctional. It doesn't seem to be one person controlling it. I have the recipe. I'm the exec. Oh, my Shit. god! Shelly thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. We need a miracle, a prayer, hands on bending knees, because this is going to the shits. Here we go, fried chicken. Despite the ongoing chaos in the kitchen, dishes somehow make their way to the dining room. And that's the result. You wait 90 minutes, and this is what you're lucky to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's crazy in there. Huh? Huh? That is crazy in there. Always. In yes. there's a war zone. Always. Huh? Always. Welcome to Blackberry. Step brand. That's it, hell. What a welcoming. Coming up, is it her way or the highway? When the staff tries to get through to Shelly. I have been open-minded. She goes from the defensive to the offensive. Calm down. Calm down. I'm not upset. I want you to leave. Tell me to go, I go. And then at dinner service, Blackberry spirals out of control. I don't want to hear it. Don't... Leaving Chef Ramsay wondering. Shelly! If this restaurant can be saved. Now you walk away. Bye. Goodbye. 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 See you later. It's day two at Blackberries, and Chef Ramsay knows that before he can implement changes, he has to focus on how this restaurant is run. And so he starts the day with a staff meeting. I want to go around now to identify things that you know that are wrong with the business and things that you'd like to change in the business. I think um, one thing is I've known Shelly. We kind of grew up together, and she is a control freak. 
if she does not see it being implemented the same way that she would do it, she's going to jump in and she's going to take over. But is it overbearing? Is it too controlling? Yes. It's either her way or the highway. And it inhibits anyone to show off their skills or what they can do or what they can bring to the restaurant. But you have someone that's down your throat constantly sure. and really doesn't know what they're doing. If you were so right, obviously the restaurant wouldn't be failing or in a situation that is in. No, but it's a very valid point. You've employed some talented individuals. OK. Portia. Shelly needs to learn how to delegate responsibility. She can't be hands-on all the time. It creates a problem. Oh, my god. Shelly, in all honesty, you take somebody out of what they're supposed to be doing and make them do something else. And that's one thing you got to realize, and that happens more often than I not. I think that you talk too much and you know too much. See, this is and the that attitude. Is part of that's the problem. what makes this so rough. Dwayne, well, be at quiet. One time or another, Dwayne. everybody has been Dwayne. pushed off their position. Just... Dwayne, calm down. I'm not, and I wasn't upset. Dwayne, I tried to tell you something. I'm, I'm asking very, you very, to calm very, down. I'm not, I'm not I upset. I want you to leave. Good night. I don't have Thank a problem you so with much that. Because the truth honestly hurts. The truth hurts. Right, we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. Well, we're gonna well, Dwayne, I'm Dwayne, Dwayne, you. Dwayne, Dwayne, like Dwayne, 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 just bear with me for two minutes. Sit down, please. OK? My goodness. What is wrong with you? I made one comment. What's become evident is how fragmented we are. But that starts from the top. Chef, Shelly have to learn how to listen. Everybody tries to communicate with her and support her. But if she's going to be stubborn and not listen, the doors will close. And that would just break my heart, I mean, tremendously. From now on in, open, honest dialogue Got it? Yes. Shelly? Shelly, I can't hear you. I'm listening. No? We're all I'm in listening. together. Are we going to be open-minded? I have been open-minded, as far as I'm concerned. Why do you say that? This is not a joke. Your livelihood is on the line. I mean, you're in a serious, serious position. There's no reason why you cannot be open and honest, because my I'm 72 years old. Oh, and I thank sense. God that I've been able to live this long. And these are the most important things that I try to project. Listen to what this gentleman has to say. I want to move forward. I'm here to help. Right. And the direction is to you, Shelley, because there's some valuable information that we've just listened to. We know you're the boss. What you haven't got right now is a successful restaurant. And everyone in this room, including me, are here to make that a success. Right. But you have to get out of denial. Okay. Agreed? Agreed. I can't hear you. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Only time will tell whether Shelley has really understood what the staff was saying. Come with me. Let's go in the kitchen. Let's get to work. But Chef Ramsay has already implemented a drastic change in the kitchen. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I called a friend, Kelly Quip, and he arranged for a brand new fryer and a state-of-the-art six-ring burner, an amazing convection oven from South Bend. Incredible. Oh, um, a six-burner stove, Tyrone. I just can't believe Unbelievable. I've had it done, especially for your baking as well. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. I'm bursting at the seams. Just, I, I just can't believe it. Oh, man, this is awesome. Is the wok gone? There's no way on earth we can start to move forward cooking on a Chinese wok. A wok that you cannot cook soul food on. We can have a proper system here. Where's the wok? <laughs> I am definitely going to miss my walk, but it's just going to be an adjustment for me. Oh, my God. Incredible. I just can't believe this. Happy Mary? Father God, I just can't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. Oh, this is just so wonderful. This is truly, truly a blessing. Chef Ramsay is, he's unbelievable. I truly believe in the power of prayer. I prayed so hard that you would come and that you were going to turn this restaurant around. I'm just so overwhelmed. I thank you so much.
Now that the kitchen has functional equipment... OK, there's one thing that's missing here. That's the structure. What, what system are we following here? We're going to work as a team. Chef Ramsay appoints a leader. Tomorrow night, my team, yes. I want you cooking yes. and expediting. Yes. Chef Ramsay helped implement a system to help this restaurant run very smoothly from now until forever. I'm going to make something very, very simple with you all now, just a stunning mac and cheese. He also works with the chefs on some new cooking techniques. Golden brown, take a spoon and have a little taste. Chef Ramsay has suggestions. I'm going to do my best to be as open as I can. <laughs> But I just, I don't know. We are going to reopen this restaurant tomorrow night with a system. One voice, one leader. Yes. And work as a team. Yes. A system. Don't change it. Coming up. Shelly. I'm coming. It's the relaunch of Blackberries. I don't oh, want to hear it. Shelly. Will Shelly be able to handle the changes? Goodbye. 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 And later. A surprise ending. We have worked our ass off. You have to see to believe. Close the damn place down. After the implementation of a new system in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to give the dining room a much needed makeover. OK, good morning. Excited to see you inside? Yes. Hi. Yeah. Yes? Let's go. Welcome to the new Blackberries. When I first arrived here, there was the cafeteria, the menu on the wall, and it just lost that intimacy. Now it's a restaurant. Gone is the cafeteria. You have a wonderful, amazing new restaurant. Brand new tables, brand new chairs. It's a totally but... different place. Look at my uh, Yes. <laughs> I promise you, they're not your records. I love my new restaurant. The artwork, the tables, it's like a dream come true. I absolutely love it. The soul is back. I'm just so excited and so grateful. I'm just overwhelmed. Shelly, how do you feel? I feel great. Oh, 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 that's rare. Oh, oh. Uh, thank God my middle name's James, right? <laughs> now that Blackberries has an updated look. Now for the exciting part, the food. Oh, wow. Chef Ramsay has created a fresh, new soul food menu to match it. What we've done is taken some of the dishes and modernised them a little bit, give them a bit of a, a new twist. Starting off with the black-eyed pea fritters, delicious. Barbecue pulled pork sliders, wonderful starter. Entrees, fried chicken and waffles with the honey butter. Oh, snap! I Next love thing, that. A southern meatloaf sandwich done with mac and cheese and a spicy glaze, like a really nice, rich, spicy ketchup. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Shelly looked like she was embracing the change very well. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay finally broke through to her. Is that beautiful? Dig in and have a taste. Oh, my God. Here we go. Fried chicken and waffles and blackberries. This menu is great. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I think I have a winning combination here. Chef did it. Food, atmosphere, we're ready. Ooh, that's heavy. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. OK, we're about to open. We put a structure in place. And Chef Ramsay has given them all the tools they need to make this restaurant a success. Blackberries! Let's go. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Blackberries. This is a nice looking menu. With the restaurant filling up. We're going to do the pork sliders. And orders coming in from the dining room. Okay, Order good. in. It's now up to the newly appointed leader, Chef Mateen, to take charge of the kitchen. One jerk wings, one shorty, one chicken with white meat. Fried chicken, white meat, six minutes. Echo. Thank you. Good. Off we go. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Let's go. With Chef Ramsay's new system in place and the team working together. Shelly, six minutes on my oxtails. Echo on the oxtails. Thank you. Dinner service is off to a smooth start. OK, here we go. We're rocking. And out in the dining room. Fried green tomatoes. Those are excellent. The customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. I need an oxtail shorty. OK. Hey, Dad, you OK? The restaurant is packed. Wait till you see it. You're not going to believe it. I need an oxtail and a shorty right now. I'm on the line a little bit tonight. Shelly. 
Shelly, he was asking for stuff and you're just ignoring him. I'm coming, okay. All right, love you, Dad, you okay? Let's go, please. All right. Shelly being on the phone is totally disrespectful and a slap in the face to her kitchen team. What she's saying is, I don't give a damn. It's my world and this is the way I'm gonna do it. The rest of you, who cares? How long for my oxtail? What, what? Things were going really well at the beginning because they were being executed, but then I just don't think Shelly wanted to be there. I need an oxtail and a shorty first. <laughs> what? She's not in control, and if she's not in control, she doesn't want to follow it. Shelly. Yes, Shelly. It's like we just switched off and forgotten. Yeah. Why have we forgotten our systems? The most important thing about a system is keeping it, yes? Go back to your stations. I am the owner of this business, and I'm just not taking any shit from anyone. Hell no. What is this? What? Who put my corn in it? I did. It's dry. I don't want it to dry out, honey. Don't do that. Shelly. Yes, Shelly, don't do that. You're doing, you're going back again. I don't want it to dry out. Come here. Uh, no, Look, come here. Me. Come here. Look at me. I only ask you, don't do it. Mateen, yes. we're going back again. We're going back to old bullshit ways. Don't touch what he's doing. OK. You said it's dry. Was it dry, the corn? No, it wasn't no, dry. No, it wasn't, it wasn't fucking dry. It wasn't even done Thank yet. Thank you. I don't care what you he don't said. Care. Chef Ramsey's system works. Is this Shelly that doesn't want it to work? So when it's sitting on the side, drying out, just leave it there. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't want to hear it. Shelly! Oh. Shelly! I'm not talking back. Shelly, now you walk away. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. She's gone. Bye. See you later. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. Don't touch what he's doing. And as Chef Ramsay tries to keep everything on track, it's it's not dry. Dry. I, I, I don't want to hear it. Shelly goes off the rails. Goodbye. Goodbye. She's gone. And storms out of the kitchen. Bye. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What happened? They were doing so good. Yeah. Shelly started coming in and picking up bits and disrupting them. I asked her to stop it and let Mateen do it, and she got really funny. Ever since then, she just switched off, so she's, she's closed down. Shelly is a crybaby. She's not willing to admit that she's wrong, and that's pretty sad. With Shelly out of the kitchen... Stop everything you're doing. Play this one for me right now. Chef Mateen and the staff try to pull it together. OK, and we're going to send a ticket out right now. To get the remaining dishes to the hungry diners. I'm hungry. Mateen, Let's go. you've got to push it. Yes, Chef. You control the kitchen. Yes. I need right now, I need two fried green tomatoes. I need that now. Working. OK? Working. Nice. Let's go. Can you give Dwayne to take this out for table one, please? Dwayne, off you go. Table 50, let's go. Finally. Might be a little slow, but it's going to be great. With Mateen leading the kitchen. I need a side of fries up in the window now. Side of fries. Good. The final entrees make their way out to the dining room. Yay, we got our food. And customers are loving the food. It's worth the wait. Wonderful, I think. You guys are good. It ran so smooth. We have the system now. This right here is the first day of greatness of many more days to come. And I loved it a lot. Everything was great. Thank, Thank you. you. With the staff completing a successful relaunch, Chef Ramsay yeah. gathers the group. Uh, OK. But there's someone missing. Where's, uh, Shelly? In the office. Shelly, can I, uh, can I talk to you? Please? Shelly? Shelly? No point in making yourself look any more stupid. Shelly, just two seconds. Not going to argue. She's not coming. We don't need her. Come on. Shelly needs to listen to Chef Ramsay. You just can't close ears to someone that's come to help you. Please. You really don't have anything to say. If, if you, don't you don't need to have anything to say. Up. Just go outside. Out of respect for your staff. I love my staff. Well, then you want them to walk out on you and you'll have yeah, the restaurant? Let's go, man. I'll clean up tonight. My Forget staff. about cleaning up tonight. What about the rest of yeah. the days? Oh, dear. And I'm so ashamed of you that I don't know what mother. to do. Shelly, we have worked our oh, ass I'm off. Done. Can you please well, if get you out are, my face? If you are done, close the damn place down. Let's go, Tyrone.
I don't believe Shelly deserves all this great help she got. I mean, someone like me that's been cooking and went to culinary school would kill for something like this opportunity, you know? It saddens me so much. OK. I know it's been a rough night, but on a personal note, I just want to say thank you. Why? Because you guys worked your butt off. Nobody gave up. There's something personal about soul food for me. I started a small little documentary called Kitchen Nightmares seven years ago, and my first ever restaurant was a soul food shack. It's why I started to put him back into the industry, and you guys deserve success. He did a fantastic job. Chef Ramsay, he's up there with the best angels. I'm just so delighted and so grateful, and we are going to do our part to make him proud of us. We definitely will make sure that your efforts were not in vain. Thank you. Thank you. Shelly had the world's greatest chef in here to teach her and to help her business. But she may throw this all, the whole system out the window with the whole menu. Only time can tell. Can we have 30 seconds, please? I think this is my office. Are you asking me for 30 seconds at my office? Yes, I am. Absolutely not. OK. That just sums it up. Yeah. That's the only thing I haven't changed. I really wanted a happy ending tonight. Why? Because this week I've met some amazing people. Mother Mary, what a sweetheart, and a phenomenal cook. Mateen, that guy has a bright future, and he is packed with passion. But the fate and the future of Blackberries rest in the hands of Shelley. And unfortunately, restaurants do not succeed when they're run by a dictator. I planted a mouse. Is she crazy? In the weeks that followed, Hi, nice to see you. Customers responded well to the changes Chef Ramsay made to the menu and the decor. Mm, the steak is tender. After witnessing the positive reviews, surprisingly, Shelly embraced all that Chef Ramsay has done for blackberries. Nice, right? Beautiful. I like it. I was so skeptical, but Chef Ramsay has opened up a new world for us here at Blackberries. I'm ready for change. It was difficult for me to see that at the beginning, but here it is. The truth is the light. You guys enjoy. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon travels to Montclair, New Jersey, where after two years in a coma, the owner returns. What are you doing? To find that her restaurant is near death. This restaurant has been run like a pigsty. Her son has run the restaurant into the ground. We're drowning. We've already drowned. And he is in complete denial. There is nobody in control of this restaurant. I disagree. Oh, my God. The menu is massive. Look at all this food. The food is a disgrace. What is that? Ah. <coughs> and the kitchen is a health hazard. What the fuck is that in there? Oh, shit. This is raw pork. Now smell that. And unbelievably, even the cooks think the food is subpar. How does that taste? I don't like personal. When a chef doesn't like his own food, how the fuck do you expect the customer to? Tonight, Chef Ramsay is in for a huge challenge. You've got ingredients from last Thanksgiving. Will he be able to get through to this lazy owner? Michael, I need you to step up. No. Or will his ailing mother see her life's work? Under no circumstances can we continue to serve food. Get completely trashed. Shut the place down. That's tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Come here. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. I'm done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. Montclair, New Jersey, an affluent suburban community just 20 minutes from Manhattan. In the heart of town sits an Italian eatery called Leone's, opened more than a decade ago by Rose Leone. When my mom first opened Leone's in 1996, Leone's was the place to go to if you wanted Italian food. Welcome to Leone's. Do you just have a reservation? People will wait in line to come in. I was here 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 at night. I did everything, cooking, cleaning, the inventory. Mama treated this restaurant like her child. This restaurant was her life. 
About two years ago, my mother went in for a routine kidney stone. The operation went bad, and she went into a coma, which was very, very difficult. When Rosie was ill, it was a bad moment. You look around, you don't see Rosie. There's nothing here, and that's what hurts. Without Mama Rose, everybody was just scrambling to make it work. Literally. She said the fish was dry and she didn't like that the polenta was soft. Is that the polenta? I got that, yeah. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. Right. Michael stepped in and he says he's the boss but doesn't do anything boss worthy. He shows up around six, walks around, hands out a sambuca. As long as you're 21, it's my treat. Watches a little football, gets dinner. One piece of cake. Okay. And goes home. All right, see you later. Michael's not taking care of this restaurant, so basically, I do everything. I do ordering, I coordinate staff. You're supposed no to make the it menu. the way the menu states. Michael does not show any concern about this restaurant. And when everybody sees that, they do the same. The kids are stiff, they take naps out in the back, they play soccer. Hello. After Michael took over, the food went to shit. There's no flavor. The taste just wasn't there anymore. I mean, this place used to be good, and I'm not happy anymore. Business nowadays is awful. We are very slow. Last weekend, we had 12 to 15 tables on a Friday night, and that's bad. No reservations, we got Lizzie. There's no reservations. Two years later, when I come back, I almost had a heart attack. Everything I see was dirty. So if this is filthy, I'm afraid about what the kitchen looks like. Kitchen out of control. That's a disgrace. Disgusting. What are you doing? They destroyed everything I worked for in my life. There was no management in the restaurant. Pache, do without out. Do without out. Do without out. It's a period to nothing. We owe fourteen hundred for the meat, overdue for the past month. I need my goal to make some money. What are you going to do, Michael? I don't know. I was going to ask you. You've got to do something, Michael. You tell me. What do you want me to do? I need Chef Ramsay to come in and straighten him out. Chef Ramsay needs to be my voice. If this doesn't work out, I will have no other choice but to die. Leonis. Here we go. You think of New Jersey, and you think of Italian. Hey, hello, hey, hello Gordon. How, How are, are you? you? Doing, Jeff? Thank you. Likewise, good to see you too. See you. Um, first name is? Michael. Michael, good to see you. Good to meet you, Gordon. So you are? Owner. Owner. Yes. OK. Um, what's that thing there? That's like... uh, my old uh, television that I watch all the games on. Oh, old? You watch games on there? Yes, sir. Seriously? Yes, sir. But this is the main entrance, right? Yes, sir. Wow. Is business that flat that you're watching games and trying to deal with customers at the same time? Yes, it is, Chef. Really? Yes. That bad? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Go outside. Yes, sir. And come back in in 10 seconds. OK. <laughs> Hello, table for one, sir? Yeah, I'm busy. OK. Two seconds, I've just got to watch sure. this goal. Would you mind? I'll see myself. Uh, I'm busy. I'm just trying to find the game. It's so important because this is far more important than running my business. Seriously? Honestly? Michael, do you get the message? I mean, it just... Do you think that's a good impression for customers walking in for the first time? No. Terrible. No. Chef Ramsay looked at me in such a way like, what is this rodent doing next to a television in a restaurant? It was just embarrassing. Oh, my God. Is that a baby? Yes. I mean, they say that there's never an ugly baby. I think I've just found one. But that's not you, is it? No, sir. We have one of the worst decors I've ever seen. The creepy baby keeps me up at night. I don't know what my mother was thinking, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Everything you see, every artwork is my mother. Right. My mother's actually the owner, and I was kind of like the general manager okay, right. until she got sick. Oh. Everything. She got sick? Yes. And mum's name is? Rose. OK, right. And is, is your mother here? Yes. OK. Can we meet? Please. Please. How are you? How are you? Good to see you, sweet. <laughs> Good to see you. So nice seeing you. Love Likewise. My life. Uh, oh, yeah. Nice. Step friends is hot. I've been married three times. I need number four. Are you feeling better? Yes. Okay. And how long have you been back at the business? Two months. So you just come back now. And how long were you out for? Two years. I was a vegetable. Oh really? Wow. I'm sorry. And um, how long have you had the, the restaurant? Fourteen years. 
In your mind, what's wrong with the restaurant? What is it? Everything. Everything. Okay. Um, let's get the group together and uh, let's have a little meeting and a catch up. And I'd like to hear from everybody so I can get my head around this. Okay. Yeah. Can we get the chefs and uh, yeah, everybody, please, Michael? Yeah. Chef Ramsey was in my last. I'm everything I got on him. So this is John. John, good to see you. Thank Come you. Uh, this is <laughs> Elizabeth. Elizabeth, nice to see you. And you are. I'm Trudy. Trudy. Right. That's a lovely name. Thank and you. And what do you do? I'm a waitress. A waitress. And sorry, John, what do you do? I'm a waiter. A waiter, Elizabeth? Hostess. Hostess, because I've met the man that's in charge of the TV control. <laughs> Chef Ramsay is going to tear Michael a new asshole. I would hope that Michael knows that he has it coming, but it is Michael, so he probably doesn't know that he has it coming. OK, good. Um, first of all, I can't start to even think about turning this place around until I get to the bottom of the issues. Um, who'd like to go first? Wow, Trudy. The major problem here is there's no manager. There are no, nobody in control of this restaurant. Basically, the staff is running this restaurant right now. I, I disagree. I believe the problem is, is that uh, I believe the decor is a turn off. The decor? Hmm. No, it's ridiculous. She got sick. I had to step up to the plate. I take care of payroll. I take care of ordering. I take care of Order. payables, receiving, Payable. doing the menus. Wow, is that right? What would happen if Trudy fell ill? God forbid. Where in the hell would we be? I don't know the answer to that, Chef. I don't know. Do you want it? You don't, do you? Yes, I do. Are you incapable? I think I am capable. So why haven't you done it? When I see the business not busy, it's hard for me to really show passion. Have you ever had the passion? Yes. I've had the passion in death. I don't think he ever had the passion. He's never had it? No. Wow. Is that true? I don't think so, Chef. I fell into it, hoping that Michael, somewhere along the line, would learn from me, but he hasn't made the initiative. Michael says, you gotta have balls. You want to rest out. Desire, time, effort, it doesn't stop. It's gotta be your life. I think the bottom line, Chef, is everyone can do more. I think the servers can do more, I think the busboys can do more, and the chefs can do more. Are you here every day? Except Monday, yeah, I'm here every day. Except Monday. Right, so well. you're here six days a week. Across those six days a week you're in here, you're here, what, 12, 14 hours a day? No, no. no, no. <laughs> How many? I work the dinner shift from like uh, 5 to 10, 5 to 11. So five hours a day. Out of those five hours a night, how many of them do you sit down? Depending on the situation. Roughly? Two, three. So you're on your feet for two hours a day? Yes. Holy crap. What's the break even per week in this restaurant? $12,000. $12,000. What are we taking currently a week? $8,000. We're losing four grand a week. Yes, sir. We're drowning. We've already drowned. When the business doesn't cover the expense, there is no business. It can't last. Wow. OK. I'm going to have a look round. I'm going to be back in 20 minutes. OK? So do me a favor. Just make me one of everything on that menu. Our menu is 15 pages. Let's go. And I just had to laugh because I knew it was going to look like a freaking Chinese buffet. I need one of every pasta okay. on the menu. We need chicken parm, veal parm, shrimp parm, eggplant parm, all the parms. Louis, one of every pizza, please. Don't forget the sides. I think the pizza's top, top notch. I think most of the food is outstanding. I eat here six days a week. Don't forget your pizza special, too. There you go. I appreciate it. More plates, more plates, more plates. Roll the tea in the window. OK. Right. Oh, my God. Holy crap. Look at all this food. Bloody hell. Coming up, uh, Leone serves a dangerous dose of indigestion. That'll blow your lungs out, that thing. And later. What is that in there? Gordon's kitchen investigation. Oh, my God. Confirms his worst fears. The raw veal next to the cooked chicken. Which threatens the future of Leone's. Under no circumstances can we continue to serve food. Shut the place down. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. I need to get up to speed. So. I'm going to keep it simple. Just make me one of 
everything. After a meeting with the staff, Chef Ramsay is anxious to get up to speed on the food. I need one of every pasta. All parts. But when he returns, he makes a shocking discovery. Oh my God, holy crap. A dining room full of food. How many items on the menu? Over 100. 100? I mean, physically, the appearance? Jesus Christ. Can I have a knife and fork, please? Maybe a bag, a fucking sick bag. Chef Ramsay, I would like to apologize in advance. It's just, everything is just terrible. <laughs> Where do you start here? What's what? This is sweet onion yeah. pie. This is Regular a basic one. cheese pie. Crust looks very dark. Is that normal, that, or is he just having an off day? The oven gets very hot, so. Have you tasted that? Mm-hmm. How bland is that? I, mean, I just... think the texture I don't like, but the taste. You like the taste, but you don't like the texture? Yeah. Jesus. Is that rice? Risotto. That's risotto. Mm. Risotto? Oh, come on, guys. I mean, fucking do me a favor. Fuck, what stinks here? What's that smell? Is that you? No, sir. What? Fuck. Don't think so. Just smell that. Just smell inside. I don't want you smelling that. No, no, not, not with your state of health. I don't want you back in a coma. Taste the thing. <laughs> Quick. Ah. ah, mine's full of grit. A little spongy. Spongy, most grit. They're not even grit. clean. Yeah. Right. Are you crunching grit? Yes, yes. Dirt, sand. How do you clean a clam if it's sealed? You run them under fucking cold water. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah. Lord only knows where those clams came from. At least it was just sand. That's all I'm saying. What is that? That's our ribiata. Why is all the vinegar on there? People like that recipe. They love it, actually. Oh, my god. The chilies. <coughs> Garlic. I mean, that is a fucking disaster. Next row. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is it? It's chicken. In balsamic sauce. Yeah. Balsamic Red reduction. wine in a balsamic reduction. Taste it. Mm. It should come with a fucking warning. That will blow your lungs out. I mean, and whereabouts in Italy is that from? I don't know. Oh, come on. What is this one? Pasta There's no seasoning in there. Everything's bland. Bland. It's bland. Pasta's bland. Ah, ah. Dirt. It's like a fucking flip flop. Look at the garlic in there. Too much garlic. Smell of garlic. Pissing with garlic. Way too much garlic. How many bowls of garlic's in there? A lot of garlic, yeah. Are they trying to put me in hospital for two years? I mean, it's bad. It is bad. I mean, honestly, get me the chest out here, will you please? Sure. My food, even though I think it needs help, it's definitely not that bad. If I eat it myself, it's not as bad as the chef said. Who made this? I did it. Have you tasted it? Have you ever sat down and tasted your own food? Sit down. With Hurry it, up. With it, what happens? No, uh, no, okay. no, with, with, with it happens. Sit down. Come on, quickly, I need yeah. you to taste it. I know. Sit a... down, please. Yes. Welcome to Leonis. There we are. I knew it is it is this. How does that taste? Can I have a fork? No, you're not eating that. No, no, no. I'm not gonna be responsible for putting you back in hospital. Sit down, you are not eating that. How does that taste? How does it taste? I don't like person. I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't like it. How was that? It's very vinegary. Have you tasted your risotto? Yes, I do taste the risotto, but yeah, stay there. Have a little taste. Yeah, just have a taste of that result. Use your, your knife and fork. Have a little taste. How does that taste? Wow. It's fucking disgusting. And if that's classed as a risotto here in New Jersey, dude, you've got to get out more. What, if any, dish do you like on these tables? Nothing. Nothing at all? It's <clears throat> When a chef doesn't like his own food, how the fuck do you expect the customer to? For me, that says it all. Even your chefs don't like their food. I think it's good. You think it's good? Well. Are you in denial, or are you just doing no, this in I'm front not, of your no, mother? No, I'm not no. in denial. I'm going to get some fresh air. I'll be back later, yeah? I 
I'd like to catch a plane out here right now. Let's go, Mama Lux. After discovering early on that Leone's menu is more about quantity than quality, Chef Ramsay returns to observe dinner service, and news of his arrival in Montclair has spread, and the restaurant is busy for the first time in years. What are we having? Cavatelli? Yeah. And for you, sir? Mediterranean pasta. Okay. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? And this is my wife. Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Oh, you're yes. Michael's wife? Yes. Wow, didn't he do well? <laughs> hey, Linda. Yeah, good. Right. Um, tonight, run the place as normal. I'd like to see how this thing functions. I've tasted it. Yeah? Now I want to see how it works. Uh, take me through the kitchen. Show me the line, please. The kitchen chef. The kitchen Ordering. Okay, I'd up. One asparagus salad, one fried calamari. Sweet or hot? Here's our um, prior area salads and desserts. Yep. Uh, hello. Hi. How are I'm you? I'm Diana. Diana. Okay, great. And how long have you been here? I've been here seven years. Seven years? Yes. Wow, okay, great. <laughs> um, the main problem with the restaurant is what? <laughs> so the main problem is the food. The food? Yes. Wow. I like the honesty. I work here and I try to take pride in my work, but I don't think the food is good. Michael needs the eye opener. Pick it out. Pick it out. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Here we are. Enjoy. It's tasting or what do you think? The batter is kind of flavorless. While diners try to digest their food. Look at this. This is dry. Gordon is having a hard time digesting what he sees in the kitchen. What the fuck is that in there? Is that how we heat it? We blast it in the microwave. That's very Italian. In here? What's in here? I do yesterday this chicken. You do this yesterday? This chicken or balsamic. So hold on a minute. That's cooked chicken. And what's that in there? Mm, veal I did today. So you have the raw veal next to the cooked chicken. Come on. The cooks are to blame for their part. If they make a mistake, I can live with that. But something about it being irresponsible and neglectful, there's no excuse. Look at the crap in here. Bloody house bells. What's that in there? Is that calamari? That's it. Yeah, it comes in definitely fresh, though, that I know for a fact. Fresh? It's frozen? You buy this in fresh? It is not fresh. Calamari we use here is all frozen. Oh, Jesus. What is that in there? What is that? I think it's veal, chef. You think it's veal? Pretty sure it's veal. You didn't put it in there? No, I didn't. Daughter, no, no. what is it? That looks like meat thrown in a pan. But what is it, though? I don't know. It's not labeled. Oh, my god. Fucking hey. Forget the orders for five minutes. Uh, come round, you. Daryl, come round. Don't worry about the cooking for now. I've got more fucking issues. When was the last time this was organized? It hasn't been organized. Oh, come on. What's that? Molasses. Molasses? Yeah, that's been in there since Thanksgiving. What? It's July. What's that? Oh, my god. Oh, shit. This is raw pork. That's not my pork that you served to me, is it? No, that's uh, the, all the old pork that they left there. Uh, that's the old pork? No. When's this one from? Not Thanksgiving again. Stuff what? The mushroom. Smell that! Smell it! That's fucking older than me! Smell it! Go on! That's your sauce, Daryl. What in the fuck is this? Oh, my God. Is that flounder? It's definitely old. It's definitely old? It's green. Smell that. It was embarrassing. It was mortifying. He comes in something that's so ident easily identifiable and no one noticed. Smell it! How is that possible? Oh. Hi. Can I just show you something for two seconds? Mama Rose, I am absolutely horrified. That's from Thanksgiving. And that, a slimy, vile, sticky flounder and a sour, disgusting cream sauce. I mean, honestly, this restaurant has been run like a Pigsty, you may be resistant to change, but what's become very clear is that you're resistant to quality. Michael should have been a boss to begin with and have his dishwashers and cook, have it done, should have been done always. All of you, come here. Let's go. Come here. How can we work like that? You've got ingredients from last Thanksgiving. Did you smell the flounder? Yes. Did you see the cooked chicken, the raw pork, the raw veal? It's a joke. 
You should be ashamed of yourselves. Under no circumstances can we continue to serve food. Shut the place down. After discovering disgusting and dangerous practices in Leone's kitchen, under no circumstances can we continue to serve food. Chef Ramsay has no choice but to shut the place down. You go in the dining room now and just apologize. Get fucking cleaning. Get it going. Should I tell them no more service for the rest of the night or just till they're done cleaning? What do you think? Not at all. Just embarrassed, that's I'm fucking embarrassed. Everybody, everybody, I'm sorry to interrupt you, everybody. I'm sad to say and embarrassed to say that we're closing down Leone's for the night. The food is not up to par. It's not what you deserve. So I apologize for your inconvenience. I thank you for choosing Leone's. But right now, it's a must. We must shut down. Are you serious? He shut it down. That's it. Shut it. He shut it down. Sorry, guys. Leone's never been shut down. Very embarrassed by it. Bobby won't sleep tonight over this. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry, take care. Sorry about that, ladies. I'm feeling disappointment. I feel humiliated telling everyone that they can't eat at my own restaurant. Can you sit down, please? That's the most badly practiced kitchen I've ever seen. That's why we need you, Chef. No, Michael. No. Michael, you let it happen on a daily basis. You need to run your business. You don't understand. You don't take what they eat. You never die for the restaurant. You don't understand it. I care, Chef. Not in your mother's eyes, you don't. Have you ever walked into your kitchen and opened the door to your refrigeration units and called them out? No, I check, but I don't check hard enough, obviously. What are you talking about? Oh, my stop it, my stop it. You're oblivious. It's happening under your own nose. They don't give a shit because you don't. Diana, is he lazy? Yes. John, is he lazy? Yes, sir. Trudy, is he lazy? Yes. Mama? He is. Right now, we have a room full of individuals that don't believe in your conviction to run this place. Prove to me, and more importantly to your mother and your staff, that you are ready to lead. Got it? Got it. A manager who doesn't manage? My God. Do you want me a rag with some soap and water? OK. I don't feel like I've given up, but I feel like I'm broken. I'm angry at myself. I think as the boss of the restaurant, it was just irresponsible. Is he capable of taking care of this restaurant? For myself, I don't know. I think seeing is believing. Are you OK, Ma? Yeah. I'm what's the matter, you crying? Come here, what's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, what's the matter, huh? We're going to turn the ship around. My mother put in almost 20 years of her life in this place. Her spirit, her money. I'm crushed that I let her down. And I want to make it good. But the truth is, I don't know if I can turn it around. And it's a scary feeling. It really is. Come on. Get out of there. Get some rest. OK? OK. After shutting down Leone's, Chef Ramsay realizes Michael and his staff need to have their eyes opened, and he's arranged something appropriate at an art gallery only half a block away. Take a look at this amazing exhibition. Come in. Look at that. What do you see? Food. food. What kind of food do you see on there? What, what, what? Italian food. Food that's Michael? very pleasurable to the eye. Is it inviting? Yes. Yes. This is your competition. Only blocks away from Leone's. Michael, I went to five restaurants this morning. Lovely, thank you. I took the pictures, and trust me, after shooting those dishes, 
I ate everything. And they don't only look great. Wow, that was delicious. But well, they taste amazing. I was glad that Michael got to see what else was in the neighborhood instead of living in the denial that our food is fantastic. Your dishes set an impression, and they remain in people's memories. So let's take a look at these dishes from another local restaurant. This restaurant's called, that's right, Leone's. Do you recognize the food? Yes. Wow. I've never seen such an outdated mess in all my life. Take a look at that, and then turn around and have a look at your competition. Come on. Trudy, what's the message I'm trying to get across? Get your shit together. Your food is no comparison to what's in the neighborhood. I can't believe it, but I'm embarrassed to serve food like that. Chefs opened my eyes to the, to the neighboring competition, and I think it takes someone outside, the family, and your friends to tell you how it is. Today, we move in this direction. Let's get back to Leone's and get started. Let's go. I think it's time for change, and I want to be the best Italian restaurant in town. With Michael finally realizing how much his restaurant has slipped, Gordon's next move is to push Michael to better understand his business. When was the last time you cooked anything? Never. And that means working in the kitchen. I want you yeah. to watch me now cook a delicious veal chop and a simple capellini. But I want you to do them with me. You don't need to be an amazing chef to understand when your chefs are going badly wrong. You sure. can't continue being blindsided by your brigade. I need you to start leading from the helm. You start running your business, OK? You bet. Veal chop, let's go. To be the man of the house, I have to take all the responsibility. I mean, I have to take a kick in the ass. A lot of people depend on me. You follow me every step of the way. Such of olive oil in there, yeah? Salt and pepper. It's cooked on the bone. Why are we cooking it on the bone? More flavor. Right, get that pan nice and hot. How do you know when the oil's ready, chef? I like smoke coming off there. You got the sear in there. Wow. Leave that, searing away. There's never a cost your mind to come in and cook from time to time. Nah, it's, sort of, no? it's, it's one of those things, as the Italian prince, my mother always did the cooking, it even had for my mind. It is very embarrassing because I don't know different positions in my restaurant. I think it's time for change. The most important thing is to see. You know, I'm leaving my pride aside. I want to do better. A really nice sear. There we go. Into the convection, seven minutes, OK? Capellini in. Gently now, gently. Push and pull back. Nice. And again, good. Let's go check our veal. Is that ready, Chef? I want you to tell me for once. I want to pull it right now. Let's go, then. Pull it. Cooking with Chef Ramsay has given me great confidence in myself and in my restaurant. And I'm sure I will make some errors, but I have to learn. It has to come the hard way. Look at that. Visually, how do they look? They look fantastic. Do they belong in the gallery or the garbage? The gallery. The gallery. The gallery. OK, dig in, guys, please. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Mm. That is unbelievable. It just melts in your mouth. Mm. I love the fact I had someone above Michael that had the knowledge, finally pushed him. It was very good for Michael. Delicious. Sean, what do you think of the veal? The veal was excellent. Yeah. Good job. Oh. It's probably the best food that's ever come out of that kitchen. Oh <laughs> the staff, when they seen the food, they looked at me in a different light, knowing that I could do the job, that I wasn't just a bump on a log that could sit in the front. I don't think I've seen Trudy eat or smile in about two years. Oh, oh. wow. First time, Danny tried to cook in his life. I couldn't believe it. You may recognize him from sat on his ass outside watching television. But that guy's gone now. You have a new Michael. Let's go. After feeling a little more positive about Michael, Chef Ramsay's team works through the night to transform Leone's from a sleepy and dated restaurant into a modern Italian bistro. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Chef. Yeah. Today, we are relaunching the new Leonis. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yes. Let's go. Come in, come in. Oh, wow. Come in. Oh, Please, beautiful. Please, come in. Oh, wow. Excellent. Come oh through, my God. Is this the same restaurant? Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Now, big, deep breath. Gone is the dated salmon color. Now we have something sort of contemporary. We have some elegance with the tablecloths. Red and white chairs, the new lampshades. Cool, contemporary. Fabulous. Gone, the walls laced with hideous artwork. We used the phrase, 
and put an imprint of Italy. Very nice. As soon as I opened the door, it was like a whole different world. It's amazing. Beautiful surrounding that makes you feel like you're in Italy. I love that. Can't play the decor in this restaurant no more. I love it. I have another big surprise. This is going to make your life so much easier. I have for you the most amazing, state-of-the-art, point-of-sale system. Oh, so nice. Provided by Zephyr Hardware and POS Laville. It is the state-of-the-art, latest touch screen so cool. device. That's unbelievable. Each and every dish has been photographed and programmed on there. Oh. You go to the table. You take, oh, you take <laughs> the order from wireless touch oh screen so cool. device. It's unbelievable. It's Even oh before you've left the table, the order is in the kitchen. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I might have to cry. Oh, my God. I have been asking them to get any kind of computer here for years. This handwritten stuff has to go, and thank God it's finally gone. We're like a real restaurant. <laughs> you are like a real restaurant. Before Gordon Ramsay came here, this was an outdated New Jersey restaurant. After Gordon Ramsay, this restaurant fits right in. It's just this modern, classic Italian bistro. You're my hero. Oh, Mama Rose. <laughs> Thank you. Tears of happiness or? Oh, Mama Rose. Oh, oh, no, don't, don't hug me too. You OK? Yes? OK. I feel good going forward. My clear's ready. Put it on the only. That looks like a money maker. Come on in. In addition to revamping Leone's decor, Chef Ramsay has overhauled their massive and stale menu and replaced it with fresh and innovative modern Italian dishes. These dishes are good enough to go in any gallery. When I seen the food, I really was excited. The most eye-popping dishes I've seen in a long time. And it's eye orange. It's exactly the first way I felt when I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> now. Let's start off on the top. Herloom tomatoes with cucumber and a sherry vinaigrette. Then, a delicious capellini. Yeah, fresh crab. Beautiful. I love it. When you think of Italian classics, you think of a chicken cacciatore. Polenta, olives, mushrooms, and tomatoes. Vibrant, fresh. It's beautiful. A delicious shrimp scampi. A roasted pan-seared cod. Very nice, sir. A menu one-third of the size with 45 dishes that can change frequently. Got it? Yes. Yes, sir. You happy? Yes, sir. Good. I want you to get some knife and forks and dig in. Oh, my God, that is so good. This yeah. is excellent. Wow. <laughs> Everything on the menu was out of this world. This food is a complete 180 from what we were serving here before. I'm very happy right now. I absolutely love all the dishes on this menu, and you just could taste the difference of the freshness as soon as it goes in your mouth. We're back. Back in business. Coming up, it's relaunch night. Stay the court. And it's the restaurant's last chance. Work this line. Have the balls to do it. Will Michael finally step up? Do you know what you're doing? Or will he destroy Leone's reputation for good? We're not getting anywhere. Except for empty kids and kick Michael in the head. It's relaunch night at Leone's. And after an overhaul of the menu and the decor, Chef Ramsay is encouraged by Michael's new attitude, and okay. so he expects him to take complete control of his restaurant. Tonight, we're going to get it done. I want you expedited. I want you holding the fort together. Sure. Yeah? King of the castle. You got yeah? It. We get in the weeds, we get out. You got it. We stay good together as a team. We got it. Yeah? I'm nervous, I'm excited, I got the butterflies, but I think it's time for me to make this business run the way it should. I know that I can do it. Tonight, we get yeah. it done, Chef. We're going to get it done. You got it. Let's, Let's go, guys. Go. Come on. Move. Let's go. Hi. Welcome to the new Leone's. Hi. Leone's, once a famed restaurant in this community, had lost its way. This is our menu. Tonight, with news of the relaunch, diners are streaming in, ready to give it another chance. Are we ready to order? The penne and the lasagna. <laughs> OK. What would you like? Frank calamari. OK. Pizza. Let's go pizza. <laughs> I'm so impressed by this. I adore the POS system. It was really cool. I mean, the ease of ordering, it was incredible. And my handwriting is atrocious, so this, for me, is a dream come true. Appetizers, one soup, one galamad. Thank you. Come here, buddy. This one is? That's a new food owner, Alex, chef. OK, good, how are you? First name is? Alex, good to see you. So what's going next? We're looking at table six, OK? Let's go. 
Michael is off to a good start. My barata. Ensuring quality dish after dish is quickly leaving the kitchen. Mm, this looks awesome. And diners are thrilled with the new menu. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. How does everything look? Very good. Good? Yeah. Everyone's loving it. I mean, loving it. But the kitchen has hit a roadblock. Alex, this right here is table three. As Michael, in an attempt to push food out fast, has lost control and is sending an order to a table that has already received its food. Oh, come on. We're not getting anywhere, guys. We've already sent the appetizers. Just check out, was that six? No, somebody got a three. OK, three. then check six, then check six. It's not the same table. No. Just check it if yeah, it's the same no. order. Yeah. We're sending food out twice. No, oh, for fuck's sake, come on. Michael, table six and three are eating. Do you know what you're doing? Mike. Screw it up, boy. Michael needs to step up to the plate. I know it. Everyone knows. Except for him. He needs to kick Michael in the air. Michael, I need you to step up. Stop panicking. You're right. There's something difficult here. I know. Bring the team together. We got this, Chef. We're going to pull through. You got it. Work this line. Have the balls to do it. Yes. Mistakes are going to happen. It all depends on how you handle the mistake. John, table 10, did they get all their appetizers? Yes, they did. Alex, did you bring this to 19, right? An olives and a calamari table 19? Yeah. I got to keep it together, get my head on straight, have confidence in myself, and stick to the game plan. Right now, listen. I need one part deli, one cod, one orchette, and then we'll worry about everything else. But that I need now. Yes, sir. Um, Come on, keep it going. We gotta yeah. drive the team. I got you. Gotcha. Yes. How we doing on 18? I come in right now. Okay. We've gotta talk to each other, guys. Okay. I wanna see it in the window together. Good. Right here. Right here. Thank you, sir. Table six. With Chef Ramsay's encouragement, Michael has rallied back. Okay, lasagna, lasagna, lasagna. One lasagna in the window, baby. Beautiful, baby. Food is flowing into the dining room again at a steady pace. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. You're gonna love it. No snags. It tastes great. And no complaints. Delicious. What did you like about the pizza? The whole pie. Diana, how is everybody out there? They're loving it. Everybody's loving it. They're loving it, yeah? Gotcha. You gave me a chicken parm with no home. Is the shrimp coming with it? It's incredible having Michael finally step up. He's doing a good job. He actually sounds like a boss today. That's a first. You guys are doing a great job. The food looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Michael is now working together with us. Hey, guys, come on, baby. One more, and the finish line is here. This is supposed to be like that. We're looking for that for a long time. How'd everything go, OK? Oh, my god, excellent. Yeah, you're yeah. back on the map. <laughs> OK, how are you feeling? Good. Yes? Yes. Feedback? They love the food, the old customers. Right. Mama Rose, I thought you'd gone to bed. Huh? You happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. Look after your son. I will. Let him spoil you now. That's how I need it, yeah. You need to sit and relax and go around the corner for a little game of bingo. <laughs> He's good enough to take over. Yes, he is. I was proud to see my call be the boss. And hopefully things work out and be better. Uh, I'd like a little word with you. Yes, sir. OK. Three important words that right now I need you to remember. Stay the course. If you don't do that, we're coming off track and we're going to slip back day by day to our old ways. Stay the course. Stay the course, yeah. I can't hear you. Stay the course. Take a big, deep breath and shout at me. Chef, in my restaurant, I'm going to stay the course. Good. Well done. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. This was just a phenomenal experience. And yeah. the thing that changed me the most is yes. Chef Ramsay. That's the God's honest truth. Stay the course. You got it, brother. Good night. Good night. He believed in me, and he said I can do it. I truly believe I can do it. Good job, Michael. You proud of me? Yeah. Thank you, you brother. You do it without me now, no more. OK, I'll I'm try. I'm tired. <laughs> You're in good hands, Yeah, good. thank you. I love you. Love you too. Wow. When I first arrived, I saw a lazy owner sat in his pizzeria watching TV. We made a lot of changes, not just to the restaurants, but to the owner. Michael found his voice, and finally, he's now speaking not just for himself, but for his mother. Wow, that baby was fucking ugly. 
only days after Chef Ramsay left. Alex, give me a silverware, a wrap silverware. Michael took his advice to heart and stayed the course. Here's your veal chop, Tar. Go get it, baby. And under his leadership... Guys, if he needs help, jump in. Franco, help him. Leone's is once again a popular spot in Montclair. Things are more upscale. As for Rose, she can finally rest easy, knowing that her son is in control and the future of Leone's looks bright. Thank you, Chef Ramsey, because of you. Michael's the boss. Leone's is the hottest restaurant in town. You are hot like Chef Ramsey. Hot, hot, hot. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon Ramsay is in Oakhurst, New Jersey, to help overwhelmed owner Mike... Slow the shit down. ...who lost his way when his business partner and father died three years ago. We didn't really know what to do anymore. Now alone at the helm, Mike has allowed the restaurant to literally fall apart. Ew. The kitchen is a mess. Look at this. Oh, you're kidding me. The food is disgusting. Do you enjoy cooking like that? <laughs> what makes matters worse, a delusional Mike... We've got some fucking big issues here. It's not good. Wow. ...is unable to see the problems. Is this good enough for you? Tart onions, B. Tart onions. ...and is unwilling to accept any help. I was doing this before you were born. I'm the main cog in this restaurant. Always have been, always will be. <laughs> Sadly, Mike's daughters look on helplessly, desperate to save their father. He's suffering so much. I hate to see him like that. Jeff Ramsey is in one of the most difficult situations yet, as he battles Mike. You're fucking us over big time, and right now I've had enough. And his demons. Mike does drink quite a bit. That's tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Why are you doing this to yourself? It's the beginning of the end. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not a I'm done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. Just 10 minutes away from the Jersey Shore is the small suburban town of Oakhurst, home to the family run Mike and Nellie's. Opened in 1996, the restaurant was the lifelong dream of two men, Nellie Farber and his son Mike. I wanted to name it Nellie Mike's, but he said, no, it's Mike and Nellie's, you're the man, because he's that kind of guy. Everybody loved my father. Everybody would come in to talk to Nellie. He knew everybody's name, made everybody feel special. He was the front of the house. My dad was the back, Nellie's the front. We were a very good team. He brought in the people, and I kept them here. Everything was going great until Nellie passed away. When my grandpa and Nellie died, we didn't really know what to do anymore. It felt weird to be here. Like, it's not really Mike and Nellie's without Nellie. Now it's just kind of Mike and nothing. All right, let me go right and check. When he left this earth, I had to take over doing everything that he did. Ice cream delivery. Plus what I do, and I just become overwhelmed. Slow the shit down. I know, it's pretty bad. Since my grandpa died, the restaurant's been neglected. Hi, is there anything that I can help you with? Yeah, can you <laughs> Oh, ew, okay. The restaurant is grimy. The carpet is a mess. It's nasty, crusty, moldy. It's tragic to look around. I think they need to redo this place. People, they don't come here for atmosphere. They come here for food. And the food here, I believe, is great. Your mind is like matching. It's like there's something wrong with it, like chemicals. How's everything with your dinner? Anything you want to share with me? It's a little Sorry. bit more cooked, yeah. It's like sun. Mike's food, it's really not up to standard. Mike, do me a favor. Will you push 22, please? I got it. When I first started, Mike would never just dump the food out into the plate. Now it's like... It doesn't matter. But yet, at the same time, he thinks that this food is great. They don't like it. Well, what's the fucking reason? It just says it has no taste. Oh, really? Yeah. I've only been making franchise for 35 years. You believe this shit? The biggest problem at Mike and Nelly's isn't the decor. Honestly, the big problem is Mike. Everybody didn't go out. All right, I got it. I got it. He feels that he comes in, he has to take care of everything. Did I call for a veal capri? I got it. Give it to me, right? This is my job. He doesn't let other people take more responsibility. It's just becoming too much for him. I want to get my drink. 
since Uncle Nelson's passing. Mike does drink quite a bit. I put a beer in the freezer, a couple beers in there, these are hot. There are some nights where he's just completely hammered. Where's the two flounders? I don't know where anything is today. It starts to affect the food, and he starts to miss things on the tickets. I don't even know how many fillets I got, but you know what I'm doing, man. My dad is my hero, and it's very difficult to know that my hero is struggling and, like, gasping for air, you know? I really wish I was able to ignore the fact that this is my dad's life. I really, really hope that Chef Ramsey can help. Before Chef Ramsay arrives at Mike and Nelly's, there's a young woman anxious to fill him in on the issues of the restaurant, Mike's oldest daughter, Samantha. Thanks for helping us. Samantha, right? Yeah, hi. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for picking me up. I'm excited for you to be here. Well, I'm um, excited to be here, first time for me. Um, how have you been? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, I just, we really need help right now. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of problems at the restaurant. What's the one thing that you think is wrong with it? Ever since my grandpa died, my dad, he hasn't been able to move forward. OK. How close were they? They worked together for 18 years. My grandpa, he was the front of the house. He would host, and people would come to Mike and Ellie's only to see him. He was a great guy. He was very funny. And how's that changed over the last couple of years? He's very overwhelmed and stressed. Really? But he likes to do everything by himself. But he just can't delegate? Right, definitely a control freak. He's the boss, you know? Everywhere sure. in his life, he's the boss. So it'll be very interesting when you wow. have stuff to say to him. Wow. And I hope Chef Ramsay can get through to my dad. He needs the help, he needs the change. It's crucial for the restaurant to survive and be successful for my family. I mean, that's my whole life. Hello. Hi. How I'm are you? Mike and Ellie's. I'm Lexi. Right. Sister number two. Sister number two. Yes. Right? You are glamorous. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. Um, What's that smell? Is it just me? I don't you go smell, smell it. Go outside, take a big deep breath of fresh air and come back in. I don't know. I smell your cologne, which smells good. No. <laughs> OK, wait. Ready? Let's do it. No. What is that? No, it doesn't smell to you there. No, no I just smell just you. Just there. I just smell you. Really? Did somebody die in here last night? No. Okay. It's possible. No. Oh, Jesus. OK, what well, happened? What question is that? All right, I, follow I, me, sir. I haven't tasted the food yet. All right. I'd love to meet Dad. All right, I'll go get him. What's that smell? Can you smell something? No. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Same here, sir. Come and say hello. And you are? Lewis. Lewis, the manager. You're the manager? Yes. Yeah, good to see you. Same here. Dad? Yes, ma'am. Chef Ramsay would like to meet you. Me? Meet Why you? Why me? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he want to meet you? Follow me. I am quite nervous about Chef Ramsay's visit and how my dad's self-esteem will take it because he has a hard time taking criticism. This is good my to father, see you. Mike. Mike? I'm Mike. Pleasure. But the fact is, we need the help, and if somebody's willing to give it to us, we need to take it. Yes, I really hope that he can help Dad. How long have you been open? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, when was the last time you changed something in the dining room? Uh, never. Wow. Everything's pretty much as I bought it. Yeah. 15 years ago. And how would you rate your food, 1 to 10? I would rate my food in the upper nines. Wow. Great, I love that. Uh, I can't wait to yeah. taste it. The food is not the problem here. It's either the atmosphere, the ambience, or the service. Here's your regular menu, and here's your specials menu, sir. Does someone pee pee on my menu? <laughs> on this one. <laughs> <laughs> is, that a, is that I don't know. That's not a urine statement. I don't think so. No. I'm pretty sure it's probably coffee. OK, great. Thank you. If you need anything, I'm at the front. Oh, smell. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'll be your server tonight. Uh, good to see you. Did you smell that? Or was it just me? You smell something, right? Yes. Honestly, it's like that we buried like bodies underneath the carpet. Yes, it's most definitely the carpet. It stinks. I, the restaurant is filthy, disgusting. It's full of mold. It's worse over there. <laughs> Seriously? You're in the good part. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, steak and seafood, and we have Italian food. Uh, Ginny, what is it, fine dining restaurant or Italian? What are we? I don't know. Wow. There is no identity. OK. I'll start up with green with shrimp sauce. Okay. And let's go for chicken murphy. And then the special menu, the steak nelly. The steak nelly? Yeah. How would you like that cooked? Mid-rare. Mid-rare? Please, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I want to see where that 9 out of 10 is hitting. Only that there. Yeah, I'm moving. Mike, I have 
have Chef Ramsay's order. Here we go. Chef Ramsay will like the food here. Anything that I make him, he's gonna like. Guarantee it. Look at this place. It's Arsenal. Louis. Chef? What happened to that lampshade over there on the wall? I don't know. Fix it, it's bugging me. How are you? Nice to see you. It's driving me crazy, I'm sorry. Oh, it comes on when it goes up anyway. Sorry. Just watch your head there. That's for the chef. Make it nice. I made it, so it's right on the money. OK, chef. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Greeny with shrimp sauce. I'm greeny with shrimp sauce. Oh, dear. Wow, that's gross. Yeah, it's bland. It's just, the I mean, sauce is bland? Yeah, everything's watery and shrimps are like rubber. It's just horrible. Oh, my God. Nowhere near a nine. All right, would you like me to remove that from the Yes, table? please, I The sad part is this isn't even the worst of it. This is bland, watery. The shrimp tastes like rubber. I don't know what he's talking about. I am a perfectionist. I will never put out food unless it's right. Is this the Murphy? Yeah. Chicken Murphy. Chicken Murphy. Wow. I was afraid to serve him the chicken Murphy. It doesn't look very nice, does it? Um, it's embarrassing. It looks like a stew gone bad. That looks horrible. Okay. Where's the manager? Lewis. Is that the normal style of presentation of chicken Murphy? Sam, Lexi. Girls. And um, visually impact. Does that look appetizing to you? Could definitely use an appearance update. A little mush. Mush. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. After Nelly died, the food's been kind of going downhill. It's kind of at the point where it's necessary for someone to say something. That's gross. It's overcooked. Just wet, soggy, and just tasteless. I call it a hot mess. I call it a hot joke. I'm done, thanks, darling. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I can't afford to be up all night with the shits. Oh, excuse me. Thank God you didn't have the chicken Murphy. Bloody hell. Oof. Mike, it's just a hot mess, so... Hey, tough son of a bitch. The chef Ramsay is a ball buster, but if you have an impossible math problem, if Einstein was still alive, you'd talk to him. So we have a restaurant problem. We talk to the master. How you doing? Well, it's a good thing. It's, it's for the better. You can tell that Chef Ramsay being so critical of the food, it kind of hurt my dad a little bit, but my dad needs help. and. If this is what it takes, then this is what it takes. What's next? For the finale, it's going to be the steak Nelly. Right. Best of luck. I don't need to give him any more things to hate. I grew up cooking steaks, and I'm a master of the grill. I'm telling you, I'm good at this, man. I'm very good at this. Wow. This is the steak Nelly? Steak Nelly. Is that a steak or charcoal? No, chef. That's a piece of the steak. Wow. I feel like I've got a barbecue in my mouth. Have a taste of that. How does that taste for you? Would you give that a nine? No. No. Like you said, it is charcoal. Char That's charcoal. Mike, what he said? This tastes like it's charcoal. You didn't like that? No. I tried it. It's not the wrong one. Well, like you said, there's a little bit of uh, charcoal. There ain't no way in hell I overcooked that steak. That's something that I make that everybody loves, and I never have a complaint. Aren't you going to go out there? For what? I don't know. Shouldn't you go out there? You are the owner, so you're supposed to check on things. I hope my dad will be willing to listen to Chef Ramsay and take the criticism and acknowledge that everything isn't perfect. Sit down. Instead of just being mad. Mike, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm embarrassed. We've got some fucking big issues here. I thought the food was dated. I don't know how you control the menu that size. And then some of the things were in Edipal. The food is watery, bland, soggy. I know how to cook. Come on. The whole thing just looked an absolute fucking mess. 
mean, that last steak? Right. I mean, how do you put a dish like that together? Well, the steak itself is a prime steak, so, I mean, uh, my... I was overcooked, so I had no prime. You rated the food 9 out of 10. I wouldn't pass it above 2. That's not good enough to come back for. Nowhere near it. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, man to man, it's not true. Either you're in denial, or you don't care. Chef Ramsey said my food was outdated, and, you know, I respect him, but I believe he's wrong in this situation. I know what my customers like, and I know what I like. That's what I like. Fuck that. Nah, I don't want to give a shit. Coming up. Wow. Look at this food. Just when Chef Ramsay thought it couldn't get any worse. You are kidding me. It does. There's char and there's charcoal. I say nothing wrong with that. Mike is in denial about everything. No, I'm yeah. good at all. And later. Oh, you're kidding me. A series of disgusting discoveries. God, I was not expected to see this. Make Chef Ramsay wonder if Mike and Nelly's. Is this good enough for you? Is too far gone to be saved. What am I supposed to do now? After a lunch that left a lot to be desired, Chef Ramsay is back at Mike and Nelly's for dinner. Hi there, can I help you? And he isn't alone. Hello. Word of his arrival is spread, and the restaurant is booked solid for the evening. Free rush beer. What would you like tonight? I'm going to have the shrimp steak. I'll have the chicken scorpiello. OK. Portobello mushroom with jumbo lump. Sun-dried artichoke, Alfredo, shrimp farm. Just tell me quickly how it works, line-wise. Here's what happens, Chef. I do all the cooking, and then they'll put the food out. I don't trust my staff to get the job done like I can do it. As long as I'm making it, I know it's 100%. Yeah, I got snapper, pork, and pepper. I got penny vodka. I got chicken farm. All right. Despite the fact that most of the cooking is being done by one person. Shrimp farm, eggplant farm. Give me 14. All right. Mike manages to push out food rapidly. Shrimp farm. Not at all, baby. Shrimp friend. Pops the rev. All right, take this and go. But his quick cooking. Wow. Look at this food. Unfortunately, comes at a cost. Not good. Not yeah. good at all. There's something wrong with your bread cutlery? Bread's falling off. Let's okay. take it back. Yeah. Yeah. Let them know. Gucci. Hey guys, the fried calamari, just let you know, it was mushy, it wasn't good, they didn't enjoy it. Just give you a heads up on that. That is soggy. I taste nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. It's embarrassing. There's a man in there that is killing himself, and he's going down in flames. There's no standard set. Everything's just so chaotic. Pans have been thrown, steaks are on fire, and he's sort of totally oblivious to the kind of crap that's leaving his kitchen. It's actually quite sad. What's wrong with that? Said it's overcooked. All right. This eggplant rollatini. She says it's the worst eggplant she ever had. It's not even rolled. <laughs> Mike, let's say it was burnt. Oh, <sighs> it's hard to bring food back to Mike because Mike thinks the food is excellent. I know he's been cooking for 30 years, but the food is really not up to par. Onions are a little charcoal. Are they a little too well done for you? Oh, yeah. Let me take them away and bring some fresh ones for you. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Since Nellie's passed, the kitchen is a disaster. What's wrong now? Too well, too burnt. The food is not what it used to be. It's extremely frustrating. Mike, can I get more charred onions, but not too burnt, please? Charred onions, please. Charred onions. Mike, there's char and there's charcoal. You're absolutely correct. That's charcoal. I need a charred onion right now. On the outside, Mike is really not showing any kind of emotions, but if you look into his eyes, you see this heartbreak, this beating that he's taking internally. It's depressing. How's everything going back there? Yeah. Disaster. Disaster. Does your dad work like that every night? Yeah. And he's destroying himself. I mean, he's just absolutely nailing himself. He doesn't delegate as well as he should. Like, he's reading the ticket, and then he's getting it ready, and then he's cooking it, and then he's reading another order. And it's hard to watch, yeah. yeah. How are you supposed to run an entire restaurant, cook everybody's meal by yourself? Like, you can't do that. Hot stuff coming through. He doesn't really trust anybody else in the kitchen to help him, and it's a problem. Mike. Yes? I need to worry about that uh, refire on Penny Vodka. Hold on a minute, girlfriend. I'm going as fast as I can, baby. You all right? I want this night to be over. Here's a Penny Vodka. Take it, go. All the tickets are out. There's nothing left. All right, guys. Spirits for everybody. Go grab them, man. One for me, too, right? I'm lost a word. 
watching both of you behind the line in that kind of commotion there, it's like soldiers on the front line. In your minds, you've got it now that if you get through this battle, tonight's a success. You just want to get that food out. Do you enjoy cooking like that? I don't know if I enjoy it. It's just like what I do. But I mean, I bust my ass. I cook until we're done cooking. Working hard is one thing. Working fast and throwing food out with no care is another. No one's monitoring standards, and no one seems to care. You are running yourself into the ground. Dan, can I have a word with Yeah. Yes, sir. Will you shut the door, please? Certainly. Listen, seriously, have you been drinking? I'm having a vodka cranberry juice. I saw you drinking some beer. Uh, two beers, sir. Two sorry. beers. Two beers. That is not the way forward. You've got to get your head in the game, because the kind of mistakes that you made tonight represents a chef that doesn't seem to give a shit. I do give a shit. I do. I Listen, I drink too much, you know. But why I'm, are you doing this to yourself? I, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm like, I'm lost. I'm lost in space. Why? I don't know. Life's just getting tougher for me, man. You know? I mean, this business is failing. I owe everybody money. I got two daughters going to college. And I'm just trying to, like, make it. You know, and it's not working anymore, you know? I don't this know where to move from here. It's hard for me, you know? This is my passion. I only know how to cook. That's all I've ever done, you know, since I was 19 years old. The passion. When did that go? I don't know. After Dad passed away? Yes. Yeah. You know, since my father died, I'm starting to give up. I am. I, I can admit it to you. I'm like, I feel defeated. Is know? that why you're drinking more? Yeah, probably. You can't go down this line, Mike. You cannot go down this line. It's the beginning of the end, I'm telling you. Well, I don't know what to do next. I really don't. I'm confused. But you've got to get out of denial. And there's got to be a fire in your belly that you've got to rekindle. That's all. Yeah. OK? I'll try my best. OK, see you in the morning. Right. Good night. Good night. This restaurant is definitely taking a toll on me. Everything falls on my lap, and it's wearing me out. It's a tough life. After the death of his father, Mike has been in a downward spiral, and so has his restaurant. He has clearly lost his way. And Chef Ramsay knows that in order for this restaurant to have any chance of surviving... How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you? He has to put Mike back on course. It's quite nice getting out of the restaurants. Yeah. yeah. It almost feels like it's um, like a ticking time bomb in there. And I'm concerned, I think, really, about Dad. And I had a chat with him last night, and he was, for the first time, been open and honest. He admitted he'd lost control, and sadly, that he was on the verge of giving up. And we can't give up. And then I noticed something upsetting last night, is the amount of drink. I feel like he's trying to drown his sorrows. Yeah. Definitely. I think he's very lost right now. Everything fell on his shoulders after, after Nelly passed away, and it's just so much mm -hmm. more responsibility, and that's a lot to handle. Yeah. I don't think he got over losing his father. I don't think he's got over that hurdle. I don't think so, no. No, I mean, we were b he was back at work, you know, and there was no time off. It was, mm -hmm. he was just there. I think he's hurting. I think deep down inside, I, I don't see a happy... No, you can tell that he's hurting. <laughs> like, always. <sighs> That's awful. I mean, he's got two kids in college, and, like, what does he have to show for it? Like, he's working so much harder than he should be. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's suffering so much, and I hate to see him like that. The dad is driving himself into the ground. Yeah. And I don't know how much longer, you know, he can continue to do it. <laughs> you know, it's about time we actually turned around and said, hey, dad, I want you back. I don't want you to listen. I don't want you to slow down. He's your dad. You're his last hope. And last night, that was a cry for help. Do you think you can help him? Yeah. Of course I'm here to help. But I can't help unless he's prepared to change himself. Hello, chef. Morning, Mike. How are you? A uh, tough night last night, right? Yeah. 
quite. I came to see the girls because I think the bottom line is, Mike, you mean a lot to this family, and there's no doubt in how hard you're working, but you're not a machine. <clears throat> you're not 25, Mike. You know, you're 55. And the girls have got something to say, and I want you to listen. OK. And I'll see you back at the uh, restaurant. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you, girls. Bye. So, uh, what do you want to tell me? Like, really difficult seeing you, like, struggling this much and working so hard. Right. You have to let go a little bit and not work as hard as you are. I understand. I understand. I don't know how to let go. I don't trust anybody else. But I think that in order for you to be able to function like this, you need to let some other people take on some responsibilities. I would love to take take off and let them I know cook you for me. I know, but you don't, you don't trust, trust them enough to do it. You know you have your guard up all the time. I do. You, you, don't, you don't, like, trust anyone. So what do we need, a nicer mic? Is that what you're saying? No, we need no, a more just... open mic. OK. <laughs> so I'm willing to give a shot at change here. And you're going to open up, though, and, like, let people actually just talk to you? It's not going to be an overnight thing, but I'm willing to listen. I've been wanting to tell my dad these things for a long time already, and I really hope that he was listening because the problem with the restaurant isn't that we need a decoration change. The fact is that my dad needs to change. After spending the morning at Mike's home, Chef Ramsay is anxious to get Mike back in the kitchen. Show me the fridges. And reignite his passion with food. Well, here's the meat. The steaks go right up on the grill. Jesus, those trays not clean last night? No, time? I didn't clean them last no? night. I got out of here. They're Shit. a little messy. What's that? I don't know. That's chicken farm. That's cooked. Yeah, that's cooked. That's with raw. Uh-huh. We don't get these fridges changed at night? Sunday nights, we do a deep cleaning. So it's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday night. Yeah. Are they all kept like this? Mike, you got to cover this stuff. Seriously? What else you got going on here? Look at this. I'm getting nervous now. 30 years in the business, come on. I'm thinking, holy shit. What else is he going to find in here that is going to embarrass me? Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Chef Ramsay was looking forward to working with the chefs on fixing the food. Show me the fridge. That is until he made a series of shocking discoveries. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Mike, come on. Seriously? Why is it in here? Where's the walk-in right over here? You are kidding me. What is that? That's the lobster best. Shit. Eggplant. What's that in there? That is the calamari from last night. It was prepped yesterday. Why is it bubbled? Jesus Christ. Why is it in here? You're right, Chef. Get it out. That's contaminated. We can't leave fridges like this. I do know those things need to be changed. I tried to talk to Mike, but he won't listen to me. My food got served in that fridge last night. <laughs> Unbelievable. What's in here? That. Those are meatballs. When were they made? They were made probably last week. Last week. How do you know it's a week old? No dates. Does that make any sense? Come on, this is basic. It's just become sloppy here, and I need to start making things right. The fridge has been ignored at the end of the evening, and then food's left in the oven. Oh, come on. You're absolutely right. It's a disgrace. And discovering that, what am I supposed to do now? Where do we start? Tell me. What time are the team in? 2.30. Get them in earlier. I want that whole fucking place clean. You're better than this. Fuck me. Yo, get a ride in as quickly as possible. Chef Ramsay wants everybody here now. I believe it's time to turn this place upside down. Some things are falling through the cracks, but cracks can be filled. Everything can be fixed. Yeah, every night from now on. Right. No more fucking around. All right. Can't do what I'm doing. I'm going to have to change if I want to change my restaurant. Goodbye. Beer? I'm ready. This is where we're going to start to fix this place. With a thorough cleaning by the staff and what appears to be a change in attitude by Mike. Uh, first of all, the place is looking cleaner. Chef Ramsay can now turn his attention to the area that needs the most help, 
the kitchen. So I'm going to do two steaks, a ribeye on the bone and a filet. I've been cooking steaks for 32 years. I know how I do it, which is the right way. But maybe he can teach me something in a nice way. Not in a I'm going to kill you kind of way. <laughs> OK, onto the grill. I want to render that fat down. Cooking with Chef Ramsay is a dream come true. Uh, get a nice seat. Oh, on there, please, Daniel. With that, I'm going to do a chive mash. Just great to see how his hands move like a ballet with his fingers. I was in awe. That's a real mashed potato. No Thanks. horseradish in there? A, a touch of horseradish, well spotted. I felt super inspired by Chef Ramsay. I don't know how to put it into words right now. Asparagus and fries for the filet. Touch of creme fraiche. Perfect. I'm used to cooking like one certain way, and this is a little different. When you spend the fortune on the ingredients, I want the customers to taste them. I want it to ooze the flavor of a ribeye. Simply done. Let's have a little uh, taste, yeah? I'm feeling very, very well. I can already feel the fire burning in my gut, which is something that has not happened in a while. Uh, waiting stuff. Get some knife and forks. Dig in. Everybody's good. Oh, my gosh. It just melts in your mouth. I love the asparagus. I'm coming over. I'm so excited to see it. My dad's so happy. It seems like he really does want to change things and make things better, and I know he can really do it. Can I order this for dinner? <laughs> this is so good. Unbelievable. Coming up. Oh, oh my God. God. It's one of the most emotional makeovers in Kitchen Nightmares history. So beautiful. But later. Will the pressure of relaunch be too much for Mike? You're fucking us over big time. I have no idea what you're talking about. Right now, I've had enough. Now that Mike has finally seen the light with how his steaks can be improved... No more food to go out that we got some pride with. Perfect. Chef Ramsay is now focused on the makeover of Mike and Nelly. And he begins with something that has been driving him crazy since the day he walked into the restaurant. I need some help. OK. I've come across the most wretched carpet I've ever seen, and it is deplorable. So I need something durable, something strong, something that can take a lot of footfall. OK. Uh, that's nice. I like that one as well with the blue. Can we get this done tonight? Is that possible? Absolutely. With one major change in motion, Chef Ramsay's team is hard at work trying to accomplish one of the most difficult makeovers they have ever faced. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Chef. How are we feeling? Excited. Hi, guys. Nervous. Mike, I've never seen you look so nervous. <laughs> I'm speechless. You're yes. speechless. OK, today I am proud to unveil the new Mike and Ellis. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. One, two, three. Mike and Nelly's Steakhouse. Oh, my God, it's so nice. <laughs> Look at that. Wasn't that Mike and Nelly's steak and seafood? Well, what this community is lacking is a great steakhouse, yes? Steakhouse has been my dream my whole life long. <sighs> right now, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion, I don't even know how I'm standing here. Mike, one thing that you're going to see when you walk through that door is a new identity and a new you. I'm a new me. Let's do it. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Everybody ready? Ready. Go straight into the restaurant. Oh. Off you go. Oh Jump in. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my. oh, my God. 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 It is gorgeous. It chills everywhere. Wow. No <laughs> way. No way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Transformation. Oh. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellis. This is gorgeous. This, this is, is so great. Beautiful. This is awesome. <laughs> we walk in, see the restaurant for the first time, we see modern art, the new chairs, the new carpet. I can't get a smile off my face. It's outstanding. It's awesome. Yes, oh God. This is okay. Look at this place. Wow. Gone are those hideous arches. We've opened the restaurant up. You have a very elegant, open space. And it's stylish. Gone is the old, worn out decor and replace with a stunning, contemporary, rustic look. New carpets, wow. and that smell has gone. I want to take my shoes off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, it's incredible. Oh, my God. Unreal. I Big man, you OK? I'm totally amazed. <laughs> yeah? Oh, there you are. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm so amazed. <laughs> <laughs> my dream my whole life is to be a steakhouse. It's an absolute transformation that's beyond my wildest dreams. Janine, how are you feeling? I, we're going to be the talk of the town. Yeah. 
and Big we're gonna time. and we're gonna do you proud. We will. Trust me, you can do yourselves proud. <laughs> if Nelly was here right now, he would be so happy. He really would, and I could feel him here now. <sighs> in addition to the updated look and new identity. Oh. Come in, please. Chef Ramsay has created an elegant, flavorful possible, modern menu. Wow. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's oh menu. God, this menu is our foundation, our new start to Mike and Ellie's. Simple, delicious, and modern. Oh, fancy this look. It's incredible. Let's start off at the top of the table here. Maryland crab cakes, delicious, simple, served with a Old Bay mayonnaise, yeah? Angus sliders. Yeah, slider. Aged white cheddar, shaved lettuce, and a special sauce. The hallmark of this restaurant gonna be the steaks. I love it. Start off with the filet mignon, eight ounce, beautifully grilled. Finish with that wonderful, delectable butter. New York strip, 12 ounce, modern and beautiful and stunning. Next to that, we've got a delicious braised short rib. That's served with a red wine sauce and whipped chives potatoes. The side dishes. Look at that mac and cheese. Oh my God. How can you have a steakhouse with no mac and cheese? It's topped with some crispy breadcrumbs. Delicious. That's unbelievable. Right, guys, can you get some spoons, knife and forks? <laughs> I want you to dig in. Thank you. Yay. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Sam, trust you to go straight for the desserts. They're fantastic. Oh, my God, the filet. I'm going to get over there. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought my food was good, but the new menu is just unbelievable. Oh, my God. Mm, this is so good. You are the man, Chef Ramsay. You came in here, and you turned us completely around. This is definitely the start of something big. I see this restaurant going far. As the doors open on relaunch night. Hello, welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's. Welcome. There's excitement in the air and a buzz in the dining room. The decor is awesome now. As customers are eager to try out the new Mike and Ellie's Steakhouse. Back in the kitchen. Here we go, guys, yes. Chef Ramsay wants the workload divided, with Mike doing less and Dan doing more. Daniel, I'm trying to get him to break away. You are the future, so show it to me and show it to him. Yes, chef. Good. Mike, focus on the grill. Okay. I'm wanting Daniel running this and coordinate the kitchen tonight. I hope Mike will back off a little and let me come in and help him out. I'm very capable of taking over. The most important thing is that everything goes out perfect. I'm hoping that Dan can handle the rush. I've been trying to find a chef for the last 15 years that can do what I do. This is nerve-wracking shit here. Here we go. First ticket. Order in. One strip mid-well, one strip medium. I want to hear an echo. A callback. I got two strips, medium well and medium. Thank you, buddy. So far, Chef Ramsay's plan is working. Mike gets the first steaks on the grill. Wipe the plate down, please. Make it look pretty. Come on. Dan gets the kitchen in sink. Crab cakes up in the window. Useful. Let's go. And customers are receiving their appetizers. This is really good. It's like heaven. That is spectacular. And the reviews are glowing. Next entree, short ribs, strip mid-rare. One ribeye mid-rare and a french fry. Where are those fries? Coming right now, baby. 25 seconds. 25 seconds, all right. I'm feeling great. Everybody is working together as a team. We're going to be firing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. But only one hour into service, Mike is no longer working in tandem with Dan. Order a tomato, a Caesar, a crab cake. That's the one I just called for that's going out. And instead of allowing Dan to organize, Mike is now confusing the kitchen. Stop, take a step back, and regroup. Let's go. Next ticket to strip medium, filet medium. All right, let's start putting these steaks up. We've just stopped listening to each other. I'm the main cog in this restaurant. I always have been, always will be. Dan, I was doing this before you were born. Mike, you can't slip into these old ways. Killing me here, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Mike's not listening to what Chef Ramsay is saying. We've all forgotten what the fuck we're doing in here. Everything is falling apart. Everything is going to shit. Mike, just let me do this. Come on, guys. You know what? Slow the shit down. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. You're fucking us over big time. And right now, I'm having enough. It's only an hour into relaunch at Mike and Nelly's. We're going to be firing a hold steak. On, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. Mike has slipped back into his old ways and is refusing to share the leadership of the kitchen with Dan. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. And a successful relaunch is in jeopardy. I need you running this and coordinate the kitchen properly. And I want you to be behind him, yes? Yes, sir. All right, let's pick up one strip medium. Pick it up a ribeye. Shrimp, chicken, and ribeye. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing you. You're confirming to me you're not lifting one little bit. I know it's hard, but it's not fucking difficult. It will be if you don't listen. Get them working for you. Uh -huh. I need Daniel now to start firing these orders. Right, I got you. Come on. 
You can do this. This restaurant is not all about me. I need help to run it, and Dan's the man to do it. Order in. Drip. Filet medium, ribeye medium. Excellent, let's go. Next up, two skirt, one rare, one mid-rare. I got it, Daniel. Rare's going on, it'll be two minutes. With Dan regaining control of the tickets. Dan, yeah, tell me again what's going on right now. Filet medium cod. Filet medium and a cod, got it. The kitchen has found a proper rhythm. Medium well on the right, chef. Mike. Yes, sir. Our steaks look fantastic. I got it, baby. My table loved all their steaks. Thank you. I got zero complaints about the food tonight. Everything was amazing. Steaks rested? Yes, they are. Put it out, baby. Dan was really into his job tonight and really took a lot of pressure off of me. Like the way it looks in here? The food will be out in plenty of time and you'll love it. It was very rewarding walking around out there. Good. Nice to see it. I felt my father's spirit here watching over me and everybody, and it felt wonderful. How you doing, Daddy? Ah, I can't get the smile off my face. My dad completely turned it around. It's great to see him. So happy. Mike, how was the dining room? I'm good, bro. Everybody looks happy and smiling. Keep it that way. All right, brother. Board is clear. Chef Ramsey showed my staff that they need to support what I do. Everybody did great. I think this is going to be the most successful place around here. Well, let me tell you something. When I first arrived, your head was in the grill, stubborn, wouldn't come out. You've transformed and worked with me. Thank you. In there right now is the spirit of Nelly. I agree. And for me, that is enough to confirm that you can do it. I believe in you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for everything. We appreciate Here's... everything you did and oh, more. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and honor Likewise. working with you. Likewise. It's good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Keep it going. Yes, well done. Chef Ramsey inspired me. I was ready to close this place up. So we got through it, we persevered. And now I'm going to rock this place. I'm going to rock this town. Come here. Yeah. My father, Nelson, would be crying right now, overwhelmed by joy. I know he's watching. Patty, thank you. I hope you're proud of me. Good job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, look after him, will you? Will do. Thank you for everything. Thanks okay. so much again. Get that spirit in there. Well done. When I first arrived at Mike and Ellie's, this had to be the most depressing restaurant in America, from the food to the decor, even to the owner. But tonight, with the help of a guardian angel named Nelly, a miracle happened, because this restaurant has become the hottest steakhouse in the whole of New Jersey. I just hope it will continue along those lines. That carpet, I've never smelled anything so disgusting in all my fucking life. I'm sure there's bodies under there. In the weeks that followed, business in Mike and Nelly's boomed. It's amazing. Clearly, the new menu is a big hit in this New Jersey town. I will be back for this one. Look at this menu, my God. This is a classic steakhouse menu. My customers love it. Outstanding. This is the whole turnaround I've been waiting for. Order in. Dan has been outstanding in his new role in the kitchen. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Do we have those strips mid well? Coming right now, baby. And Mike? is embracing the change. Wow. I got to right see the menu. Allowing him to spend more time with his diners. It was excellent. Thank you. And now he's following in the footsteps of his father. I love you, brother. I love you, too. And there is nobody happier than his two daughters, Samantha and Lexi. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon visits Southern California's Orange County to help an embattled Italian restaurant called Luigi's. But why the fuck you gotta answer back? With two brothers who can't stand to be around each other. Get the fuck out of here! And a wife no one can stand to be around. No! I didn't say that! The fighting at Luigi's is constant. Okay, sucks! Go! And even the customers aren't spared. Fuck you! It's the most dysfunctional family restaurant you lie. Chef Ramsay has ever encountered. Say that to can he save this family from ruining the restaurant? I'm feeling so bad. Or is the situation impossible to fix? We are losing the business. Because of him! Because of him! You won't believe what happens on the most intense kitchen nightmares ever. <laughs> what is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. Thank you. I just can't thank you enough. Anaheim, California, the most populated city in Southern California's famed Orange County.
home to a family-run restaurant named Luigi's the Italia. It was opened in 1981 by a promising young chef with a dream, Luigi Catazzone. My dream was to always own a restaurant, and my dream did come true. When my father took a loan on his house, and we uh, opened this small restaurant. And with the aid of his father, Dominic, Luigi was able to make the restaurant successful for many years. Luigi's is definitely an Anaheim staple. It was our favorite place to go. Whenever I used to come here as a kid, it was just a really, really great atmosphere. In 1999, Dominic retired to Italy and brought in his other son, Tony, to help Luigi run the restaurant. Tony and Luigi have totally different ways of running the restaurant. There's like two different sets of standards. Tony, we got a half a calamari prime mozzarella ready. Tony is a little bit lazy, taking shortcuts. Tony! Whenever Luigi's here, Luigi wants to be more hands-on. There's more yelling and screaming. You're interfering with my cooking. Get the fuck out of here. I don't agree with the way he runs it and the way he does it. We start pointing fingers at each other and we fight. There's a thing called professionalism, man, and that's not professional. You can't lose it like that. We can work hard. Tony's in his ass all the time. They don't do shit. I get pissed off a lot of times because Tony's got to take a more serious the job. You kill him. I'm going to proceed to yell and say, you know what? It's not, it's not fair. You brother, to carry you. What are you brother? You be this way. You be homeless. Yo, you do this to me. I feel like I'm being pushed to the limit. Luigi's yelling, Grace is yelling. I'm trying to keep my sanity here. There's too much yelling going on. I, I, I got a headache. There is a lot of drama that goes on here. That's a ball of shit. Everything no good. Everything no good. The arguments and the stress of the restaurant, it does spill over to the dining room a lot. Answer this question. Answer. Diners don't want to go to, to this restaurant or any restaurant to get yelled at. What did you come in for for? Complain or what? Luigi, Tony, Grace, they just can't seem to work together. So I like can't go yelling at people like that. It's wrong. Oh, yeah. baloney. They like... complain about everything on the dish. They're neighbors. They come over here. You guys are treating them like crap. They don't know nothing about food. It's tearing the family apart. The way the restaurant is going, it's going to go broke in a month. We're in debt total a million and a half dollars. I don't know if we're going to make it. We're going to see what we're going to do. It's too much stress. If I had to close the doors, I would feel like I failed my father and everything that we worked for together. I would lose everything that I've worked for all my life. I don't know if tomorrow I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to pay my bills. The world's gone viral today, and a restaurant's reputation can live or die in seconds on the internet. So I'm here in Anaheim visiting Luigi's restaurant, and I'm going to check out their website. Uh, wow, uh, this one looks good. Um, a young, very talented, 22-year-old chef. Oh, look at that. Clearly, a youthful maestro. Well, that's encouraging. I can't wait to see what's on the inside. Um, great start. 22. Wow. Hi. Morning. Hey, how are you? Hi, welcome to Luigi's. Good Joe. to see you. Joe, good to see you, buddy. Gordon. Hi, nice meeting you. And your position is? I'm a waiter. Excellent. And you've got a bit of a uh, hot chef in there. Yes, definitely. Uh, could you go and get him, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Wow, look at this place. Luigi's d'Italia. Mmm. Oh, hello, Chef Ramsey. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Gordon, good to see you. Um, hold on a minute. You're not 22. I'm 51. You're 51? I'm reading the latest report on your website, a youthful maestro, 22 years of age in the kitchen. Do you have a son in there? No, it must be a mistake. Yeah, this was written in 1981. 1981? Oh, I have recent reviews too. What, like 1984? No, 1991. Uh, 1991? Anyway, yeah. if the food was that good back in 1981, how is it today? I think it's better now. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. I have a following for 30 years, and what I do, I am the best there is. But there's some things that can be changed. A youthful 22-year-old. I don't like the website. Uh, who else is running the restaurant? My brother, uh, Antonio. Wow, Tony. that's encouraging. 
Very encouraging, in terms of a proper family-run restaurant. I have my wife, Tony, wow. and uh, okay, great. My, my children. Let's have a little catch-up with the family, shall we? OK. Yeah, are they all here? Yeah, they're all Love here. Love to meet they're them. Bring them out. Someplace. This is my lovely wife, Grace. Hi, nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Where are you from? Italy. This is your wife? Uh, yes. Is, wow, you did well. And this is? Dominica, the daughter. OK, wonderful. And this is? My I'm Linda. -law, my brother's wife. That's my husband, Antonio. Antonio. How are you? No, very good, Don. Uh, Pleasure Antonio, to meet you. Tony, what would you like to be called? No, I go by Tony. Tony. OK, Thank great. Uh, let's sit down and let's have a catch up, shall we? I'm glad that Chef Ramsay is here to help us because uh, this is a family restaurant and we shouldn't be a split family restaurant. First of all, I'm here to help. And I can't help unless I know what's with wrong. What's wrong with the restaurant? We had a, a phenomenal leader. At and the leader was my father, he was in the front. Him and I were always on the same page. And where's your father now, where is he? He's in Italy, retired. So, no one's actually ever stepped into your father's shoes? Well, I have, but I think what has happened is no one has any uh, idea what is needed in this restaurant. We're in a position to lose everything. So who runs it now? I'm the, I'm the guy in charge right now. Well, no, You're, on... The way we run it is on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I run the place. And then on uh, Thursday nights through Sunday nights, uh, they run the place. Wow, it's crazy. How does a family restaurant not run as a family? They don't get along. Because you don't belong in this restaurant. It's a trauma. Yeah. When you have laziness, it's an infection. What happens is when Tony is here and Linda is here, they have no understanding that number one is the customer. No sitting around. No looking at the TV. Watching TV when customers come? Is that true? I don't, I don't think it's true. Tony, he don't care about the customer. He was sitting and played the computer. I care about this restaurant. No, I don't think so. He had the computer here. He talk with the computer. Come on. Complaints are that people feel neglected. Yeah, but there's also complaints like, I don't want to come there when she's there. Customers don't want to come when you're working. What's all that about? I don't know. It's I mean, a... I'm just asking. Listen, I'm... I... She's got people that she kisses ass to and they love her. She's got other people that she gets bl blunt in her face and hate her. Is it right to just basically go up to the customer and just say, fuck know. you, get the fuck out of here? No! I don't say that! I don't say fuck you! Don't tell me this about shit, OK? Say that to that's what you said. No, I didn't say fuck you. This is uh, what happened. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did right. What did you do? I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I mean, I, I wasn't here. Did she say fuck you? Did she not say fuck you? I thought right. she did. Oh, I didn't hear fuck you, no. Oh, yeah, she did. What, not. what did you hear? I didn't say that. She said that to you. You no, forget. No, she got it. What into... did you let her forget for? You gotta be honest. I'm being you honest. Do to help you or not? I'm trying to get him to well, help. Well, that's me the way it is. I am. No, you're not. You're lying. I'm not lying. You guys yeah, are lying. Said, I think she fucked you. You think so? She did. Okay, I she did what? say fuck no, you. That's fucking wrong. That's all. We are losing the business. You understand? Because of his. No, you see, that's why we don't get along. Within minutes of meeting the family, Chef Ramsay got a quick sample of one of the restaurant's biggest problems. We are losing the business. Because of him! Because of him! No, see, that's why we don't get along. Follow me. Thank you. You're welcome. Now he's hoping that the food of Luigi's is as good as Luigi says it is. Uh, wow. I'm going to have a good look at the menu. The menu's huge, right? The menu is huge. The last I counted, there was 126 things on there. <sighs> OK, great. Right, let's start off with, oh, fried ravioli. Love them. OK. Do you know what? What about the linguine escatori? OK. What is the catch of the day? Yes, uh, mahi mahi. Let's do that. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Decor's hideous. It's stuck in a time warp. Takes me back to 1981. Okay, I have a fried ravioli for Chef Ramsay. Fried ravioli for the chef. My food is the best food that's possibly made. But the problem with the restaurant is that we're fighting so much. Fried ravioli. Okay. Fried ravioli. What's inside the ravioli, please? Uh, it's a five cheese stuffed ravioli. And the five cheeses are? Uh, I'm not sure. Well. Wow. It's a pre-made ravioli. So they're not homemade? They're, those are not homemade. If we don't even make them here, it'd be nice to know what's inside them. I'll find out right now for you. Thank you. How's it going? 
I need to find out what cheeses are in the ravioli. What cheeses are in the ravioli? Yeah. yeah. What kind of cheese is in the bread of ravioli? Read the box. It's a ricotta cheese, Joe. It's a ricotta cheese. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, horrible. There's something deep, fried, frozen. It doesn't even taste like cheese. Jesus, no. You got a whole uh, whey, and you got American grana. And uh, a skim cheese. Yeah. OK, perfect. You got it? Thank you, yes. Yeah, not good. Franzi, I checked on the cheeses for you. Uh, mascarpone. Mascarpone. Ricotta. Ricotta. Uh, also, uh, American guarana, something called a uh, cheese whey and culture blend. Where the fuck is that from in Italy? I don't. I have no idea where that's from. Ooh. And a uh, skimmed cheese. Skimmed cheese in a fried ravioli. What does that mean? It's fat-free cheese dipped in fat. Dipped in fat, yeah. OK, thank you. OK. Skimmed cheese in a fried ravioli. Oh. Some yeah, it looks good. Hey, uh, Joe. My, my. Here, I'll yeah. bring it out, tell him. Oh, damn. Oh, chef, this is the fish special. It's the mahi mahi. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Mm, it's mush. Bland, greasy, no seasoning. Fish is dreadful. Um, this is a special fish. Yes, that is a special fish. Mm, it'll taste for you. It tastes like mush. Almost like it's sort of old. The food just isn't the way it used to be. With all the fighting going on, the standards and the quality, everything, it tanked. And that's special. Holy crap. OK. Uh, he said that this one right here, where the fish was just dreadful. It's all right. I'm still hungry anyway. I absolutely think he's wrong about the mahi-mahi. And I thought it was perfectly fine. It was just the way it's supposed to be. That's from the mouth of a chef that knows I taste know, probably know. more, OK? That guy's up here, and I'm down here. What do I know if he cooks it good or not? That's his opinion. I don't want you to feel bad, because he... I don't feel bad. Right. I know. I'm right, waiting fine. for his opinion. What the hell? Chef Ramsey is here to help us. And my brother takes this attitude that it's all bullshit complaints. It's not. You got to listen to those complaints and keep your mouth shut. So everything is atrocious, Chef. Are you tasting the food? Yeah. I you are, yeah? The fish was cooked uh, properly. It was fresh. Yeah, so it's mush. It's excellent for me. OK, let me finish this. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need a guy to tell me that my food sucks. If you don't like the food, then get the fuck out of here. The linguine pescatore. Yeah. What the hell is that? What have they done to the calamari? What have they done to these bits? More tentacles here than there are in SeaWorld. That tastes as bad as it looks. Mussels of the clams were grainy, and calamari had a weird texture to it. Chef, how are you doing with the pescatori? I'm struggling. Struggling? I'm struggling, yeah. I mean, I certainly don't get that taste of Italy, let me tell you that. And the no. sauce is so weak, and it tastes disgusting. Um, are we done? Yes. You can't make everyone happy in life. That's why we need a help. Do this shit. I don't kiss anybody's ass. Take me into the kitchen. I haven't had anyone come into my restaurant and say, Luigi, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Not even Chef Ramsay gets to do that. I'm frustrated. I wish I could say that was an enjoyable lunch. The deep fried ravioli with skinny cheese. Why did you put that shit on the menu? To give it to the Americans. Come on. Come no, on, I'm, I'm not <laughs> laughing now. The fish special, that was overcooked and it was bland. That was a, that was a perfect day. You're not telling me that. Come on. It was like cat food. Linguini, pescatore. That one there is the best dish on the menu. It was my signature dish when I opened the restaurant. I'll stick by my food. I've been sticking for, for 30 years. I have no problem. Yeah, that's the problem there. You've been doing the exact same food for 30 years. I haven't had a challenge in 30 years. No one's ever challenged me. You're the first one. Listen, you've lost your sparkle. I don't believe this is the same man that was the young maestro that was written about 30 years ago. Come on. There's something missing. I don't know what it is. 
on the back of the fragmented relationship you've got with your brother, but the heart's gone. There's got to be some magic somewhere inside that was once there, but I need it back. He can't tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm doing in my kitchen. I've been doing it for 30 years. After being truly disappointed with Luigi's dishes and his attitude at lunch, okay, Chef good. Ramsay is hoping right. to see something positive during dinner service. Well, welcome to Luigi's. What can I get for you? I'm going to have the ravioli, the fettuccine della cotta. I'll be right back. Get your appetizer started, OK? Uh, where's Tony? Give me your number so we play some golf. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing. Uh, Maybe Saturday morning, yeah. Tony is more like easygoing. You not know, take a serious the business job. There's only seven years between you and Luigi. How come you haven't got gray hair and he's got all the gray hair? I try to relax more. He's a stressful guy. You see what happens. You, but you don't look like a guy that carries pressure. I try not to. That's a major family problem. You have to change. Been in a solo pene with sausages. I'm going to show Chef Ramsay that my kitchen runs like a machine, like a smooth machine. And the food is just coming uh, out at a thousand mile an hour. Not one chef is tasting anything. The food always gets thrown out like that? The, uh, the kitchen really pumps food, yeah. They're, they're fast. Fast and dangerous. While food may be going up to diners with lightning speed. The sauce is kind of watery. What's wrong with that? They said he doesn't like the sauce on the gnocchi. It's also Thank coming you. back just as quickly. Oh, no. What's wrong with that now? They didn't like the flavor of the meatballs. They're solid. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and dry as fuck. And Luigi is not taking the returns very well. The lady uh, wanted the gnocchis to be more like fluffy, like light. Lighter than that, I mean, why don't we put feathers on them? We've been making gnocchis for 30 years, that's the way it is. Oh my god, it's getting worse. I'm falling asleep, I don't have any garlic, I don't have any mushrooms. Luigi back in the kitchen, it's kind of scary because we never know if he's gonna snap and yell at us for something. Well, why the fuck is that answer back and you don't get the mushrooms? That's all, like I it's told you. Okay, put them over there. That's it. That's that. all you gotta do is put the fucking job over there because they do the work. That's okay. Everything's okay. No worry about it. No worry about it. Nothing happened. Wow. Cuss will pay extra for that. You've worked before two people and you make it and you can't make it now with three. Just let it go. Matcha. Oh no. What's wrong with that now? Uh there's a two chewy. Two chewy. Two. Yeah. Nobody tastes anything before it goes out? I didn't taste this one. One complaint screws up my whole kitchen. It slows everything down. That's the way it is. One. And I have all the complaints at one time. What's wrong with you? What, what, oh, what, 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 what complaints? Chef. You know better than me. If you were a chef, yeah, I know. what disrupts your kitchen but you most seem to... What disrupts your kitchen most of all? Sure. What it, does? The arrogance. The complaint. The arrogance. The complaint, but the it's not true. Arrogance of the also, chef. Yes. The and arrogant. Was... You're an arrogant chef just like me. Worse than me. Why are you shouting at me? I'm not shouting at you. You're not shouting That's at me, right. then you're a little bit crazy. I'm a little crazy. Because you are shouting. I'm always crazy. Why don't you come here and tell me how it's done, Chef? You do it. No, you know better than me. It's just halfway into dinner service. Why don't you come here and tell me how it's done, Chef? You do it. No, you know better than me. But after a series of complaints, Luigi has had enough. That's it. No, he's not gone. He's gone. We well, walked off the line. He's not gone. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go back and find. And you gotta understand what he's trying to do here, man. He, he's he, he's not. The guy is what he is, and he's fucking asshole English bastard is what he is. All right. Yeah. But he's being honest with us. Not being honest with us. It's yeah, he is. Bullshit. No, it's not a bunch yeah, of bullshit, yeah, man. Bro. This restaurant is it's both our restaurants, so I want to patch things up. I want to get along with him. He's my brother. I want the best for him. I think you gotta go back in there and finish this fucking night off, man. And don't have no but don't back down from the motherfucker, man. I'm not backing down. I'm just taking but don't, a break. But don't all right, you're just I'm taking, taking a break. break. I'm too hot. Man. All right. Underneath. The best Italian food west of Italy? Yeah. It's still the best food west of Italy. You put your food against mine anytime you want. Really? I have worked with more chefs than you can imagine in the past. The way you performed tonight did not tell me 
That is the man that's in control of his kitchen. And when I come out and read that shit, I'm pissed off for you and your customers. It's 2011. Unfortunately, Luigi, no one's fucking told you. That's my opinion tonight's service. Oh, what the fuck are we supposed to do, man? Jeff, all I got to say is I need your help. And we, we should, we should help wake up. We get yep. There's something quite remarkable about how hard you work. But I want you working fucking smarter, not harder. When you come down and come back to 2011, you got me. World famous Italian family restaurant. Fuck me. After discovering how dysfunctional Luigi's really is. Good morning. Good morning, Chef. How are you? Good. Good. Chef Ramsey yeah, knows the you? brothers you? and their wives need a wake up call. And he knows okay. just how to do that. So, when was the last time you had a meeting? Uh, well, a meeting with all the staff. Never. Five years? Never. Never, never. 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 Oh. Wow. Four of you need one voice put across to all of your staff. Come through to the kitchen. Come with me. I want you to watch something very, very interesting. Just stay here. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Wow. Ever. Morning. Come in, come in, come in. Good morning. Take a, uh, take a seat, please. OK. I asked you here this morning because I've never seen a restaurant operate the way this one does. And I can't start to fix anything unless I know what the problems are. I'm just going to be honest. When you go back to the, to the kitchen and tell Tony Garcia Lau, yeah. or Luis or whoever, the client is complaining about this, you get a big fight. If the it's people great. tell you they don't like it, you can't have Luigi. What do you mean they don't like it? What's wrong with it? Sorry, I know it's your food, your recipe, and that must be kind of tough to like take criticism, but you're gonna have to like bend your will a little bit to what the customer yeah. wants. Somebody right. needs to taste the food before it comes out. We should be checking the, the quality of the food in the bag two years ago, three years ago. It's been declining in your mind for yes, the last two years. Absolutely. I get stressed out when I come to work. Why? It's just the atmosphere, the complete vibe that we get, the disorganization that we have. There's no structure, there's That's no... Right. It comes from the top. There's a top. We're not organized at all. How fragmented is it? It's just like Grace and Luigi versus my mom and Tony. It's very separate. The conflict with these two families, the clients can feel it. And who wants to go to a place where the atmosphere is not the most pleasant? So the conflict with the family is spilling into the dining room? Yes, sir. Do you, do you agree? Absolutely. The yelling and screaming. And who's yelling primarily? Who is it? Easily, I think the biggest yeller is Grace. I never know if I'm going to walk in and she's going to be smiling, or someone else will frown on her face and start yelling at completely. She's very unpredictable. Very unpredictable, right. yeah. Can I get out of here? Just, just, I don't yeah. want to hear this. Yeah. They're, they're saying they what they're saying. You didn't have to let other people talk. Who are they lying? She gets, like, really mad and starts telling you things that, first of all, they're embarrassing for our customers, and second of all, they're not professional. That's destroying everyone's confidence. I feel this big. This well, is all a lie, 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 oh, lie, There's lie, a lot of things that are not said. I know you get offended, but that's OK. You're looking at truth. Lilia, well, look what she said. Has anyone sat down and spoke to her? I'm just afraid to say anything to her, because I don't know if she's going to yell at me. Could she not take criticism? No. She can't take criticism? No, she can't. Nothing. No, no criticism whatsoever. Come this on. Is, this is all they have to say. I don't want to hear anymore. And if she does change her mind, She'll say that she didn't change it, that she's always thought that. It's crazy. OK. Uh, just stay here for a second, one moment, right. please. I don't care anymore. I don't, know. I don't care about the restaurant. What? I feel like everybody gets me. They talk nice in front of you, they step into your back. Well, I got to work here. I want to just quit. I don't, I don't think I want to be here anymore. I feel so bad. What's the matter? Nothing. Talk to me. No, I can't talk. I just want to quit. That's it. 
I want to leave. I don't want to be no, all in the distance. No, no, no. I, no, I hear no. people talking bad about me, but I can take care of them. They want to care of more than the rest of the land. I work here. Grace, and I yell Grace, with Grace, no, Grace. I, no, 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 I can't take it anymore. Come here. 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 Chef Ramsey has I, arranged a way for the owners might, to hear how the staff feels about their behavior. I just want to quit and say, I want to leave, I don't want to be no, all in the distance. No, no, no. And it's all too much for Grace to handle. I can't take it anymore. Grace, 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 listen to me, listen to me. Grace, I'm sorry. Grace, I'm sorry. Grace, I'm sorry. Grace, I'm sorry. No, that's enough fear. Grace, they are here for you. No, they yes, came they, to me. No, they talk about me. No, yeah, that's not no. true. They're liars. No, no, no. Grace, that is the feeling of your team and they are here for you and you have to listen to them. We cannot start to fix this restaurant unless we fix each other first. So I'm sorry you feel it's upset, but that's the first time you've seen the way you affect them. But let's just stay calm and let's go and have a meeting together and talk as a family. Okay? okay? All right, thank you. Let's go. I think Grace needed to hear all these criticisms. She still is a little bit in denial of the way that she is and how it intimidates other people. I think eventually she will come through, but uh, it's going to be hard for her. You take a seat, just a big deep breath. The owners were listening. The minute I walked in here, I could feel the level of intensity. It was, it, it was depressing. Nobody was being honest with each other. And if we continue to fall along these lines and remain broken, this restaurant's going to close. And whether you like it or not, you're all tied together. And if we can't work and communicate together as a family, then you shouldn't be in business. Because it's unfair. It's unfair. Yeah. One thing we are going to do from this day on is work together. Can everyone agree on that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Past is past, OK? See, look, that smile. I was kind of already almost to give up. I know the truth hurt, but I know it can help us. I know it can get better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After an emotional breakthrough as a result of the staff meeting. After you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Chef Ramsay has an idea on how to get the family working together again. When you think of Italy, you think of spicy sausage. Yes. Yes. When was the last time we made a spicy sausage? When I was a younger girl, yeah. Uh, you used to make sausage with your parents? Uh, oh, yeah. Always. Oh, really? Yeah. I was 10 years old when I started to make a sausage with my parents. Whereabouts in Calabria? Calabria. I feel like I'm, I'm back a young girl. <laughs> OK, so tonight we'll make a brand new, delicious Luigi sausage. And I'll start off slowly grinding. How big do you like your sausage? I think, I don't know, like a dog, one. Mm. They make me hungry. My job was to stuff the sausage. I love it. <laughs> and you know, in Italy, the sausage brings the family together. It's a nice feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. So when was the last time we all spent time in the kitchen together? When was that? Never. Never? All of our body. Wow. This piece that we are trying to get to right now is long overdue. When my father was here, we were a happy, happy place. It's been too many years and too many frustrations going on. I want you two, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, to make the rest of them. Luigi and I are going to go and cook, OK? All right. Nice. Just to see, like, Tony and, uh, and Grace working together, making sausage, give me a little bit of hope. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Making me feel younger. It's very fun. OK. Sausage is in. For the sauce, I'm going to make it like some nice, sort of rich, Ragu. Mm. Fresh. Fresh like you, huh, Chef? Oh, yes. Working next to Chef Ramsey is a great, great, great opportunity. The way that he works and the passion that he has, it makes me uh, 
me a lighter fire and say, why can I do that? Like I used to think in the old days. I would love to be in the kitchen here when you were 22, you know that? Yeah, it would have been fun. Can you imagine? And I started to realize I still have the passion. Right, are you ready? I'm ready. You're done, out of 21st century. Let's have a little taste. Simple, fresh, Italian fare. Jump in. Oh, man, that's awesome. Me and Grace worked hard on those sausages. I, I feel as though it's just a first little baby step, and I can do better. I, I want to do better. Good job, my gosh, unbelievable. They're very good at it. Oh, my gosh, too good. Now that Chef Ramsay has seen a glimmer of hope with the family working together, Luigi, we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. He has one more surprise in store to make sure Tony and Luigi stay united. I want all of you right now to watch something. Listen. Good night. How was that Luigi Tony? It's a day you father. It's been five years since I've seen my father. I miss him, I love him. I wish I was close to him. I want both of you to remember how far we work to raise your boat and to bring you in this business. Don't forget that beautiful time we had together. Hard work, but we got a good. me of the past, remind me of where we came from and how we started and why we started this kind of business, you know, why we were in it. It puts it back in perspective. Well, we gotta dig deep and we make this place do what it needs to be able to do. Whatever it takes. We'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll see a new Luigi. I guarantee it. After arranging for an emotional message from Luigi and Tony's father, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to bring a little piece of Italy to Luigi's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we start off with a new attitude, a new restaurant, and a new beginning. Are you ready to see the new Luigi's? Ready. Yes. yes. <sighs> On the count of three. One. Two, three. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Welcome to the new Luigi's. No, no way. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, my, oh, my God. God. Everything has been themed as if we're on this amazing trip to Italy. It's appealing, it's vibrant, and it's got that rustic Italian charm. Beautiful. Gone is the clutter. Gone are those horrible booths. Now we have this wonderful, nice, family-style bonquet seating. Look at the tables. Underneath, we've got the Luigi stamp of approval. Beautiful. Yes. Oh, Beautiful. my God. Even the napkins have got your stamp on there. Grace, what do you think? Unbelievable. Spend Unbelievable. Wow. I remember now how it was with my dad and how hard we worked to get this restaurant started. Luigi, you're going quiet. I get nervous when you're quiet. Oh, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, you're... <laughs> you're giving back. Thank you, Chef. Thank you so Listen. much. Listen, I hope you're that you are re-energized. You are the best. Come on, you're and the you... best. Oh. oh, I didn't know you covered. I didn't know you gave them out. I know, you're the best. This is just a dream. I'm dreaming. I'm asleep. It's unbelievable. It's a new Luigi's. I don't need to give another house. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You happy? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. <laughs> Make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. After giving the restaurant a much needed makeover, Chef Ramsay has also given the menu a dramatic makeover as well. Welcome to the new menu. It's fresh, it's seasonal, and it's exciting. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow, yum. What have we done? We simplified it and made it manageable and delicious. Okay, 
Let's start off with the appetizers. A lovely bowl of seasonal minestrone with a fresh pesto pasta dishes down the bottom, yes? Linguine al clam, delicious. And then finally, baked salmon for a light take on supper. When are we yes. going to start to eat? Let me finish, please. I'm sorry. Is she always like this? Always. No, no, I'm a kid, I'm a kid. I was joking. One thing you do deserve, Luigi, yeah, <laughs> is a medal for being married to Grace. <laughs> <laughs> OK, get some knife and forks, jump in, get tasting. Mangiare, mangiare. Oh, wow. It's really good. Mm. So good. The short rib is awesome. Short ribs are good. It reminds me of something mom used to make. The new menu is amazing. I love it. I think this is a slice of authentic Italy in Anaheim. Lasagna is excellent, really good. We have the restaurant that looks like a modern place. We have a new menu. Everybody is smiling, everybody's happy again. I really feel fantastic. Everything is excellent. I'll be proud to serve this food. Welcome to the new Luigi's. It's relaunch night at Luigi's. We are serving the new menu. So would you like to start off with the appetizers? Calamari. Can I try calamari? And for the first time in a long time, there's positive energy in the You're restaurant. Welcome. Luigi cooks. Tony, new expedite. Right, 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 chef. Let's get those first orders in, please. I don't want Luigi panicking. I'm going to get spaghetti and meatballs. Homemade sausage. I want the calamari. I'll get them. Here we go. So, order in. First one. Ordering one order fried calamari, one linguine pescatora. Chef Ramsay has lit up another fire within me that it's going to burn for a long time. Okay, let's go, let's go, guys. Luigi, lovely. Much better like that. Pescatora. Order up. Calamari? Bruschetta. So good. With Luigi producing stunning dishes in the kitchen, diners are thrilled with Chef Ramsay's new menu. That's delicious. And the kitchen is having no trouble keeping up with the demand. Pescatora, pescatora. Go, oh, they're gonna pick up, pick up. Where's Tony? Tony, Tony. Tony. All right, I'll be right there. Look at oh, this God. fucking food. Go to be the city here forever. Let's go. While food is getting to the hot plate in a timely manner, so I don't know where any of this food goes. Tony and Luigi have stopped coordinating. <laughs> and the log jam in the kitchen is not sitting well with diners. Where's Tony? I need my brother to come in and give me some help. I get frustrated and I get mad. I want to kill the guy. Tony, what's going on? Let's go, let's pick up the pace. It's relaunch night, and while the kitchen continues to produce food... Tony, what's going on? Let's pick up the pace. All right, I'll be right there. A lack of communication between the brothers has resulted in food sitting on the pass and not at diners' tables. It's getting cold. Tony, service, please. Let's go. Luigi, you have to keep this together. If you start screaming, I'll kick you out. If I lose my crew again in front of the customers, it's definitely going to cost my business. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got to learn to take a deep breath and get it back together. Tony, look at me. Look at, look at me now. We're producing unique food, and it's dying. He's cooking. You can't stand there like a lemon. You've got to help him a little bit. We can't cook like this and let the food die in the window. I need you expediting. Talk to each other. Start pushing the food out. Let's go. I'm going to need a fried calamari on that one. One calamari. Hey, Domenica, Domenica, take this to right here at table 41. Now it sounds like a kitchen. We got some voices in there. I, I still need one more pescatore. With Tony now concentrating on expediting. What else we got? Baked salmon and a chicken parm. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Luigi is free to focus on the quality and the consistency of the food. All right, bon appetit, enjoy. Oh, he made it for you. Thank you, thank you. We have a fettuccine Alfredo. And diners are once again enjoying the new Luigi's. Yeah, uh, it's really good. It is good. Okay, sure, okay. Thank you, Chef. We're finally leaving the negativity and the fighting behind us. Good things will come with a good attitude. This first step was great. Is that the last song take on? Yes, sir. Okay. Tonight, we took a baby step forward in the right direction. Slow start, but the customers were happy. And yes, we were a little bit like headless chickens, but you showed you had passion. Yes? yes. yes. Passion is back in Luigi's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two brothers, step forward. Look at you two. Honestly, that's exactly what I want to see. 
you've made the critical first step, but stay on it. Stay on that path. Having Chef bring us together is something special. The brothers need to be bonded. I think my father would be very proud. Love is back and Luigi's. Stay together. You make him look good, and you make him look good. Thank you very much, Chef Ramsey. You're the prince in white shining armor. You walked into our place, and you gave us hope and courage again. Let's go ahead to the chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. No screaming. No screaming, OK? Stay on it. Wow. I have never, in all the years of Kitchen Nightmares, seen a more explosive family situation than here at Luigi's. They were so busy fighting each other, the reputation of the restaurant went completely downhill. This week, we moved them forward 30 years. But unless this family stays united, Luigi's has no chance, and I mean no chance, of success. In the weeks that followed, Luigi's received a rave review from the OC Weekly. The revamped dining room was slammed. All sorts of delights passed us by. Yeah, this is fantastic. And the restaurant is regaining the reputation it once held in the community. That smells really good. Here, yeah, you got, you got work in you. <laughs> wow, that's Luigi. And unbelievably. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. The family is working together in harmony. Beautiful sauce is beautiful. Chef Ramsey has brought the family together again, and my father in Italy is going to be proud of us. us. We put all our differences aside, and I think we're going to build a new bright future for all of us. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares Revisited, Chef Ramsey returns to some of the most explosive and unforgettable restaurants to see what happened to the eateries he tried to turn around. Who fucking hot water? Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. I don't even talk to my staff like this. Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. Close your fucking business. Close it. First, we return to Classic American in West Babylon, New York. You gotta go fucking work the line because I'm fucking losing my mind. Owned by friends who are on the verge of losing it all. I feel like I've failed. And I've tried hard, you know? <laughs> then we'll check in on Dobby Day in Boston's North End. Hey, Mohan, this is your tape. Get the fuck out of here, really. Where two brothers were at war with each other. I'm mad, I'm pissed. I'll fucking tell you to go fuck yourself for the bullshit you put me through. Oh my god, fine. And finally, who can forget Down City in Providence, Rhode Island? You're a disgrace in this industry. Fuck you and get out of my restaurant. Where Chef Ramsay went toe to toe with a stubborn owner named Abby. And you can't even fuck accept it. Fuck hey, you. Hey, walk out again. I am. Come fuck on. you. Tonight, Chef Ramsay is back to see if his hard work has paid off. Who has embraced change and turned their business around? And who turned their restaurant back into a nightmare? What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Oh. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. In this day and age, running a restaurant has never been harder. Tonight, I'm going to show you what happened to some of the restaurants we tried to turn around last year. But first, let's take a look back at what happened when I arrived at Classic American. West Babylon, New York, just an hour outside Manhattan. It's a cute, stunning, all-American town. The perfect location for a classic American diner. Just not this one. So tonight sucked. Every night sucks, yeah. The owners, Colleen and Naomi, were $700,000 in debt, and not one of them had paid themselves a paycheck in over a year. I feel like I've failed. And I've tried hard, you know? Colleen's son, Kevin, was the head chef. What's soft and chewy? The calamari. Hey, Belay needs their food. They've been waiting so long. She knows everyone's waiting a long time, what do you want okay? Me to do? And her boyfriend, Dom, was the manager. Hey, Dom, why we run out of everything? Out of fucking wine up. When I arrived, the menu was simple. So I played it safe and stuck to the classics. I'm a big lover of mac and cheese. Do you have any mac and cheese? Yes. Almost impossible to screw up. Yeah, it's a mouthful of goo. That's gross. Almost impossible to screw up. <sighs> the bomb burger? Fuck it out. You probably won't like that either. 
That is chewy as hell. We ask the chef for the taste then. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Here you go. My appetite gone. I went straight back in the kitchen to confront Kevin, the chef. On a scale of 1 to 10, rate the food in the restaurant. Between 6 and 7? 6 and 7. I would have said 6. Half it and take two away, and you, you're on my mark. At that nice dinner service, I witnessed firsthand the real issues with classic American. Water up. Bad food. Just kind of soggy. The shrimp is no good. Not enough food. Teresa, no burgers. We're out. There is no more. What a joke. I got to, I can't do this tonight. I can't. You got to go fucking work the line, because I'm fucking losing my mind. What's the matter? I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. You understand? I do understand. And I can see how painful it is. I feel like I had more loot than anybody else in this place. Excuse me. Here's the, the honest truth. Friendship's got fuck all to do with it, because there's no friends when that place is closed. You're right. You're absolutely right. You cannot give up. No. Colleen was wearing all the pressure of Classic America on her face, and you could see she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. The next morning, I sat everybody down, and I held a staff meeting. Dom, why are we always running out of product? Because when I open my fucking mouth, everybody shrugs their shoulders and gets a fucking attitude. Because you do it That's all the time. Why. This is the problem. Is it you? Is it him? Is it me? Is it her? Who? Who? It's everybody. No! I was ready to kill somebody. You don't disrespect me like that. They got to find a way to fucking piss me off. No. Unbelievable. Nothing was working. So, to add some excitement, for that night's service, I introduced a new special. Let's start off with some sliders. Fun and bite size, yeah? That is a 1,000 miles away from the bomb burger. Yeah? Have a taste. Oh, that's perfect. How's that? Perfect. Try and chew it before you swallow it, yes? You mean you suck it right out? Finally, Classic American had a dish customers actually enjoyed. That's good. It's really good. Like a burger. Yeah. They said it was excellent. Unfortunately, the rest of the old standbys were a classic American flop. Look at that. Just touch it. A plate oh. of vegetables. Your finger's going right through it. This is the sorry state that we've got ourselves into. I wouldn't serve that to my dog. Stop. Stop. Don't send anything else. Close it. We're closed. These are closed? Can I get a waitress over here? I'm sorry, we're not serving anymore. I was running out of time. Nothing was working. There's no way this restaurant can survive unless there's a dramatic change. So that night, my team moved in and gave Classic American a stunning, and I mean stunning, makeover. Wow. Come in, come in. <laughs> Gone as the old country style, whatever it was. And welcome to the new Classic American. <laughs> Talk to me, darling. <laughs> Are you happy? What do you think? Looks great. Let's have a look at the new menu. Classic American dishes done brilliantly well. <laughs> I swear to God, who needs a pig in the back garden when you got fucking Dom? Big deep breath. <laughs> oh, okay. Dom, save some for the staff, will you please, yeah? Uh -huh. And then, the breakthrough I've been waiting for. Somewhere along the line, we got lost. And I just want to apologize for that. Colleen finally took charge of her business. We're family, but we have a business to run, OK? And so those two things need to be separated. And I know you have to lead by example. And we will show you the leadership that you need to do your job. Hallelujah! Let's have some fun tonight, guys. You know it. Woo -woo. Relaunch night. Opening five minutes, guys, yes? Kevin, ready? Ready. With Colleen stepping in and taking charge. Pull pork right away. Let's go. The kitchen ran smoothly. Kevin, you got a classic burger. OK. Two orders of wings all day. You got the wings, yeah? Excellent. Nice. Keep it going, guys. How do we like everything? Absolutely delicious. We'll come back for more. <laughs> well, we'll take it. Yeah, we'll, we'll clear the board. The customers are happy. Good night. Thank you very much. That night's relaunch was one of the best we've ever done. You all pulled off a fantastic service. Congratulations. Thank you. Amazing. Colleen, Naomi 
This restaurant has every potential to really become a huge success. Do not start dropping in standard. It means too much. Yes. Come here, you. Well done. Up. Whoa, well done. Mm. I'm back at Classic American West Babylon, New York, where two waitresses bought a business to fulfill their American dream. It turned out to be an American nightmare. We made a lot of changes. We're about to find out if they turn things around. Up next, find out if Colleen and Naomi have taken charge, or is Classic American sliding back to its old ways? Who's buying the ingredients now? No. Oh, Jesus. And later, we'll go back to Down City, the restaurant where the owner tried to throw at Chef Ramsay. You need therapy! You would get out of my restaurant. See what happens when Gordon and Abby reunite. Just Can I stay today, or are you going to kick me out? Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares Revisited. Last time I was at Classic American, I met two owners that were on their last legs. The food was disgusting, the staff were disorganized, and the restaurant was bleeding money. We made a lot of changes, new decor, new menu, and a new attitude. I'm back now to see if all those changes have paid off. Fingers crossed. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Mm, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. I can't believe how well you look. <laughs> look, you've just been away on holiday. Yeah. Where did you go? Nowhere. No? It's a little weight off the shoulders. A little weight off the shoulders. Um, no need to ask, but obviously business today is busy. It's been very busy. Oh, really? Yes. You get Fantastic. a good crowd for lunch and dinner. Who's in charge? Out here, Colleen's in charge. In the back of the house, it's me on there. Synergy there? Yes. Fantastic. I'm, I'm going to jump in the kitchen. You've got the reins. You're in control. Right. I'm more relaxed. There's more structure again. And the business is growing. Hello. Somebody's busy. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Are you well? Thank you. Oh, goodness me. You look great. Thank you. you so does your partner. I was super excited to see Gordon come back. I was nervous, but I was really happy, and I knew it was only going to be positive. Who's in control? We're in control. control. You are. That's good news. Battle, yeah. battle scars to prove Battle it. scars. <laughs> Fantastic. Who's involved in the menu? Uh, Kevin, myself, Colleen. Big time. Hey, big boy. How are you? Good, how's it going? Good to see you. Want to grab an apron? Uh, an apron? <laughs> oh, good. Someone's found his balls. Excuse me, you want me to cook now? Yes. <laughs> Is that passion still there? Absolutely, more, uh, more so. Rate the food out of 10, what would you give it? Between six and seven. Half it, and take two away, and you, you're on my mark. 10. A 10? Yes, sir. You didn't even think about that. Brilliant news. Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you. You too. The business is up in terms of the last six months. Where is it? Uh, 35%. 35% up. That's fantastic. Are the costs in control? Yes. They are, yeah? And who's buying the ingredients now? Who's, who's running that side? Dom. Dom. Oh, Jesus. You always got to come back? That's right. I got to fucking comment about every fucking thing. Because when I open my fucking mouth, everybody shrugs their shoulders and gets a fucking attitude. Because you do it That's all the time. Right. We kept him out of the kitchen. You kept him out of the kitchen. That's good news. Now in his office. Oh, Dom's got an office. <laughs> oh, wow. The garage. Oh, the garage. Good. He's allowed to be in for an hour today to eat and have coffee. That's it. How are you? Hey, good. How you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good to, to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. I, I thought I'd see you running around the dining room, topping up water, shouting at everybody. No, I'm, I'm a little in the background now. How do the staff rate you now? Do they see you as a interferer? Oh, yeah. still an interferer. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, you mean you're still throwing things? They got to find a way to fucking piss me off. No, I don't throw things. I just scream now. Oh, you scream now? Yeah, I'm yelling at everybody. That's why I stay out here. OK. okay. Colleen looks great, by the way. I mean. Seriously? You know, the stress, a lot of stress is relieved. She looks 10 years younger. Colleen's a lot happier. The changes she's made in the last year, things are looking up. Good to see you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, he hasn't changed one bit, has he? No. Uh, oh, my god. Listen, it's still good to have someone that passionate behind you and the business. But there's a place for him, and it's not in the restaurant. No. It's in the shed. Yeah. He's very high strong down. But he's got my best interest at heart. I'm sat here looking at both of you now, and completely different to the last time I saw you both. <laughs> <laughs> last time round, you sort of hadn't given up, but you were just going through the motions. Yeah. I got embarrassed the way you were letting the dining room staff get away with murder. Do you want to go out there or no? I don't know. How's that attitude changed towards both of you? They're not as confused anymore or frustrated. Right. They're more happier and more willing to do yeah. what needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Thank you very much indeed. A meatloaf. Jeez, that looks lovely. And uh, doesn't it? It does. Wow. Nah, it's delicious. A plus? Yeah, that's an A double plus. A 10 out of 10. Uh, I'd give that a 10 and a half out of 10. <laughs> so last time I was here, the worst moment. Killing, what was it? The garage. I've been fighting a losing battle every day. In terms of? Just feeling totally helpless. Mm -hmm. Almost given up. Mm -hmm. Knowing that I couldn't, but wanting to. Mm -hmm. No, me. Worst moment for you was what? After people ordered, um, to shut the kitchen down. Stop! Don't send anything else. Close it. I, I would like to tell you something. Yeah, of course. And that if I cry, it's happy news. <laughs> All right? Yes. All right. I just want to tell you that I appreciate you, you come and tell us. Had you not come, we wouldn't be sitting here. It wasn't. Me who turned this place around is both of you. Never forget that. Had he not come, we, we would have had a shot on doors. He gave us a second chance, you know? He brought us back to life. Um, I've got a little surprise for you both. Please come with me. I know. Just two seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? I'm so happy to be back here in West Babylon. Uh, why? because I think this place is amazing. And there's a gentleman here who has an amazing award. Um, would you say good morning to Richard Francistorn, please? <laughs> How are you, sir? Good to see you. On behalf of all the hamburger lovers of Long Island, uh, Good Times Magazine's Bountiful Gourmet column would like to present you with Long Island's Best Burger Award. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. Amazing. Thank you. Great news. Thank you. The biggest thing that Gordon taught me was to be the boss and stop letting everybody walk all over me. Thank you to our community and our employees for making this possible. If Chef Gordon Ramsay hadn't come, we wouldn't be here. Our doors would have closed a year ago. Well done. The most important thing that I got from him is that you have to believe in yourself. You know, you can do this. You know, you did do it. You can do it again. I'm so happy for Colleen and Naomi. Increasing business by 35%. In today's economy, that's practically unheard of. They are a true, classic, American success story. Brilliant. Coming up, we'll go back to Boston's North End to visit Davide, a restaurant that was tearing a family apart. Shut the fuck up. Take the food that's up in the window and come back. Go away. And later, Chef Ramsay is back for a rematch with the Queen of Mean. Down City's owner, Abby. How have you changed? Boston's historic North End is rich in history, culture, and brilliant food. There are so many thriving Italian restaurants in the area. Unfortunately, David is not one of them. Hey, Mora, this is your table. Get the fuck out of here, really. The restaurant was owned by two brothers who were constantly at war with each other. Too fucking hot for him. Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. Frank was the chef, bitter and frustrated. Shut the fuck up. Take the food that's up in the window and come back. Worst of all, he'd given up on himself. It's 3.30. You got to get ready for dinner. It's different. You're going to get fucked anyways tonight. Frank's brother, Anthony, just looked so down and beat and constantly trying to please. Anthony, why don't you go kill yourself? Oh, my God. Can't work like this. To make matters worse, the brothers were hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Are we going to be able to take checks this week? The moment I arrived, I called the staff together, and that's when I discovered the problems ran far deeper than I ever imagined. Anthony has been in and out of the restaurant over the 13 years. Frank found out that Anthony was embezzling money. And what happened? I know. I'm hooked on painkillers, got in trouble, went to jail, the whole nine yards. Frankie got left with the whole shit. It got to him. Got depressed, he got burnt out. Money went down every year. Naturally. When Anthony left, Frank gave up. He's broken mentally and physically. Come on, I'm mad, I'm pissed. I'll fucking tell you to go fuck yourself for the bullshit you put me through. Oh my God, Frank, if you can't put the past behind you, we can't go on. He doesn't respect me, and I don't respect him because I think he laid down and fucking died. The family were very open and honest about their feelings, but when it came to the food tasting... All the passes he made, that's a big positive. All I got 
was a bunch of BS. This is really spongy and horrible. Are they frozen? No, no, that's fresh. Will you just check if that was done this morning? Because it tastes like it was done last sure. week. When will they mean? Uh, no. Three weeks ago. Yeah, there's a batch of freezer. They don't make them so hard on every day. It was actually made three weeks ago. Disappointed by the food, I went straight in the kitchen and gave Frank a reality check. If you can't even be bothered to cook fresh food, what do you want me to do? Wave a magic wand and turn this place around? Come on! I don't know how to do any better. That's a lie. You could do much better. That night, I was hoping for a reinvigorated Frank. Bat chance. What are you down there, little booth? I'm thinking. Come on! You need to sit down on your ass to think. My seat of depression. Holy crap. From the first ticket, dinner service was a disaster. Table 31, been waiting an hour. Please shut the fuck up! I'm waiting on 32. Can't cook that fast. This is lukewarm. Yes, son of a fucking bitch. You and your fucking lemon juice fucking stupid chicken out of your fucking motherfucker. I wasn't watching a dinner service. I was watching a man on the verge of an emotional breakdown. <laughs> It wasn't over yet. Frank walked out of his own dinner service. Are you kidding me? I'm not fucking cooking. I'm not doing it. Davide was doomed, unless we can bring Frank back. The next morning, a very emotional Anthony spoke the words that his brother was dying to hear for so long. I know how much damage I've done. And you had to hold it together. Now I believe you need to take care of yourself. We don't ever say it, but I do love you. That's it. That's the first time I heard any remorse from him. Should I listen or should I not listen? Oh. Kim? You haven't put this chef jack on in four years. Because I think inside you felt you didn't deserve it anymore. But you do. You're actually one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. That lack of passion that showed in the food yesterday for Gordon was a cry for help. Please put this back on. No, I'm serious. Frank was beginning to come around, which was very positive. I want you to think of something that you want to cook. Pan sear this in a simple lemon cake with white wine. Nice. What have you got in the sauce? Shallots, thyme, a little dash of rosemary. It's delicious. He even put his chef jacket on. And now you look like it's the chef that you are. Then I got to work on the new menu immediately. Have a look at this. Wow. Oh, my god. God. Are the dreadful plates of the 80s. <laughs> the main course, homemade gnocchi, brown butter, truffle oil, and some fresh chives at the end. Awesome. I am overwhelmed. Relaunch night. You welcome to Davide. Tonight we change the menu. The stakes were really high. A packed house and two writers from Boston Magazine. I'll do the Tuscan bread soup. Within minutes, Anthony and Frank reverted back to their old ways. Frank, look, can I get the pork so I can complete? That's it. Don't ever rush me. Come on, give me, give me. I'll give put me. it up when it's ready. Give me, go. The pork is a little raw. Table 15 wants the pork for. Fuck! It's the Boston Magazine. Oh, no. Oh, my God, we're so fucked. Frank looked ready to bolt out the back door again. I stepped in immediately and really turned him around. Listen, we can pull this back. We can pull it back. Come on. OK? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know it's undercooked, under but under under we can get it going, yeah? I'm fucking pissed Come on, You know, you can't let it follow. No, no, can't let it destroy. I'm not giving up. I'm tired, but I'm not giving up. Thank God I was trying to impress you tonight. Thank you. I'm sorry. Make sure it's good. It's good. It was rocky. But Frank and Anthony proved they could work as a team and work under pressure. And the mountain restaurant can be every night. Frank, you proved to me tonight that you can run a kitchen. And Frank, keep that chef jacket on, keep that attitude with it, and never sit down in a kitchen ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for your success. I'm back at Davide's in Boston's North End. Last time I was here, it was like walking to a war zone. Two brothers feuding so much they were destroying their business. We brought them back together as a team, and we're about to find out if they're still on the right path. 
Last time I was at Davide, the food was rotten and the customers were staying away. But nothing was going to change until I helped the two brothers who owned the restaurant to let go of the past. Let's hope they haven't gone back to their old fighting ways. Anthony? How are you, sir? How have you been since I last saw you? I'm good. Uh -huh. good. You look great. Yeah, things are good. I was definitely a little nervous having him come back in. You're still worried, is he going to come back and say, you guys aren't doing the right thing again? Um, nice atmosphere in here. There's a buzz. Big brother, where is he? He's in the kitchen. Please tell me one thing. Has Frank kept his butt off that chair? What are you down there, little booth? Come on. My seat of depression. You ask him. OK, I'm going to find out. Good to see you. All right, you too. Nice to Thank see you. you. Hey. How are you, big man? Good. How are you look good. You're busy out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got the chef jacket on. Please tell me you continue to wear that. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, no. Come on, Frank. What is that doing here? You little fucker. <laughs> i got to rest my ass for once in a while. Oh, no. Come on, Frank. No, you're kidding me. Before service, after service? Before and after. Not in the middle of service? No. Promise? Yeah, but you can't anymore. Have you kept that passion? Yeah. Good. Hard, yeah, right? It was always there. It just needed a little bit of push, I guess. The biggest thing I learned from Chef Ramsay was that you got to care about what you're doing. Bottom line, if you don't want to do it, get out. Hello, Kim. <laughs> Come round, darling. Oh, my God. I was excited to see him because I wanted him to see that Frank had really taken his suggestions and implemented them. All right, nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Uh, last time I was here, you were at your wrist end. Yeah. The weight on your shoulders. I mean, you were on the verge of breaking down before anybody. I love him, and I've seen how much over the years he's done for everyone. How's their relationship with him? Between Anthony and Frank. I mean, they're brothers. So yeah. They're going to fight. You, you look at it as Frank has one way and Anthony has another. Yeah. I think Gordon bringing a lot of the issues to life did help in that, you know, Frank and Anthony kind of understand now where the other one's coming from. I look at you now, mm -hmm. not just how happy you look, but great to see Frank sweating, busy, on top of it. I know. That's it's the scary amazing. news. How cool was that? To see him happy about it and to be researching new dishes and looking for new menu things to bring in is amazing. Good. Because that was gone. That's great news. He's got his passion back, you've got your man back. Yes. <laughs> right, lunch, what are we eating? I'm not sure. Yeah? Maybe I it's don't a Frank. Know. Yes. Whoa, yeah. honest. That's lovely. When I look at these three dishes here and I think back to what was served, seriously, I mean, it's a different league. Look at that. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. When Ramsey tasted the food, I was thinking, here we go again. That's delicious. They're really good, they really good. He liked it. He didn't read me you a new one. <laughs> Brotherly love on a one to ten. Where's that now? Too fucking hot water. Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. His attitude sucks, but. It's attitude sucks. Yeah. <laughs> We're at a seven. We'll That's get seven. a seven. Since the last visit, me and Frank have definitely made progress and let go of more stuff than before. If you blow up five times a week, now we're blowing up twice a week. Cool. Where are we? On a good day. On a good day. On a good day, yeah. day at seven. Oh, seven on a good day. <laughs> seven on a real good day. <laughs> I feel like I moved forward a little bit because I think he has more respect for what I do. He finally gets it a little bit. Business in general, since I was last there. 10, 15% off. Oh, wow. Very well. Good. Yeah. Have you seen what's happened in Boston in terms of how many restaurants have been closing over the last four months? I mean, yeah, surviving fun. this recession is, is a success. Let me tell you that. If you weren't here, we would have been closed. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. Ready? Guaranteed. Great news. Um, a little surprise for you. OK? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. No, don't be like that. Be have yourself. Yes? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, may I just have your uh, attention for 30 seconds, please? How was lunch? Great. Delicious. The city's on a high on the back of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> we have a big surprise here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sean Thornton. <laughs> Thank you.
And he said he had a surprise. I really had no idea. That was awesome. Uh, awesome rooms. You guys helping us get where we are. I'd like to give you awesome. this jersey to put up in here. So thank you very much. I seen Thornton as like he's always a fighter. Comes back. Felt good to see somebody like that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The biggest thing I learned from Chef Ramsay is persistence. But the most I learned is that he really did emphasize, you know, having people around that love you and family. <laughs> I'll send you another one. Work it out. Thank you for building my confidence and for helping me in my business. So nice to see them smiling again. And just like their beloved Bruins, if Frank and Anthony continue working together as a team. Davide is on track to become a big winner. Providence, Rhode Island, great little city. Lots of cool restaurants and a phenomenal art scene. But honestly, I spent so much time there with a throbbing headache named Abby. I just want an answer. It is impossible for the fries to be ice cold. Abby owned and ran down city. Problem was, she was running it into the ground. As long as you work for me, you do it my way. Enough said. Her employees didn't respect her. Abby acts like... Whatever, don't argue. Corella DeVille. <laughs> and her partner, Rico, he couldn't get a word in edgewise. All I think about is why people are not coming to my restaurant. Down City was bleeding money. Abby and Rico were in debt to the tune of a million dollars. We've got all these bills to pay this weekend. That's the stack. When I first arrived, Abby was actually quite pleasant. Hello. Hello, Chef Ramsay. How are you? Welcome to Down City. Nice to meet you. Likewise. My pleasure. For five seconds, and on a scale of one to ten, mark the food. What would you say? Where are we? It's a ten. Wow. It's wow, wow, wow. Yes. Perfect. I'm starving because the room service next door was shocking. We do the room service for that hotel. What was the problem? Crab cakes that were stone cold in the center. It was just like this ball of mush. Disgusting. That's like, impossible. Can you say denial? I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately. Now, obviously, I didn't think the food was going to be a 10, but what Abby served me, shocking. Mm, what do you think? Ah, soggy, chewy, disgusting calamari. What do you say about it? Just get the calamari back out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a partying amount. I'm taking it. That was one party you didn't want to attend. It wasn't a party in my mouth. It was like a funeral in my mouth. A funeral? <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of does look like something died. It was so clear that Abby was bloody delusional. And it was time for me to give her a big wake-up call. How can I fix it when you stand there in front of your team rating you and your restaurant and your food 10 out of 10 dreamer? I don't, I don't think it's as I bad as you say it's I it can't is. Stop being in denial. Wake up and admit it's shit! No surprise, that night's dinner service was a big disaster. And I mean disaster. This needs to be cooked a little more. Can we just 86 this special? Every single one of them has been sent back. I'd seen enough, so I decided to sneak away and have a quick look around the fridges. Oh, this is gross down here. Holy crap. I was totally shocked. I led Abby and Rico straight downstairs. The place is a filthy mess. Look, what is that? Lamb bones? And who's organizing this? And that's when all hell broke loose. You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't minute. like this. I don't hold, run a kitchen hold like this. Hold on a minute. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh boy, here we go. Listen to me. I'm not gonna listen to you. You're in denial. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. I can't even accept it. Fuck hey, you. You'll walk out again. I am. Fuck walk. you. There you go. Flip the bird. You are insane. You are like. Yeah, blame me all you want. These excuses that you're insane. I'm insane. You're insane. You can't even admit you're the fucking, fucking truth. You're fucking insane. I don't even perfect. talk to my staff like this. You're Why don't you perfect. get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will get go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, will go. please. You are so okay. in denial. Okay. You need therapy. You're a disgrace in this industry. Fuck you and get out of my restaurant. You still here? Not now, guys. Please. Please, please. Fuck him. I was pissed. That has never, ever happened to me before. Excuse me, they called me. Is he, he's coming back to me, isn't he? I don't give a fuck where he goes. He can go to hell for all I care. Chef Ramsay. Then Rico came out and begged me to walk back in those doors. Honestly, she's got to start listening. I, I know, I, and I don't know how to make her do it. I really, I don't know. Do you want me to leave? I'm out of here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Tomorrow we need to start being honest and open. I agree. I want you to help me get this restaurant to where I 
you need it to be. The next morning, I held a staff meeting, which they'd never had before, and got them to ask Abby some serious questions. She had no choice but to listen to the team, and she was being exposed. It was so important. Abby, why do you not allow anyone to express their opinions without it being seen as a personal attack to you? Since I bought this restaurant, I became a defensive bitch. Wow, is this the same person? A new Abby. I felt really encouraged. Immediately, we got to revamping Down City's menu. The appetizers, ghost cheese truffle dip, honey spiced chicken wings, meatball ciders, delicious. Wow. Now we can have a real party in our mouth, Abby. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh my god, that's unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, my God, this is like me. <laughs> I've never seen Abby this emotional. Like, she does have a heart in there. She does have a soul. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now we just got to make it work. Yep. Relaunch night. We are going to rock this town tonight. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. I invited a special guest, blogger Stacy Place. She has 10,000 followers. She blogs tomorrow. We're 10,000 potential customers. Back up. The night started off well. Right now, in the window, I need that fish and chip. I need that slider. Slider's up, Chef. Jimmy, keep it going, yeah? Frise salad on the fly. But it didn't take long for Abby to go back to their old ways. Jimmy, did you call the calamari for table 30? I just did. Oh. I need four soups and one chowder up in the line, please. That's incorrect. The kitchen fell behind. And it was relaunch night, and it felt like it was all going up in flames. She just tweeted, waiting for appetizers, getting hungry. OK, this is not bullshit now. Menu's there, chefs are there, I need you there. Come on. All right, OK. Please. Listen, Jimmy, they're already blogging that they're waiting too long for food. Let's get this food out. All right, how long on a solo truffle dip? Urgently, please. With Abby cool, calm and in control, the kitchen got back on track. Jimmy, what's 10 up? 37, did you fire? I did fire. Good. Abby, read that discreetly. So you want and you need? Truffle dip, amazing, yes? Yeah. Come on, keep it going, yes? This looks amazing. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. A lot better than last night, right? Yeah. Jimmy, it was awesome. Thank you. Customers love the food. Abby, how do you feel, babe? I feel beyond belief, fantastic. Come on in. Give me a hug. You're not going to ask me. I'm going to ask you. That's right. I, Gordon Ramsay, are asking you for a hug. Come here. Huh? Thank you. If you wanted bad food served by a very, very angry owner, Down City in Providence was the place. We made a lot of changes. We're about to find out if it paid off. I'm back at Down City. The scene of one of the biggest fights in the history of Kitchen Nightmares. The owner, Abby, wow, what a tough nut to crack. We made a lot of changes. Let's hope they've paid off and she hasn't slipped back to her old ways. Pray to God, please. Hallelujah. Hey, Rico, how are you? Gordon Ramsay. Good to see you. How are you, sir? Good, how are you doing? Are you well? I'm excellent. How are you? You're looking well. Thank you, you too. Oh, this is brilliant. The big question, how is she? <laughs> oh, let me lead you to her. Yeah, do I need a... You don't need armor, or you don't need anything like that, bulletproof vest, no, you're fine. Nice. Okay, you're fine. great. You're fine, I Here think she'll be happy to see you. Okay, I'm anxious for this one. Hey! How are you? Welcome back. You look great. I was so happy that he was here because I knew he was going to love the food. Do you still hate me? No, I never hated you. Really? Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, will go. please. Can I stay today or are you going to kick me out? We'll see. Oh, we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, well, uh, need I ask, um, business is looking good. Just look at it. Everyone's happy. Everyone's great. Since Gordon was here last, business has improved at least 30 30%, and that's huge in this economic environment. How have you changed? I don't come in the restaurant anymore and say, OK, this is what we're going to do. It's my way or the highway. That Abby is gone. I think the staff is going completely batshit crazy because I am so calm and I don't run around yelling and screaming at them individually anymore. Um, Food-wise, last time you rated the food, you gave it a 10. How's the ratings now? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find out. It's a 10. And you mean it this time? I'm not in denial. <laughs> You'll see. Hey, look at you. Excuse me. Hey, who's hey. here? How are, How are you? Going? Are you well? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good to see you. 
Jimmy has impressed the hell out of me with his work ethic. That kid would rather be working than doing anything. Abby, rate her 10. How would you rate your food now from 1 to 10? A 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. And she's changed. Tonight was the worst shit show I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever seen. For the better. How's your work relationship with her? Is she giving you more leeway? Can you become the chef? Yeah. Yeah? Jimmy is absolutely wonderful. And his dynamic with Abby has, has melded into a really nice relationship. There you go. Good to see you, Jimmy. You too. Hello. I'm dying to see downstairs. <laughs> Our famous place, you know, where you and I really what get off. What happened downstairs? Well, I don't remember that. Take me down there again, please. I don't know what that is. What is that? What, you lost the words? The place is a filthy mess. Look, what is that? You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't minute. like this. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up, precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh, boy. Shall we? Please. So I prepare myself? Holy mackerel. Wow. What do you think? Well, wow, bloody hell. It's organized, it's structured, and it all looks incredible. <laughs> Let's get out of here. We've just been working so hard to keep the standards up that he left us with. I've got a question for you. What's up? On my last visit here, you told me. You're a disgrace to this industry. I take it back. Are you taking I take it back? It, back. I... it just came out. Sometimes I don't have a filter. Hey, uh, good to see you. Good Likewise, to see good to see you too. How are you, buddy? Good, good. How are you? Well, what's happened? It's like the sort of we've, 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 we've changed. She goes up to our tables all the time now. She's very interactive with the customers. You know, she's looking for positive and the ne negative feedback. Okay. okay, great. It's good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. <laughs> no, thanks. Wow. That looks great. That's a steak. That salmon looks lovely. Do you mind if I do a bite of that one? Absolutely. It's so good. That's delicious. To get Gordon Ramsay's seal of approval, I mean, it really means everything to me. Have you embraced the word change? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no pinky cross. Put your right hand up and swear to God, I, Abby. I, Abby. I've embraced. I've embraced. Change. Change. Forever. Forever. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so with the success of the business, has it brought you two together in terms of as a proper partnership? What's the working relationship now like? I sense a little tension between you two. Instead of the um, volcano erupting on the employees, it erupts on me. Really? No. It seemed like what, what she was told on Friday, so she told me to fuck off. <laughs> and, you know, she, she told you to fuck off? <laughs> Abby. There's me thinking that you're a complete change, turnaround, amazing woman, and you slip back into your old ways. No, I didn't. We're like an old married couple. You're in business together. You shouldn't tell him to fuck off. He's your partner. You're right. You're absolutely right. Don't tell him to fuck off again. In fact, I'd like to apologize. I love you, Rico. I'm sorry. That's all I've been waiting for since Friday. That's it. It's very simple. I wish you did it Friday night. There isn't anyone I would ever do this with besides Abby. Her heart and soul are there 110% of the time. Listen, I'm pleased. Good job. Thank, Thank you. Both. Thank you. As always, good to see you. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care of her, would you please, yes? I think what Abby learned from Chef Ramsay was accept criticism. Because accepting criticism and dealing with it makes you stronger. Come here, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to see you. Come back again. I want to thank him. He was a lifesaver, because Down City is my life. I really like him a lot. He's a cool guy. I don't need to tell you, but it's been a rough couple of years for all business owners. So for Davide, Classic America, and Down City to be thriving in this environment is a tribute to all their hard work. I am so proud of them all. Good night. Tonight, it's the most intense kitchen nightmares of the year. Get the fuck out right now! Chef Ramsay heads to an L.A. burger joint. He's doing a natural for 44. Yes, he is doing a natural for 44. And finds a family at war. 
There are severe father-son issues. Jenny, calm down. No! A marriage is being tested. You didn't even stand up for your wife for 35 years! And a son and a mother can no longer communicate. Please, for the love of God, go back to the bar. As for the food, it's beyond atrocious. One word for this. Meow. Cat food. The chef has completely given up and is out of control. Now give me my check! And the only thing that's consistent here... It's not your choice! ...is the constant fighting. I'm about done with this child of shit in here, man. You won't believe how a small burger joint could cause so much conflict. I'm gonna jump over the side and say you knocked your ass out of here. Oh, you are! You are! You are! Come here right now! Anger. I want you to get out of the way right now. And pain. This is really hard. <laughs> Jeff Ramsey does his best to right the ship. You got the will on your shoulders, for God's sake. But there are so many leaks. Get the fuck out of here! Burger Kitchen may be impossible to stay afloat. This is crazy. You can't do it, you know? What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done! I'm done! I'm not as nice as you! Shut the place down! Get out of here! That is amazing! Third Street in Los Angeles, a young, hip neighborhood known for trendy shops and restaurants. In 2010, Alan and Jen Saffron opened a restaurant called The Burger Kitchen. Good evening, welcome to Burger Kitchen. My name's Alan, thank you for coming. Alan's always had the dream to run a restaurant because he's always enjoyed meat. You do the cheese in the middle, you seal the beef, and then you do the cheese on the top. That's what the ultimate cheeseburger is. I have really eaten meat all my life. I've eaten in hundreds of different steak restaurants. And then I figured I'll try and get into a hamburger restaurant. But we didn't have the money to open up the best burger in LA. And I took the money from my son, Daniel. I was kind of dragged into this. Um, I got a sizable inheritance from my grandfather. There was money in a trust account, and my dad took 250000 of my money to put it into this restaurant. Hey, guys, how you doing? Because of that, I had to make the place work. But my dad is not running Burger Kitchen well. All of our burgers are prime Wagyu. That's the best meat you can buy in the country. I've now changed our standard burgers all to Australian Wagyu. It's all frozen. We take it out of the freezer. The meat sucks, though, dude. I know. It's, like, really dry. Throw that out. My God, man. You buy your patties pre-made, and they're dry, and you know it's not good. But you continually say it is because you don't have any taste buds. Really not good. Burger Kitchen is managed by a dysfunctional family. We got three chiefs and about four Indians today. There's a lot of tension within all the family members, which filters down to us, of course. I have an order of sweet potato fries, okay, and I have two tickets. Until we figure it out. David, 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 David you need to listen to me. It's hard to be belittled every day. And so for me to come to work now is like almost unbearable. David, I'll handle this, and then you can come back and expedite, OK? You can't expedite nothing. Thank you. It is such a chaotic work environment with Alan, Jen, Daniel. Is he doing a natural for 44? Yes, he is doing a natural for 44. It is just a train wreck and a half. I can organize the tickets. I don't know why they can't get it through their fucking skulls. That's OK. All right, relax. I did not picture myself doing this. But these are the cards I've been dealt, and I want to make it a success. Table 11 still does not have their sides. I, it's coming. It's all coming. I've told Ricardo to make it on the fly. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But my father, he does not treat me as an equal partner. He still treats me like a child. It's very infuriating. Please, help me. Please. I am absolutely at the end of my rope. I don't have anyone to lean on. I really don't. Chef Ramsay is our last hope. place of a restaurant smack bang in the middle of Los Angeles. The burger kitchen. Wow. Nice. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Alan Saffron, how are you? Alan, good to see you. Thank good. you very much so, for this coming. Is... This is my wife, Jen. 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 Jen, good to see you. When Chef Ramsay arrived, it just blew my mind. Let's sit down and have a, uh, a chat, shall we, yes? I mean, we've got Chef Ramsay in here to improve us. Otherwise, what the hell is he here for? Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Um, how long have you been open? 
16 months. So 16 uh, months ago. Yeah, yeah. So just opened. Yes. Is the business making money? No. We're no. losing 5,000 up to 6,000 a month, every wow. month. Wow, wow, wow. How can it go so wrong? I, I think it was a combination of a lot of things that I think we did wrong. I think we changed the menu many too, too many times. How many times have we changed the menu? Probably 10. 10 times? Yes. Yeah. That's nearly once a month. What about the chef? I mean, uh, normally we, a menu changes when the chef changes. How many well, chefs have you had? about 10. 10 as well? Yes. Yeah. Front of house been as bad? Yeah, we've been through about 20 servers. 10 menus, 10 chefs, 20 servers. What's going wrong? Yelp has killed us. Yelp, Yelp has trashed us terribly. They're also deleting five-star reviews. Oh, come on. I can prove it. I can show you right on the Yelp. Is there a plot against you from Yelp to close this business? No question in my mind. Oh, Alan, come on. You've been watching too many fucking Bond movies. So, um, opening restaurants in LA is pretty expensive. Um, where did the money come from? Alan had about 250000 that he inherited from his dad's estate. Okay, nice. So he put all that money into it, and then we started running out of money. And uh, in order to open, my husband went to my son. Mm -hmm. And now my son, Daniel, is in for another, I think, over 250000 as well, because he inherited some money, too. I, I was managing his money, so I actually took part of that money. And as the manager of his funds, you then invested in the business? Yes. Did your son Daniel know? Well, of course he knew eventually. What do you say eventually? I told him after the fact. What? I kind of forced him into it by oh. taking his money. Seriously? Is Daniel here? He's in the business. He does the nighttime shift. OK. You work in the, in the daytime, all daytime. The yeah. And you don't work together? Uh, not really that much. Our heads log together. Right. My son has a great deal of resentment towards me, and I don't know why. What about the food? I think it's pretty damn good now, yes. I'd say it's four to five stars. Four to five stars, so you're one star out. OK. I can't wait to taste it. I've got the background. Thank you, I appreciate it. OK, thank you. Chef Ramsay will love my burgers without a shadow of a doubt. I'm Marilyn. Marilyn, nice yeah, to see you. Nice to meet you. First off, what's wrong with the restaurant? There's lack of management. Right. And the burgers, they're never cooked right. They're always sent back. Wow. Yeah. I tell people that I'm sorry probably 15 times a night. There's no consistency whatsoever. And that's wearing on me, like, as a person. I go home and I'm like, oh, I feel so guilty for serving bad food. OK, let's start off. I'm in California, so let's go for California burger, California, please. sure. Thank you. And how would you like it cooked? Medium rare, please. Medium rare? Thank you. OK. No, definitely cowboy burger. Got OK. To Got to see the Australian meat pie. Yeah. Obviously, I'll have to go for the award-winning burger. OK. Yeah, I think we're done. Uh, Thank you, my darling. good. Thank you. Good to see you. You too. Dirty plates, guys. Come on. OK. This is a lot of food. At first, I loved working at Burger Kitchen. But all I'm doing now is fighting with the management. David, I'll handle this. Jen, I want you to get out of the way right now. It's a runaway restaurant, and I have no control. 13 said their burgers were too good. Hey, Lena. Yes. Anything you have to say, go through me. Jen, okay. I'm up to tell you more than once to get out of the way. Chef David does not like me. He doesn't want me in the kitchen. Oh, my god. That woman, she's a nightmare. And he tends to gossip and blame me for a lot that's going on. Out walks the Diablo. We've made some errors here in staffing. This is like a green ring circus. Chef Ramsay, I, I noticed you ordered the cowboy. That'll take yes. a little longer. Don't you worry. That's, I'm a, one, that's a one pound burger. Lovely. <laughs> Executive chef, David Blaine? Yes. What, the magician? No, 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 he's not the magician. Right. He's, he's just coincidentally the same name. He was the head pastry chef at the Peninsula Hotel. And now he's the executive chef of the burger restaurant. Yes. David Copperfield, your dessert chef? No. David, he was like, Chef David Blaine, like the magician. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I can't disappear from here. When I came in here, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to do any of my recipes. I had to do exactly what Alan told me to do. That's the California. Even if I knew it was wrong, I still had to do it. This is the California burger. Wow. Thank you, Lane. OK, California burger. I'd better let you eat. Yes, you please. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Jeez. Well, 
mid round, it's raw. Bread's just sweet, sweet and doughy. Bland, tasteless, raw meat, no flavour. Wow, that's nasty. How are you doing? Yeah, that's rough. Does anybody season anything? Yeah, and do the kitchen cook with seasoning? Um, I, I know they throw a little bit of salt in. Well, they're obviously blind because they're missing it. I mean, that is ghastly. What's wrong with this one? Uh, what? What? Stop, 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 stop. What's wrong with that one? There's no seasoning. He doesn't like it. It's one of the best burgers I've ever tasted in my life. So it's very disappointing. Okay, this is a natural. All right. Natural with white cheddar. Yes. How was it cooked? What did you ask for? No, that's good, medium rare. Oh, we're good on it? Yeah, yeah. And this one is? Natural with white natural. cheddar. Oh, this is the award winning. Yeah. Great. Thank you, man. Mmm. Mm. Wow. That's raw. Wow. That's the award winning burger. Shocking. Marilyn, sorry, man. Yeah. I know I asked for it mid rare, but that's the first for me. They serve a burger with a tartar in the middle. That's just raw. All it means is, raw. It is raw. I can't believe that my burger was that bad. That is just shocking. I, I, I don't know what to think anymore. Food is natural. It's um, raw in the middle. Oh, come on, guys. What the fuck is that? I was shocked that it was undercooked because I okayed the burger, but, you know, we were under a lot of stress. David, this is really bad. But instead of looking at their own deficiencies, they wanted to put it on me. I'm about done with this childish shit in here, man. I out of here. Tell me, dude. 100% I am their scapegoat. I'm about to blow up. Jeff Ramsey had a horrendous start to his lunch. Well, the meat's raw. And after sending another raw burger back to the kitchen. David, this is really bad. I'm about done with this child of shit in here, man. Wow. I'm out of here. Don't leave, Jared. Chef David Blaine wants to disappear. I'm about to blow up. People are crazy. I left out of frustration. But when I came on, I made a deal with my staff to stay. And I keep my word, and that's what I'm doing. Let's do this. Oh, OK, we got the big cowboy burger, medium rare. OK, we don't have any of those extra big buns. No, no, who is there? Oh, this is going to be interesting. We got the cowboy done. I'm terrified to bring out of this burger. I don't even think you could swallow. <laughs> Dried. Here is the cowboy burger. Oh boy. Cowboy with a very small hat on top. Look at the bun. Where'd you start? <laughs> Honestly, look at that. Expect a decent bun. This is a bland, greasy, cooked to hell. Damn. Thanks, man. That is dreadful. Dreadful. I'm so sorry. Thank you. It's not your fault. Well, I was shocked, disappointed, embarrassed, hurt. Meat pies up, guys. But one thing I have that's a little different is an Australian meat pie. The Australian meat pie is the number one staple in Australia. I have brought them to America, and Chef Ramsay will absolutely love it. And that's Ramsay's, by the way. He's not going to like it. What? He's not going to like it. <laughs> So this is the... The Australian meat pie, oh. the beef. Oh, time to go down under. What is that thing? What a mess. I mean, that is disgusting. That Australian pie can fuck off back to Australia with pleasure. I've got raw, doughy pastry on top and soggy, gooey stuff on the bottom. One word for this, meow, cat food. Disgusting. Didn't like nothing at all, nothing. 
it's everything. I believe Chef David can't handle the menu. He's not an executive chef, as he claims. We didn't do good. <laughs> He's a pastry chef. Wow. Well, that was a uh, eye-opener. Let's meet the uh, team. This is uh, Chef Hello, David. You? This is the executive Hello, chef, David. Chef. How are you? David Hello, Blaine, David. right? The magician. Wow, show me what your magic today. This is... Jalapeno. Jalapeno. OK, great. David, that was fucking hideous. Everything I've tasted has been nasty, awful, bland. And you watched all that coming out, or did you cook any of it? I helped cook everything. And you can't work your magic on a burger. Seriously? You get paid as an executive chef? Wow. What's funny now? Is this an ego massage for you? I follow the recipes as I am told by the owners, and if I try to change the recipes, I am tossed out of here. What? It's not quite true. Come it's on, not guys, true. man up. I'm drinking again. Drinking again? My husband doesn't drink. I don't know, I don't know. I can't get the truth out of anybody here. Explain this to me, Jen. He does have a lot of control in the kitchen. That's not true, chef. What about the mushrooms? You changed the whole recipe and you added one. You didn't want salt on the mushrooms. No Let's tell the truth. Did you add wine to the mushroom recipe? That's how you make saute mushrooms. I just asked a question. Did you add wine? Yes, ma'am. You didn't tell anyone that you added wine to the mushrooms. Honey, you're missing the point. You're focusing on a mushroom. Mushrooms are important to me. I'm from Poland. I think of all the problem is, instead of putting sugar in that coffee, put a little Prozac in it. David, I just want the truth. This is the truth. I would be better off as a brain surgeon than you running this restaurant. After Chef Ramsay was served raw and tasteless burgers. That is ghastly. They serve a burger with a tartar in the middle. Jen and Chef David can't seem to agree on who has control of the kitchen. I follow the recipes as I am told. What about the mushrooms? And you changed the whole recipe and you added wine. You didn't want salt on the mushrooms. And it's starting to get personal. Jen, let's get down to where it's supposed to be. The way you treat us, the way you're manipulated, and the way I had to buy groceries this morning. Where's my money for my groceries? that you owe me. Now, first of all, my son You was, haven't paid me. My son was wired this morning, and you gave I'd him... I'd say he was wired. Excuse me. We don't uh, do that, David. I come in here, and I work. I open the place. I do what I'm supposed to, and I don't get paid. Where's my paycheck? That's not Why true, isn't he paid? I have checks written out to your That's wife. That's not right. He has been working on uh, the spirit of getting paid. The spirit. And I will pay him. This just sounds crazy. Where's Jen going? She's running to get checks all of a sudden. Honey, you're missing the point. Don't concentrate on the check. I said I'm going to pay him. That's all that's important. I feel I'm a little bit sort of in a, in, in a land of loopy loops. You see how much bullshit's flying around here? Your chef says that he's forced to follow your recipes. Let's see what he can come up with. Do me a favor. Yes, chef. Get out there now. Go and get some beef pate and cook me a burger. A burger. Yes, chef. Both of you get out there. Bye, guys. This is my career. This is what I love to do. I'm smart enough to know that he's going to like my burger. That gin is a liar, dude. She can't tell the truth. It's crazy. The whole place should be on fucking LSD, man. OK. I need to taste what this guy can cook. Yes? Jen and David do not get along that well. He's very opinionated, and that's difficult for my wife. Jen. You heard how he attacked me. I and know you that. You stand up for your wife of 35 I am, years. I am standing up for you, but I'm realizing how difficult our situation is. While Chef David shops for ingredients for his burger, Chef Ramsay decides to visit Daniel to get his perspective on the issues at Burger Kitchen. Daniel. Hi. How are you? Good. Good well, to see you. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Yeah. It's a nice little cozy place. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been in here? Five years. Five years? Yeah. Five years. I've lived with Wendy for three. She is I'm my girlfriend. Right now. Okay, Hi, Wendy. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. What does Wendy do? I go in when he's there. Only at night. Not there. Only when at they're night. not there, she comes in. Well, sit down. Let's have a let's have a chat. There was a falling out between Wendy and my family. My dad doesn't respect her, and I don't know why. Take me back to the beginning. Well, when you invested in this restaurant, uh, unknown to you, mm, yeah? you. <laughs> how frustrating was that? I mean, Very, your dad uh, was handling your money? It was in a trust account Right. that he had access to. 
had them get in this situation. My dad, in all his wisdom and the way he can just manipulate, said, you know, why don't we open a restaurant? And I said, well, that's a little ridiculous. You know, we know nothing about it. Let's not do that. Unbelievable. How much did it take? 250000 Wow. I was infuriated. Why did you do this? You know, without even my approval. And he's like, I thought you'd like it. Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. It's your money. Yeah, I know. What's the relationship with your father like now? How did you get on? It's not good. No, I mean, it's I, not I can good. feel that. When was the last time you actually made a decision together? <sighs> Never? My dad still treats me like a child. It almost makes me want to cry. He changes the menu way too often, and he doesn't tell anyone. 10 menus? More. Over 20. Over 20 different menu changes. Wow. I, I can't get even on the books. I'm not even on the records. You know, I've asked him numerous times. I've asked the accountant. This, uh, this is, is like three months ago. This is the only fucking proof I have, which is a joke. This was to placate me when the restaurant first opened. That was that's a joke. That's not true. This is printed out on a computer. This, Five dollars a share, by the way. This is nothing. <laughs> this is not. This is toilet paper. It's nothing. I thought it was going to be bad, but I didn't think it was going to be quite that bad. I just, I don't trust them anymore. It's taken a while for me to kind of like come to that um, realization, you know, but... Um... <sighs> Sorry. It's hard, you know, it's hard to watch this happen. It's hard to watch somebody get beaten down so much that like the fight is no longer there. Okay, uh, well that's given me an <laughs> even deeper insight. Run it as normal tonight, yeah. and just pretend I'm not there, sure. but I'll be in and out, yeah. watching everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to meet you both. Thank you. Okay. I have to say thank you again. Okay. So much. Thanks, thank you. See you later tonight. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back at the restaurant, David is preparing Chef Ramsay's burger. Let's call this one the Redemption Burger. And for the first time since he started working at the restaurant, he is using his own recipe. But this time, I want to season it our way. This is very important to me that when I make this burger, it's a good burger. But at least it's going to be my burger, and it's not going to be Jen and Alan's burger. Let's start getting this thing ready. Are you making them a burger, too? Yeah. With the Wagyu. A what? With the Wagyu. I'm smart enough to listen to what Chef Ramsay wanted. He wants a nice, juicy burger. He wants something with flavor, not frozen meat. Medium rare, brother. OK, get it off. We're ready. Let's give Ramsay a hamburger, man. Here we go. I know if you're eating lunch, don't worry. Uh, Please. I just, I just made a burger. My ingredients. Your own ingredients? Yes. Wow. So it's not on the menu? No. Do you want to try it? Some people have called me a meat sculptor or a meat creator. And a lot of different celebrities have eaten my food and have said it was fantastic. Yes. What's in there? Here you'll see. Yeah. Uh, try it. I, I can see the blood, it's, but what's in there? It's the uh, Wagyu mix, but I've, what I've done is I've added certain spices and I made a cheeseburger. I don't like a bun. Alan, you're not a meat expert. You don't know a thing about meat. The only thing you know how to do is sit on the computer in there and change menus. That's what you do. And you made this? Yes. It's amazing. That is hideous. At least it's seasoned. This is the burger I'm dying for. Yeah. David, please. Presentation. Uh, it looks great. Thank you, Chef. Explain, please. I'm using a smoked Gruyere with grilled tomato, spring mix with a mustard aioli and a jumbo pickle homemade. What I had earlier, this is this looks night and day. Wow. OK. Look at that. Bloody hell. I mean, that's what I call a burger. Jesus. And how does it taste? It's delicious. Thank you, Chef. The temperature's perfect. And the roll, it's crispy. Yes, Chef. Would you like to have a little taste? I'd love to. <coughs> what is that uh, strong it, taste that I'm tasting? Greer cheese, and it's smoked, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I love it. Does that go through the meat? I taste something stronger in there, like a dry-aged or something beef. But I do like my meat red in it. I, I am a medium rare girl. The problem is that's not medium rare, as it should be. It may be medium, uh, but I can tell you one, it's bloody juicy. That is delicious. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, I'd give that 9 out of 10. Love that title there, by the way, Redemption Burger. And you certainly did that. Suck on this burger, Jen. And you too, Alan. 
Why aren't we serving burgers like that? Because I thought the Wagyu meat was better. You got your priorities wrong. Because the word Wagyu sounds glamorous and expensive, it doesn't mean you say it's going to deliver you the most tastiest burger. My question to you is that if you know that your burgers are better than what you're cooking currently, what the fuck are you doing? I'm forced into making what they like me to make. And right. If I try to do a change, I'm persecuted for making a change. He wants to blame me for everything in the kitchen. Chef. And I'm not that powerful, Chef Ramsey. I'm a 64-year-old woman. I, but, I can't control it, all this, but, what he's saying. How am I that powerful? Do you see a chef hat on me? Do you see me swirling the pans or making the patties or chopping the mushrooms or putting the salt on? I mean, what really frustrates me is the fact that I get served that mediocre crap and that thing is seasoned beautifully. Cheese gives it that little bit of saltiness. Absolutely delicious. Thank you, Chef. Jen? Whatever. Jen? Where's she going? This is ridiculous. David has proven to Chef Ramsay that thing is seasoned beautifully. Absolutely delicious. He can cook a winning burger when he is not confined by Jen and Alan's recipes. Mm. But the chef's success doesn't appear to be appreciated by one of the owners. Jen? Jen? Come on. Where's Jen? Thank you. Jen got up from the tasting because Jen wanted me to be the reason that their pitiful restaurant hasn't made it. Jen, what's the matter? What's wrong? I'm 64 years old. I've, I've been through many, many different situations. Yeah. My situation is to get this restaurant productive and Price. prosperous. It's not about some bully or some fool. But is that why you just walked out? Because my heart hurt. What do I do? Is that a false thing? If I have to sit there and smile and say that, that everything is fine? I can't do that. No, but you just didn't tell me what's going on. That's all. I'm facing a bully who has been abusive to me. Who's, we need to address this. But just for you to get up and walk out, it just looks a little bit weird. I need you. And I think more importantly, mm -hmm. I think Alan does. Yeah? OK, please. Right, I'm, Come on. I, I, OK. I feel a good energy from Chef Ramsay. If I was here to be in a positive place, I felt very comfortable in coming back. OK, Jen's back. Found her. Uh, yeah, she got a little bit upset and she was... Uh... I understand. Well, because I, I, I know that the chef can deliver this kind of burger... Please, should, Davis. ...and should have delivered it before. Why did Jen just walk out the back door? That was a different issue. That's what? got what nothing is the to issue? do. Because Watch you're, me you're, fail. No, because it's got you're a bully. To do. You, you bully. say That's nasty not. things to me. Let me explain something. And to you, I Jen. don't care Jen. what you Jen, say. Jen, you went to my Take it easy. Eight to twelve chefs walk out. Since the day I walked in here, you want me to fail. I think that woman's a shark. If you get in the water with them, you might get your testicles bit off. The reason you walked out the back door is because you wanted Chef Ramsey's fire. Jen, Jen, Jen. Jen. That's why she that is not what? the truth. Right, stop, stop there two seconds. I want to see the place in operation. You running your job, watching you do your job, and you running the kitchen. OK? Once you finish service, we'll talk after that. OK? Delicious. Thank you. Let's go. As the staff prepares for dinner service... One other thing. Alan has something he wants to share with Chef Ramsay. I'd like to give you my book. You got your own uh, cookbook? I wrote a book. You wrote a book? Yeah, I wrote a book. Gentle Satan. It was about my father. My, that's what my mother called him. Is that you on the cover there? That's my father. That's your father? That's me. And did you have a, a bad relationship with him? Oh, yeah, because 34 years ago, he wanted me to stay in Australia and be in his business. And I said, Dad, I don't want to be in their business. Plus, I've met a wonderful girl in New York. I want nice. to move there. He said, if you leave Australia, it'll be the end of us forever. You didn't want to be controlled, right? No, I didn't want to be controlled. Did you love him? It's hard to say. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship. How can you love someone who stabbed you so much in the back? And well, to think that a father would do that to his own son is, is beyond shocking. Um, it sounds like a compelling read. I'll have a read of that tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Bedtime reading. Thank see you. you. Bye. I'll see you later. Bye. Welcome to Burger Kitchen. My name is Alan. I'm the owner. Thank you for coming. 
From the moment Chef Ramsay arrived, he has been hit with a variety of issues. It's now time for dinner service. One, two, three. Let's go. Let's One, go. two, three, let's go, okay? All right, okay, good. And for the first time in a long time, Daniel will be working alongside his father and mother. All right, what can I get you? Can I get a Texas chili burger, please? Sure, how do you want it cooked? Medium, please. Okay, Texas chili, Texas medium, chili. bar. Do that. You got okay. your two tickets. All right. So two Texas chili, one Texas chili. That's it. Just one. Alejandro, Texas chili burger medium. Hey, what are you actually gonna? What, what are you doing tonight? I've been hosting, expediting, okay. serving. Good. A lot. So is your father taking orders as well? No, he's just hosting. No. Okay. So I don't want him to do. I've been wanting him to just stay by the register. Yeah. And just run bills. He doesn't like listening, does he? No one likes no. listening. That beer is rated in the top 10 in California by the leading beer editor. Excellent beer. I didn't want my dad to be host again. He has a breath problem. He does have bad breath. He walks around with bad breath. And I know, I know for a fact, I've seen it. Some of the customers, when he starts talking, they lean back. Every, every beer that's just. Sorry, come on. Don't, leave, don't linger on your team. Please. I'm not. OK, but come on. Doesn't listen. Doesn't listen. OK, Danny. Do you mind if I see you in my office? I did, I'm not here. talking to you. Just, here, just for a second. All I did was greet people. That's fine. I didn't do anything else. I know. Okay, so listen. And I'm happy to take that role. I don't need any other role. Fine, then greet, and then don't linger on the tables. I won't right? linger. We'll You're mistaken about my... You're mom's mistaken. Mom's Alan and Daniel never work together in no. the evening, normally. No. no. And they really get in there and yell. The relationship was that fragmented. No, it's just, it's just how it is. Daniel's dad doesn't listen. No matter how hard you fight, he doesn't understand the word no. He just does it. He doesn't listen to Danny. All right, so where are we at? We're OK. I can't do these tickets like this. There's not enough room for them. All right, it's OK. It's OK. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'm waiting for a breakfast. breakfast that's with turkey meat. meat. Is yes. that breakfast turkey? Yes. No, that's a godfather. It's OK. Hold on, hold on. Don't, 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 don't start. I don't need you second guessing me, Oscar. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to. Despite all the confusion in the kitchen, let's go, guys, pick it up. Burgers are being sent out quickly. Got a breakfast burger here. But that doesn't mean the customers are satisfied with their meal. It's like oozing grease. Yeah, it's really mushy. Oh, okay. And as dinner service continues, yeah. so does the pattern of unhappy customers. I said medium well. Okay, all right, this is not medium well. I'm sorry about that. Oh, shit. Medium well. That's not a medium well. Fucking hell. Guys, this isn't a medium well. And frequent returns to the kitchen. Table 52. This was not supposed to be a junior cheeseburger. It was supposed I'm to not going to say that the food isn't the problem, but the entire ticket system is messed up. It's total chaos. Let me show you something. What does it say? It says junior burger okay, with fries. OK, that's a junior cheeseburger with fries. Let's go with it. What's really screwed up is the okay. ticket system. It's like. Throw me under the bus? Right now? I'm talking about your ticket system. You have the carbons here. The order comes out. You give the carbon to the waiter. They take it to the table. That's it. Final. Done. Simple. You know? It's I don't know. Well, let me run it. I can run it then. You want to run yes, it? Yes, you can go behind there, and I'll run it. Let's see what you can All right. Do. Okay, fine. <sighs> David doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. He looks like a deer in headlights. A trained monkey could take tickets and get them out on time. That's nothing. I've never seen a family that's so worried of being thrown under a bus. No one's being thrown under a bus here, man. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. I will help uh, you out. Thanks, what in the fuck is all this for? All yes, these tickets here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a game of solitaire. Is this what it's like normally? This is, yes. I think this place needs help so bad with the ticketing process. It's hard for the kitchen to really take time and focus on every burger and make it the best. Table two, do they have their fries? Table two? There is no table two. Table fucking two. Jesus, guys, I'm gonna This is 42. 42. That's 42. There's two guests. Why did you say it? It says table right there. Table two. Listen, you're, you're fucked. Does this say table two? It says 42. It, there, there's two people. Don't, table two is not going to have 42 fucking guests. Danny, Come on, big philosophy, man. I'm going to jump over the side and say you knocked your ass out if you don't oh, stop you are, it. Oh, you, you are. You are. Come in right now, man. Come in right now. You don't want to. Get out of here. He wants to fucking fight me. You want to threaten me? You want to threaten me? Get the fuck out right now. Yeah, get Please. out of here. Get, get out, out of right here. now. Get out right now. Me. Get the fuck out right get now. Get out. Out. Done. Get out. Done. You're done. I'm done. You're done. Done. Bye. Done. Goodbye. Out of here. Bye. Goodbye. 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 All right? Done. You fucking threaten me? Get the fuck me. out of here. 
It's 90 minutes into a terrible dinner service. I'm gonna jump over the side of the stage and knock your ass out of you. Know, oh, you are! Her. You I are! You are! Come here right now, man! Come here right now! And Chef David is targeting another member of this dysfunctional family. You wanna threaten me? You wanna threaten me? Get the fuck out right now! You're done! Get the threaten fuck me. out of you here! Get the you fuck out of here! Fuck. You're done! Goodbye! I probably am in the wrong, but I'm not gonna have some crackhead yell at me. Don't do that right now. What the fuck? Dude, it was a miscommunication on the phone. I Vikings. don't care. Just chill, let's Daniel? chill out. Don't, don't yeah, let's Daniel, chill out. Let Danny handle it. I've taken so much shit from so many people, from so many, that, that I just crack. I crack. What's wrong? Oh, he's in there screaming like a maniac. I told him to scream at me, quit acting like a kid. I jump over there and thump his ass. I don't need him acting like that in there. They've got too much confusion going on. You've got Danny, you've got his girlfriend, mm -hmm. you've got the mother, mm -hmm. and you've got the father. Yeah. And none of them go to the top floor. The elevator don't go there, brother. I'm sorry, chef. Did he ask you to leave? Or... Yes, he did. He told me I'm fired. This is the most fucked up place I've ever worked at. The entire family is insane. They're all crazy. I don't know what to say. David, what happened? He threatened me. So he was gonna beat me up. So I fired him. Is it always this crazy? Always? Uh, All right. 14, oh, no. when we needed it, it, less oh, cooked no. fries, and this is too rare. Look at this. Oh, come on. What is this? What was this? That was supposed to be, I'll double check the ticket, but yeah. I think it's a oh, summer set shire. It's supposed to be medium rare. Come on, guys. I'd rather keep them waiting five minutes for something cooked beautifully. While chaos reigns in the kitchen, not surprisingly, the dining room is a disaster as well. Oh, my goodness. There's no customers. Marilyn. They left. Jesus. And they just got up and went? They said they don't want to order anything else. All they had was a root beer float, so I gave it to them on the house. Yeah, I don't know what else sense. to do. Yeah. Take the chair. Yeah. Bloody hell. When a customer gets up second time round and walks out and leaves their food, and now it's terrible. Burger kitchen, burger massacre. With dinner service completely falling apart, Chef David Blaine returns. Hi, Chef. But he hasn't come back to cook. Hey, Jen, you fired me on his $1,000 paycheck right now. California law states that you pay me before you fire me. Just write my check. All right. And I don't want this one to bounce, please. All right, David, we'll try I don't feel like playing handball today with my checks. David is over here, and he wants his $1,000 check because Danny's fired him. Why did Danny fire him? It was, he was right to fire him. He's saying he wants his $1,000 check. The other ones have bounced. Do we have $1,000 to pay right, right, him? You can't talk to uh, him okay, right okay, now. OK, OK, OK. Take it David, easy. as you know, easy. I don't have $1,000 right today, but I can pay you tomorrow. I demand my check because I won't come back here. Who knows tomorrow if you're going to even be here? I'm obviously going to be here. That's obvious, and you know that. You know what? And I don't Good know what to happen. her. Hopefully, you won't be here, man. I'm telling you that. Give me my check and I'll cash it tomorrow. Post it for tomorrow. Fine. You want me to do it, honey? I'll do it. Write a check for $1,000. Jen, take 20 bucks out and go buy you a prescription of Prozac. Oh. It's not necessary. Jen, 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 Jen just no, write the check. No, no, just... no, I need to say this. Please. What do you need to say? What do you need to say? Did Danny give you back the money for the produce you bought this yes, morning? Yes, he did. What did he give you back? He gave me back $100. I also gave you $15 in oh, change. Oh, would you like some money? Well, it didn't take $15 out, minus 20 for your Prozac. We'll be even. Right. We don't it, need to say, say that. Yeah. First of all, Jen had nothing to do with what happened. Danny did so. This isn't about, this isn't between me and Danny at this point. It's not between me and you. It's between me and you and the your use and me the Prozac. Now give me my check. While Chef Ramsay has observed many difficult situations over the years, give me my check. Tonight's dinner service might just be the craziest he has ever seen. Give me my check right David, now and post David, it for tomorrow. David, I'm not playing. I want it. David, I will David, write David, your David, check. Please stop. Please okay, stop this is my check. The, please stop saying please saying please. Go and write the check. I'm not on anything. He's the one that needs this so cold Prozac. I don't even know what it does. What do, we, what do we owe you? What do we owe you? What do we owe you? A thousand dollars. $1,000? Let's pay it up. What Jen is the on. problem? Danny, Jen come had on. nothing to do with her. Oh, come on. She is Danny said he fired you. Uh, does it matter if God fired me? She's the problem. Danny here. fired you, not the me. The problem in this restaurant, my God, is that lady, Alan. How can you blame her for something that Danny did? I'm not blaming her. I just, I'm just telling her she needs Prozac. I'm telling her the truth. To say that she needs Prozac or anything like that, that's below the belt, and it's disgusting, and I've lost all respect for it. 
I'm not on Prozac. Who cares if you're on the fucking Prozac? Yeah. Don't worry about yeah, that. Let's know. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ. Write the check for a thousand. And you can put the money in tomorrow for us? How the fuck can he put the money in? No. I don't think so. Wendy, well, Wendy, no, no, please no. don't get involved right now. These people will never respect him. I'm just over Jen and Alan taking money. They're just fucked up people. I'm sorry, I never have, man. You, you know what I'm you on can't do that. You don't have the money in there, so I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. What? No, I'm, I have to be legitimate. Danny's not giving you any more money. He's already giving you too much, and I'm sorry. That's pissing me it's off. It's not your choice. Alan, please don't yell at a girl. I love it. Alan, please don't yell at a girl. I love it. Man. Please go out. You're too it's not sick. Not your choice. Just go out. It's, it's not okay. Danny's choice either. All right. You aren't even Wendy's, an owner, Wendy. Wendy. This Wendy, is not, not legitimate tonight. time card either. Tonight, and she's a young lady. Please don't yell at her. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you, David. You, and David, for the record, yeah. I'm not on Prozac, dear. I'm, for the record, you should be. Fucking meth heads. What a joke, honestly. No, Marilyn, what's wrong with this one? It's too well done. They ordered medium rare. And it's white in the middle. On a night when 21 dishes are returned. Are you a remake on the mountain? And yet another chef is fired. Are you okay? No. Daniel is devastated. It's just, this is really hard. Yeah. Uh, that was horrendous. Yeah. You alright? I even got threatened to be beaten up, and all I want to do is fucking. Oh, I just want to serve a good burger, you know? I mean, you're 29 years of age, you've got the world on your shoulders, but God's sake, this is crazy. I just can't do it, you know? <laughs> it all hit me like a floodgate. I just, I just started crying. I couldn't take it. <laughs> Come here. Go get outside. Come on. Take over you. Wake up and take over. Let's go. Come <laughs> We're going under. Maybe I should just close the doors. I can't do this. Not this, you know? Bloody hell. God, that's... That's just insane. Oh, man. Previously on Kitchen Nightmares. Get the fuck out right now! Burger Kitchen may have only been open for 16 months, but it has already caused a lifetime of pain. You can't do this, not this, you know? And humiliation. I would be better off as a brain surgeon than you run in this restaurant. This small LA restaurant was the dream of Alan Saffron. Some people have called me a meat sculptor. And he was willing to do anything to keep it open. Where did the money come from? Now, my son Daniel, he inherited some money too. I, I, I was managing his money, so I actually took part of that money. Did your son Daniel know? Well, of course, he knew eventually. What? I kind of forced him into it by oh. taking his money. Unfortunately, a father's dream has become a son's nightmare. My dad still treats me like a child. It almost makes me want to cry. <laughs> 10 menus. More. Over 20. Over, Over 20 different menu changes. Wow. The restaurant is a complete disaster. And son Daniel not only resents his father. I just, I don't trust him anymore. But his relationship with his mother, Jen, has been ruined. Is he doing a natural for 40? Yes, he is doing a natural for 44. Chef Ramsay quickly discovered that the food was horrible. More words for this. Meow, cat food, be disgusting. Then Alan was delusional. The open crashed us terribly. They were also deleting five-star reviews. And the family was falling apart. You didn't even stand up for your wife of 35 right. years. There was also a struggle for power between Jen and what was their 10th head chef, David Blaine. I follow the recipes as I am told by the owners, and if I try to change the recipes, I am tossed out of here. No, he does have a lot of control in the kitchen. That's not true, chef. Then, in a horrific dinner service where customers were miserable. 14, oh, no. we need it, less oh, cooked no. fries, and this is too rare. Look at this. And nobody got along. What does it say? It says junior burger Okay, with fries. that's a junior cheeseburger with fries. Let's go with it. A stressed old Daniel. Table two is not gonna have 42 fucking guests. And a fed up chef David. I'm gonna jump off the side and say you knocked your ass out. Went to war. Oh, you are, you are, you are. Come here right now, man. Come here right now. No, get out of here. You wanna threaten me? You're done, all right? You fucking threaten me? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. You're done. Goodbye. Chef David returned, demanding to be paid. You fired me on his $1,000 paycheck right now. Now give me my check. And to take another shot at Jen. It's between me and you and the Jew juice and Nita Prozac. The evening ended with another fight about money. And you can put the money in tomorrow for us? I, well, me, 
I don't think so. This time between Alan and Daniel's girlfriend, Wendy. Danny's not giving you any more money. He's already giving you too much. And I'm sorry, that's pissing me it's off. It's not your choice. And after a night of complete chaos, Daniel was truly devastated. This is crazy. I can't do it, you know? Look <laughs> outside, come on. Take over you. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Oh, man. Tonight, it's the unbelievable conclusion of Burger Kitchen. What the fuck is that, man? Will Chef Ramsay be able to convince Daniel to stay in the business? It's a disaster. Will the family be able to resolve their differences? No, no, enough! You don't want to miss what happens... How dare you lie? ...when new shocking issues are revealed. You're fucking killing me! It's intense. It's outrageous, and it's the biggest challenge Chef Ramsay has faced all year. <laughs> Don't cry. That's tonight on a special edition of Kitchen Nightmares. Danny, no, shut up! Shut up! What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Nice. 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 Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. Thank you. I just can't thank you enough. I can't do this. I'm sorry. It's not fair, buddy. It's not fair. Yeah. This is the first thing they've asked for. Danny, could be you do more, buddy? Yeah, what the fuck is that, man? Are they treating this like a game? Is this like a game to them? It's like, let's see if we can get them to crack tonight. <laughs> I just want to laugh and I want to cry. That's just insane, you know? Listen, <sighs> I see what you're going through. I understand fully now, OK? It's a disaster. Yeah. I've never seen such a fragmented business. My God. And the chef's like that. Are they even friends to beat me up? I want to take that shit, man. It's ridiculous. I just, I just finally cracked. I didn't think this would happen. When he's been warning me that it's all just being bottled up and you're just going to have a breakdown. Here's the sad news. None of this is your fault. And yet you seem to be the only one taking responsibility. <sighs> Mum and dad are dreaming, you know that. I know. I know. You're feeding their dreams and getting yourself further and further in the shit. And you finally realise what's happening. So you've now got to take the reins. You've got no choice now. You have got to stand up on your own two feet and not tolerate this shit. How do I cry? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I've got your back. Cos I can see what it means to you. Thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you. But you're the only reason I'm staying here, I'm telling you. Thank you. Do you know Thank why? Thank you. Because you're sincere. You actually can pretty much have a pretty big heart. You do. Thank you. Thank you for this. You know, I've never had someone actually, like, help, you know? Thank you. <laughs> Hang on in there, OK? What? After witnessing one of the most dysfunctional restaurants he has ever seen. Good morning. Come in, come in. Please take a seat. Chef Ramsay knows it's time for a not so subtle wake up call. First of all, I wanted to get you out of the restaurant. That was important. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and what better way to do that than bring you to an amazing little theatre and a little show? We all like a show, right? <laughs> Believe me, this is quite a show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the Yelpers. Good morning. Wow, well, there's a lot of Yelpers. Chef Ramsay had the absolute nerve to reach out to Yelpers. They are deliberately attacking my restaurant. Wow, these are the actual Yelpers. Every Yelper lies. They hurt and damage restaurants by doing this. OK, Alan, listen carefully. You were 100% convinced that those negative reviews were part of a conspiracy. Is there a plot against you from Yelp to close this business? No question in my mind. Alan, there's someone I'd like you to meet. This lady is the community manager for Yelp, Katie Burbank. Hi. Alan, I know that you're very frustrated, but they're all real. We're all real. All of our reviews mean something. It's feedback for you to use however you'd like. Hi. Um, I'm a big rooter for you guys. I am. And I wanted to love your burgers so bad. Like, I love burgers. <laughs> and I didn't. 
came in expecting to spend $26 on an amazing burger. It uh, wasn't amazing. I was expecting an explosion of flavor, but I pretty much didn't taste anything. What I got in the burger was an extremely unflavorful, huge piece of meat that had the consistency of a nasty loaf of meatloaf. I absolutely detest what's served at your restaurant. I'm not like an avid Yelper. In fact, I created the account just to comment on your place because that burger was so disappointing. In the end, it was a big poo smear of a horrible experience. I too signed up for Yelp just to write a review, and it was the one and only Yelp review we have ever written. Interesting that customers are purposely opening accounts to post a comment. Wrote a review, I received a response from you that basically told me I didn't know what I was talking about, and it was essentially my fault that I had a bad review. I wrote my review on Yelp only to be met with sort of a barrage of emails from you. And you told me that you thought we were good competition and you told me that you thought we were out to get you. you at one point you threatened to turn us over to the hate crime division of the LAPD. Instead of saying, sorry, come back in, I will make it better. It was kind of an attack. And to me, it felt like maybe this place is hopeless because they're not taking the criticism. Like, is this place doomed? Um, Jen, am I keeping you up, darling? Would you like a blanket? I was angry at my mom for falling asleep. I don't know what she was trying to pull there. We've been here 10 minutes, and I'd like you to look good. But to watch you sit there and snore, I think is the height of bad manners. I was incredibly frustrated. I thought, this is not going to work. Unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. They're customers. No, 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 no. You're missing my point completely. This is what's driving me nuts. Every single one of these people here, everyone, you, 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 enough, you, you enough, everything. enough of this. This is ridiculous. You have to stop caring about Yelp. He's trying to get you Sorry. off of this shit, man. You're What's missing my no, point. No, I'm not missing the point. You are so obsessed with this becoming five stars, four stars. No. It's an arbitrary number, man. You're concerned about this so much. And these people are actually honest and they told you that they have a terrible fucking time. Oh, Danny, Danny, this is ridiculous. You make excuses. Danny, I don't Danny, care about Danny, Yelp. Danny, I only care about Danny. food. Delivery okay. No, no, enough. Chef Ramsay gathered Yelpers to prove to the family and to the staff the real damage they have caused to the reputation. You were 100% convinced that those reviews were part of a conspiracy. And to show Alan that this is not a conspiracy. No, 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 you're missing my point. Enough, 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 enough of this is ridiculous. And these people are actually honest and they told you that they have a terrible fucking time. Danny, Danny, this is Danny, ridiculous, Danny, you make excuses. Danny, I don't Danny, care about Danny, Danny, I don't care about Danny, food. Danny, Danny, Danny. No, no, enough. I'm afraid to talk now, especially the way my what? son blasted me. Alan, he didn't blast you, he just told you that you're worrying about the wrong things. OK, there's someone I'd like you to meet. The owner and the executive chef of the foundry on Melrose, Eric, good morning, sir. Eric's going to give a little insight to how he deals with Yelp. You know, one of the things that I think you always have to be very careful of when it comes to Yelp is you can't look at these and take them as personal attacks and, and try to adjust them. But at the end of the day, it's not personal. If it was personal, they'd come up and tell it to your face. You know, I get one-star reviews. I get five-star reviews. I get the whole board. You know, even my, my grilled cheese sandwich. Everybody says it's the best sandwich around. People, I have Yelp reviews that say it's the worst sandwich they've ever had. Now, what do I do? Do I change the grilled cheese? No. But if 18 people tell me my burger is under seasoned, 18 of them are telling me that, there's got to be a problem. And it's worth looking at. And like he said, if there's 18 complaints about one particular item, trust me, we've got it wrong. So we move and we change course. We take Yelp as an advantage to reposition ourselves. And we listen to a consensus. That's what we do. The only thing I ever get wrong on is I don't like unfairness. I was focused on that wrongly, and I apologize. Look, any review that you get from somebody is feedback. And if you're too obsessed about why they're saying it and not what they're saying, you're going to find yourself in trouble. Thank you. Chef Ramsay, maybe I'm obsessed and I'm wrong. I agree with you. I'll never, ever speak about this again. And I appreciate it enormously because I hope we can learn from this and improve. Hopefully, something got through to my dad, but he's stubborn. The guy has a gift of blissful ignorance. A gift. We have to get back to the restaurants, and uh, we've got a lot to do. I trust you're going to give us one more go. 
Burger Kitchen. And thank you for your patience this morning, giving up your day uh, to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Now that Chef Ramsay has gotten through to Alan about his so-called Yelp conspiracy. Forget it. Okay. Gone, gone from my Good. mind. We're over Yelp. Yay! He now moves on to a much bigger problem of the restaurant. There's something else that I need to talk to you all about. There is so much tension in this restaurant from this family. It is extraordinary. And the only way this business can move forward is if we clear the air. First of all, who runs the restaurant? Who's in charge of the restaurant, really? By default, it seems that I am. I don't want to be. Come on. You're serious. He wanted full control. He wanted full control. That's the Because for exactly he can do what he That's wants. That's exactly what I'm saying. When is it fucking higher? Let me ask you this then. Do you not trust Daniel? I, I trust him 100%. Of course, Wendy believes I don't. Why don't you trust your father? What is the one big reason that you don't trust him? I don't trust you because of how you opened this restaurant. I put in 250,000. You put in 250,000. That's a total of 500,000. Dad, I never put 250,000 into this. So you didn't give permission for your father to sort of look after? No, 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 never. I want to be on the paperwork. I want evidence of how much I actually own. That's Did why I put it with the account. <laughs> well, it's always the same excuse, you know? Maybe we need a new accountant. Danny is getting taken advantage of, and he's being worked his ass off, and he's not even given a chance to even, like, feel bad. Excuse me, Wendy. You don't have a right to be cruel. I'm tired of this what, shit. What, are you a rude person constantly? You get paid, he doesn't. Wait, Wendy, There's no what? cash in the cash register. Oh, what do I get paid? Get paid. Name it. Get paid. Prove it. Prove it. Go look at the Go books. look at the checkbook. Go and get right the checkbook right now. Yeah. I have not been paid. I repay the loan. No, Dan gets paid. For my rent. And you've got 160,000 in the Dan fucking bag. Dan can his rent with his own money. But he can make How dare you lie? I haven't, I've not been off the salary already. Get the salary book. Oh, go. Danny, Danny, he's only going to put it when she no, takes her money. Not. That sucks, man. We in cash, they take from the cash register, and then they say they repay themselves. This is a constant thing. You are a liar. I'm not a liar. Wendy, why are you I have so to. nasty? I have to. Have you ever thought about giving him anything for the money? I you haven't got any fucking money, you idiot. Don't you dare wait, lie to me. Wait, wait. You know what? That's because you're taking it all. Stop oh, attacking me. You're an outright liar. Enough. You get paid, he doesn't. You're a liar. Chef Ramsay has called a family meeting to clear the air. Have you ever thought about giving him anything for the money? I haven't got any fucking money, does? you idiot. But it's quickly turned into a battle between Daniel and Wendy. You know what? That's because you're taking it all. And Alan and Jen. You're an outright liar. Wait, wait, wait. Listen to yourself. This is someone I love very much, and the way you treat her is like shit. And as long as you and Dad dislike her, as long and Wendy, as long as you dislike them, this will never, That's right. ever, never. Ever, 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 ever work. Daniel. What do you want? No, seriously, what do you want? That's a very good question. What does Daniel want? Daniel, yeah, what, what do you, you want? want? No, seriously, what do you want? I want you guys to stop, like, making excuses and, and, and going back on lies and, and trying to win. You don't need to win. You, you know, you don't need to be right all the goddamn time. All you have to admit is that, you know, all you have to admit is that what you did was wrong. What you did was really, really wrong. Look, Just Danny, like Danny, Danny. Go, shut up! Shut up! I live in this, like, depressed fucking world, you know, and all three of you on the side are just killing me, man. You're fucking killing me, you know? You really are. You really, really are. I, that's, I, no, no, no. I cannot do any more. Okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I just want, I just, I'm asking for like a, a week, a day. I want to know what you want. I what do you want? I just want the three of you to get along. I can't get that. along with her. You can't, can't get along with her. No. I can't. So for the sake of the family and the potential 
business. Can't you just give him that? Does he not deserve that now? How do I do that? When I, I, I don't do believe you, in that. Well, how do I? You're asking me how you get along. Be civilized. Don't fight and just learn to walk away. We're in a dreadful predicament. And it's festered and got so much worse. And it's so sad to see a family ripped apart with the viciousness. It is not necessary. You have to change your ways, both of you. I got told to get back and read this. My book. You wrote a book? Yeah. Gentle Satan. It was about my father. That's what my mother called him. I stayed up to 4 o'clock this morning because it's almost like I was living it live. Mm. Yeah, I was seeing a reenact of the same scenario. I mean, let me read you a few uh, extracts. He hated being called out on his behavior, especially by his son. I was caught in a tug of war between my mother and father. Does this sound familiar? Yes. He didn't listen to anyone else's opinion and he did as he chose in his business ventures. Come on. The way you describe your father, it's exactly the way Daniel would describe you. And I'm sorry to tell you this, but you've got to listen. It's, it's a sequel, but it's live and it's going on in these four walls. Yes, it is. Like father, like son. I see exactly what Chef Ramsay has brought up. I mean it. I was wrong. It's irrelevant of everything else. But I apologize to both of you. With all of my heart, I have done the wrong thing. If we can't get together, we might as well just close the door now. That's the smartest thing you've said since I've been through these doors. We need to draw a line in the sand, forgive and forget, and move forward. And that's exactly what Daniel's asked you to do. I will do my best. Forget the business. The most important thing in life is family. Now, maybe we can begin, yeah, and moving forward, and focus on the restaurant, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard for a father to do that, to admit to a son that he made a terrible mistake, and I admitted it. I want to freeze this moment because it's the first actually like time that you three of you have actually gotten along for more than like you a listen, 15 listen seconds. Listen to me, listen to me. I swear on my life I meant every last word, every last word of what I meant. I believe it. There is no question in my mind this day should have happened long ago. After what appears to be a major breakthrough with the family, Chef Ramsay can finally turn his attention to the food. So we're going to go through and train, OK? So we know how to cook a burger, OK? Let's do a new classic burger. First of all, a nice seasoned, lightly brushed oil. And the nice, exciting thing about these burgers is freshly ground meat. 15% fat, so they're full of flavor. Something your frozen burgers were lacking. Guys, I want you guys to learn everything. I feel like I'm learning a lot watching Chef Ramsay. Medium rare, medium, and well done. He's gonna take all of that information and run the restaurant as best as I can. On top, and then back. Okay, let's go. Okay, ladies, take a slice and dig in. The new blend of the special burger with uh, Chef Ramsay's touch. That's very nice. It's a pretty fabulous burger. This is amazing. Wow. Is... So good. <laughs> this is amazing. The price good, too. The burger that we had was way better than our old frozen patties. That's a classic burger. We put it on the yeah. special in place of the classic tonight. But that's just the first step. We have a million more miles to walk. I know it's just a small change, but it's in the right direction. OK, yeah. classic burger. The mood is already different for tonight's dinner service. Just stay intense with the specials. Daniel is clearly inspired. Hey, Chef. How okay. You doing? By Chef Ramsay. There's only one person expediting. Daniel. Okay. You give an answer. Yes, Chef. Yes. Yes. It made me feel great when uh, Chef Ramsay seemed to have the confidence in me to run things. But I really, really hope that my parents step aside. Welcome to Burger Kitchen. 
Okay, we are running a special tonight. Um, we're doing a new ground chuck steak blend burger. And then it also comes with fries. I'm gonna try the special. The special, please. Two okay. of the classic specials. Yeah. Okay. Order up, two specials right now. And then our regular stuff, a California yeah. and an Eiffel. So let's get those onion rings out now. Gotcha. Plate all those fries for the special right now. We got three going out. Perfect. You're about to see a fucking miracle. Took some work. Come on. Let's go. First, first classics out. They want a medium rare. Yeah. Thanks to Daniel's leadership in the kitchen, food is making its way out to the dining room. This special? Fancy. And while Chef Ramsay's special is a hit, the natural with white cheddar. The ground beef is not very good. It's very bland. Items from the old menu are getting the same old complaints. Uh, the jalapenos are too spicy. No one's going to put that in their mouth. Huh? How's the tongue get served like that? I know, but we have to embrace change now, man. Yes. Got to change. Got to change. Okay. Jalapeno. I'm going to need you to drop sweet potato fries, regular fries. What hasn't been made? There's lots of fucking sides. Oh my god. We have no organization, no system. Everything just became a clusterfuck again. I need a uh, one. Did you get those onion rings to table 12 ever? Hello? I hope so. I put them out. You put them yeah, out? Yeah, you take the onion rings already. Uh, let me see. This system is so fucked up, dude. So two sweet, one fry. No, one sweet, two fry, one potato skin, one yes. onion ring. There we go. Let's get back on track right now. OK, onion rings, good. I need, oh, perfect. While Daniel is on his way to reorganizing the kitchen. Where's those onion rings? Onion rings on the fly, please. You just repeated exactly what I said. Alan feels the need to step in and help. Stay at your position. I am. Stay at your position. My dad keeps going back to that same old thing. Where's the? The confidence, I want to be confident. OK, we're missing onion rings for table 12. Please, Dad. He's stubborn, and he's unwilling to change. It's very infuriating. Let me stick these two burgers. Four. 42. OK. Table um, 42 has been waiting for a very long time. We just sent their order out. If he continues to come back here and ask for onion rings or whatnot, I'm done. He needs feedback, but just rather than you go in there, they've been waiting. How long? 24. It's just gone. Just so we've got to. Gotta get in that spirit of working for each other, you know that. Okay, I understand. So going in there and dropping negatives after negatives after each other. And I'm trying, I really, after the no, day, I need I'm to trying not. I need to try in a different way. He's your son, he's not your chef, he's your son. Servers? Servers! Chef Ramsay is right, like father, like son. OK, everyone's doing a great job. We're getting out much faster than we were last night. And i got to stop it right now, because I don't want my son to be like me and in turn pass it on to his child. With Alan taking a back seat. That's it. Specials are all sold. That's all. I think we're done. Daniel pushes the last orders out. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Let me say one thing. At least that was better than last night. Yeah, from last night, yeah. Um, was I proud of tonight? No, there's still a lot that we need to You're improve. Right. Yeah, I agree. But do you know what? That's a, a great position for you in there, because you're in control. And you sound and look like an owner. OK? Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow we are saying goodbye to the past, and we are relaunching this restaurant. i got some serious work to do. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you, Chef. Thank OK? You. Thank you. Good night, Chef. Coming up. Alan has an emotional breakdown. Don't cry. Come on, don't cry, don't cry. Find out what's behind the tears. <laughs> and will Daniel lead the new burger kitchen successfully? Go. Or will the father-son battle resume? I told you not to go near the system. After a draining few days, Chef Ramsay's crew works through the night to transform this nondescript restaurant into a trendy LA hangout. Let's go, good morning. Hi, good morning. Let's be honest, yesterday, we clearly took a big turn for the good. Today, it's about saying goodbye to the past and opening the door to the new chapter of the Burger Kitchen. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Oh, my god, look at that. It's unbelievable. Welcome to the new Burger Kitchen. So cool. Ah. Let's start off with those amazing new murals on the wall. Look at them. No more ugly green walls. No more ugly green walls. <laughs> the atmosphere beforehand was so depressing. It's unbelievable. Oh <laughs> now we have pop art. They're hip, they're cool, and they're very trendy. Oh, incredible. 
This is unbelievable. Oh my God, no more booths. Wow. This, is this is incredible, Danny. Over here is a chalkboard where we can go and have some fun on there. So oh. cute. We are only as good as our last burger. Oh. It's interactive. You can leave messages that you can recommend. Wow, 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 wow. It's unbelievable. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm shocked. shocked. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm very. I just. It looks great. It, I honestly feel that this place has urban street appeal. I sound like a tool saying that, but that's the industry. You have to look hip and you have to look cool. Do you feel like you can bring your girlfriends now? Finally. Yes. Finally. <laughs> I'm like happy to work here. Happy. It no longer looks like tacky cheese ball '80s disgustingness. It looks like a trendy cool restaurant. So, in keeping with the trendy dining room, I want to introduce you to a very cool, state-of-the-heart, unique point-of-sale system. This thing is extraordinary. Oh, oh my God. It's provided by Zephyr Hardware, and it is POS Lavo. It is incredible. Ladies, you're at the table with your wireless touch screen oh, device. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, that's how you place the order. You just press it, but it comes up in front of them. And the kitchen gets the information. No more running around with the tickets, stressing out to hell. What in the fuck are all these tickets here? This is ridiculous. It's like a game of solitaire. I, I'm like speechless. You can swipe credit cards. Inventory can be checked out against your purchasing. You bring in the beers, it gets entered in, and you get a daily stock take. Unbelievable. You can monitor it from your wireless computer anywhere in the world. And no one in your area has this. Wow. 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 I can't thank you enough. I really can't. I can't thank you enough, man. This is... <laughs> don't cry. Come on. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. You all right? Alan, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, you sure? So fantastic. Well, I just wanted to liven the place up a little bit and bring some, some excitement in here. Get rid of that depressing green wall. Come on. Oh, it's incredible. It was nice to see my dad show some emotion. It was. He genuinely seemed happy. He really actually seemed happy. This is incredible. This is 100,000 times better. I just can't wait for people to walk in the door. Now that Burger Kitchen has a cool new look, Chef Ramsay has come up with a menu to match. Uh, take your menu, pass them along, please. Have a look at menu number 23, oh, everybody. And it's so nice. It's a keeper. And it looks great. It's small, it's dynamic, and more importantly, it is delicious. Wow. Right, here we go. Nibbles. OK, we have sweet potato fries, all-natural fries, parmesan fries, and they are hand-cut. <gasps> delicious. Next to that, we have a vodka battered onion rings. Delicious for the table. Vodka battered. Wow. That's a, that's a damn good idea. Wait till you taste them. Burgers. Start off with the classic America. We've got that amazing pate. 15% fat, short rib, chuck, and a 10% dry age. Just to keep you quiet. <laughs> That's good, I like not touch that recipe, let me tell you. No, it's a look, it's a great yeah. recipe. Oh my god, if he touches it. Keep your paws off it. Oh. <laughs> Put your right hand up. I, Alan, will not change the pate. I, Alan, swear to God, I will change nothing. Lovely, excellent. Yes, yes, finally. <laughs> okay, we've got the most amazing lamb burger. Delicious, low in fat. And this one's done with a really classic tzatziki sauce. Next to that, a Western beef pate, sharp cheddar, delicious fried onion rings, and that's served with a very rich homemade barbecue sauce. I love this. I love this. Asian persuasion, yes, Asian style beef pate, teriyaki glaze with a delicious Asian slaw. Can we eat? I want to eat. I want to try this food. <laughs> Take your knife and forks, dive in, and enjoy. Oh, the flavors are so good. Those are freaking bomb. Those are bomb. Like out of control, good. Wow. You'd be stupid to think it's not good. It's fabulous. <laughs> oh, God, just come running here immediately. It's one of the best burgers I've ever tasted in my life. It's sensational. I will never need to change the menu again. Mm, mm, mm. Well. Clearly, Burger Kitchen now has something it never had, a sense of hope. OK, ready? The Chef Ramsay has some important news to share with the staff. Tough week. And as you all know, we've been through some major changes. And we have made a significant, a significant step in the right direction. You know that in a year and a half, this restaurant managed to sort of self-inflict its dwindling reputation. But tonight, you have a big second chance. 
is not only relaunch night, but I have filled this restaurant with... It's relaunch night at the Burger Kitchen. Tonight, you have a second chance. And the pressure is already on, but Chef Ramsay has some important information to share. It's not only relaunch night, but I have filled this restaurant with serious bloggers. Coming to dine tonight, Yelp, Tasting Table, Chow, Urban Spoon, Serious Eats LA, and Blackboard Eats. This is the night. You can transform this business. All or nothing. There's no rehearsal. So get real and get a grip. We are now getting together an enormous amount of critics all in one night. We deliver. We're set for life. We cannot screw up at all. Daniel. Yes. Anything you want to say to the team? Here's how it's going to work tonight. Dad, you're going to be behind the bar. Don't host tonight. I'll be expediting. Mom, you can host tonight. Just okay, sit there. Boss. Good luck, everybody. Let's, let's go. Let's do this, guys. Come on, let's do this, all right? You guys ready? Make me proud. Hi, how are you? Welcome to Burger Kitchen. Thank you for coming. Brand new redesign, new menu. I'm sure you'll have a great time. California Cajun. Alrighty. How would you like it cooked? Slutty. I'm gonna do the classic American. The classic? Good Number choice. One. I can't even believe this is the same restaurant. 2011. Uh, I know, right? Finally. Yeah. The new POS is fantastic. Makes me happy. It's gonna make me more positive when I see tables. Can you please stop texting? <laughs> is it really bothering you? Uh, first order is it. Are you expedited? Yes, Good. Excellent. We have got to step up tonight. We got a juicy Lucy. Well, we need to just focus on what I told everyone to do. First order ready. ready. And if they do that, I think we'll be doing great. Vine swine. Up. Truffles. Start taking them. Come back. Just come back one by one. The kitchen is off to a fast start. It was for you. And the divine swine. And burgers are making their way out to the diners. Wow. This is so good. These things are phenomenal. I can eat those soft batter. And the early reviews are promising. It's really good, yeah. There's your classic, there's your Western. Come back for your sauces and come back for your pork. And even though Daniel has the kitchen running smoothly. Excuse me, Danny. What? We are missing onion rings and house pickles at the bar. OK, you heard that? Onion rings and house pickles for the bar. Alan has left his post at the bar and is back where he is not wanted. 31 brownie. Fast, how their onion rings Please are going, Please go away, Dad. Please. Please move. Daniel wanted me just behind the bar. But the bottom everything? line is, you can't stop me going to mingle with the customers. How is everything over here? OK, OK? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm an owner. I'm not a vegetable. I was going to get you another helping. Someone said you were still hungry. <laughs> I got dessert covers. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Dad. I, I can arrange Dad, for a Dad, double burger. Dad, Dad, Dad. Yes. Behind the bar, please. Yeah, thank you. OK? Alan was bothering tables, and he gets in the way, and it's, it's too much. How is the order coming for the no, bar? No, you behind the bar. Behind the bar. For this place to succeed, Alan needs to go. Are you sure 31? There's no one at 31. Bring it back. Bring it back to me. Ice cream cookie, you got it. Danny, okay. this is for 31. There's no one at 31. There's a 31. That's 31 there with the four gentlemen. Please stay at the bar. Do you see how you mess, totally mess things up? There's no 31. That's 31. Oh. Do not to go near Thank you, I the didn't, system. I didn't know it was not changed. Do not go near it. OK, fine. Just stay fine. at Julia the bar. didn't understand. Stay at the bar. We're not going to worry about it. Stay at the bar. Okay, stay at the bar. Daniel is now focused on his father instead of the kitchen. Two California medium rares. Where's Dan? 12 order. Is that coming up? 12. We don't even have a 12. And unsupervised burgers are making their way out to influential bloggers. Where's, uh, where's Daniel? I mean, don't come over here. I'm not, I, don't have no I have to come over to get beer. This is a huge night for us, and my dad is driving me crazy right now. If he continues to get us all off our game, then it's really, really bad. Yeah. This is too rare. This is too rare. Yeah. Okay. Let me have him fix this one, then. Sorry. Yeah? What Just do we got? It. This is too rare. She wanted medium rare. Oh, room. look at this. Come on, guys. Oh. Look what you're doing to us. It's raw! Fuck! Slow down and focus! 
its relaunch night at the Burger Kitchen. And while Daniel's attention is diverted to his father, stick to the plan. Where's Dan? Food is still managing to go out. Yeah. This is too rare. Well, let me have him fix this one then. But unfortunately, without Daniel's quality control, a burger is coming back. This is too rare. Do you want an medium? Oh, burger? look at this. Come on, guys. Look, look what you're doing to us. It's raw. Slow down Absolutely. and focus. You see what important is keeping behind the fucking bar? Yeah. Please go away, Dad. Please. OK, fine. fine. Your dad's so dead set in his way. He's not doing any benefit but causing mayhem. Yeah. It's just, and it's irrelevant. When you're expediting, you're at the helm. But what you did to Dad is exactly what you've got to do more of. That kind of triggered something in me. And I said, you know what? Chef Ramsey is very, very talented, and he believes in me. Oh, yeah? yeah, refried okay. that classic America medium rare 43. I really have to take the reins. It's the only way the place is going to work. I need that pork and Asian as fast as possible. Refire. Go. With Daniel back in control of the kitchen. Jalapeno for 43. I need my fries, my chips, and my fried pickles. And his father entrenched at the bar. Orders are correctly making their way to the hungry critics. Here we go. So sorry about that. That should be how you like it now. And the dining room is full of rave reviews. That's great. So much better. There you go, boss. OK, good. That's it for tickets, then. Bye. 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 Tonight, we took a major step forward, let me tell you that. And the Burger Kitchen is on its way. This restaurant can work, but we cannot afford to go back to our old ways. And the minute we do, we're screwed. Jen and Alan, Daniel has proven to me he has the capabilities of running this place. He's amazing. Thank Absolutely. you, Chef. Let him do it. With all due respect, this is Daniel's Russian to run. And there can only be one leader. You cannot interfere and intervene. I will not. Promise? I promise. My son has always made a good impression with people, but Chef Ramsay saw more than that and more than even I saw, that my son could lead and run a restaurant. And I'm sorry, but this is the best advice okay. I can give you. All I want to say is this. I am thankful to you. Well, I'm grateful. Everything that's happened, because now I feel like we've got a makings of a success, yep. and I give it to my son with yep. the greatest joy. Wow. Thank you. And I know your heart's in the right place. Well, Chef Ramsay is right. I know that my son can handle it after watching him in the relaunch of our new restaurant. That was a job well done. Would you mind if I have a two-minute conversation with Daniel, please? Yes, of course. Thank you very Look much. Look after yourself. Yeah, for sure. OK. A few words of advice. Yeah, my father died at 53. Get a chance to say what I needed to say and make up with him before he passed away. You may never forget what he did to you, but you have to forgive him and you have to move on. Yeah. Okay? Don't forget. I won't. I won't. But forgive. Okay? okay. Yes? Yes. Make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll do that. I believe in you. And wow. I, I. I know. <laughs> that's, that's, I know. Wow. You can't make this a success. Good luck. Okay. It felt really good. It's every single emotion you would feel when someone of that caliber, you know, puts that on you and says, you, you can do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Wow, this is definitely the most exhausting kitchen nightmares I've ever done. Daniel may have been dragged into the business, but right now, he's the only one who can save it. He has all the tools to make it work, he just needs to be left alone to do it. 22 menus. Wow. What a week. After Chef Ramsay left. There you go, guys. Enjoy. Alan and Jen kept their promise and left the business in Daniel's hands. Danny is in charge. I am passing the rain. 
100% to him. Under Daniel's leadership, Maryland, run this to 21. Jalapeno turkey, divine swine. The Burger Kitchen is generating a ton of positive buzz in the neighborhood as the go-to place for an awesome burger. This is tasty. I like the spot. Everything all made in-house. Chef Ramsey did more than anyone could ask for. He'd save in his restaurant, and he'd save the relationship I have with my family. <laughs> Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon travels to a sunny California eatery where there may be joyous Greek dancing, but there's a dark cloud hanging over the restaurant. Wow, there's a lot of conflict here. I can feel it. Father and son are being torn apart by a mysterious secret that threatens the business. Never discussed it, never talked about it, but it hurt. The father is tired and overworked. Are you in No. No, no, he might not admit it, but he is. And his standards have gone to rot. Just smell that. Just smell inside that. It smells. Yes. It's good. You're sick. The son is hungering to step in and help. I know I can make it better than ever. But his dad refuses to give him a shot. Everything all right, Becca? Get out. It's a stalemate that has the entire business suffering. A taste of grease. Yeah, a taste of greasy. The kitchen has no leader. Do you not tell them anything? Do you not say anything to the chefs? What do you want me to say? The food has no flavor. The bull is very blood. And the diners have nothing but complaints. They didn't like it. Worst they ever had. Can Gordon uncover the truth? Something's happened, and you better tell me what. I don't have to say nothing. Or will the secret stay buried? Talk to Mike. I don't know what happened. And along with it, any chance for success? It's my big, fat, great nightmare. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. The Ventura Harbor in Southern California, an oceanfront playground that attracts throngs of tourists and locals. It's this ideal location that drew Mikey Michelados and his wife, Lynn, to open a Greek restaurant just steps from the water. Hello. Welcome to the Greek. From day one, when we opened the restaurant in 1994, it was a success. Oh my gosh, really good. We did great. It was always busy. Whoop. Uh, All ready, guys. Let's start in. My dad, he had that old school Greek work mentality, just go, 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 and the kitchen was always running very smoothly. I need a large pan, because I'm gonna cook some onion. I felt my American dream come through. Make me feel like very successful, very, very good. But as time went on, my dad's standards have dropped. Okay, I got it complete. Hey guys, they said the keftethers were rock hard. Yeah. Huh? He's been working 365 days a year for 17 years. He's just burning out from being here so long. It was rubbery. What do you mean rubbery? I don't know. On the Arthur, bottom, it's no rubbery. Mikey, I mean, he hardly anymore is making sure that everything is cooked to perfection. Put it up, put it up. Mikey, that's not good. It hurts me when I see our level drop because the standards are not high enough. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, the lamb was very dry. It all looks like it came out of a cafeteria. Mikey's really let a lot of things slip through the cracks. The calamari was really, really... I taste the calamari. It was good. Well, it's not Mikey, OK? And that's why our business has declined. Not very many people around. The situation is frustrating, but I want to change this place. I want to make it better. I haven't learned everything, but I will. I know I can. I mean, I'm very capable, and I know I can make it better than ever. Thank you. My dad has a hard time listening to other people sometimes because this is what he created, but I'm here to help. I mean, he wants to make sure I'm 100% ready, but I can't be 100% ready if, if he doesn't allow me to be. I need your help. Opa. Eris is a super creative person. He's a great entertainer, great people person. Opa. But at the same time, how are you going to help run a restaurant if you don't know the kitchen? To run this restaurant, you have to come back here at this kitchen and Eris did not have done this before. Opa. This restaurant is not only my father's legacy, it's all of our legacy. We've all worked together, and I've seen the profit pretty much diminish until it's been non-existent. How much money do we have in our account right now? We're getting low, we're getting low. I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's like we work our asses off, and we don't make any money. It's hard. 
Oh, my God. I'm just hoping that Chef Ramsey will help us get this restaurant to be the success it deserves to be. I don't want what we've spent years building up to be lost. I just don't want that to happen. Wow, look at this place, absolutely stunning. On the water, it's almost like a little slice of the Mediterranean. I'm fairly busy as well. How on earth can a restaurant fail in this spot? Dying to find out what's been going on. It's huge. Great food on the water. Hello. Well, hello. How are you? I'm excellent. And first How name are is? You? Lynn. Lynn Gordon, nice to see you. Um, owner. Yes. Brilliant. Uh -huh. And My you husband, run the business? Mikey and I. You run it with your husband? Uh huh. Yeah, Gordon. How are you doing? And there he is. This is Eric, oh. our son. Hello. Nice to meet you. By the way, good to see Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm not so. Why don't you get your father and sure. let's sit down and have a catch up? I'm really happy to see Chef Ramsey and I hope he's pretty nice to my voice. Not too nice. <laughs> okay, um, A, I'm very happy to be here. B, I'm dying to find out what's wrong with the place. How could a restaurant not work when it's sat on the water? Right, okay, Mum. Uh, 17 years, it was very successful, and we did very, very well. So when did it start to turn? The last couple of years, no profit. No profit, yeah. yeah. Wow. OK, um, and how often are you here? <laughs> well, I work 14 hours a day, seven days a week, but... Seven days a week? Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. Serious? That's crazy. It is crazy. He's been doing it too long. He's burnt out, and he might not admit it, but he is. Are you burnt out? No. 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 Are you going to sit in that kitchen till you drop? I mean, uh, where's the succession? Is the goal to groom Aris to take over, or...? No. No. Well, I'm here, and I'm doing all the, a lot of stuff right now. I mean... Sure. Do you work um, in the kitchen? I don't, but that's one of my goals. I want to learn the kitchen. It's one of my... I'm glad you're here, because I want to learn more stuff, and... Mm -hmm. Do you teach him how to cook? No. Really? Why? Is he not good enough? Are you that much of a control freak? No. No. Is he not no, committed? I, well, I was thinking. I feel like I'm pulling teeth back, here. Back in my mind, I expect him to be more here than he was. So he's not committed. He's just getting the passion. He never really wanted when he graduated uh, college. I never thought I would do he it. He didn't want to be part of our business. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm here, just trying to save this place, and it's just. Are you committed now? Are I you? am committed here. I am. You are. Yes, I am. I understand. Like, yeah, I haven't been here at times, but. I need Chef Ramsey to prove to my dad that I'm ready to do whatever it takes to make this place run better and smoothly, and it's time for big changes. This is the time. So how would you rate your food out of 10? What would you give it? My food, I'd give it 10. 10? Yes. <laughs> right. Let me eat. Let me uh, get the grips. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Likewise, and um, OK. All the recipes that I have for the Greek food came from Greece. A lot of people, when they visit Greece, they come here and they tell me the food is better here than Greece. I think Chef Ramsey is going to like my food. Yes. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? How are you? My name is Dimitri. Dimitri, good to see you. Where are you from? You. I'm from uh, Greece, Sparta. Nice. How long have been here? And this restaurant, almost 15. Wow, 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 wow. So time. you know everything. Everything. First, the calamari. The calamari is going to be heaven, or it's going to be hell. Exactly. Shit. OK. <laughs> Let's try the calamari. OK. And, and do you know what? I'll have the uh, hot the sample. sample. The platter. The platter? OK. Yeah. And I'll take the cold platter as well. I'd like to see that. I want to see as much as possible. OK. Anything else? I'll have the moussaka with egg the beef. castle with okay. the beef. Yeah. With the beef. Brilliant. I think we're done. Thank you. I'm very excited. San Francisco, the guy is smart. And Mikey, he needs to see when the food is not good, when everything's not good. Calamari appetizer, make it. Heat the olive oil and put onions and bell peppers with the wine. You guys do what I say. Mikey's a very proud person. He does not take criticism well. But Jeff Ramsey's here to help. He's not here to compliment. Mmm. Nice tables. Why would you cover them? Dreadful tablecloths. Bloody hell. The decor is hideous. I haven't seen chairs like this since their banquet 30 years ago, my grandma's 80th. Is that a disco ball up there? Saturday night fever. 
In fact, it's like there's two disco balls up there. <laughs> What's going on in here? It was like going back to 1970. OK. That, that's a glamour. OK. And we're Same. looking at heaven or hell? Oh, dear. And this is our cold platter. OK, okay great. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you. It's greasy. It looks like I'm having a hell day, right? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not good. Yeah. It's terrible. Oh, Sorry. dear. Can I take it away? Mm, quickly. I know. <laughs> Damn. How was the calamari? Oh, good. Very greasy. People love it. Yeah, it's very greasy. Very popular. That's a strange looking hummus. Seriously. No, the only way to eat that is this straw. Mm. <laughs> mm. Seriously, I mean, honestly. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I mean, Greek dips. It looks like six plates of Greek dog shit. That's what it goes in like. Imagine what it's going to come out like. Mikey, the Greek restaurant, the hummus is the most important. He ate it with a straw. I mean, you have to be really idiot to make the, the hummus watery. This is our hot sampler. Wow. OK. Jesus. Meatballs are cold in the middle. Falafel. Look like they've been sat on by a fucking Greek goddess. Yeah, no. And the filler paste, a lot of filler paste, but hardly anything in them. Yeah. And greasy, very shiny. Yeah, not good. And they're terrible. There's no filling in there. Thank you. Thank you. A taste of grease. Yeah, a taste of greasy. What okay. the fuck is that? What is that? This is the moussakas. Moussakas. That's for the roasted uh, potatoes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy it. Mm. Wow. Moussaka. It's drab. I mean, it's shocking. It's so bad. Dreadful. Dimitri. The eggplant is spongy and raw. You have the moussaka? Yeah, it's disgusting. Carrots and mush. That is an insult to any Greek isle. Listen, can you get me all the chefs in the kitchen out on the dance floor? I'd like to meet them, please. Of course. OK, guys, all of the cooks, he wants them over there. He wants all the cooks. Everybody. Uh, you complain. I mean, falafel sucks. Oh, to me, it was not good. I saw some of my food is not the way he was describing the food. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That was a disaster. I mean, I've just sat down and had the biggest fucking embarrassment to Greece that I've ever tasted in my entire life. The platter, bland. Falafel, dry. And the biggest kick in my Greek kahanas, liquid hummus. Liquid. The Greek moussaka. Eggplant, undercooked, bitter. It's an insult, not just to Greece, but to the vegetable itself. Did anyone taste it? Of course, it's wrong. <laughs> it's done wrong. Come on. That's frightening. What hurts me is the fact that you're actually realizing that it's shit and still sending it. I can't do anything about it. I'm Greek, I grew up with this food, but I'm not allowed to cook the food the way I cook it in Greece. Here, I'm following Mikey's way, and he's tired. Mikey, have you given up? No. You run your business like you've given up. No, no, it's not true. I don't believe that my food is that terrible, OK? My food is similar to Catalonia. You think it's similar to Catalonia? Yes, sir. Yeah. Not today, my friend. Your calamari is greasy, it's bland. How come I have all these people says my calamari is the best they ever have? They're blowing smoke up your ass. You're not that stupid. Well, you're, no one or you're two. You're proud thousands man. of people. No, stop exaggerating. Where are the thousands of people that tell you that your calamari is the best? Are they booked in for dinner tonight? You came from Greece. You bring it over and you make it better here. You've made it worse. I got really upset when Seth Ramses talked to me like that. I know how the food is, and the people love it. And he has no clue about the food here. Coming up. Oh, my god. They didn't like any of it. What do you want me to say? Mikey's standards in the kitchen are questionable. It smells. Chris, Mike, you're sick. And later. Something's happened. 
And you better tell me what. I don't have to say nothing. A stunning revelation threatens to tear this family apart. Do you think he still holds it against him? Yeah. Does he? Yeah. You don't want to miss what's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. The town of Ventura is abuzz with Chef Ramsay's visit. How y'all doing? And as the restaurant fills up with diners... Are you ready? Chef Ramsay is anxious to begin his kitchen investigation during dinner service. So what do you do in service? How do you work? What do you do? What I do here? Yeah, yeah, here. They work, I watch. I do expedites. I do if I have to. Wow. Uh, where are the TOS systems? TOS is right here. Marika. Marika. There's my daughter right there. Hello. This is your daughter. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. I think Chef Ramsey doesn't know what he's stepping into. My dad is just like really set in his ways. And what's that for? Just the uh, minced onions, and this is veggie dormadas. What's under here? Baked carrots. Bloody hell. We cook, cook them today. Them so it's served like a cafeteria. Well, everything, all the carrots done, all on bain-marie. There's a lot that we cook and then store and just take out whatever is for the order, each order. And that's not good. But I'm not leading the yes. kitchen, so I don't really have a saying over that. So all this is cooked? It's cooking right now, yeah. No, it's not cooking, it's cooked. Yeah. We're cooking food and it's, it's sitting there, drying out. It's all cooked to shit. Doesn't look like a cafeteria to you? No. God bless California. One talk to you, please. Josh. Yes. You have a lot for me. With so much of the food prepared in advance. You happy with that? Yes. This restaurant has no problem sending dishes out at a rapid pace. Table 10, table 15, table 91, please. Ready. Calamari. Chicken Caesar salad. Does food normally come out this quickly, aren't it? Yeah. It's like sort of flying out. Are you ready? Take it, take it. Oh, my God. Mikey, do you not tell them anything? Do you not say anything to the chefs? What do you want me to say? All right, let's keep going. Everything all right back here? Get out. It's just ridiculous. Like, I'm not trying to stop you. I'm trying to help you. But my dad, he gets so egotistical about it sometimes. It's like, I'm just this little eight-year-old getting barked at. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I just need to cool off after that. I know, no, but I can see the tension. Your father's there, expediting the food, letting it go, sauce dripping all over the side, and it's almost like he's given up. I mean, was he like that 10 years ago? No, I, I think he's just physically exhausted, and he's been working 15 hours a day his whole life. I mean, imagine that. Do you ever sit down and say, Dad, you know, it's so obvious where we're going wrong. And I want to help, but he doesn't want to listen. He's so stubborn, man. I don't know, man, it's just... <sighs> Horrific. This has turned out to be a very funny Greek restaurant. A little bit different to what I expected. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately for the diners, the restaurant is also different from what they expected. I don't like it. You don't like it? The lamb is dry. The veggies came out raw, and then I brought out more, and they were still raw. Oh, God. As Trey. This is cold. After Trey. The lamb chops are supposed to be rare. After Trey. The bull is very blood. Gets sent back to the kitchen. Oh my god. Unbelievably, there's almost as much food coming back as there is going out. Dad, how you doing? Don't bother me. Go dance. Go dance. Go. The situation is frustrating. Obviously, we have problems with this restaurant, but I don't know what to do exactly. Khalid, you ready, huh? Okay. I'll announce it right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Greek at the Harbor. Uh, my name's Eris. Uh, we're going to perform a little dancing for you right now. So please enjoy the show. There's more dances to come. Hello, Opa. 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 What's that clapping going on? We have Greek dancing and the belly dancing and. Really? Yeah. Unbelievable. Now I get what he's passionate about. Finally, something edible. Despite Eris pleasing some of the diners with his dancing. We have a problem. 
they continue to be far from pleased with the food. What's wrong? The batter on the fish and chips was still slimy. The roast lamb was inedible. Give me Harris, please. Oh, and they said all of it was lukewarm. Where's Mike? What is it? Just smell that. Just smell inside there. Inside. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Eat a little bit. I'm not eating that. It's smell. It's good. It's what? It's good. You're sick. Mike, you're sick. Man. I'm very worried about Mikey because it should be obvious when something's not cooked properly. There's no way that you can say, oh, well, they were just complainers. It's real. Harris, you need to know what's going on here as well. As far as your father's concerned, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's dry as hell, huh? He's not even a chef, and he knows it's dry. Come on, Mike. You stood there and watched that shit come out. It's an embarrassment to Catalonia. I knew this was going to happen. My dad, uh, he's not stupid. He's a great cook, but he also is in denial a bit. He's the type of person that asking for help maybe is a sense of failure to him. My emotions are, are deeply hurt from what Seth Ramsey says. Hey, Dad. Hey. Are you just relaxing? Yeah. It's just really sad, you know? He's just an older man that can't really handle it all. I love you. I just don't like it when my dad is so sad. It really hurts. It's an hour and a half into dinner service. They didn't like any of it. And even though food is flooding back to the kitchen... You stood there and watched that shit come out. It's an embarrassment to Catalonia. Mikey seems to have lost interest. It's almost like he doesn't, it's just... What do you want to say? I don't feel good when I see food coming back. Mike, can I have a word with you? It's like, yeah. What's happening? I don't know. But why are you doing this to yourself? What do you want me to do? I want you to wake up a little bit. You're letting it happen under your nose. What do you want me to say? I just want you to be a little bit more fucking honest with yourself. I never lie. OK. But how come you haven't taught Aris, anything? How come you haven't been by your side? Why haven't you treated him like a son? What is it? Nothing. Something's happened, and you better tell me what. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't have to say nothing. Oh, don't, don't... Don't act like that. You can't just give up. Come on. How are we doing? You want me How to leave you No, we're not doing well. We're not doing well. He has to be a little bit more honest with us. I'm not honest. No. You're paying the price for it. I don't understand why you're not closer to your father. I don't understand why you're not open with that big Greek heart of yours. I, 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 I don't get it. It's time to change, you know? It's going to need a commitment from you. A commitment. It's father, son. And if you've got any chance of carrying on this legacy, then you need to be by his side. You won't teach me even anything. It doesn't make sense. Have a word with him. Have a word. I'm struggling. Fuck me. I need to sit down, man. I'm tired. I don't want you to struggle here anymore. I'm fine, Dad. Just let me, let me, let me help. Let me help you. I want you to be ready. I told you that before, I was. I know. With my dad, even though he loves me and I love him, it's just, it's almost like I'm not good enough for him. It's a shitty feeling. It hurts. I love you. Gordon is still completely mystified by Mikey's lack of mentoring of Eris. You got two minutes, we'll catch up. Okay. Please. And he has only one other person to turn to for answers. So I'd love to hear from you. You know, why have they been ignoring each other? Well, when Eris went to college, he never really wanted to be here. And most of the time, he wouldn't be here at all. And he'd come like at night to dance and so forth. And uh when he graduated from college, we had his party here. But we had, I mean, the place was full. We had 100 people here or so. And when he was doing his little speech and thanking people for coming and 
everything, you know. He announced, I'm going to make something of my life. I'm not working in the restaurant. What? In front of all the staff? In front of all of his friends. Wow. I mean, how rude. You paid the fees for the college. He comes back and hosts a party in his parents' restaurants and then shits on them from a great height. Mm -hmm. was, I remember that <laughs> very well. Yeah. It was as if what we'd done all these years was, like, uh, worthless. Is Mikey sort of hurt? Do you think he still holds it against him? Yeah. Does he? Yeah, it's, he really does. Unbelievable. It hurt us very bad. And um, I've always remembered it, never discussed it, never talked about it. But it hurt. Gordon has finally learned the real truth behind what's tearing this family apart. He announced, I'm going to make something of my life. I'm not working in the restaurant. What? And now Mikey and Eris arrive at the restaurant, unaware of what he has just uncovered. Pull a chair up, both of you sit down. I want to tell you something really important. I'm fucked off with you, and I'll tell you why. I don't think that you've quite understood the level of support that you've had in and out of here. And so when you turn around and told all your friends in your parents' restaurant that you're going to make something out of yourself, almost in a way that you were disgusted with being brought up in a restaurant, and this wasn't you, you were above that. Well, it wasn't me being above it. It was just I didn't know if it at It was point. the way you declared it wasn't good enough for you. Well, this was before. I know. Yes. But you did it, and you shat on your own doorstep. I wasn't shitting on that. I, I love my family more I'm than I'm telling anything. you, you did. Well, I was, I was confused at the time, too. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I went to college. I didn't know if the restaurant business was something I was going to do, and I didn't know if I was ready to do it. But I don't think you've ever understood the ramifications of an announcement like that. How did you feel truthfully about that statement? Truthfully. My son, when I say something like that, it hurts me, yeah. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm not a perfect human Don't being. Don't look at me. No, I'm just saying Don't I'm look, not. No, no, if you've got anything to say, yeah. I'd say it to your mum and dad. Take the opportunity to give him a little bit of privacy. I didn't. I just see how we struggled as a family. Regardless if we're making money or not, we we kill ourselves here. And I didn't want to kill myself either, not in a selfish way. I just didn't want to, I don't. But I guess I remember it because it really hurt me when you said it. I remember it. And I don't think it's anything that we've ever talked about. And I sincerely apologize for saying that because that was so wrong of me. Mom, Dad, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. I think Mikey hasn't really taken Eris seriously because he's never really gotten himself committed. But that has changed. And for him to make this declaration with such passion, he's definitely committed. I 100% believe that. Everything's going to work. It will. After Eris cleared the air with his parents, Chef Ramsey is still concerned about his commitment. OK. So I've been doing some thinking. Why have you hung around so long? It's, it's my family. It's like I don't, we don't give up on our family. And this is my, my home, too. So I love this place, and I want to fix it. But I don't know if you're committed enough, that's all. Because it's not about dancing on the dance no, floor. No, I know. But if you put that it's determination not. that you put on that fucking dance floor last night, yeah. carrying all those fucking tables in your mouth in the kitchen, trust me. You'd be untouchable here. That's what I want. I know at one point, I wouldn't have believed in me either. I've changed. I know I can do this. I just need support, and I just need my dad to help me. So you say you're committed. I right? am committed, yes. And you say that you're committed. Yes. Yes. So put both your hands together. Let go. <laughs> hands out. <laughs> now. Oh, shit. Yep. Even if okay. I'm right-handed. Don't care. You don't care. Because you're not cooking, you're going to be taught. Now, look at me. For the very first time in the history of father and son, get into that kitchen and show him something. I don't care if it's a simple Greek salad, a roasted fish, or whether it's a stunning hummus. I don't care. But show him. Sure. Now. 
Yeah. Watch, don't pull me too much now. Don't be a bull. Getting handcuffed was a funny experience. I'm gonna need a plate to put it in. All right, well, I'll have to walk with you. My dad kind of is like this bull trying to <laughs> track me. <laughs> let's make a pasta. Huh? You want pasta? This is exactly what I've been looking for, to have this opportunity. Yeah. So let's do it. OK, slice the tomato. Yeah, I can do it. How's that? Good. OK, let's put okay. the onions. We're gonna wait on the garlic, right? Yeah. Is it cooks fast? Any seasonings that we put in or anything? Let's put some black pepper. A little sprinkle. Yeah. You want me to add some of the sauce? Yeah, add a couple How spoons of that. Cooking with my dad was great. Reduce a little bit and then we're done. It really alleviated a lot of tension. And I'm proving them right now. I'm gonna learn the kitchen. And I guess the only way you can ever learn is just to do it, right? Test it with your finger. Pretty good, huh? Very good. Tastes great. Totally. It was a lot of fun for me and Eris to be that way. And I see that Eris has a passion about this restaurant, and I'm very proud. Gordon, we got it done. Show me Hola, how to make a... What is that? Greek pasta. Uh -huh. Did you listen to your father? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is that? Uh, yeah, it's nice. I've seen more consistency in this plate than I did in the whole of service last night. It did my heart good because this was a turning point. This was the first time that Mikey has ever really shown Eris any Greek cooking. Thank you. I have very strong feelings about my boy, that he's not a boy any longer, he's a man. And I'm ready to back off a little out of the way, his way. Are you committed to do it? Of course. <laughs> what I know, I will teach you. Well, everything. OK. OK? Sounds That's good That's what me. I want. Coming up. You ready? Yes. Eris finally gets a shot at running the restaurant. I need a homemade gyro sandwich on the dot now. I got it. Will he lead the team to success? Don't rush. I need no rush. Like Stop throwing food. If they're out of control and you're out of control, we're finished. Or will he disappoint Mikey? It's fucking cold in the oh, center, no. guys. Come on. And Chef Ramsay. Just take it. No, it's stone cold. It's raw. Stop. 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 Now that it appears as though Mikey is finally passing the torch to Eris, Chef Ramsay and his team move ahead with the restaurant makeover. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ready for a, a stunning new change? Yeah. yeah. Good. Today, we are saying goodbye to the past and opening the doors to your new future. Ready to see your restaurant? Off you go. Go in, go in, go in. Wow. Oh. Welcome to the new Greek. Wow. 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 Oh, my How goodness. How beautiful is this? I love that blue. Beautiful. Awesome. Stunning. Nice. It's amazing. Wow. wow. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. When I first walked in here, I saw a banquet hall with hideous chairs that was set up with no charm. So we've taken a tacky restaurant out of the 80s and put it into the 21st century. And the good news is, the disco balls have gone. <laughs> Look at the ceiling. You've got the Greek windmills. Oh, look at that. Have a look at those beautiful tables. They were covered before. We got them sanded. We got them varnished. They're your own tables. Excellent. Gone are the murals. Why have a mural of a harbour on the wall when you're sat in front of the harbour? And look at that baby down there on the wall. <laughs> a custom-made Greek flag shutter. Wow. wow. Beautiful. Oh, shutter. Wow. This is outstanding. Complete joy is what I feel right now. Wow. Oh, oh Jesus. How are you? <laughs> huh? Wow. I have a goose bath on me. Feels totally like where I am now, in Santorini on the hill there. Feels like home. It's spectacular, beautiful. Mikey, I'd like to see you so live like this. <laughs> Aren't you happy? Yes, I am. Yeah? I think this is one of your best so decorations <laughs> I ever seen. <laughs> This is. <laughs> I agree. I think it's one of the best also. <laughs> to go along with a dramatic makeover. Oh. Come down, all of you, please. Wow. Is an equally dramatic redesign of the menu. OK. Let's have a look at the menu. The dips, tzatziki, the hummus. Beautiful. Not smeared on a plate, not sipped through a straw. <laughs> a proper dip. The falafel. Look at them, small, dainty, delicious, and made with a spicy chickpea. Nice. Gyro, it's a homemade pate, OK? Wait till you taste it. You've got the grilled lamb chop. That's served with grilled artichokes, sun-dried tomatoes, yeah, arugula salad, and tazini sauce. The zucchini eggplant moussaka, layered with potatoes, topped with bechamel, 
a little chilly in there, so we've got some heat in there as well at the same time. Mm. Excited? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is look, the best I've ever seen in my life. It's fresh. It's yes. taking part of what you put into this restaurant to begin with, and we've modernised it. You That's did. all. You did great. Yeah? You? Yes. OK. I want you all to dig in. All right. Have a little taste. OK? Jump in. Mm. Oh my God, it's amazing. Mm. Excellent. At the beginning, actually, I, I, was, I was denied about the food, but this is the best food I ever have, Greek food. So good, the waffles gone. Melts in your mouth, not dry. And the food's really, really good. I mean, it's amazing. And it's a new direction, it's a new beginning, and I'm excited about it. This is really it's tastes crazy. good. It's really good. Mm. Mm. With the reins of the restaurant being handed over from father to son. OK, Mikey. Hi, sir. You ready? Great. Yeah? Chef Ramsay has Mikey working the salad station and Eris in the crucial role of expediter. You ready? Yes. OK, good. You do not take shit from them. Yeah. And you're the last fucking line of defense. Don't let them throw food out at you. We have a new menu in line, awesome new recipes. I'm taking charge of this kitchen. I want to make sure people are following the recipes and they're not fucking them up. Make me proud, boys. Let's do this. Hello. Word of the relaunch has spread, and the restaurant fills up quickly with eager diners. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. You're welcome to the Greek. Can I get the uh, amazing plan? Who's talking? Calamari would be great. OK. Our kitchen needs to be driven. Let's go. All right, first ticket up, guys. Two vegetarian moussakas. Fire those right away. OK, I know. Let me have that. Two zucchini moussakas, please. Ares is in charge of the kitchen tonight, but he has to step up and, and do this. I got the hummus. You guys got the moussaka. How much time? Two and a half minutes. Nice. All right, another ticket up. We got a shrimp and a calamari. All right, I got it. How much time on that calamari? Two minutes. Two minutes. Let's do it. Good. That's what I want to hear. Push and encourage. Push and encourage, yeah? Is the vegetarian moussaka up or no? Zucchini moussaka. In spite of it being his first time expediting. Kathy, you're up too. Come right back. Eris is looking very comfortable. Four minutes on the saganaki. Watch the falafel. And a steady stream of orders are flowing out of the kitchen. We got the Greek salad. There's your calamari. And the results are unanimous. <laughs> That's so good. It's fantastic. I need a saganaki right away. 23 is up, OK? Back in the kitchen, under the watchful eye of Chef Ramsay. Watch the sauce. Put less in there next time. Yeah, I don't want it all pissing down the side, yes? Eris continues to perform. Don't rush. I need another no saganaki. How's it going? Last line of defense. You. I hope you're checking, yeah? That's all. I hope you, I'm not going to let you throw food out tonight. I'd rather okay. stop. Okay. I'll fucking go crazy at them. Let's go to table 11 here now. Ready? Good to take out? Yes. I got one more spot in the cup with it, right? All right, Kelsey, you're up. You got another Branzino, another fisherman's catch. Here. There you go. All right. Who's this for? Kathy? Just take it. Who's the chain? Is that cooked? All right. No. It's stone cold. It's raw. Stop. 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 Stop! It's relaunch night. Eris' big chance to finally prove himself. Guys, let's get it together. We got it. Come on. But just when it appears as though everything is on track... Who's this for? Kathy? Just take it. The kitchen is starting to unravel. Is that cooked? It's raw. Stop. 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 Stop! Look at me. If they're out of control and you're out of control, we're finished. Because you are maintaining the standards. Hey, hey, all of you, stop. One, two, three, four, five. You come here. Come here. Come here. Look at what you're sending out. That wasn't like the first table. I'm not sending that. And what the fuck is that? Come on, guys. Mush. Look at me. Yes, Look at me. Got it. You have to stay in control. You've got to stay in control, OK? Yeah. I can't let the kitchen fall apart. I'll do whatever it takes to get better. Let's slow it down. Slow down. Slow down. Thank we'll you. We'll take it at a time. Standards. Right Standards. Now. Standards. Let's get calamari up. All right, table 32, how are we looking? And where's the fisherman's catch? I don't want to see shit go out, guys. Come on. Make sure it's cooked and good, all right? A very determined heiress clearly has his focus back. This chicken's sitting here too fucking long. Finally. He's catching mistakes. This is the beef moussaka that you asked for. It's fucking cold in the oh, center, no. guys. Come on. And quickly getting them fixed. Panos, you're going to have to reheat this. Let's get that done before all we right. continue, guys. Make sure it's quality. Listen to him. Yes, stop throwing food. Well spotted. Look at me. This is transition. This is it. Yes. OK, guys, this is a team effort, all right? You guys with me? Yes. OK, good. You guys got okay. this. Come on. Good. That's what I want to hear. Can you musaka 33? Awesome. Ozzy, take this. Good. Keep it going. You guys, we need a little bit more sauce on that meat. Nice. I need one more calamari, guys. The calamari is coming. Thank you. 
Fire the chicken, fire the lamb chop. You hear him on the hot plate? Yeah, I hear it. Let's focus on table 25 and table 30. He's doing good. Yeah. Can you believe that's just some? No. I was surprised a little bit, but Ares did a great job for the first time expediting. Just wipe it down. I'm very proud of my son. <laughs> so how do you guys like the new menu? It's great. It's awesome. Awesome. Good. They loved it. Not one complaint. I just need the lamb burger and we're done. Coming up now. Let's finish this shit. Come on. Eris is totally in control of the line, expediting. And table by table by table, he's stepped up. It's so good. It was good. I'm stuck. And that's a fabulous feeling. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Well done, seriously well done. We had an excellent relaunch. Yes, we had our bumps, but my God. There was an amazing buzz in there tonight. <laughs> A dramatic change. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Customers love the food, yeah, love the decor, but the big transformation tonight was Aris. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. You did a phenomenal job. Thank you. I've never seen anyone and I really mean this, take to expediting the way you did tonight. That was your first time, and it felt like you've been doing it for 10 years. Mikey, how was that for you? To listen to him controlling the kitchen. Yeah, he did a great job. It's very impressive. Seth Ramsey came and he united us together. My son and I will be very successful. I believe that. Stay together as a family, because when it works, it's beautiful. Of course. This family right here, we're unbreakable. Thank you. Stay in there. I will. Yeah, look after him. Thank you very much. Because of Chef Ramsay. My dad believes in me, and he knows I can do anything. I have a lot of work to do personally to learn the kitchen, but I'm an ambitious young man, and I'm ready to do it. You've got the win in the cell. <laughs> Run with it, OK? Thanks again. <laughs> Good night. Good right. night. Good night. Thank you, Gordon. <sighs> wow. When I first arrived, this restaurant was a big, fat Greek mess. We made a lot of changes, some dramatic changes to the food, the decor, but more importantly, to Aris. And now, that guy has his feet firmly on the ground. This restaurant has every chance of not becoming a Greek tragedy. Oopa! What the fuck was he doing with those tables? In the days that followed, Harris continued to embrace his role as leader of the kitchen. Go ahead, take that out. 33 is next, guys. I need a vegetarian moussaka. And is determined to maintain the high standards that Chef Ramsay put in place. Hey, the fish is raw. Guys, watch the fish. With Harris in complete control and new customers packing the restaurant on a nightly basis. I love it. Mikey is considering doing something he thought he would never do. It's good to change. Yes. It has to be done. Retire. Mikey is so proud of Eris, we all are. He's really proof that he's committed to make this restaurant be the best it can be. Fries, we need fries. Let's do it. Chef Ramsey, thank you so much. Eris's future is definitely bright, and so is the Greeks. Great job, I love you all. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon travels to a smokehouse. I am at Absolutely mortified. That instantly has him fuming. What the hell is going on? The ailing owner is too sick to supervise his staff. There's no leader here. And his daughter refuses to take charge. I'm not just walking in here every day not doing anything. You are. Without her leadership, what's that noise? The microwave. The kitchen is taking shocking shortcuts. Is there anything today that wasn't microwave? No, sir. And these bad practices... We're reheating yesterday's wings, and they're just immaculate. ...has the restaurant in constant turmoil. It's so aggravated. Will Chef Ramsay's visit be a wake-up call for this petulant owner? Look how dry that is. I think it's fine. Or will she be so stubborn... He's definitely wrong. ...that she puts her family's restaurant out of business for good? It's heading for disaster. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. Thank you. I just can't thank you enough. College Park, Georgia, only 20 minutes from downtown Atlanta, this suburb is home to the world's busiest airport. 
and just down the street from the tarmac is a smokehouse called Michon's, opened in 2002 by the Wilson family. I used to be in, in sales, but I've always wanted to own a restaurant, especially a barbecue restaurant. So that's what I decided to do. Our daughter is Natalie Michon, and we decided that that was a great name for the restaurant because our passion, our goal was to pass it to Natalie. Enjoy. The restaurant did great. This was my daddy's baby. With Mr. Al being at the top, it made everything work really smoothly. It's out of college right here. Things went good, you know, for a long time here. And unfortunately, you know, Al had got sick and he had to have an operation. My dad had a collapsed lung. The doctor told my dad just to stay home and take a break. Chest started hurting a little bit, so I need to really go lay down. A lot of things have gone downhill in the kitchen since Al has been out. Excuse me, when was the brisket smoked? Because it's cold. Since Mr. Al is sick, the cooks do what they want to do. We're a captainless ship. Yeah, whatever, dude. Go take a nap, dog. Our food is nasty. And then when you go to take it back to get another plate, they'll complain about it or they'll argue. Don't come outside me. You got your customers here, do and I? don't come back here dropping smoke wings, do I? But if it tastes like shit, don't nobody want to eat that. The majority of the stuff in here is already prepped. Like the smoked meats, you're reheating those. All the sides are ready. All you're doing is scooping and putting it in a bowl. Is everything OK? The customers are walking out of here unsatisfied. It was slow as hell out here yesterday. What I would love to see is my daughter run the place, but she's just not doing, you know, the, the job. You never see Natalie in the kitchen. You may see her in passing, or maybe she's hungry. Can you hand me a, a, spoon, a fork or a spoon, please? She'll come in and get her some breakfast, or just come in here and rub her stomach. That's good. Natalie pretty much feels she can pass the book. I'm ready to go home. Al and I have a certain work ethic. Natalie does not necessarily share that work ethic. The type of manager that I am, I'm more hands off. I'm a little bit more relaxed when it comes to problems. It's too much wasted energy to be frustrated. Well, I have cameras that spotted around the restaurant that I can check from my house, and, and I'm seeing things but not going like it should be. Everyone set their macaroni and cheese back. Between the bills, the rent, and all of the overhead, you know, we like $200,000 in the hole. We are really at the point now where we need Chef Ramsey to just help us, or it will be the end of the road. Before heading to the restaurant, Chef Ramsey has agreed to get together with Michon's owner, Al, who requested a meeting. Hey, oh, go ahead. How are you? Hal. Good yeah, to thank, see you. Yeah, thanks for meeting me here. Not at all. Good yeah. to see you too. Please yeah. take a seat. Oh, OK. Good to meet you. Yeah, same here. Um, talk to me. The restaurant, it's uh, family run, my daughter and, and my wife. But uh, you know, I'd really want to retire, to be honest with you. Right. I just need to get my daughter to take over and run it. But... So the plan's for you to hand the reins over to her? Correct. Because I've been in sort of bad health. Oh, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and it's still giving me some problems. And you mentioned your daughter. How old is she? Uh, she's 32. 32. And so how capable is she? She has the smarts. Right. Just need to get get it out of her. Right. I mean, it sounds like she's been handed this amazing restaurant on a plate. Correct. And you're frustrated that she can't take the reins. And go with it. And go with it. That's it. And when you had the medical problem, and obviously you're out of the business, how did that run then? Not really. Going, it, it fell apart. Right. I was watching it the best I could. So you were watching from what, home? Yeah, I got my little my security cameras I can see from my house. And from the restaurant. You watch your restaurant on a security camera? Yeah. I got about 18 cameras. 18 cameras? Yeah, 18. Ow. I just like to see what they do. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm going to get myself into the restaurant, and I'm going to have a good look around. Okay. With my eyes, not your cameras. Thank you. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. I'll drive carefully. Okay. Thanks, Al. What a beautiful building. Wow. Hello. 
Hello, hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Nice to see you. Okay. Nice to see you, Gordon. Right. Hi. How Natalie. Are you? I'm Natalie, good. Nice how are to you? See you. So, um, the Michon name came from... My middle name is Michon. Ah, OK. So the restaurant's been named after you. Right. Wow. The decor is stunning. Look at this place. Thank you. Um, so, I met your uh, amazing dear husband earlier. I had a quick catch-up and he told me a few things. Um, I'd love to know from both of you, um, your role is what? Well, I love being upfront with the customers. Right. And your main role in day-to-day -day business? The human resources, HR. Wow. So I do payroll and different things like that. So I hide in the back a lot. You hide in the back? <laughs> I stay in the back. I do a lot of the paperwork and okay. different things like that. So you're not really functioning in the restaurant. And according to Al, there seems to be things right now that you could do that you haven't been doing. Really? When was the last time you took pressure off him? Mm. Are you always this flat? No. No. I'm just soaking in how you said so I'm not doing much. So. Yeah, no, I just like, wow, God, if that was my father and mother yeah. would get me a restaurant like that with my neighbor at the door, I don't want to be sleeping here. Mm -hmm. I would be doing a little bit more than uh, HR. I'm dying to taste the food, yeah, please? He basically told me that I'm just kind of like the lazy child with just my name on a building. That pisses me off, and I feel disrespected in my own restaurant. He said, you don't do anything here but payroll? No, you didn't throw me under the bus. You threw me up under the train. Thank you very much. You're very yes. welcome. we let you look through the menu, and I'm going to bring you to just starter wings. Is that OK? Brilliant. Oh, Thank you. OK. What I'm looking forward to Chef Ramsay doing is to say things to Natalie that I would not dare say. Because we are her parents, it's more than a business relationship. There is the personal relationship. Hello, how are you doing today? How are you? I'm doing fine. Welcome to Michonne's. My name Thank is Tadisha. I'll be your server this evening. It's a lovely name. Hair looks immaculate. My goodness me. Mm. <laughs> he ain't never seen a beautiful, thick black girl like me, so that's what that was. He liked all these curls and stuff. Are you that high maintenance, or is it just a special day today? <laughs> it's a special day today. <laughs> we don't make hardly any money here, so I ain't about to pay this every week. Mm-mm. Um, you've been here how long? I've been here for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, in your mind, what's wrong? What's the biggest issue here? Management. Management. Wow. So what does Natalie do? Um. Truthfully. What's her role? She makes sure we get paid. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Right. OK. Natalie, she got issues. She lays it. I said it. That's, it is what it is. OK. Let's start off with smoked chicken, gourmet salad. OK. Beef uh, brisket, pork ribs. And what side? Cornbread, mashed potatoes, and the potato salad as well. Uh, potato salad, we can't do because we don't have it. No potato salad? No. Really? Yeah, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. huh. Kitchen one? They don't like to peel potatoes. <laughs> well, it's true. OK. Green beans, please, and baked beans. Obviously, black eyed peas. OK, I didn't hear you say sweet potato oh, souffle. Yeah. OK. Yeah, Collard greens, mac and cheese, please. I'll go ahead and get your food. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. And that is the mm, smoked chicken wing. Mm -hmm. And when were they smoked? This morning? They were smoked this morning. Lovely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Smells nice. Right. So Enjoy. Three. Thank you. Damn, it's dry. What a shame, because it's sauce. It's lovely. But me, it's all dry. That's disappointing. So I'm anxious to know what you thought. Yeah, do you know what? A bit inside it was dry. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, we just find out when they were smoked. I will. Thank you. Thank you. I'm shocked that Chef Ramsay does not like our smoke wings. That just pisses me off because he's definitely wrong. Thank you. Yeah, what a shame they were dry. The chicken. <laughs> Welcome to Michonne's. Yeah, at least they should be moist. Why would they be dry? Because it's bootleg. Bootleg? Mm hmm. They just don't care. Thank you. Wow. Is this this morning's batch? These are yesterday's batch. This is yesterday's batch? Okay, chef. I have to eat crow. Those are yesterday's wings. Damn. See, I knew they didn't taste fresh. And why are they oh, serving yes. yesterday's wings today? Can't I get today's wings today? I don't know. Oh. Uh, anyway, just asking. All right, are we ready to rock and roll? 
gourmet salad and all these sides. Okay. That's okay. Let's go. It's enough. Oh, there you go. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, God, that was quick. Really, man. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's my uh, smoked chicken gourmet salad. Um, gross. The rotten tomatoes. <laughs> Oof. Where's my lovely lady? Where, I'm where? right here. I'm sorry, though. But the tomatoes, they got old and sort of yucky and soggy. I wasn't shocked at all. Thank you, please. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the kitchen? Yeah, they don't care. Um, the, uh, uh, um, mm. the tomatoes, one of them is old, and the other one has, like, a ripe thing on it. I don't think it's a problem, but... <laughs> Really? But I'm not a chef, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's fine, but... That's right. Your name is only on the bell, bell. Get it right. They look dry. It is dry. And chewy. But it should sort of fall off the bone, but it's just dry. Cornbread. Oof. Now that's really dry. Look, it's just like being in the Sahara Desert. Look, it's like a mouthful of sand. It's like sand in an hourglass. Girl, they just fucked up all this man's food. Damn. They mess up everybody's food. Hmm. Black eyed peas. Wow. Hideous. Absolutely shocking. All right, here we are. All right, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. Close your eyes. Okay. What the hell? Do not open your eyes. I don't want to eat that. Our food is nasty. Open up. Mmm. What does that taste of? Nasty. What was that? Mm, black eyed peas. You can open them now. Yeah, they nasty. Black eyed bullets. He hit the nail on the head. <laughs> we got some problems. Thank you. You're welcome. I need a drink after this. <sighs> I'm in Georgia, right? Yeah. Now I feel like I'm in prison. Huh? They're dreadful. Baked beans. Canned. Damn. Hmm. Color greens. Wow. Gross. Way too sweet. Hideous. Beef brisket. Damn. It's rubbery. Dry and chewy. Look at that. You could pass that for beef jerky. It's like a, it's like a dog chew. I don't know too much about smoking. I don't even know nothing about cooking, but I know that ain't right. Wow. OK, can you take me through the kitchen? There's going to be some shit around here. Serving oh. brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Oh, God, here comes the chef. Coming up. What in the hell? It's going on. Just when Chef Ramsay thought it couldn't get any worse, it does. It's so aggravated. And Natalie's attitude. No, I'm not in denial. Has Chef Ramsay ready to make a quick exit? Fucking joke. After sampling the menu that can best be described as miserable. Serving oh. brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Chef Ramsay wants to have a little chat with the people who are responsible. Oh, God, here comes the chef. Where's Al? Dad. Yeah. Come in, please. So this is Archie. Archie. And this is Terence. Terence. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Good to see you, bud. And this is Terrell. Terrell, come over, bud, so I can see you. And this is Kelvin. Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, another chef. Come through. Joe. Joe. So who's the head chef? Does anyone know? I don't do the cooking, but I'm. You don't do the cooking? No, sir. Not the uh, small meat. Something not quite right here. What do you do here? I smoke some meat. Was there anything that I tasted today that was smoked today? Uh, brisket. This piece of shit here was smoked today. No, not today. Not today. Does that look appetizing? No, sir. That does not. When was that cooked? I believe on Saturday. On Saturday. So today's Tuesday. Do you honestly think that customers would walk through that door thinking that you're smoking meats? Three or four days before eating them. How are you eating them? The microwaving. Microwaving them. Come on. It's disgusting. 
For God's sake! Is there anything today that I ate that wasn't microwaved? The salad. The salad? You fucking donut. Of course you don't put Perfect. a fucking salad. Than it was Guys, I'm not laughing. I'm seriously disappointed. And Natalie, you don't need me in here to tell you that brisket is like dog chew. If my parents named a restaurant after me, I'd make sure that was the fucking best smoked brisket. My daughter doesn't do what needs to be done to get this restaurant back in shape. It's just, you know, I don't have the words for it right now. I don't know what to say. I just fuck it out. I'm lost for words. After a lunch that was almost entirely microwaved, Chef Ramsay braces himself for his first observation of a dinner service. Good evening. Welcome to Michonne's. And for you, sir. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's go for round two. <laughs> Chop pork working hard, homie. What's that noise? The microwave. Fucking hell, the microwave. What is that? That's seafood dude. Three rib tips. That's how they do things. They're just throwing stuff in the microwave, and it's ridiculous. Jeez, what are they there? Rib tips, rib tips. What's with all the bag stuff? They portion everything and put it in bags. It's just madness. You're not even cooking, you're just reheating. Where's all this coming from? I don't know. That's how we've been reheating it. Have you been to another restaurant in Atlanta? Have you seen in restaurant? I haven't been in another You've kitchen. You've never been to another kitchen, no. Mm -hmm. It's tearing me up inside at the moment. I mean, I've, I've never seen it like this. I mean, it, Ever. Chef Ramsay is criticizing every single thing that we do. Just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Show me the smokers. All right, this please. One. Wow, look at them. I mean, do you know what hurts more than anything? The fact that we, we have the most amazing equipment, and yet the product is shit. Brisket, turkey, chicken, smoked in these. Then we slice it, bag it, chill it. Then we reheat it in the microwave. Right. Does that make sense? Could you have another, please? Wow, look at that. So how long have they been in? How long have they been cooking? Two yeah. and a half hours. So they went in two and a half hours ago. So they're ready for dinner. Yeah, right. ready. These. Little taste. Now. That's delicious. That's what I'm screaming for. They're, right. they're ready. They're All delicious. Right. We're reheating yesterday's fucking wings, and they're just immaculate. Natalie, don't open the door and then disappear. I need to talk to you urgently. So we have Rolls Royce and smokers here. Pretty amazing. And you got these that are literally minutes off the smoker. Right. And yet we can't hold them and serve. That's what we were trying to figure out. It's a no-brainer. Natalie hasn't proven to be able to run this restaurant. It's not any structure, it's just a bunch of guys doing their own things. That does not make sense. How much do those smokers cost? They Roughly. cost um, 17000 each. 17 grand each? Yes. So here you are, cooking to perfection and reheating the food in a $200 microwave. How does that make sense? While the fresh, tasty meat from the smoker gets held for another day, the kitchen sends out plate after plate of reheated food. Beef brisket. Not moist. And not surprisingly, there is disappointment in the dining room. Let's try. Did that go out? It's like a dog shat on the side of it. Oh, no. Go on. The chicken's really, really dry. Yeah, they're right. I mean, the bone's dry. Guys, this burger's supposed to be well done. Leave me alone. Where's all that going? They didn't like them. All right. Yeah. They just said they didn't like them. Natalie did nothing. This is your business, and y'all don't care. Fuck me. Is that normal for so much food to come back? Yes, yes. The whole place is disorganized. It's running with no leader. Absolutely right. It was such a disappointment because Natalie is letting us down. She needs to step up to the plate. As dinner comes to an end, Let's go. Gordon's inspection of the kitchen is just beginning. What's that in there? Chicken's cooked six days ago. And in here? These. That, they were the ones yesterday. And these ones in here? Yes, sir. And these ones in here? But if you cooked them yesterday, why did they cook them yesterday? Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. These people don't even deserve to be running a restaurant, let me tell you. I have never 
see so many wings in all my life. Piping hot, stuck in a refrigeration unit. I suppose it's what you call winging it. And yes, there's more. That is nasty. I mean, it's like a mass grave. At $1.67 a wing. Look at that. Appalled by his discovery of how much of the food is pre-cooked. Look, there must be a thousand wings there. Chef Ramsay is determined to give Natalie and her kitchen staff a massive reality check. Can you just come in the kitchen with me? Please, uh, all of you, thank you. Let's go, let's go. What the fuck? Wow. Me. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Why do you have a hundred smoke wings? Like <laughs> you can't be for real. I am absolutely mortified. What in the hell is going on? We've served a hundred customers and we're carrying all this food until tomorrow. Or the next day, or who knows? And we have a smoker in there full of fresh wings. And I could have cried to think that this was served first before the fresh ones. I've never seen a more fragmented, disorganized setup. I've never, ever seen anything like this. Just looking at that food on the counter like that, I'm like, wow, really, really shocking. You know, I look at it like, you know, that could be going in my pocket as far as, you know, as a raise or whatever. You've got the most equipped kitchen ever a stunning dining room, and look at the amount of staff in here. But all the advantages can't fix the mentality of how we're working, with our head up our ass, rudderless. The biggest problem, the system. Tell me about it. And you accept it because you send it. You confirm that's good enough. You have your name in lights, and you can sit there and depend on your parents for another 30 years. Someone's going to have to step up. If these are what we cook this evening, at the end of the evening, do we throw them away? It's easy. How many, how many customers do we have tonight? 100. How many portions of wings do we sell? Roughly 25? Yep. That stops there. I don't need to tell you that. I just think you're in denial. No, I'm not in denial. I'm, I'm learning. But darling, by learning needs getting involved, taking responsibility. All right. Natalie, can I have a word with you, please? Everybody else just stay here. Count the fucking wings. I had no clue Chef Ramsay would be this critical. Chef Ramsay does not understand a lot of the ways we do things here. He was overboard. You got your name in lights. This restaurant's named after you. Tell me, one-to-one, -one, why you haven't stepped up. Just because you don't, I'm not going to sit up here and holler and scream. No one's I'm asked buried. you to holler. And do you know what? I wouldn't walk around like Little Miss Perfect. And I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. The biggest problem is you never heard it enough. OK. Being brought into this world in a silver spoon, you can't sponge. I you have to get off your ass and do something about it. What are we going to look at? Your father? Get mum to step up? Honestly. Hand the reins over and let's get somebody else in here if you are not going to step up to the plate. I'm not just walking in here every day not doing anything. You are. Get your head out of the fucking smoker. You've been handed a restaurant on a plate, a stunning restaurant, and yet you don't seem to bother. I'm very bothered. You blow smoke up my ass? How dare you? I'm the HR manager. I would have had you fired in two minutes. The bottom line is, you don't want it. Joke. You're right. It is clear that Natalie's lack of leadership has resulted in a frustrated and ineffective staff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning yeah. To get through to her, Gordon has asked the family to stay in the office so they can observe a staff meeting by way of the surveillance cameras. That was a crazy 24 hours, right? Yes. So for me, I want to find out what the issues are. This is the kitchen lacking a leader. Yes. Yes. Like, that's yes. where all our problems come in. 
So that's why they all act like this. Sure, but I mean, who decides who's working where? In the kitchen. Who does they the time They fall into place. You do your own? Yeah. Well, we come in now. What? To, to, to save the frustration and get through the night. When we come in, I ask you where you want to work at. Seriously? Seriously. OK, why do they keep switching people around? If we know Kino is the strongest in the middle, why on Fridays and Saturday night Kino is in the damn back prepping food? It makes no sense that's to me. Where we're going to suffer. Why is that? If you're not going to work where we need you, how are we going to get stuff done? The thing is, in the key work, it's not consistent. This is my thing to y'all. We get, well, we don't have this. Once we've gotten to a table and rung a table in, oh, didn't we tell y'all we don't have it? That is not the most, that's like dumb. Half the time we tell y'all, y'all don't listen. You know what I mean? What, you want me to show you the empty bucket? No. No, I don't want you to show me an empty bucket. I didn't say Come that. It was all on you. I'm it's, saying it's a two-way street, but guess what? The stuff steals something. And when we find out that Everything's just run down, dwindled. Pretty much everybody just do what they want to do. Everybody's going at each other because it's, it's just you know, no one running things. So everything is just hostile. If we had a leader in that kitchen, this place, I honestly believe, would be like night and day. But we need that direction. Are we not gaining direction from Natalie? No. Who? No. Natalie doesn't step up to the plate as she should. It's so aggravating. This is your establishment. I mean, come on. But bottom line, the ship ain't gonna move without a captain. That's it. You got to have some leadership, sir. Period. It's so frustrating. No one's, no one's got the reins. And it's heading for disaster. OK, just give me two seconds, please, yeah? It was painful to see and hear a lot of that conversation. I feel like a lot of the blame came on me today, and it hurts. There's a cry for help there. Otherwise, none of you'd be here. They are begging for, for guidance, for a right. leader, for a captain, for a, a guiding light, an inspiration that's here. You know, 10, 12 hours a day, and that's finding that structure. Right. You know, this is serious. Natalie, do you think you are ready to step up and grab the bull by the horns and shake this place? I know I'm ready to step up. Do you want to? I want to. Come with me two seconds. Come up. Gay, yeah, come over. Please. I want to hear from you telling your parents, yeah, how much you want this and what it means to you. Um. Dan, you said to me, and you said I didn't do this for nobody else but you. And you said you can either run the business and take it on, or you can decide to sell it. I wanted to make sure that my dad's vision, and my dad's dream came true. And I'm going to work hard to make sure that's what it is. And I, I, I want you to trust me. Yes. Are you happy with that? Happy with it. I'm working for a big hut. <laughs> It was really amazing her telling me and my wife that she can do it. And I hope she'll refocus herself to, to really get the business and keep it going. If you're ever, ever gonna let go, now's the time. Ashan's is a, a very important legacy to my father. This is his whole life, so I'm here for him. Now that Natalie has expressed her commitment to do what it takes to lead the restaurant... I know I'm ready to step up, and I want you to trust me. Chef Ramsay is committed to her. First of all, I was very touched watching you step up and telling your parents how much you want this. Do you know what? I believe you. I'm by your side now, 110%. Okay. Don't be scared of making mistakes. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah? I've made thousands. Chef Ramsay has opened my eyes to a lot. At first, I was kind of skeptical, I was kind of hurt, but I trust his judgment now. I've got something very important to discuss with you. I want you to nominate someone that's going to step up and become your head cook. Someone that mends the smoker, that coordinates the purchasing, that controls okay. everything. Running through your mind now. Let's go in the kitchen. The kitchen lacks a leader, and that's where I need to start first. Right, guys, listen two seconds, please. Natalie wants a quick word with you all. All right, gentlemen. So this is going to be some new waters right now for all of us. Terrence, 
You've been here for years. You've always had your heart in the right place. From here on out, I want you to be the head of his kitchen. Great. For Nella to make me a leader of his kitchen, I'm very excited about it. I'm ready for the challenge. Let's get this team rolling and make sure that we have put forth 100%. Got it. Right. It felt great to take the reins. This is the way it's supposed to be. I finally have a sense of where I need to go to move this restaurant forward. You got the badge now. Step up to the plate. That's it. Yeah? Yep. Good. Now that the restaurant's leadership is in place, Chef Ramsay has an important transformation of his own to present to the staff. Morning. How Good are morning you? Morning to you all. Nice to see you. First of all, where's Al? He's at home resting. Good. OK. It's time to show you a menu deserving of this beautiful restaurant. Ready? Yes. Come over to the bar, please. Oh, goodness. Wow. Hey. Hey. Darling, please take one and pass them along. New menu. It's easy to read. It's just a lovely, straightforward, stunning menu. And more importantly, <laughs> there's not a restaurant anywhere in a 100-mile radius that has spent the money you spent on those smokers. Those smokers is equivalent to having four other members of full-time staff in your kitchen. You just wasn't using it properly. So with the way we've incorporated it, it's the backbone of the menu. OK, let's start off at the top here. A pulled pork sandwich done with delicious corn puree running through the middle. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yes. Absolutely amazing. Next to that, we've got the most amazing beef brisket. Ooh. A stunning half chicken. Delicious. Smoked chicken wings. Look at the size of them. Do we need to serve any more than that, than a portion? And I've noticed the sauces. Every table has those amazing sauces. It's so. beautiful. It's, it's the look that I want to put out there. I feel great. Yeah? I am so happy. I have a special gift for you because you are now running this place. I'd like to introduce you to someone very special, Chef Adam. Good morning. How are you? Great, how are you? Good to see you. This young man, he's an expert in barbecue. He's been trained under Tom Calicchio. I've arranged for him to be with you for the next month. Great. What do you think the smokers back there? They're brilliant. I'm very excited. So a guiding light, a huge support. And you, if you don't pick up on this and stay close to this guy for the next month, oh, you don't have to worry about that. You're crazy. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Chef Adam is a lifesaver, and I don't even think he realizes how much, you know, I love him already. OK, bud. Thank you. Thank you. See you shortly, yes? Nice to meet you. I'm ready to eat. I'm looking at all this food, and I'm oh, ready to eat. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Oh, wow, yes. Oh, my God, Ooh. that is good. It was absolutely delicious. I am past excited about selling fresh products. I think I could do a cartwheel in the dining room if there weren't so many tables in here. You know your rib is good, but you can use your fork to break it apart. Everything tastes so good. Oh, my God. I need a plate. I'm very proud to sell this food. I hope that this new menu is symbolic of change to show that we'll just keep rising to the top. Now, who's going to wheel me out of here? That's what I want to know. With the relaunch approaching, Terrence gears up for his new role as head chef. Chef Kino, you ready to roll? Got my game face on, boss. And Natalie, with the support of her new consultant, Adam, embraces her new role as leader. If there's ever a time to make your mark, it's tonight. Right. Hold the reins and let them know that you're the boss. OK. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm very anxious to show Chef Ramsay that I can do this. I can be the Mashan of Mashans. As the doors open for Mishan's relaunch, diners are lined up around the block, eager to try the new menu. Yeah, it's going to be pretty full, so as soon as you can get here. And to help generate even more positive buzz, Chef Ramsay has invited a group of the city's most influential barbecue experts. This big table here are very, very important, and they have a festival that has 15,000 turn out. This is it. This first impression is going to be this lasting impression. We need to do well. Hello, my name is Michonne, or I'm one of the owners here. And I just wanted to personally thank you for coming, because I hear that you guys are <laughs> barbecue folks, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the smoke meat platter. And the fried pickles? All right. The catfish nuggets, it's to die for. Oh, really? Here we go. Who's calling out? Talk to each other, guys. I need a smoked chicken sandwich. Got your smoked chicken sandwich. 
I need a catfish nugget, please. With Natalie feeling confident that the kitchen is in good shape in Terrence's hands. See, I'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, I've got it, boss. I got it. She heads to the dining room to check in on the customers. If you've been here before, you notice we made several changes. As I was walking through the restaurant, I was pumped. All of our meats here that we smoke on premise, our meat is very tender, so. <laughs> I felt good. I was doing my job well, and everything oh. was great. Okay. But minutes later, back in the kitchen, the cooks are having a hard time adapting to the new menu. Where's the fries? I need fries. And are having problems finding a rhythm. Hey guys, we should be waiting for fries. Food is hanging too long. I've got entrees there, entrees there. So you're just stuffed. I'm starving. They wait 30 minutes for their fried chicken. Oh, no, 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 come on. I need coleslaw. Talk to me, three beignets. I need them down, please. You're still going to put the corn on it, yeah? Right? Still want the corn on that. Well, at that moment, I got them overwhelmed, you know, because everyone knows that this food is behind. Guys, we're getting complaints about long ticket time. So now everybody's morale is just like there. We need to all be off the same page, guys. We've got ourselves in a situation. Customers are complaining. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board clear. I don't know how we're going to turn this around. This is a fucking nightmare. It's 45 minutes into Michon's relaunch. We're getting complaints about long ticket time. And although the cooks are pushing food out, they are not completing an order. And as a result, food is sitting at the pass. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board clear. And customers are sitting hungry. I'm starving. Including the VIPs. So they're getting backed up in the kitchen. Okay. okay they're panicking. And all they're doing is they're putting their food up in the window. Okay. One plate on top of another plate. Okay. Food's drying out. Okay. So they have to take a breather, clear the board, and start again. OK. Chef Ramsay pulling me to the side helped me know that it's my job to jump in the kitchen and make sure that the cooks are actually listening. I need a fried catfish, and I need that fish filet like yesterday. Tara, you know, I need you to listen to me. Yes. I need you to make sure that I start another ticket Okay. until we go ahead and clear. Okay. Claude, I really need to make sure that you're focusing and making sure that you're not just putting plates up. All right, y'all, let's roll. Yes, ma'am. Let's start. Got a lot of stuff holding up here. I need three wings on the fly. And I'd really got to get the burger because that's holding up the window. Good. Keep it going, yeah? yeah? I was frustrated because I still got food in the window. Waiting on a fried catfish, guys. But now he's made me settle down. You know, the sky's not falling. Let's just focus, breathe, and get the food out. Come on, line. We've had this hit before. How long am I black and snapper? Black and snapper working hard, chef. While Natalie has helped her kitchen navigate their way back on course. Keep on talking, guys. Let's go. She has also come up with an idea on how to entertain her special guests. Um, I would like to show you our smokers. We had some hiccups, so I took the barbecue festival guys to go out and look at the smokers. Oh. These are our babies right here. These are about four years old. Each smoker holds 700 pounds. Yes, you can. They were just so excited. I like to see when people's face light up. We'll have wings on four or five racks at a time. Nice. What's the cook time? The brisket is about 12 to 14 hours, depending on the weight. Okay. I think I did pretty good tonight. That's more expensive. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Natalie's quick thinking has not only delighted the barbecue experts. Macaroni and cheese and a souffle, I can go. It has also bought the kitchen the time they needed to catch up. Make the nuggets. Enjoy. All right, y'all, how we doing? Doing good. Kino, how we doing? Beautiful. OK. Natalie helped us get back on track. Very vocal, very visual, communicating with us. Is this coming out now? This is complete. Then take it. While Natalie has impressed her staff, That's amazing. the menu is a big hit with diners. Mm. Mm. Thank you. All right. All right. Sean. Sean, thank you, Sean. Thank you. All right. I'm amazed seeing customers with smiles on their face. We haven't had that in forever, years. <laughs> That was some of the best ribs I ever put in my mouth. Wow, uh, that's great. I'm so happy. It was Natalie's night tonight. I think she did a great job. Bye, thank you so thank much. You. Come back and see us. All right, thank you. Thank you. You worked your butts off. For me, the big difference was the way that you still, under immense pressure, worked together. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, come on. OK. And you know what? You have an exciting, dynamic owner. Tonight, you were tested, and you did a terrific job. Let me tell you. Thank you, thank you so much. 
and Al. He wasn't here this evening. God bless him. He's probably watching from his bed. <laughs> OK, but you did him proud, let me tell you. Chef Ramsay has been a real influence on Natalie. And now that Natalie is in charge, the future for Michonne's is very bright. Right, well done. All of you, well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay came down to give me a swift kick to show me that I can do it and help me show my parents that I can do it. Take care, bud. I didn't realise when Al made his plea that he'd be too ill to be with us here for relaunch night. But this restaurant, led by his daughter now and her loyal staff, made a major transformation tonight. My hope is now that he gets well and has the pleasure of seeing his baby becoming a big success. Wow, how ironic. Two miles from the airport and you finally earned your wings. Good night, Georgia. After Chef Ramsay left, Natalie showed she is more committed than ever to carrying on her father's legacy. How are you? Welcome to Michonne's. And with Chef Adam's training, Terrence is in complete control of the kitchen. I got another rib and fries. Got you. As for Al, he now has what he always wanted, a successful restaurant run by the one person he built it for, his daughter Natalie. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon visits Austin, Texas for the first time. But this isn't a tale of a classic Western. It's a disturbing great tragedy. There's a mother who's at the end of her rope. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm up to here with that. And a son who has completely lost his passion. I don't want to be in here with these two. The two have become sworn enemies. Then do it. I don't need you. With a relationship that is completely destroyed. It'll be 10 o'clock here. I don't want to hear that shit in the morning. And a restaurant that is near death. I'd rather be dead. Chef Ramsay may be walking into a situation that is too far gone to rescue. Don't fucking come to work. You and her leave. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. Austin, Texas, home to over 50,000 students that attend the University of Texas. Located only blocks away is El Greco, an authentic Greek restaurant opened in 2007 by Jake and his mother, Athena. This is my favorite one. I always want to open that restaurant. I always love to cook. Let's do this. You're awesome, guys. Come on. My mother wanted uh, to open up a restaurant. I love to cook, so my mother brought her sister down and we opened up a restaurant. I got a hummus appetizer. I get that going. I was so excited to open. The first half a year was very, very busy. Thank you, welcome. Let's get this, come on guys. Those were good times. I mean, it was busy all day long. It was thriving, I mean, every day, just in and out, packed. But. Jake is a big reason why everything is screwed up. In the last year, I would say, it's really turned around to be pretty disappointing. Why did Jake? In a typical day, Jake would spend three, maybe four hours here. Jake is not here. Not all in a row. Smile and wave. He freaking abandoned us again. I'm not spending as much time as I used to in the restaurant. I'm just tired of coming into work knowing that I got to deal with my mother. Guys. Athena, it's going. I know he's not. Athena, stop. Stop yelling. Nag, nag, nag. She nags constantly. Come on, let's do it. Athena, stop. Come on. I have to yell at him. Hey. Athena, I, if you come in here one more time, we're going to have problems. If I tell you once and they tell you twice, the third time I'm going to fire it up. Yes. Mom, get the fuck out of my kitchen. Jake does not speak to his mother like a uh, mother should be spoken to. Day before we peeled two fucking buckets of potatoes, where did the buckets of potatoes go? Did we sell that many fucking potatoes? I don't think so. This is a restaurant game between us. I see my son and they say, this is not my son. He used to spoil me like to death. And now he hates me.
Mom, get out of my line. The turmoil between Jake and Athena. You can get the hell out of here. It's just been bad vibes, and it's really affecting the restaurant. The food quality is really low. They said their mosaic and orso was way too mushy. What? That was nasty. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. The morale is really low. Up to the threshold of how much shit I can handle, period, bro. That Chef Ramsey's help, uh, El Greco's doomed. It fucking sucks. I put up everything, whatever I had, all of my money. This restaurant, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna be in the streets. I wish I was dead. A Greek restaurant in Austin, okay. How you doing? Good to see you. It's good to see you too. It's a pleasure. Gordon. Dustin. Dustin, good to see you, buddy. And you are? Uh, the waiter. Okay, great. Are the others about? Yeah. Yeah, can we quick Jake and Athena. Love oh, to yeah. meet them. Thank Jake. you. Jake, Athena. Hey. Oh. Hey. How you doing? Hey. Farewell, thank you. How are you? Jake, I'm doing good, sir. Thank you. Jake. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, great. Hey, can I give you a hug? A hug? What? I was waiting for that. At the moment. Okay, let's have a little hug. Oh, always, always nice. Welcome what, to my... Warm. Welcome, thank you. Well, nice to see you. And your name is? Athena. Athena. This is your... My mother. And you guys are partners, right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, let's spend a couple of minutes catching up and give me a little insight to what's been happening. You got it. Shall we? Yeah. Things have gone bad with me and my mother since the restaurant has opened. My first priority is getting the restaurant fixed. And if that gets fixed, I think our relationship will get fixed. I am so mother and son. Yes, sir. Uh, who just wants? You are obviously the chef. And... Yes, yes, sir. And I'm just the mother and the cook back there with my sister. Oh, you cook as well? Yes. I try my best. I try to do it like my mother and my grandmother. So authentic. It's Great. authentic uh, ancestral recipes. How old were you first started cooking? I've been cooking all my life, but I, right. I, I went to culinary school about uh, eight years ago. My mom always wanted to open up a restaurant and get her sister down here from Greece. I said, you know what, let me go to culinary school and see what we could do. So that's, that's what I did. Are, are we? Uh -huh. Damn, are they always? I'm very good. Uh, are you great you know? at catching flies? Yeah. Oh, yes, I am. What are you doing? I'm gonna no, kill no, one. No, no, come over here. I'm gonna kill one. One second. No, no, maybe, no, maybe, no. maybe not in front of the customers. <laughs> no, no, mom. No. There we go, there you okay. go. Uh, there you go. Well caught, by the way. That's, uh, that's lightning. <laughs> yeah, that was lightning. Of course, huh? I'm good about Great the Great reflexes. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's go back to the beginning when you first opened. What was that like? It was Beautiful. Great. The first eight months were great. We were busy all day long. There wouldn't be uh, a lull in service at all. Wow. But we was busy. We didn't even feel we was tired. What time do you start in the morning? We have to come here at 6 o'clock. We'd be here at Naturally. 6, yeah. But on average... Not seven... my son. Don't say we be here yeah, because you are I not have, here. Yeah, I haven't you're been here in a while. Yeah. But you're the chef. Surely you're here at the same time. No, no, sir. So what yeah. time do you come in the morning? Probably 11, 11 o'clock. Right before lunch. 12, yeah. Hold on a minute. Your mum comes in at 6. And you come in at 11.30, five and a half hours later. Yes. So if your mum and your auntie does all the prep, what do you actually do? <sighs> yeah, I cook uh, food for customers, yeah. You cook for customers? Yeah, no, that's about it. You tired? She's always tired. He's always, always tired. tired. You're still yawning. What do you think the biggest problem with the restaurant is right now, today? I don't know what the reason is. It's Jake. It's Jake. Exactly. I see my son, how he used to be and how he's oh, now. Stop. Don't what? tell me you are not, because stop. you are. No, I'm not. My son changed. He doesn't care. Not about his life, not about the restaurant, not about anything. How much? What's the investment for the initial restaurant? How much did it cost? Uh, I came here with $300,000 plus another five. Eight, $800,000 for this? Almost, yeah. $800,000. Everything's gone. Not only I'm losing all my money, I lost my son too. It's very dramatic. He doesn't want to hear my voice. No, no, Why? You're his nags. mother. He's nagging all the time. He says constantly, he says, I'm yelling at him. Even if I talk to him nicely, I can't take it anymore. The hell with the money, the hell with the restaurant. But losing my son, too, on top of everything. Shut up about that, please. 
Christ, man. I can't take it anymore. I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead to have a son like you now. Within minutes of arriving at El Greco, Gordon quickly realizes that the pressures of the restaurant has ruined the relationship between mother and son. I'd rather be dead to have a son like you now. After that gloomy greeting, he's hoping that the lunch is a little more cheerful. You want to go grab something to drink? Um, no, I'm just going to have a glass of water, please. Glass of water. Um, and who's that uh, young man in the kitchen there? Who's that? That's Anthony. Anthony, may I have a quick word? Yeah, thank you. That's it, thank you. Anthony. How are you? Good to see you. You're welcome. Yeah. Sit down. Um, what's your position here? Um, uh, kitchen manager. Kitchen manager? I uh, run so the So we've got Jake's an executive staff. chef, and you're the kitchen manager? Yes. Wow, I haven't tasted the food yet, but I'm more shocked at the relationship with his mother. Is I that... No, this is That is the most son. shocking thing when anybody works here. Is it him or, or her? And it all starts with him not showing up in the morning. It's all. Unbelievable. She just doesn't like to be here. He'll come when he gets busy. How many hours a day is Jake here? <laughs> On an average day, I'd say about three. Three total hours in one day. Yeah, yeah. Is he in love? Has he got a girlfriend? A video game. It's unbelievable. A video game. Yeah. He's not playing it right now, but I guarantee he's thinking about it. What a disaster. <sighs> okay. Well, thank you for the update. I yes, appreciate it. Yes, I wish I could meet you under better conditions. I really well, do. good Let's to see you. Let's get you some food, alright? Thank you. Can I uh, start off with stuffed zucchini, and then got to go for the lamb shank as well, I saw that. And then moussaka. Moussaka, please. Cool. And um, I think that'll be it for now. OK. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Bring it up, come on. Well, obviously, things aren't going right since Chef Ramsey, Ramsey and came out today. But I'm not going to let anyone defeat me. <laughs> they got it. Right. Zucchini. Can do this. Jake likes to just get in and get out fast. He knows better, and I know better than to use a microwave. I'm trying to go to Ramsey. Right now, Jake is very lazy. It's pretty messed up. Mm -hmm. The bears seen, dude. The zucchini is delightful. We're screwed. What is that? So on stuff zucchini. Stuff zucchini. Yeah. Look at that. It's like two grenades about to explode. My God, now it looks like something out of an alien movie. When zucchinis attack. Oh. Wow, that's badly seen. Bland. No go? No, I mean, that's disgusting. I could cry, but I joke. Wow, sorry about that. What did they say? Stuff zucchini was horrible. Oh, fuck it, we're good. Hated it. What? Try this. I did it. If you hate it. It's too strong. That's good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Jake's ability at this moment is zero. He doesn't care anymore. Lamb Shank? It's coming, man. I'm doomed. Completely. Lamb Shank? Now, there's a very anemic looking lamb shank. Look at the presentation. It's depressing. Almost like it's uh, been in the microwave for an hour. I'm sure that they wouldn't microwave a lamb shank. I'm a little bit nervous to have gray the meat is. That is way too salty and, and badly balanced. Dustin? I mean, so salty. Who cooked that, uh, Dustin? That's Chef Mike. Chef who? Chef Mike. It's a microwave. I thought there was a third chef. <laughs> he kind of is. He does Are a we... lot of work in the kitchen. Uh, we use Chef Mike a lot. Whenever there's lights on in this restaurant, Chef Mike's working. He's a dedicated employee. He uh, asked about Chef Mike. He said he asked who cooked it. I mean, I can't lie to him. So I told him. He's not happy. Holy fuck, dude. I can't take this bullshit. Hello. Hi. I am Kiki. Kiki? Yeah. How are you? Thank nice you. to see you. Nothing is good. May I finish my lunch first okay, and then I'm have sorry, a chat? Please. No English? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Scottish? No. French? 
Spanish? No. Oh, German? Uh, German, a little okay. bit. Thank okay. you. I don't speak German, <laughs> but it's good to know. Thank you, thank you. This is the one I'm going to serve? You can serve it to me. Go. God, it's so embarrassing. I don't care, man, at this point. I don't give a fuck about anything. Though. Moussaka. Now you think of Greece, you think of authenticity. That is not authentic. It's a non-moving moussaka. What a disaster. He went like this, stayed on there. Hey, Jacobs, I don't care. If you saw this food in a dog food bowl, you would not think twice. Moussaka? What was that made? When was that made? Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh... You don't like it, the eggplant or no. anything? And did Chef Mike have a hand in this one? Chef Mike has a hand in a lot of dishes. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. How'd you like to try anything else? No. <laughs> gotcha. It's just too painful. It's not possible for a restaurant to be so bad. Yes, yeah, about Chef Mike again with the moussaka. Well, where is that? Uh, where is everybody? This will be fun. I want to run away and hide. <laughs> hide. I'm putting out a high-end quality product, and if you don't appreciate it, then get the fuck out. I've never felt so depressed in my entire life. That was embarrassing. The stuffed zucchini? You didn't like it. No. Bland, depressing. The lamb shank? I mean, salty, sad. And it was just dumped on a plate like a dog bowl. And then the moussaka. That was made this morning, was it? Yeah. Yesterday, yes, what, what wasn't fresh about it? It was, it was, what wasn't it fresh was about yesterday. It? You served me yesterday. The only chance of it tasting fresh has gone. It's not even 24 hours old. So, well, what's not fresh about that? Executive chef, Chef Mike, the freaking microwave has more qualifications than you. I think your big problem is, Jake, you don't care. You don't want to even be here, do you? I can see it in the body language, the attitude, and just the way you perform. I've come across a lot of executive chefs in my time. I've never seen one quite like a sack of shit that's standing in front of me now. Ramsey told me how it is. I feel the same way. Could I just have a two minutes with the owner, please? Oh, with her? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I'm really sorry. So it's not a hope for us. That's what you try to tell me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Listen, I need to be really honest with you. The hardest restaurants to fix ever are the ones where the passion has gone. And his passion I has gone you. way before he thought about asking me here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm going to be here. Tonight, I'm going to see how this place functions. I need to see everything as it is. I don't know how to do, Mr. Ramsey. You are my last hope for me and my son. Yeah, I just hope it's not too late. OK? <laughs> I'll see you later. OK. Thank you, Athena. Nightmare. I hope it's not too late. Ah. Uh... After a depressing afternoon with Jake and Athena. You right? No, I'm not all right. It's gonna be a long night. Word is spread that Chef Ramsay is at El Greco and the restaurant is fully booked. How are you guys doing? Now Gordon hopes to get some more insight into how Greco operates in a dinner service. This is Diego. Diego. What's your role? Well, pretty much just grade A line cook. Line cook, yeah. yeah. Good. And what your training, what, what have you done? Well, I've been cooking in Austin in various different restaurants. So okay. I'm 18, I'm 32 now. Wow, so 14 years experience on yeah. the line. Wow. Let's go. Lamb OK. I'll take the kebabs as well, except with shrimp. Here come the peas orzo for the second order. Get this out. You got green beans. There you go. Microwave food. Chef Mike, 12 gas ring burners there and not one of the chefs is using them. They're all in the microwave. It's like we've forgotten there was a kitchen here. What is that in there? It looked like someone sat on a football. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, moussaka from it's a moussaka. Chef Mike. You'd be fucked without the microwave, wouldn't you? 
Unbelievable, Diego. I would love nothing more than to see both of these going to the dumpster. And it's really humiliating. I feel like a little kid heating stuff up in a microwave. It kind of messes with my passion for cooking. Like, I don't feel like a cook the way we're doing things with the microwave. As Chef Ramsay watches plate after plate after plate being zapped in the microwave, it becomes clear that Jake doesn't really care about his food. Here we go again, waiting in line from Chef Mike. We got to keep the microwave. Yeah. This is incredible. The minute you walk into a restaurant with an open kitchen and all the chefs are facing out, as opposed to standing in front of the stove, get out. That's what's happening here. Unbelievable. Dustin. Is this normal, this? I have nothing to say. That's just how we do it. I've seen a diaper look more appetizing than that. I agree. Greek restaurants. More like a Greek tragedy. It pisses me off. What I think about my food is, it's healthy, it's fresh, it's, it's good. It's damn good. Yeah, reheated. Right. Microwave food. It's, it's not microwave food. I mean, how else am I going to reheat it? Don't break my balls about getting it, re reheating it in a microwave. He's been cooking 14 years. There's a whole stove there, not even being used. And this guy's like this. Come on, Jake. Fuck me. I don't use the word microwave. I'm not cooking it in the microwave. I'm reheating it in the microwave. Big difference. There's a big difference. I don't think it compromises the food, reheating it that way, but I mean. Say that again. You don't think it compromises the food? I don't think so. Oh, my god. Oh, they're going to have a big pie. Oh, my god. It doesn't compromise the standard of food? No. Wow. Yeah, you fuck off. How's that? There we go. Go. Get out of my line. Jake. Yeah, Jake. I got to Look, Jake. I'm trying to yeah. put Jake. out food. I'm Jake. not here Let me to tell talk you to you. Take your head out your ass and just start acting like a man and start taking responsibility for something, will you? <laughs> hey, I'm taking responsibility. You are. And you think it's smart telling me to fuck, fuck I don't want to fuck around. So, how about showing a little bit of respect for what you're doing? Go. Get off my line. Let me do my job. Get out of here. Jake, Jake, I'll go with pleasure. It's an hour and a half into dinner service at El Greco. Reheated. Microwave food. And while Chef Ramsay has had enough with the microwave. Yeah, you fuck off. How's that? There we go. Jake has had enough of Chef Ramsay. Go. Get out of my line. You think what? it's smart telling me to fuck off? I don't want to fuck around. So Whatever. how about showing a little bit of respect for what you're doing? Go. Get off my line. Let me do my job. I'll go. With pleasure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I need table 20. I know it's a mess. A mess? You can fix it. You can tell him whatever we have to do, and we will do it. I've never seen a kitchen function with a microwave as much as here. OK. All right. That's number one. Number two. Your son doesn't care. It's depressing. There's three chefs standing on the line, and not one person's cooking. OK. If you have passion, and love for food. You don't zap it, you don't microwave it. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Greek restaurant, nuclear power station. He's right, Mr. Ramsey. My son changed. He doesn't even care about himself. Makes me feel bad. Honestly, seriously, I'm in shock. Let me tell you why. The busiest chef tonight is Chef Mike. And how dare you tell me that food cooked in the microwave... It's not cooked in the microwave. It's reheated. Are you honestly saying there's no difference in food that's been reheated than cooking something fresh? I mean, I don't think it tastes that much different. There's no love, no care, no passion. He doesn't care. Oh, Athena, please. He has to care. Athena. You have to take in charge, hey, and quiet. you are not. Quiet. Quiet. OK? Get out of my fucking restaurant. Right now. Out. It's not your restaurant. Yeah, it is my restaurant. Out. I'm not going to listen to your bullshit. OK? I wouldn't be alive right now if I talked to my mother the way Jake does. My mom would murder me. Athena, you know what? I'm sick and tired of nag, 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 nag every goddamn day. Oh, you need to, leave you need me to... alone. Oh, yeah, leave you alone.
I need to go and have a fucking good thing. I got you. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. My son gave up. Jack should be more committed to this restaurant. You have to change, James. I hope my son comes to his senses. And Chef Ramsay will bring the old Jake back. I can give my life for that. Come and prep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be here at 10 o'clock. As another day begins, Athena and her sister Kiki arrive early to begin the daily ritual of prepping for lunch and dinner. But in spite of promising to be there at 10 o'clock, Jake is nowhere to be seen. The bank, money is in my name. He's blowing it for me. 41 χρόνων άνθρωπος. They tell you 10 o'clock, be 10 o'clock here. I don't want to hear your bullshit or her bullshit. That's why I don't come down here. This is exactly why I don't come down, because they yell at me, they gang up on me. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. You are, you are. There's nothing left of me in here. I'm sick of it. Oh, God. I think that he's not anymore a human. I don't know what he is. After spending the morning doing research around Austin, Gordon is ready to put some changes into effect. Morning. Morning. But the real question is, is Jake ready to change his attitude? Morning. Morning. How are you? I'm OK. Yeah? You don't look OK. What's going on? I just had an argument with my son. This is what happens every day. If he tells me he's going to come at 10 o'clock, he comes 12 o'clock. This is crazy. Don't you like it? What did she say? Excuse me? I, I don't understand. This is ridiculous. Get in here, please. Two minutes. Yes, sir. The atmosphere in here is horrific. What's going on? I don't want to be in here with these two. I really don't. Every time I walk in here, they look for something to complain at me. And then they both gang up on me. And I don't need you two fucking me coming in here and you guys yapping and yapping and yapping. I don't want to hear that shit in the morning. I really don't. No. Yeah, whatever. Why is she so upset? What was that? Please? They say I don't come down on time. No, you and never I don't. do. I don't. You never do. This is the reason. No. All you do is yell and you nag, Athena. Them. No, I don't create it. Athena, yes. who the hell wants to come down early in the morning and listen to people yelling at him? I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm up to here with that. I get very upset. That's what I got to put up with every morning. He doesn't give a damn. He must about give a damn. Mine. Come on. He can't be that cold hearted. Yeah. He uh, is and sometimes I don't. I mean, I don't want to deal with it, dude. He I mean, if you put up with this shit for two years, you're not going to give a damn about it either. You won't. They're not your friend, it's your mum and your aunt. Yeah. He doesn't give a damn about that. No, That's but why, we why should I give a damn when you're swearing at me, you're cursing yeah, me, you're calling me names all day long? Nebromyari. Nebromyari. He's upset. Yeah. This is what I gotta put up with every fucking morning. Every morning. You don't need to be here. You and her do not need to be here. I don't need this fucking stress. Who do drapes it, right? Tikanis is in the mesa. Tikanis in the mesa, Tikanis. Tikanis in the mesa. I put this man like you. Yeah. 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 Excuse me, Kiki, please. Oh, please. And now have this. Yeah. 
Από εδώ μέσα μόνο να φύγει αυτό το ίδιο θα πας προς το μαγαζί. You know, I'd be better off with both of you staying home and let me do what I need to fucking do. Then do it! I will! Don't fucking come to work! You and her leave! After years of pain and suffering at El Greco, the family has finally reached its breaking point. Don't fucking come to work! You and her leave! Don't come! But is that what you really want? Is that what you did? No, down? I don't really want that. No. What the fuck are we doing? We didn't do this in the beginning. All this argument has brought our restaurant down and brought our relationship to a halt. This fighting has got to stop. Yes. This is insane. He has to commit to getting in here earlier, and you have to stop beating him with a stick. What do you want me to do? Wipe the board clean. Are you willing to change? I am willing to change. Because it's like... got to stop today. Stop right now. I'll start all over again like it's the first day. And that is a commitment that all three of you. Αυτό ήθελα να ακούσω. Αυτό ήθελα να ακούσω. Το κάνεις εσύ, τελείωσε. Η ψυχή μου είσαι, το καταλαβαίνεις παρά σαν τα παιδιά μου και στον. Κανένας δεν είναι σε τίποτα, ούτε στο μυαλό της τη δύναμη. Κανένας δεν είναι σαν εσένα. If my son can change, I think I'm gonna be the most happiest mother in this world. We've forgotten the importance and the advantage of having a family-run restaurant because when it works brilliantly, it's amazing. And we have to get back. And it's not going to get any better unless you change, all three of you. OK. I got my mom and aunt back. I really love both of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like arguing with them. I love my aunt like she is my mom. Now that the family has made a commitment to work together, as opposed to fighting each other. Right, I just need all of you for two minutes outside, please. Chef Ramsay has made a commitment of his own that he hopes will have a major impact on the dining experience at El Greco. They're gonna run us over. Yeah, a car, bam! <laughs> it's a firing squad. <laughs> I had fixed the problem in a restaurant. I'd ran over everybody. Chef Mike, you've been so busy. It's time that you took a little vacation. What's going on? I don't know. Hey, guys. I've got something to, uh, to show you. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh. 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 oh, the microwave. <laughs> it's time to say goodbye oh, to a very busy Chef Mike. Chef Mike. Uh, guys, back. <laughs> yes. Way to Chef Mike. Yeah. Chef Mike, it was good knowing you, but we're better off without you. Chef Mike, nice shot. Yeah. Has left the building. Has <laughs> left the building. Yeah. A beginning of a new era. Yes, sir. Because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. And you do not need a microwave to cook in your restaurant. You know, it's a family business. By losing my passion, I've hurt the restaurant, I hurt my employees, I hurt my customers, and I need to get back to the basics and cook food the way it needs to be cooked, and that's what I'm gonna do. With a microwave no longer the essential piece of equipment in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay begins to put his plan into effect, cooking fresh Greek food. We're gonna do a grilled salmon, nicely seasoned, mm -hmm. salt, pepper, okay. Extra touch of salt on the skin. And getting Jake passionate about cooking again. Nicely marked, all the way around. Literally, 90 seconds on each side. You got it. I'm not in here to pre-cooked food. I'm here to cook it. That's why I went to school. That's why I'm in here. We'll take a spoon of tzatziki just on the plate. The salmon that sits on there. That's beautiful. Jake's passion, I think, is coming back for cooking. I think I'm going to have my son back. Now, start tasting. Yeah, it tastes really good. Wonderful. I'm excited for Jake and Athena. I feel a huge weight has been lifted here. I feel like uh, I can actually be a chef now. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Woohoo!
Coming up. Damn you people. It's relaunch night, and El Greco gets a new lease on life. Jake, you can't do everything. But will Jake be able to lead his kitchen to a successful evening? What are you doing, man? You don't listen to shit I say. Because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. Or will he be the only cook standing when dinner service ends? One more fucking lip from you, you're done. Now that the family at El Greco is focused on moving ahead instead of looking behind, Chef Ramsay's renovation team works through the night to give El Greco its own unique identity. Good morning. Are you ready to We're see ready. the ready. new restaurant? Yes, I'm ready. I want to go in. I want to see it. Right, let's go. All right. Ladies no. first. Oh, oh wow. 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 That's great. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Very light. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yes. When you is. walk through these doors, you think of Greece. That is awesome. The restaurant was soulless. It was dull, it was drab, yeah. no identity. Now when you walk in, it's clean, it's Mediterranean. I it's like it. Keeping with the classic Greek flag with the blue and white, chairs, blue and white, the silhouettes on the walls, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I notice something different every time I look. And you have a centralized table here. And look at it, it's got the right height, we've got new stools, brushed stainless steel. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. I love it. This is nice. perfect, the picture. Everything's perfect. Words can't describe how I feel about the restaurant. This is like a new place. It's a new beginning, a fresh start. That's, that's what we want. It's awesome. With the excitement of the new dining room still in the air, Chef Ramsay's carefully designed menu is ready to be revealed. Welcome to the most amazing, vibrant Greek menu here in Austin, Texas. And guess what? Chef Mike didn't touch a thing. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't touch a thing. We're gonna start off with the lamb chop. Lightly seasoned, lightly marinated, and grilled to perfection. Half a roasted chicken. Amazing. Grilled octopus, braised slowly, and served with a little Greek marinade. Yeah, that's very classic. Additional entrees, pressed eggplant moussaka, yeah, and the beef moussaka running alongside it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. OK, get some knife and forks, dig in, yeah? Grab me one of these. <laughs> very nice. Mm, dude, that's killer. Amazing. Oh. That was phenomenal, too. My dream came true. This is a new start for us, for me and my son and my sister. It's a new beginning. Hello. Welcome to El Greco. What can I start you off with? It's relaunch night at El Greco. Let me get the beef brisaka. Beef brisaka? It's all going to feel really weird and awkward, but of course it's going to feel weird because we're laying down the foundation again. And for the first time in a long time, everything will be cooked fresh to order. There we go. We got a crispy feta and we got a grilled octopus. Let's do this, dude. It feels awesome to finally be able to cook again. I want to hit the road running. Drop the feta, please. I'm ready to go. Drop the feta, please. I got oh, it. Feta going. I got it. I should be doing it. I should be saying I'm dropping the feta. Go ahead. Come on, finish. As stunning fresh food makes its way out to the diners, it's fantastic. The demand on the kitchen continues to grow. Drop a falafel, OK? I'll get that. But just as importantly, so does Jake's enthusiasm. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Jake, Jake, you can't do everything. Yes, sir. I am now plating the veggie. Falafel. Where, hey, falafel. Where these in the oven. Falafel. First thing. These are the falafels? Yeah. I got it. Jake. Yes, sir. Jake. Yes, sir. Talk to us. Come on. Talk to us, OK. There you I go. need you to uh, start getting these two tickets out right here. Call them out for me. OK. Walking no, in. No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Let me put these up. <sighs> Unbelievable. When I first arrived here, Jake was just a lazy chef doing nothing. Now, he's the other extreme. He's doing everything and delegating nothing, which is just as dangerous. Unbelievable. Hey, what's this lamb doing here, man? We selling this? With Jake unwilling to accept help from anyone, the kitchen is completely stalled, and a relaunch that started off so well is now in jeopardy. What else can I be doing? <sighs> Jake, can you answer me? What? What are you doing, man? You I don't listen to shit I say. Because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. 
Jake's got to be able to either work with us better or the whole thing will go down. Don't give me attitude, Diego, please. We have a chance starting today to do things completely different and we should work together. God damn you people, man. Yeah, yeah. Can't be fucking nobody hey, else. Hey, dude, one more fucking lip from you, you're done. Both of you. I think my son is full up. Come on, Jake. Or it's going to fall apart. Listen to what I'm telling you. Oh, God. It's relaunch night at El Greco. I got it. I got it. I got it. And with Jake trying to run the entire kitchen solo. What are you doing, man? You don't listen to shit. Because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. Dinner service is on the verge of disaster. God damn you people, man. Yeah, yeah. Can't be fucking nobody else. Hey, dude. One more fucking lip from you, you're done. Both of you. This is ridiculous. Jake, two seconds. Anthony, Anthony, come here. Diego, Jake. Yes, sir. Two seconds. You have got to start delegating. We're about to go down. Stop running around and delegate these two. You got it. I'm, I'm Stay flustered. as a team, guys. Don't start fucking arguing. There was a lot of mistakes that shouldn't be happening at this point. Chef Ramsay is totally right. I need to delegate more, so this is it's going to stop. Green beans, green beans, we got them, right? Right here, chef. I need an orzo, a bean, and a pilaf ready. Right here, chef. Good. Right. With Jake finally working in tandem with his team in the kitchen. This is going to 28. Thank God. Stunning, delicious Greek dishes are once again leaving the kitchen. Gorgeous, huh? That is some intense bubasa. Everybody had smiles on their face. Everybody in the dining room. Happy? Oh, very. The tickets took a little bit of time, but they love the food. Eat. Oh, please. Make me a steak plate, please. That's it. That's all I want. That's it. That's all you got. I'm happy with the results of what we were pushing out tonight. We made a few mistakes, but we made good food. And it actually felt good to smell the smells and hear the sounds and actually really be cooking. Uh, that's it. I don't, we have another ticket. We don't have any more tickets. They're done. They're done. The ticket is done. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for being patient. Oof. OK, in a matter of days, we've come a very, very long way, let me tell you that. And the atmosphere in here tonight, in comparison to when I first walked through those doors, the difference is night and day. Very good, guys. Well done, you. Ramsey, he's the man. And no one else could have done it but him. Jake's a hard cookie to crack. He, he bashed it. It was a major, and I mean major, transformation. I think we've been given um, kind of a golden ticket to either bring this restaurant to the brink of greatness or to flush it down the toilet. And it's totally up to Jake and Athena at this point. Here's to El Greco. Let's go! Well done. Breaking the plates is like breaking the old habits. We can wipe this clean, new start, new beginning. Jake. You were under pressure tonight. If I can give you one piece of advice, you need to show respect to your team. Yes, sir. You're their leader. Yes, You're sir. their inspiration. I was very proud of him. It's a good feeling, man. I'm so happy it's... about that. Not a lot of people get second chances. Yeah, we're definitely not going to squander it. We're going to move forward and make something of it. Athena, you need to respect him, and he needs to respect you. Exactly. Give me a hug. Oh, it's a big wet smudgy one. Chef, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Look after yourself. Yes, sir. And look after your team. Yes, sir. Team first. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. For nearly two years, this restaurant was microwaving everything. So the fact that we had a successful relaunch is amazing. But the biggest, and I mean the biggest miracle of all, is the fact that we brought Athena and Jake together. And quite honestly, I didn't think that was going to happen. Wow. Chef Mike, rest in pieces. In the months that followed, Welcome to El Greco. Let's do this. El Greco received positive feedback from the community. It was fantastic. It has a really good flavor. And it appeared as though the restaurant was going to be turned around. But Jake and Athena's insurmountable debt was too much to overcome. And the mother and son were forced to close El Greco. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares Revisited, Chef Ramsay returns to some of the most explosive and unforgettable restaurants 
to see what happened to the eateries he tried to turn around. Who fucking hot water? Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. I don't even talk to my staff like this. Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. Close your fucking business. Close it. First, we return to Classic American in West Babylon, New York. You gotta go fucking work the line because I'm fucking losing my mind. Owned by friends who are on the verge of losing it all. I feel like I've failed. And I've tried hard, you know? Then we'll check in on Davide in Boston's North End. Hey, Mohan, this is your tape. Get the fuck out of here, really. Where two brothers were at war with each other. I'm mad, I'm pissed. I'll fucking tell you to go fuck yourself for the bullshit you put me through. Oh my god, fine. And finally, who can forget Down City in Providence, Rhode Island? You're a disgrace in this industry. Fuck you and get out of my restaurant. Where Chef Ramsay went toe to toe with a stubborn owner named Abby. You can't even accept it. Fuck hey, you. You'll walk out again. I am. Go fuck you. Tonight, Chef Ramsay is back to see if his hard work has paid off. Who has embraced change and turned their business around? And who turned their restaurant back into a nightmare? What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not as nice as I thought. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. In this day and age, running a restaurant has never been harder. Tonight, I'm going to show you what happened to some of the restaurants we tried to turn around last year. But first, let's take a look back at what happened when I arrived at Classic American. West Babylon, New York, just an hour outside Manhattan. It's a cute, stunning, all-American town. The perfect location for a classic American diner. Just not this one. So tonight sucked. Every night sucks, yeah. The owners, Colleen and Naomi, were $700,000 in debt, and not one of them had paid themselves a paycheck in over a year. I feel like I've failed. And I've tried hard, you know? Colleen's son, Kevin, was the head chef. What's up, Chewy? The calamari. People eat need their food. They've been waiting so long. She knows everyone's waiting a long time, what do you want okay? Me to do? And her boyfriend, Dom, was the manager. Hey, Dom, why are we run out of everything? How the fuck do I know? When I arrived, the menu was simple. So I played it safe and stuck to the classics. I'm a big lover of mac and cheese. Do you have any mac and cheese? Yes. Almost impossible to screw up. Yeah, it's a mouthful of goo. That's gross. Almost impossible to screw up. <sighs> the bomb burger? Fuck it out. You probably won't like that either. It's chewy as hell. We ask the chef for the taste then. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're great. My appetite gone. I went straight back in the kitchen to confront Kevin, the chef. On a scale of one to ten, rate the food in the restaurant. Between six and seven. Six and seven. I would have said six. Half it, and take two away, and you you're on my mark. At that nice dinner service. I witnessed firsthand the real issues with classic American. Water up. Bad food. Just kind of soggy. The shrimp is no good. Not enough food. Teresa, no burgers. We're out. There is no more. What a joke. I gotta. I can't do this tonight. I can't. You gotta go fucking work the line because I'm fucking losing my mind. What's the matter? I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. You understand? I do understand. And I can see how painful it is. I feel I had more loot than anybody else in this place. Excuse me. Here's the, the honest truth. Friendship's got fuck all to do with it, because there's no friends when that place is closed. You're right. You're absolutely right. You cannot give up. Nope. Colleen was wearing all the pressure of Classic America on her face, and you could see she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. The next morning, I sat everybody down, and I held a staff meeting. Dom, why are we always running out of product? Because when I open my fucking mouth, everybody shrugs their shoulders and gets a fucking attitude. Because you do it That's all the time. Why. This is the problem. Is it you? Is it him? Is it me? Is it her? Who? Who? It's everybody. No! I was ready to kill somebody. You don't disrespect me like that. They got to find a way to fucking piss me off. No. Unbelievable. Nothing was working. So, to add some excitement for that night's service, I introduced a new special. Let's start off with some sliders. Fun and bite-sized, yeah? That 
It's a thousand miles away from the bomb burger. Yeah? Have a taste. Ooh, that's so good. How's that? Perfect. Try and chew it before you swallow it, yes? You mean you swallow it right out? Finally, classic American had a dish customers actually enjoyed. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's a really good burger. Yeah. They said it was excellent. Unfortunately, the rest of the old standbys were a classic American flop. Look at that. Just touch it. A plate of vegetables. The finger's going right through it. This is the sorry state that we've got ourselves into. I wouldn't serve that to my dog. Stop. Stop. Don't send anything else. Close it. We're closed. These are closed? Can I get a waitress over here, please? I'm sorry, we're not serving anymore. I was running out of time. Nothing was working. There's no way this restaurant can survive unless there's a dramatic change. So that night, my team moved in and gave Classic American a stunning, and I mean stunning, makeover. Wow. Come in, come in. <laughs> Gone as the old country style, whatever it was. And welcome to the new Classic American. <laughs> Talk to me, darling. <laughs> Are you happy? What do you think? Looks great. Let's have a look at the new menu. Classic American dishes done brilliantly well. <laughs> I swear to God, who needs a pig in the back garden when you got fucking Dom? Big deep breath. <laughs> oh, great. Dom, save some for the staff, will you please, yeah? Uh huh. And then the breakthrough I've been waiting for. Somewhere along the line, we got lost. And I just want to apologize for that. Colleen finally took charge of her business. We're family, but. We have a business to run, okay? And so those two things need to be separated. And I know you have to lead by example. And we will show you the leadership that you need to do your job. Hallelujah! Let's have some fun tonight, guys. You know it. Woo -hoo! Relaunch night. Opening five minutes, guys, yes? Coming ready? Ready. With Colleen stepping in and taking charge. Pull pork right away, let's go. The kitchen ran smoothly. Kevin, you got a classic burger. Okay. Two orders of wings all day. You got the wings, yeah? Excellent. Nice. Keep it going, guys. How do we like everything? Absolutely delicious. We'll come back for more. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah, we'll, we'll clear the board. The customers are happy. Good night. Thank you very much. That night's nice relaunch was one of the best we've ever done. You all pulled off a fantastic service. Congratulations. Thank you. Amazing. Colleen, Naomi, this restaurant has every potential to really become a huge success. Do not start dropping your standard. It means too much. Yes. Come here, you. Well done. Up. Oh, well done. Mm. I'm back at Classic American West Babylon, New York, where two waitresses bought a business to fulfill their American dream. It turned out to be an American nightmare. We made a lot of changes. We're about to find out if they turn things around. Up next, find out if Colleen and Naomi have taken charge, or is Classic American sliding back to its old ways? Who's buying the ingredients now? No. Oh, Jesus. And later, we'll go back to Down City, the restaurant where the owner tried to throw at Chef Ramsay. We need therapy! I'm gonna get out of my restaurant. See what happens when Gordon and Abby reunite. Can I stay today or are you gonna kick me out? Last time I was at Classic American, I met two owners that were on their last legs. The food was disgusting, the staff were disorganized, and the restaurant was bleeding money. We made a lot of changes, new decor, new menu, and a new attitude. I'm back now to see if all those changes have paid off. Fingers crossed. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Mm, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. I can't believe how well you look. <laughs> look, you've just been away on holiday. Yeah. Where did you go? Nowhere. No? It's a little weight off the shoulders. A little weight off the shoulders. Um, no need to ask, but obviously business today is busy. It's been very busy. Oh, really? Yes. You get Fantastic. a good crowd for lunch and dinner. Who's in charge? Out here, Colleen's in charge. In the back of the house, it's me on there. Synergy there? Yes. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to jump in the kitchen. You got the reins. You're in control. Right. I'm more relaxed. There's more structure again. And the business is growing. Hello? Somebody's busy. 
Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Are you well? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, goodness me. You look great. Thank you. So does your partner. I was super excited to see Gordon come back. I was nervous, but I was really happy, and I knew it was only going to be positive. Who's in control? We're control. in control. You are. That's good news. Battle, yeah. battle scars to prove Battle it. scars. <laughs> Fantastic. Who's involved in the menu? Uh, Kevin, myself, Colleen. Big time. Hey, big boy. How are you? Good, how's it going? Good to see you. Want to grab an apron? Uh, an apron? <laughs> oh, good. Someone's found his balls. Excuse me, you want me to cook now? Yes. <laughs> Is that passion still there? Absolutely, more, oh. more so. Rate the food out of 10, what would you give it? Between six and seven. Half it, and take two away, and you, you're on my mark. 10. A 10? Yes, sir. You didn't even think about that. Brilliant news. Yes. Hey, it's good to see you. You too. Business is up in terms of the last six months. Where is it? Uh, 35%. 35% up. That's fantastic. Are the costs in control? Yes. They are, yeah? And who's buying the ingredients now? Who's, who's running that side? Dom. Dom. Oh, Jesus. You always got to come back? That's right. I got to fucking comment about every fucking thing. Because when I open my fucking mouth, everybody shrugs their shoulders and gets a fucking attitude. Because you do it That's all the time. That's right. We kept him out of the kitchen. You've kept him out of the kitchen. That's good news. Now in his office. Oh, Dom's got an office. <laughs> oh, wow. The garage. Oh, the garage. Good. He's allowed to be in for an hour today to eat and have coffee. That's it. How are you? Hey, good. How you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good to good see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. I, I thought I'd see you running around the dying room, topping up water, shouting at everybody. No, I'm, I'm a little in the background now. How do the staff rate you now? Do they see you as a interferer? Oh, yeah. still an interferer. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, you mean you're still throwing things? They got to find a way to fucking piss me off. No, I don't throw things. I just scream now. Oh, you scream now? Yeah, I'm yelling at everybody. That's why I stay out here. OK. okay. Colleen looks great, by the way. I mean, seriously? You know, the stress, a lot of stress is relieved. She looks 10 years younger. Colleen's a lot happier. The changes she's made in the last year, things are looking up. Good to see you. <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, he hasn't changed one bit, has he? No. Oh, oh, my God. Listen, it's still good to have someone that passionate behind you and the business. But there's a place for him, and it's not in the restaurant. No. It's in the shed. Yes. He's very high strong, Dan. But he's got my best interest at heart. I'm sat here looking at both of you now, and completely different to the last time I saw you both. <laughs> <laughs> last time round, you sort of hadn't given up, but you were just going through the motions. Yeah. I got embarrassed the way you were letting the dining room staff get away with murder. Do you want to go out there or no? I don't know. How's their attitude changed towards both of you? They're not as confused anymore or frustrated. Right. They're more happier and more willing to do yeah. what needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you much indeed. A meatloaf. Jeez, that looks lovely. Uh, doesn't it? It does. Wow. No, it's delicious. A plus? Yeah, no, that's an A double plus. A 10 out of 10. Uh, I'd give that a 10 and a half out of 10. <laughs> so last time I was here, the worst moment. Colleen, what was it? The garage. I've been fighting a losing battle every day. In terms of? Just feeling totally helpless. Mm -hmm. Almost given up. Mm -hmm. Knowing that I couldn't, but wanting to. Mm -hmm. Naomi, worst moment for you was what? After people ordered, um, shut the kitchen down. Stop! Don't send anything else. Close it. I, I would like to tell you something. Yeah, of course. And uh, if I cry, it's happy to you. <laughs> All right? Yes. All right. I just want to tell you that I appreciate you, you come and tell us. Had you not come, we would be sitting here. It wasn't. Me who turned this place around is both of you. Never forget that. Had he not come, we, we would have had to shut our doors. He gave us a second chance, you know? He brought us back to life. Um, I've got a little surprise for you both. Please come with me. I know. Just two seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? I'm so happy to be back here in West Babylon. Uh, why? because I think this place is amazing. And there's a gentleman here who has an amazing award. Um, would you say good morning to Richard Branson please? <laughs> How are you, sir? Good to see you. On behalf of all the hamburger lovers of Long Island, uh, Good Times Magazine's Bountiful Gourmet column would like to present you with Long Island's Best Burger wow. Award. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Amazing. Thank you. Great right news. Thank you. Mwah. The biggest thing that Gordon taught me was to be 
the boss and stop letting everybody walk all over me. Thank you to our community and our employees for making this possible. If Chef Gordon Ramsay hadn't come, we wouldn't be here. Our doors would have closed a year ago. Well done. The most important thing that I got from him is that you have to believe in yourself. You know, you can do this. You know, you did do it. You can do it again. I'm so happy for Colleen and Naomi, increasing business by 35%. In today's economy, that's practically unheard of. They are a true, classic, American success story. Brilliant. Coming up, we'll go back to Boston's North End to visit Dobby Day, a restaurant that was tearing a family apart. Shut the fuck up, take the food that's up in the window and come back, go away. And later, Chef Ramsay is back for a rematch with the Queen of Mean. Down City's owner, Abby. How have you changed? Boston's historic North End is rich in history, culture, and brilliant food. There are so many thriving Italian restaurants in the area. Unfortunately, Davide is not one of them. Hey, Mora, this is your table. Get the fuck out of here, really. The restaurant was owned by two brothers who were constantly at war with each other. Too fucking hot for him. Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. Frank was the chef, bitter and frustrated. Shut the fuck up, take the food that's up in the window and come back. Worst of all, he'd given up on himself. It's 3.30, you gotta get ready for dinner. It's definitely gonna get fucked it. anyways tonight. Frank's brother Anthony just looks so down and beat and constantly trying to please. Anthony, why don't you go kill yourself? Oh my God, can't work like this. To make matters worse, the brothers were hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Are we gonna be able to take checks this week? The moment I arrived, I called the staff together, and that's when I discovered the problems ran far deeper than I ever imagined. Anthony has been in and out of the restaurant over the 13 years. Frank found out that Anthony was embezzling money. And what happened? I know, I'm... Um... Hooked on painkillers, got in trouble, went to jail, the whole nine yards. Frankie got left with the whole shit. It got to him. Got depressed, he got burnt out. Money went down every year. Naturally. When Anthony left, Frank gave up. He's broken mentally and physically. Come on, I'm mad, I'm pissed. I'll fucking tell you to go fuck yourself for the bullshit you put me through. Oh my God, Frank, if you can't put the past behind you, we can't go on. He doesn't respect me, and I don't respect him because I think he laid down and fucking died. The family were very open and honest about their feelings, but when it came to the food tasting... All the passes he and me, that's a big positive. All I got was a bunch of BS. This is really spongy and horrible. Are they frozen? No, no, that's fresh. Will you just check if that's done this morning? Because it tastes like it was done last sure. week. When were they made? Uh, no. three weeks ago. Yeah, there's a batch of freezer. They don't make them to order every day. It was actually made three weeks ago. Disappointed by the food, I went straight in the kitchen and gave Frank a reality check. If you can't even be bothered to cook fresh food, what do you want me to do? Wave a magic wand and turn this place around? Come on! I don't know how to do any better. That's a lie. You could do much better. That night, I was hoping for a reinvigorated Frank. Bat chance. What are you down there, a little booth? I'm thinking, come on! You sit down on your ass to think. My seat of depression. Holy crap. From the first ticket, dinner service was a disaster. Table 31, been waiting an hour. Please shut the fuck up! I'm waiting on 32. Can't cook that fast. This is lukewarm. Yes, son of a fucking bitch. You and your fucking lemon juice, fucking stupid chicken out of your fucking motherfucker. I wasn't watching a dinner service. I was watching a man on the verge of an emotional breakdown. <laughs> It wasn't over yet. Frank walked out of his own dinner service. Are you kidding me? I'm not fucking cooking. I'm not doing it. Davide was doomed, unless we can bring Frank back. The next morning, a very emotional Anthony spoke the words that his brother was dying to hear for so long. I know how much damage I've done. And you had to hold it together. Now I believe you need to take care of yourself. We don't ever say it, but I do love you. That's it. That's the first time I heard any remorse from him. Should I listen or should I not listen? Oh. Kim? You haven't put this chef's jacket on in four years. 
Because I think inside you felt you didn't deserve it anymore. But you do. You're actually one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. That lack of passion that showed in the food yesterday for Gordon was a cry for help. Please put this back on. No, I'm serious. Frank was beginning to come around, which was very positive. I want you to think of something that you want to cook. Pan sear this in a simple lemon cake with white wine. Nice. What have you got in the sauce? Shallots, thyme, a little dash of rosemary. It's delicious. He even put his chef jacket on. And now you look like it's the chef that you are. Then I got to work on the new menu immediately. Have a look at this. Wow. Oh, my god. God are the dreadful plates of the 80s. <laughs> the main course, homemade gnocchi, brown butter, truffle oil, and some fresh chives at the end. Awesome. I am overwhelmed. Relaunch night. You welcome to Davide. Tonight we change the menu. The stakes were really high. A packed house and two writers from Boston Magazine. I'll do the Tuscan bread soup. Within minutes. Anthony and Frank reverted back to their old ways. Frank, look, can I get the pork so I can complete? That's it. Don't let it rush me. Come on, give me, give me. I'll give put me. it up when it's ready. Give me, go. The pork is a little raw. Table 15, one for pork for. Fuck! It's the Boston magazine. Oh, no. Oh, my God, what's so fucked? Frank looked ready to bolt out the back door again. I stepped in immediately and really turned him around. Listen, we can pull this back. We can pull it back. Come on. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. it's undercooked. We can get it going, yeah? I'm fucking pissed. Come on. Come on. You know, you can't let it follow. No, no, no. Follow is destroyed. I'm not giving up. I'm tired, but I'm not giving up. Thank God I was trying to impress you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's good. It's good. It was rocky, but Frank and Anthony proved they could work as a team and work under pressure. And the mountain restaurant can be every night. Frank. You proved to me tonight that you can run a kitchen. And Frank, keep that chef jacket on, keep that attitude with it, and never sit down in a kitchen ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for your success. I'm back at Davide's in Boston's North End. Last time I was here, it was like walking to a war zone. Two brothers fusing so much they were destroying their business. We brought them back together as a team, and we're about to find out if they're still on the right path. Up next, find out if the brothers have kept the peace, or are they back at war? Brotherly love on a 1 to 10, where's that now? And Chef Ramsay makes a shocking discovery. Oh, no, come on, Frank, no, you're kidding me. That's all coming up when Kitchen Nightmares Revisited continues. Last time I was at Davide, the food was rotten and the customers were staying away. But nothing was going to change until I helped the two brothers who owned the restaurant to let go of the past. Let's hope they haven't gone back to their old fighting ways. Anthony? How are you, sir? How have you been since I last saw you? I'm good. I'm uh -huh. really good. You look great. Yeah, things are good. It was definitely a little nervous having him come back in. You're still worried, is he going to come back and say, you guys aren't doing the right thing again? Um, nice atmosphere in here. There's a buzz. Big Brother, where is he? He's in the kitchen. Please tell me one thing. Has Frank kept his butt off that chair? We go down there, little booth. Come on. My seat of depression. You ask him. OK, I'm going to find out. Good to see you. Buddy. All right, good job. Nice to Thank see you. you. Hey. How are you, big man? Good. How are you? you look good. You're busy out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got the chef jacket on. Please tell me you continue to wear that. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, no. Come on, Frank. What is that doing here? You little fucker. <laughs> i got to rest my ass once in a while. Oh, no. Come on, Frank. No, you're kidding me. Before service, after service? Before and after. Not in the middle of service? No. Promise? Yeah, but he can't anymore. Have you kept that passion? Yeah. Good. Hard, well, it was right? always there. It just needed a little bit of push, I guess. The biggest thing I learned from Chef Ramsay was that you got to care about what you're doing. Bottom line, if you don't want to do it, get out. Hello, Kim. Come round, darling. 
Oh, my God. I was excited to see him because I wanted him to see that Frank had really taken his suggestions and implemented them. All right, nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Right. Last time I was here, you were at your wrist end. Yeah. The weight on your shoulders. I mean, you were on the verge of breaking down before anybody. I love him, and I've seen how much over the years he's done for everyone. How's their relationship between Anthony and Frank? I mean, how? they're brothers. So yeah. They're going to fight. You, you look at it as Frank has one way and Anthony has another. Yeah. I think Gordon bringing a lot of the issues to life did help in that, you know, Frank and Anthony kind of understand now where the other one's coming from. I look at you now, not mm -hmm. just how happy you look, but great to see Frank sweating, busy, on top of it. I know. That's it's the scary amazing. News. How cool was that? To see him happy about it and to be researching new dishes and looking for new menu things to bring in, is amazing Good. because that was gone. That's great news. He's got his passion back. You've got your man back. Yes. <laughs> right, lunch. What are we eating? I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe I don't it's know. Frank. Yes. Whoa, yeah. Alice. That's lovely. When I look at these three dishes here and I think back to what was served, seriously, I mean, it's a different league. Look at that. Mm. When Ramsey tasted the food, I was thinking, here we go again. That's delicious. A really good meat. Really good. He liked it. He didn't read me you a new one. <laughs> Brotherly love on a one to ten. Where's that now? Too fucking hot, water. Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. His attitude sucks, but. It's yeah. a few <laughs> We're at a seven. We'll That's get with a seven. Since the last visit, me and Frank have definitely made progress and let go of more stuff than before. If you blow up five times a week, now we're blowing up twice a week. Cool. Where are we? On a good day. On a good day. On a good day yeah. at seven. I was seven on a good day. <laughs> seven on a real good day. <laughs> I feel like I've moved forward a little bit because I think he has more respect for what I do. He finally gets it a little bit. Business in general, since I was last there. 10, 15 percent up. Oh, wow. Very well. Good. Have you seen what's happened in Boston in terms of how many restaurants have been closing over the last four months? I mean, yeah, surviving fun. this recession is, is a success. Let me tell you that. If you weren't here, we would have been closed. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. Ready? Guaranteed. Great news. Um, a little surprise for you. OK. Mm. Uh-oh. No, don't be like that. Be of yourself. Yes? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, may I just have your uh, attention for 30 seconds, please? How was lunch? Great. Delicious. The city's on a high on the back of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> we have a big surprise here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sean Thornton. <laughs> When he said he had a surprise, I really had no idea. That was awesome. Yeah, for awesome Bruins, you guys helping us get where we are. I'd like to give you the awesome. jersey to put up in here. So thank you very much. I've seen Thornton as like he's always a fighter. Comes back. It felt good to see somebody like that. Thank, thank you, you so sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The biggest thing I learned from Chef Ramsey is persistence. But the most I learned is that he really did emphasize, you know, having people around that love you and family. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you another one. Another one. Work on that one. Thank you for building my confidence and for helping me in my business. So nice to see them smiling again. And just like their beloved Bruins, if Frank and Anthony continue working together as a team, Davide is on track to become a big winner. Coming up, Abby from Down City chased Gordon out the door. Get, get the fuck out of my I restaurant, please. Now, one year later, is Abby a changed woman? Have you embraced the word change? Providence, Rhode Island, great little city. Lots of cool restaurants and a phenomenal art scene. But honestly, I spent so much time there with a throbbing headache named Abby. I just want an answer. It is impossible for the fries to be ice cold. Abby owned and ran down city. Problem was, she was running it into the ground. As long as you work for me, you do it my way. Enough said. Her employees didn't respect her. Abby acts like... Whatever, don't argue. Corella DeVille. <laughs> and her partner, Rico, he couldn't get a word in edgewise. All I think about is why people are not coming to my restaurant. Down city was bleeding money. Abby and Rico were in debt to the tune of a million dollars. We've got all these bills to pay this weekend. That's the stack. 
When I first arrived, Abby was actually quite pleasant. Hello. Hello, oh, Chef Ramsay. How are you? Welcome to Down City. Nice to meet you. Likewise. My pleasure. For five seconds, and on a scale of one to ten, mark the food. What would you say? Where are we? It's a ten. Wow. It's wow, wow, wow. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. I'm starving because the room service next door was shocking. We do the room service for that hotel. What was the problem? Crab cakes that were stone cold in the center. It was just like this ball of mush. Disgusting. That's like, impossible. Can you say denial? I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately. Now, obviously, I didn't think the food was going to be a 10, but what Abby served me, shocking. Mm, what do you think? Ah, soggy, chewy, disgusting calamari. What do you say about it? Just get the calamari back out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a partying amount. I'm taking it. That was one party you didn't want to attend. It wasn't a party in my mouth. It was like a funeral in my mouth. A funeral? <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of does look like something died. It was so clear that Abby was bloody delusional. And it was time for me to give her a big wake-up call. How can I fix it when you stand there in front of your team rating you and your restaurant and your food 10 out of 10 dreamer? I don't, I don't think it's as I bad can... as you say it's I can stop being in denial. Wake up and admit it's shit! No surprise, that night's dinner service was a big disaster. And I mean disaster. This needs to be cooked a little more. Can we just 86 this special? Every single one of them has been sent back. I'd seen enough, so I decided to sneak away and have a quick look around the fridges. Oh, this is gross down here. Holy crap. I was totally shocked. I led Abby and Rico straight downstairs. The place is a filthy mess. Look, what is that? Lamb bones? And who's organizing this? And that's when all hell broke loose. You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't minute. like this. I don't hold, run a kitchen hold like this. Hold on a minute. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh boy, here we go. Listen to me. I'm not gonna listen to you. You're in denial. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. I am not in denial. Yes, you are. I can't even accept it. Fuck hey, you. You'll walk out of there. I am. Fuck walk. you. There you go. Click the bird. You are insane. You are like... Yeah, blame me all you want. These excuses that you're insane. I'm insane. You're insane. You can't even admit you're the fucking, fucking truth. You're fucking insane. I don't even Perfect. talk to my staff like this. Perfect. Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will get go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, go. please. You are so okay. in denial. Okay. You need therapy. You're a disgrace in this industry. Fuck you and get out of my restaurant. You still here? Not now, guys. Please. Please, please. Fuck him. I was pissed. That has never, ever happened to me before. Excuse me, they called me. Is he, he's coming back today, isn't he? I don't give a fuck where he goes. He can go to hell for all I care. Chef Ramsay. Then Rigo came out and begged me to walk back in those doors. Honestly, she's got to start listening. I, I know, I, and I don't know how to make her do it. I really, I don't know. Do you want me to leave? I'm out of here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Tomorrow we need to start being Honest and open. I agree. I want you to help me get this restaurant to where I need it to be. The next morning, I held a staff meeting, which they'd never had before, and got them to ask Abby some serious questions. She had no choice but to listen to the team, and she was being exposed. It was so important. Abby, why do you not allow anyone to express their opinions without it being seen as a personal attack to you? Since I bought this restaurant, I became a defensive bitch. Wow. Is this the same person? A new Abby. I felt really encouraged. Immediately, we got to revamping Down City's menu. The appetizers. Ghost cheese truffle dip, honey spiced chicken wings, meatball ciders. Delicious. Wow. Now we can have a real party in our mouth, Abby. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh, my god. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, my God. This is like my... <laughs> I've never seen Abby this emotional. Like, she does have a heart in there. She does have a soul. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now we just got to make it work. Yep. Relaunch night. We are going to rock this town tonight. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. I invited a special guest, blogger Stacy Place. She has 10,000 followers. She blogs tomorrow. We're 10,000 potential customers. Back up. The night started off well. Right now, in the window, I need that fish and chip. I need that slider. Slider's up, Chef. Jimmy, keep it going, yeah? Frise salad on the fly. But it didn't take long for Abby to go back to their old ways. 
Jimmy, did you call the calamari for table 30? I just did. Oh. I need four soups and one chowder up in the line, please. That's incorrect. The kitchen fell behind, and it was relaunch night, and it felt like it was all going up in flames. She just tweeted, waiting for appetizers, getting hungry. OK, this is not bullshit now. Menu's there, chefs are there, I need you there. Come on. All right, OK. Please. So, listen, Jimmy, they're already blogging that they're waiting too long for food. Let's get this food out. All right, how long on a solo truffle dip? Urgently, please. With Abby cool, calm and in control, the kitchen got back on track. Jimmy. What's 10 up? 37, did you fire? I did fire. Good. Abby, read that discreetly. So, you want and you need? Truffle dip, amazing, yes? Yeah. Come on, keep it going, yes? This looks amazing. Yeah. Really good. yeah. A lot better than last time, right? Yeah. Jimmy, it was awesome. Thank you. Customers love the food. Abby, how do you feel, babe? I feel beyond belief, fantastic. Come on in. Give me a hug. You're not going to ask me, I'm going to ask you. That's right, I, Gordon Ramsay, are asking you for a hug. Come here. Huh? Thank you, Steve. If you wanted bad food served by a very, very angry owner, Down City in Providence was the place. We made a lot of changes. We're about to find out if it paid off. Coming up, it's the revisit we've all been waiting for. Can I stay today or are you going to kick me out? Chef Ramsay and Abby, the rematch. I'm back at Down City. The scene of one of the biggest fights in the history of Kitchen Nightmares. The owner, Abby, wow, what a tough nut to crack. We made a lot of changes. Let's hope they've paid off and she hasn't slipped back to her old ways. Pray to God, please. Hallelujah. Hey, Rico, how are you? Gordon Ramsay. Good to see you. How are you, sir? Good, I knew you'd be back. Thank you. Are you well? I'm excellent. How are you? You're looking well. Thank you. You too. This is brilliant. The big question, how is she? <laughs> oh, let me lead you to her. Yeah, do I need a... You don't need armor. You don't need anything like that. Bulletproof vest. No, you're fine. No. Okay, you're fine. great. You're fine. I Here think she'll be happy to see you. Okay, I'm anxious for this one. Hey, how are you? Welcome back. You look great. I was so happy that he was here because I knew he was going to love the food. Do you still hate me? No, I never hated you. I'm really? Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, will go. please. Can I stay today or are you going to kick me out? We'll see. Oh, we'll, we'll see. see. OK, great. <laughs> uh, well, uh, need I ask, um, business is looking good. Just look at it. Everyone's happy. Everyone's great. Since Gordon was here last, business has improved at least 30 30%, and that's huge in this economic environment. How have you changed? I don't come in the restaurant anymore and say, OK, this is what we're going to do. It's my way or the highway. That Abby is gone. I think the staff is going completely batshit crazy because I am so calm and I don't run around yelling and screaming at them individually anymore. Um, Food-wise, last time you rated the food, you gave it a 10. How's the ratings now? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find out. It's a 10. And you mean it this time? I'm not in denial. <laughs> You'll see. Hey, look at you. Excuse me. Hey, who's hey. here? How How's are you? Going? Are you well? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good to see you. Jimmy has impressed the hell out of me with his work ethic. That kid would rather be working than doing anything. Abby raised at 10. How would you rate your food now from 1 to 10? A 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. And she's changed. Tonight was the worst shit show I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever seen. For the better. How's your work relationship with her? Is she giving you more leeway? Can you become the chef? Yeah. Yeah? Jimmy just absolutely wonderful. In his dynamic with Abby's, has, has melded into a really nice relationship. There you go. Good to see you, Jimmy. You too. I'm dying to see downstairs. <laughs> Our famous place, you know, where you and I really what get off. What happened downstairs? Well, I don't remember that. Take me down there again, please. I don't know what that is. What is that? What, you lost the words? The place is a filthy mess. Look. What is that? You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold it on wasn't like this. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up, precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh, boy. Shall we? Please. So I prepare myself? Holy mackerel. Wow. What do you think? Well, bloody hell. It's organized, it's structured, and it all looks incredible. <laughs> Let's get out of here. We've just been working so hard to keep the standards up that he left us with. I've got a question for you. What's up? On my last visit here. You told me 
You're a disgrace to this industry. I take it back. Are you taking it back? I take it back. back. I, it just I, came out. Sometimes I don't have a filter. How you doing? Good to see you. Good, Likewise. Good to see you too. How are you, buddy? Good, good. How are you? Well, what's happened? It's like sort of we've, 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 we've changed. She goes up to our tables all the time now. She's very interactive with the customers. You know, she's looking for positive and the ne negative feedback. Good. Okay, great. It's good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. <laughs> no, thanks. Wow. That looks great. That's a steak. That salmon looks lovely. Do you mind if I do a bite of that one? Absolutely. It's so good. That's delicious. To get Gordon Ramsay's seal of approval, I mean, it really means everything to me. Have you embraced the word change? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no pinky cross. Put your right hand up and swear to God, I have a... I have a... I've embraced. I've embraced. Change. Change. Forever. Forever. Wow. <laughs> so, with the success of the business, has it brought you two together in terms of as a proper partnership? What's the working relationship now like? I sense a little tension between you two. Instead of the um, volcano erupting on the employees, it erupts on me. Really? No. It seemed like what, what she was told on Friday, so she told me to fuck off. <laughs> and you know what she told you to fuck off? <laughs> Abby, there's me thinking that you're a complete change, turnaround, amazing woman, and you slip back into your old ways. No, I didn't. We're like an old married couple. You're in business together. You yeah. shouldn't tell him to fuck off. He's your partner. You're right. You're absolutely right. Don't tell him to fuck off again. In fact, I'd like to apologize. I love you, Rico. I'm sorry. That's all I've been waiting for since Friday. That's it. It's very simple. I wish you did it Friday night. There isn't anyone I would ever do this with besides Adam. Her heart and soul are there 110% of the time. Listen, Adam, I'm pleased. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Both. Thank you. Now, as always, um, Take care. Thank you for Take much. care of her when you please, yes. I think what Abby learned from Chef Ramsay was accept criticism. Because accepting criticism and dealing with it makes you stronger. Come here, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to see you. Come back again. I want to thank him. He was a lifesaver, because Down City is my life. I really like him a lot. He's a cool guy. I don't need to tell you, but it's been a rough couple of years for all business owners. So, for Davide, Classic America, and Down City to be thriving in this environment is a tribute to all their hard work. I am so proud of them all. Good night. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to an Atlanta suburb to help first-time restaurant owners Richard and Jorge. Hi, hi, hi. And while the restaurant is clearly on the verge of disaster, what the hell? One owner is too stubborn to see the problem. It's dry. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. The other doesn't seem to care. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. One thing is for sure, they are clearly over their head. This is fucking ridiculous. With a menu that is bizarre. Mexican, Asian, Indian. Sound like a fusion, confusion. A staff that is completely frustrated. Don't talk to me like that. It's not surprising that the kitchen has become a battleground. Get out of here, right now. Chill out with a fucking drama. Get out of here. Can Chef Ramsay get through to this disappointing duo? You can't even tell me the truth. Do you know why? About what? Because you don't know. Or is the damage so severe, it is impossible to be fixed? You're a fucking joke. You Listen. Think. You're a joke to me. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Inman Park, Georgia, an upscale Atlanta suburb known for its trendy dining scene. In the middle of this tight knit community is Park's Edge, opened three years ago by longtime friends Richard and Jorge. All right, Jorge. Jorge is my best friend. Our friendship started when I used to own an air freight company in California, and for the last three years, we've been business partners. Okay, where's Richard? Okay, there you go. I was working for you. When I was working for Richard, I decided that I was going to go to culinary school, and after I graduated from culinary school, and Richard and I decided to open up this restaurant. Hey, guys, our first guest is coming in. Let's look alive. 
Prior to owning Park's Edge, I had zero restaurant experience. Yeah, you gonna help me a little bit? I just had a dream. Basically, they had a couple dollars in their pocket, and they're like, hey, let's open up a restaurant. OK, you got the fires on, everything's on. Do you know how to do it? No, do you? No, well, hey, how hard can it be? I have a refire on 10. I don't have a refire on 10. Hey, one at a time. The kitchen is a mess. What is that, eh? I don't have that, man. There's no organization and structure. How long you got on the scallops on 21, chef? They're, they're, my times are all fucked up over here. I don't think Jorge knows what he's doing. When's this guy going to realize his food's just not working and that he needs to do something else? My cooking is something that's a little more evolving, different. Hey, try it. I like to just kind of take stuff that's basic and just sort of reinvent it. Yeah, you can't say that. Okay. Damn. Wow. It's weird and I wouldn't get it again. Did not like the taste. They said it wasn't good. Jorge definitely thinks his food is like Olympic quality food. It's perfect. It's like having a friend that just thinks they're completely kick ass at something and they're not that good at it. You could either order seafood, but I would not cook another steak for him. All right, how are your tables doing, Drew? 45. They're already been in for an hour. They got that little girl looking like she's about to die. Hi, hi, hi. When the heat is on in the kitchen. I've never worked this hard before. <laughs> Richard serves no purpose. How's it going? Not good. I know. He doesn't know anything about the restaurant to help. My job is around the front of the house, OK? And that's the easy part. Oh, my god. I didn't even see you, Cass. How you doing, baby? I just dress up and smile. <laughs> that's all I do. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> He always has a smile on his face. <laughs> like nothing is going wrong. He kind of has this. But there's some deep seated issues with the restaurant and the community. We put a tent up in the parking lot. I didn't know he needed a permit. And then we were pouring liquor around the license. A newscaster came to the restaurant and he told me that the neighbors don't like us being here. They could do better and deserve better. And my response was, they don't like us because we're a black owned restaurant and we're in a white neighborhood. Since Rich called the neighborhood raises, we lost most of the business. What's going on out there? Uh, you don't want to know, man. It was so bad, I, I, didn't, I couldn't even walk the floor. I don't have a plan B for this. This is my life. To be a successful restaurant, you need the neighborhood on your side. Now, I did a little research on Park Says before I got here, and what I found was somewhat shocking. They've only been open for three years, and they've managed already to totally alienate the whole neighborhood. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. How are you doing, Chef Ramsey? I'm Richard, co-owner of the restaurant. Co-owner of the restaurant. Look at you, looking very dapper. We need Chef Ramsey help because Jorge and I have built up a ill relationship, which is warranted with the community, and I don't know how to fix it at this point. Um, who's at the foundation? Jorge and I. OK, great. It was 50-50. I usually get managed in front of the house. He runs the back of the house. OK, and is that there now? Yeah. Want to go take a look? Yeah. Well, why okay. don't you bring him out? OK, hold on a sec. Jorge, can you step away right now or no? I mean, I got a second. OK. As far as the food and the menu is concerned, there, there's really nothing wrong with it. OK, so, Gordon Ramsay, good, good to see you. As far as the community is concerned, I think we could definitely use some, some help. Okay. Give me a little insight to the business so okay. I can get my head up to speed. In your eyes, what's the issue? It's in a nutshell. Uh, you know, we're just trying to reach back to the neighborhood. Yeah, we yeah. made some mistakes in this neighborhood that uh, we don't know how to unwind. I did you read know. something about that. And we're hoping you can help us with that a little bit. So the good news is it's not the food. No. Right? No, no, no. Well, it's no. great. Well, I can't wait to eat. All right. All right. Let's Very go. Good. Okay, follow me back this way. Okay, what you got? Here we go, Chef. Thank you. Uh, he was going to be taking care of you. You should be right over, right? Thank you. Uh huh. Fire spice seared scallops, avocado egg rolls, crispy shared wontons. Wow. Mexican, Asian, Indian. It sounds like a fusion confusion. How are you? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. My name is Amy. Amy, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. I love that smile. Thank you. What's the style of food here? What is it? Is it a classic American? Or... No, I think it's a classic Mexican. With an American, American twist. American twist. Or a twisted chef. Or a <laughs> Is there a misprint on there, or is that me? Grilled Caesar salad? No. Really? The lettuce is grilled. Uh-huh. Chop it on the grill. You 
never heard of that? No, it hasn't oh. hit London yet. <laughs> okay, I'll start off with that. The grilled Caesar, no chicken, just... Uh, just... Do you know what? Throw the chicken in there, why not? Throw the chicken yeah. in there? I'll go for the... Um, um, uh, hello. Hi, how are you? Before you steal my knife and fork, can you say hello? Oh. Yeah. My yes. name is Kevin. Kevin, good to see you, bud. Yes. Can I help you? Yeah, we're thrilled to have you here. I hope you can make some sense out of this shit. Yeah. Kevin! I need you. Can you excuse me for a second? Please. I need something. You're, you're busy. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I thought it was a thief. That was random. Uh, I, I don't know. Random. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Excellent. What does Kevin do? He's a bartender. He's a bartender. Yeah, so he really shouldn't even be over here right now. So <laughs> I, I don't a bartender even, uh... that just pops up and clears I don't know tables. What he's doing? Multitasking. <laughs> okay. Where were we? I'll go for the flash fried oysters. Um, I'll go for the grilled salmon. And as it's ready, just send it. Thank you, though. You're welcome. Coming in, chef. I'm ringing in his orders, okay? Okay. So be prepared. To me, it's Chef Ramsay, it's just another customer. I mean, as long as he likes my food, we're gonna get along just fine. Good to go? Walking out. Yeah, I think he's gonna love this salad. I mean, to grill lettuce, I mean, can't go wrong. Grilled salad. Come on. It is grilled. You're still amazed. I'm shocked. I've never thought about it, but it's true. Like, wait, why are we grilling lettuce? Sorry for interrupting, just two seconds. But this is a first for me, a grilled Caesar salad. <laughs> Don't know, but they actually grilled the lettuce. <laughs> um, can you just show a hand if anyone else has ever had a grilled Caesar salad before? Anybody here, ladies? No? Mm. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, geez. I always get nervous when a chef serves me the butt of the lettuce. When you've got the butt of the lettuce on, you can never clean the lettuce properly. And unfortunately, it's not very nice inside. Dry chicken. The salad looks hideous. Why oh, is it so spicy? Everything is spicy, everything. Jesus. Thanks, Dan. Grilled Caesar salad. Coming in, chef. Chicken is dry. The butt of the lettuce never should be at the end of the lettuce. Okay. And why does salad have to be spicy? We're a Mexican-American cuisine. Well, he's clearly not from Mexico, so. First of all, Caesar salad is not from Europe. It's from Mexico. I mean, I'm the Mexican here. You're not. It's supposed to be spicy. Oysters? Oh, the flash fried. Yes. Thanks, darling. Are you kidding me? That's an oyster. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like a fossil from Jurassic Park. <laughs> wow, that is disgusting. Can you get me Richard, please? Sorry. Yes, sir. Sit down. OK. When was the last time you sat down and actually ate off your I menu? Have, I have not sampled the entire menu on really? like, a regular basis. Wow. Yeah. I want you to close your eyes now. Okay. Please. All right. OK. And just try and identify that. Tell me what you taste there. Tastes a lot of bread. A lot of bread. A little heat. Mm. Here we go again. Yeah. <clears throat> Something. Oh, you're right? Yeah. You okay? <coughs> yeah. Please, here you yeah. go. Please. Okay, thank you. Shit. <laughs> Rich needs water. <laughs> it's about time for, you know, Rich to actually taste the food and see what's going on. Don't choke now. Yeah, it was, it was the spice that got me at the end. Yeah, the spice that got you. <laughs> it was the bread that got me. I'll give you that. No good on the oysters? Uh, yeah, not good. Next up is salmon. Salmon. Let's live in hope. What happened? Everything is just way too spicy. Ay, ay, ay. Chef Jorge thought that he was going to impress uh, Chef Ramsay with his food, and he wasn't impressed. I hope that this is definitely like an eye opener for him. So your plate is really hot. Don't worry, thank you, babe. OK. That looks like the bottom of a fucking bird cage. Okay. I mean, salmon served on a bed of sticky rice with a green curry beurre blanc. What the fuck is going on in there? It's like the United Nations of main courses there. What's the style? It's a, it's, I guess it's a little convoluted, isn't it? That's one way of putting it. Yeah. Okay. I want you to taste this. Go for the ragu and the strawberries. I mean, just the combination. The rice is just mm -hmm. hideous. Yeah. The spice is ridiculous. And the strawberries and the red onion ragu. Yeah. 
I had no idea we had that many problems with the food. The chef Ramsey dissected it. We got a lot of work to do here, don't we? That's the understatement of the year. Yeah. Don't worry. We got some more input for you. Okay. This is what you got over the board with green curry, bourbon, the strawberry ragu, and the sticky rice. You try it? Uh, yeah. And when you try the three together, it is a little, um, it doesn't blend well. You take the kitchen. Yeah. That way. Where's the chef? Here. Right here. Oh, okay, good. We should come in for two minutes. Okay. Uh, when I arrived, you said the problem with the restaurants and neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And the issue wasn't the food. Yes, sir. Seriously? Then I cannot believe that you stand there and tell yourself that your food is edible. Whose ever idea it was to grill a Caesar salad was just hideous. And the same thing when was grilling a salad. And the salad wasn't even clean. That had a butter lettuce on there. But forget the grilled Caesar salad. The biggest insult, the salmon. You're all over the place. There's no thought process. What restaurant did you train in? I went to school. What do you mean you went to school? Where did you go out and train before you opened your own restaurant? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. You didn't train? No, yeah, not at all. Out of culinary school, you then went home to your own restaurant? That is great. Really? Here's it in a nutshell. You're not qualified to stand behind the line, let alone run your own fucking business. All you're doing is you're coming oh, yeah. in here, trashing my background as far as where I've been, saying that all the food you ate today was shit, OK? One man's opinion is not an issue. You've got the arrogance to stand there and tell me that you think you're right. OK. You're gone. Listen, before you came here, all the things were working. Working in your little mind or working in your mind? I knew, I knew, I knew they needed to be tweaked. Tweaked? Yeah. Fucking brain surgery. This guy's just out of control. He doesn't have any fucking right to come in here and just fucking talk to me in that certain manner. Get the fuck out of here. This is my restaurant. Show me some fucking respect. I gotta go. After an informative lunch, Chef Ramsay has a better understanding of the food problems at Park's Edge. Um, uh, let's catch up. Have a seat. He now wants to delve deeper into the issues that this restaurant has with its local community. I'd like to sort of understand what happened here for the neighborhood. Uh, number one was we erected a tent in a parking lot without a proper permit. So we get sighted. First, the neighbors came by and said, hey, you got to take the tent down. It's not legal. Did you take it down? We did in accordance to the city, but not in accordance to the neighbors. Damn. So that pissed yeah. off the locals. Next. Right. So then we didn't have a liquor license and a business license. And I'm not gonna lie, we were we were getting, we were negligent. Wow. I mean that's quite major. No liquor license. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So then first the neighbors came out and said the neighborhood could do better. Uh, we were not good enough for the neighborhood. And my response was they don't like us because we're a minority-owned restaurant in a white neighborhood. <sighs> wow. Yeah. So you said the neighborhood was racist? Yes, exactly. Have you done anything, you personally, in the last three years to sort of build those bridges with the neighborhood? I don't know what to do or what to say or how to reach out properly. We made some stupid mistakes. Even the statement I made was, was stupid, and I don't know how to fix it at this point. I don't know if I think it might even be beyond repair. OK, I'll be back later, yeah? I want to observe how you run your business. All right? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Okay, ladies, uh, we're gonna get set really, really quick. We got 78 people in an hour and a half. With a busy night ahead of them. Matt, you need this pasta transfer? No, I'm good. Richard and Jorge prepare their teams for dinner service. I'm just back, out back for one second. Oh, there you go, set, huh? You okay? Ready? Yeah. You're going outside with a cigarette in your hand. Yes. Customer's about to come in, and you're going outside I'm for a cigarette. Going, no. Uh, <laughs> It was very embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. It was like a, a parent punishing a child. Okay. Fuck off in there. Come on, let's All go. Right, here we go. Jorge, I just want you to do what you normally do. Okay, so do whatever you need to do. All right, man, thank you. Chef Ramsay thinks that I don't know what I'm doing, but I know what the fuck I'm doing. And this is a time for me to show Chef Ramsay what Park Sash is all about. So who does what? I do grill, pantry. Uh, chef's going to work saute, and Matt, I believe, is in between helping us out. And how much experience do you have? More than 10 years. More than 10 years? Yeah. OK, good. So uh, how many years experience do you have? Uh, 15. 15. Wow. Hi, ladies. How are we? Hi. My name is Drew. I'm 
Love your server. Watch out, though. The dinner service underway. This is the Midwell Carlo right here. I do. And they're gonna be extremely hot. Chef Ramsay is eager to see how Jorge leads his team in the kitchen. Hey, Ebony, talk to me. Where are you at right now? Table 12 is working. No, it's not working yet. I don't think it's Jesse. Okay, 42 needs to go out. Chef, are you ready on 42? What's up, 42? Wow. Hold on, 10. Wait, wait. Jorge doesn't know what he's doing. Matt, Jesse, what are you guys working on right now? We need to have scallops on 36. I'm, I'm not ready on the scallop. What scallop are you? We're doing 36 right now. Unbelievable. It's crazy that someone thinks that they can come out of culinary school and run a restaurant when you don't have any experience. Is Jorge running the kitchen, or do they just all do what they want? No, he's running the kitchen. He is. He's a little overwhelmed right now. He's overwhelmed? I think, I think he might be. My God. How is everything? Oh, I mean, it's really spicy. It's all in the middle. Let me see the inside rolls. Oh, wow. OK, let me take that back. We're going to work on that. Chef? What is the issue? Uh, it's dry. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. OK. I'm fucking real. What's wrong with that one, darling? It's cold. Different? Oh, no. It's medium rare. It's cold centered. Medium rare is going to be cold centered. I don't know what the problem is. It's so frustrating. I'm a good server, like, and you're just making me look bad. And that's my money, like, that's my tip. So now it's like you're messing with my money now. What's wrong with that? Oh, um, wow, it's raw. I mean, you can't serve that to customers. What is that? That's raw. You cannot serve it like that. Chef Jorge thinks that his food is to perfection. Like, he should be cooking for President Obama. All right, you okay? Yeah, but I thought you owned the place, ran the place. I did. I'm just struggling to see a head chef right now. Yes, well, I've been... But the stuff that's coming back, it's stuff that's either gone overcooked or undercooked. Yeah, that's you right. You need to wake up a little bit. Anyhow. Jesus. With Chef Jorge losing complete control of his kitchen... How are we going? 20 B. It's going to be eight minutes. What? The servers are frustrated. Table 20 A, really needed. And not surprisingly, they aren't the only ones. <laughs> I'm doing all I can at this point. It's our first time. Probably be our last. Well, is there any way you can go to the table and do what you can do? Where do I go? Where do I go beyond that? Richard does not like to deal with the complaints. Wow. I feel like we, as servers, are running this restaurant. I need Rich. Don't we all? Richard, can I? Have you, got, have you got two seconds? Yes, sir. Yeah. Quickly, please. What's happening? Do you mean? What's your role? As far as table times and stuff like that? No, just in general. Well, we're right now we're in the weeds. I'm, I'm, letting, I'm letting him do his but, thing. But you're not doing anything. We're not doing anything. You just stand around and sort of glide. Well, right now we're overwhelmed. The, the house is full. Oh, come on, Richard. Come on. I don't, I, I don't even know where to begin with the tables. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, come on, come on Richard. Doing dinner service, I don't know what to do differently. I'm at a loss. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss. Yeah, I hear you. So I personally don't get involved. OK, here's your crab cake right here. Can I get some runners, please? Yep, I'm here to run. Yeah, I'm here to run. Run, run away. <sighs> this is a joke. I've never seen two owners that are more clueless at running a place than these two idiots, I'm telling you. Richard just walks around, and it's almost like he's in a dream. And Jorge, the self-appointed executive chef, that guy hasn't got a clue. Thank God the locals boycotted this place, because if they ate here, they'd never come back. Park Edge? Yeah, on the edge of a fucking disaster. What a nightmare. Excuse me. Can we have another chance on order? We have another engagement that we need to make. Okay. The entire table. Yes. With disgruntled diners unwilling to wait any longer. All right, folks, have a good night. Oh, they are not happy. The dining room empties out quickly. That's a wrap, Jorge. But while the kitchen may be done for the night, Start wrapping things up, man. Chef Ramsay's inspection of the walk-in is just beginning. Look at the state of this. What a mess. Asparagus here, rubbery. Oh, come on. That's got to be a month old. What the fuck is that in there? Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. No, I've got no idea. What is that? Oh, it's chicken. Marinating chicken. Jeez, it's marinating, all right? More like fermenting. What a joke. Jorge, can I, uh, can I just have a, a word with you in private, with Richard, yeah, on our yeah. own? When was the last time you looked in here? Probably... Come on, straight answers. Just one of you give me... Wednesday. Wednesday. 
Look what's in the box. Who turns? The project's over. Who rotates the freshness? That's my staff. Really? Fuck me. Seriously? Why you throw my labels like that for? Why are you taking my product They're and you're molding throwing it away? you? Hey, look. Okay. Just... Can I see some more? Stay there. Chicken. Fucking hell. I mean, look at this. What's this for? When's that from then, chef? Those are from today. It's those are, those are not going to be served to the public. Oh, they're, they're not going to be served to the public. I'm right? telling you that I'm not going to serve this. So you're, you're saving them for what? Talk to me then. They're just from, from this morning. You bullshitting little fucker. No, you're the little fucker. I'm telling you, this were made today. Oh, now, right. If you don't fucking believe me, that okay. is your responsibility. So that is your thing. You're lying through your teeth. I am not lying yes, through my teeth. Yes, you are. You can't, okay. even tell, you can't even tell me the truth. Do you know truth why? Because you don't know. And you're a fucking joke. You Listen. Think. You're a joke too, mate. After a miserable dinner service and discovering the state of the walk-in... What's this for? Those are not going to be served to the public. You bullshitting little fucker. Chef Ramsay has had enough of Jorge's excuses. You're lying through your teeth. I am not lying yes, through my teeth. Yes, you are. Okay. You can't even tell me the truth. Do you know truth why? About what? Because you don't know. And you're a yeah. fucking joke. You Listen. All oh, right. You're a joke too, man. Are you going to walk off now? Walk off? Listen, oh. all you do, all you're doing is hammer. Do you know what? What upsets me more about you than anything is that you don't even realize you're playing at running a restaurant. And the minute you start looking at yourself in the mirror and stop blaming the people around you, the quicker you may get this place turned around. Got it? Good. Fucking joke. Anyway, he does need his eyes open a bit. He didn't really think we had that many problems with the food. But it's just obvious tonight that things are not right. Jorge needs to hear what Chef Ramsay had to say. After a disastrous day one, Chef Ramsay wants to get through to the owners about all of the issues of the restaurant. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good, good. He wants the staff to unload, and the owners will be watching via surveillance cameras. What I'd love to know is what the issues are behind the scenes. Are you going to help? Do you know what? The reason I'm here is to help. But I can't start helping until I know exactly what is going on. So what I need from you guys is a clear picture. What are the main issues in here? Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like Richard just is really reluctant to be interactive with the guests after they're sat. It's like butts and seats, mm -hmm. and that's where he stops. And we're really responsible of solving guest problems. Richard. He gets stressed, he drinks wine, and so sometimes it makes it hard for us to communicate with him when we're having problems, because he's been drinking all day. If he wants to be as effective as an owner, he needs to be completely 100% when he's here. That's a good point. It's a very good point. And does he drink every day? Yes. And what does Jorge think of that? They have a lot of separation. Jorge's in the kitchen and Richard's out front. Their interactions are so very pretty minimal. 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 They need to educate themselves uh, more about this business. I know more about running a restaurant than either one of them together. They're too proud to say, hey, I do need help. Yeah. Chef Jorge, he acts like he's like on your level. He's like fresh out of culinary school. I mean, the ink hasn't even dried on his little certificate, and now he thinks he's an executive chef. Has anyone ever told Jorge that his food is so complicated? Chef is extremely stubborn, does not care what anybody has to say about anything, and if you dare say anything to him, it's your ass. Wow. You cannot give Jorge any negative feedback or you will get lashed out. Wow. I didn't see him lash out at anybody last night. Does, does he shout? Does he scream? What does he say when he, when he goes off? I get called dumb, uh, pinheaded. He had a conversation in Spanish a couple weeks ago in the kitchen about how fat I'd gotten. One day he snapped at me and I was just like, don't talk to me like that. And then he was like, oh, if you don't like it, well, you don't have to be here. I'm like, if I don't like verbal abuse, like, I don't have to be here. Seriously? Rude. I thank you for your honesty. OK? I think we need to stage an intervention for them because they're in denial. Good, because there's no need. They're right here. They're here right now. That's right. The watching. Oh my god. I'm gonna get them and bring them out. Okay? Good. Like they're here right now. I never would have said those things if I had known that they were listening. 
guess everything is out in the open now. After the staff detailed the problems with the owners... They're too proud to say, hey, I do need help. Gordon wants to bring the two sides together... Let's go. ...and bring it all to a head. Uh, you know, the most important part now is ironing this out. Um, we heard everything you guys said. And um, I was enlightened. Period. That's all I got to say. Um, it, it, it touched me um, deeply, and um, yeah, I was enlightened. I was, I was enlightened. Come on, face your team. Oh man, this is this is really deep for me, man. I've always been a pillar. Sit down. All right. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm you fine. sure? You go ahead, Hori. Yeah, just watching all of you guys just express how you feel. I was picturing the moments that you guys are talking about, and um, I really want to apologize um, to you guys for being unfair. You guys have been so dedicated to working with us together uh, to build this restaurant. I don't want you guys to feel like you've been taken advantage. I don't want you guys to feel that way. And I didn't know that was a feeling. As far as my attitude, believe me, that things will change. That's my word to you guys, and I'm willing to take those steps that we need to take to move forward. I definitely need to treat people differently you know, before he gets to this stage again. You know, I really never thought about what you guys thought. And I'm sorry. I consider myself a, you know, a pretty nice guy for the most part and loving and concerned and giving. And I, I, ha I haven't been to you guys, not that I haven't been. And I apologize for that. I have learned more in these last few minutes than I think I've learned for the three years I've been here. I know me and I know what I'm capable of doing. And I haven't cared enough, I know that. There's so much more I could be doing. And there's so much more I could be learning as well. This is definitely a turning point. I'm looking for new and better ways. It's high time we changed. While Chef Ramsay has a plan to relaunch this restaurant, he knows it's also critical that Richard and Jorge reach out to the community. And he's arranged an opportunity for them to do just that. If there's ever a chance for you to put a little apology out there. Yes. I can't think of a more fitting time yeah. now. All right. Let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Going on the news was a platform that part of this controversy started with, and going on the news now will allow us to use the same platform to hopefully end it. We are joined by the one and only Chef Ramsay, and he's brought a couple of friends along from Park's Edge Restaurant in Inman Park, and we are delighted to have you gentlemen with us. Let's talk about where they need to begin to get sure. things on the right track. Where do, where do they start at Park's mm -hmm. Edge? They had uh, the most amazing uh, restaurant with a great location, right. right smack bang in the neighborhood, and we go off to a wrong sort of footing, didn't we? Yes, we did. We basically didn't respect our neighborhood in the way we should have. There were some things that were set out of frustration that I sincerely want to apologize about, and we hope that we can gain the community's trust and respect once again. Mm -hmm. Being able to voice the apology on local TV was one of the greatest gifts I had ever received. You see me smiling ear to ear. I am so excited. I, I, can't, I can't even explain. After Richard and Jorge took their first big step to reconnect with the community. How are we? Good, how's it going? Ladies, good to see you. Chef Ramsay is now ready to unveil Park's Edge new look. It's the beginning of a new era. Let go of the past and look forward to an exciting yeah. new future. Welcome to the new Park's Edge. Beautiful. Wow. Edgy. Edgy. Very rustic looking. Wow. Rustic, clean, simple, modern. Good news is, the orange is gone. Yeah. Even better news, the orange is gone. Been on the inside too. <laughs> you ready to come inside? Yeah. Yes, we are. Let's go. go. Let's go, let's All go. Right. Come around. Oh, oh my god. god. What? Oh my god. Wow. Oh wow. my wow. god. This is beautiful. Take it in. Gone are the hideous colors. We brought in a new contemporary feel. Oh, yes. God. Man, this is phenomenal. I got goosebumps as I was walking in. I was seeing the new colors, and you know, there's like a life in here. And I am very proud to be the owner of Park Sash right now. 
We've got some amazing pictures on the wall. All these images are local. Doesn't it look good that you're bringing back in the neighborhood into your restaurant and confirm if you care about them? Such a great idea. The new look is so refreshing. This is who we are. Beautiful, hand painted, hand carved, stunning wood panels on the wall. You're on the park's edge, so we've incorporate that stunning backdrop into the restaurant. I love it, man. I love it. All the linens have gone and exposed those beautiful wooden tables. I am so happy and so proud. I am flabbergasted over the changes that were made in the dining room. Chef Ramsay has taken this restaurant to another level that we didn't even consider. Beautiful, man. Yes. In addition to revamping the decor, wow. please, Chef Ramsay has completely overhauled Jorge's complicated menu. This new menu is easy to execute. And let's get one thing right. It's American cuisine with a contemporary twist. <laughs> Excited? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, let's start off with this delicious green fried tomatoes with a, a buttermilk dressing. Light, a little bit spice, and delicious. Wow. Next to that, spicy wings. Yeah, so with a really nice herb blue cheese dressing. I can't wait to eat. Start so we can start eating. <laughs> uh, entrees. Pan seared salmon, you just done with a cauliflower puree and a caper relish. Next to that, a nice little robust slice of pork belly with a cassoulet, easy on the line. Any questions? When can we eat? Jump in. Mm. Those smell so oh, wow. wow. Those wings are really good too. This is some of the best food I've ever had. Food's definitely making me realize that my food was just too far complicated. Chef was way better. I hope nobody else wants these fries. It's my new favorite restaurant. Mm. Mm. Mm, no more question or complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. Here we go. When the doors are open for service. Being sabotaged. Okay. Unbelievably, one cook in the kitchen. Get out of here right now. Chill out with a fucking drama. Threatens to ruin the restaurant's relaunch. Get out of here. Now that the menu has been revealed. Okay, so they, some mussels. That, that's their portion for mussels. Chef Ramsay has brought in his team to spend all day training the Park's Edge kitchen staff. There's a saute I'm and sorry. there's a grill. But not everyone is on board with the changes. And then there's a fry station. Okay, so you do the fry station. No, I will absolutely not cook a chicken huh? wing. You won't cook a chicken wing? No. What's that? Don't feel comfortable frying a chicken wing. Why not? Unless she wants to put on a pair of orange shirts and go out there and serve it. They're here to train us, okay? You gotta turn around and give them a hard time. Check yourself before you check them out, okay? I'm gonna ask you again. He has this huge ego about fried chicken. This is really irrelevant. He's here to do what I tell him to do, not what he wants to do. No, What's going on? You put a bunch of fucking chicken wings on the menu. Okay. I think somebody ought to fucking put some orange shorts on there and got and serve them. Okay. Now how about a little bit of respect and showing these two I'm guys? A little fucking respect for a fine dining restaurant, not putting fucking chicken wings on the menu. A fine dining restaurant. Are you fucking listening to yourself? Where? Who yeah. so do you think you are? I don't think I am. Yeah, a guy that knows when a menu sucks. How dare you get jumped up telling the owners the menu shit because you think you know better. Well, why aren't you doing better? Why haven't you got your own restaurant? How about having the intelligence to calm down and to start again? Is that possible, yes or no? It's possible. Will you do it? Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Tonight's a huge night. There's no way I'm going to let somebody fuck it up. Matt needs to be able to board or get out. Show me what to do so I can do it. Thank you. It's relaunch night at Park's Edge. Big night, yeah? Tonight, we go forward. Happy, everybody? Yes. Good. And fresh off Richard and Jorge's TV appearance. Hey, folks, how you doing? Welcome to Park's Edge. I'm Richard. How's it going? The restaurant is packed, and the community seems ready to give Park's Edge another chance. This is day one for Park's Edge. We got a great new menu going. We're a new restaurant, and I hope everything goes perfectly. We have a great new menu this evening. Everything's good, honestly. They even have things on here. I'm gonna go with the mixed mushroom rigatoni. All right, great. Thank you all very much. There we go. Order in, chef. Thank you. All right, I need two orders of mussels right here. Work it, please, Jesse. Two orders of mussels. Okay, Matt, go ahead and focus on the green fried tomatoes. Thank you. I'm gonna run my kitchen like a Thai chef tonight. I gotta make sure that the food leaves this kitchen perfect. 21's up. Wow, that was fast. Nice. What a difference. All right, Lovely. can I get a runner, please? With Jorge really stepping up and commanding his kitchen. 32's coming up, 22's working. Good. That's exactly the tone, Jorge. Okay. Delicious food is going out seamlessly. That's so good. It's good, right? Yeah. Jorge, you drive it. Drive, 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 yes? Yes, yes. Yay, the food is coming out so quick. Don't jinx it. I'm oh, sorry. How long on wings? This is fucking ridiculous. 
Come on, Matt. I know you hate the wings, but just sell them, please. Hate me, don't hate the wings. You got your orange shorts. Orange shorts. Cut the shit to the end of service, OK, big boy? Come on. Hey, you, while you want to fuck around and take the piss, let me tell you something really important. What's that? Yeah, I've fucking forgotten more than you know. Just serve the food and shut the fuck up, smart ass. Matt, okay. what is the big deal? Trying huh? to have a good time. You're not having a good time, and you're making life tough. I'm having a good time. Why is he acting like that? Because he's a jackass. Matt is beyond the weakest link. You are here to do a job. Do it. Poor Billy's in the window. Matt, that's overcooked. I know you don't care, but I do. And you're supposed to be working hard tonight to help get this place turned around. Why are you now trying to sabotage it? Mr. Shitot, who thinks he can't fucking cook a chicken wing, can't even drop a piece of pork in the fryer. Look at it, dry piece of overcooked pork belly. He's going to start sending us down. Matt, you seriously want to fuck me over right now? Nope. Why are you being a piece of shit for them? I don't know if there's something wrong with Matt or not. I'm not a violent man by any means. But if he fucks it up for me tonight, I will literally do something. I'm still waiting on a pork belly. Yeah, how long on a pork belly? Talk to me, guys. How you doing? Plating, chef. Thank you. Jorge, please, touch it. Please, it's stone cold. Come on, man. Chef, what do you think of that? That's shit, yeah? All this work for this. Matt's having to this really, really difficult time and just into the menu. It's almost like he's trying to destroy his whole dinner service. Why would you fuck up service tonight? You're making me look like shit. Chill out with the fucking drama. What you say? I said chill out with the drama. Get out of here right now. Get the fuck out right now. You know what? What you say? Get out of here. It's relaunch night at Park's Edge. Four Billy's in the window. Look at it. Drive. And line cook Matt has not only made a number of mistakes. You can't be selling shit like that, man. Chill out with the fucking drama. But he has had a bad attitude as well. What'd you say? I said chill out with the drama. Get out of here right now. And Jorge has had enough. Get the fuck out right now. You know what? What'd you say? Get out of here. All right, fine. It's cool if you're going to be serious like that. Matt, see ya. Let's continue working, please. Uh, this is my kitchen, and we're moving forward. And if somebody becomes an obstacle or a speed bump, they're gone. We have no more tolerance for that. Hey, boy, well done. Step up now. I will. Yeah, get yeah. together and yes. make it happen. Jesse, can you pick up some of this stuff, please? OK. I'm just waiting on pork belly. I think it's a good thing that Matt's okay. gone. Now we can get down to business and not bicker like children. Pork belly in the window. Awesome. You are rocking my world. Now, with everyone pulling in the same direction. Open door, chef. I'm going to need a water. Got it. Thank you. Dishes quickly make their way out to happy diners. Oh, those look great. Yeah. Looks great. Yeah. My customers are happy, and it's just a completely different environment in the restaurant. I'm actually happy to be working here tonight. We're done now, right? Yes. We still have a lot of work to do, but I definitely believe that we could build this restaurant again. Good job hanging in here today. Yeah, much better. Mel, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're welcome, good, baby. Oh, hi. Yes, sir. It's been a rough week, let me tell you. We've had our ups and downs, especially you and I. And you know what? I didn't think you were going to step up to the mark. I didn't think you were confident enough. But my God, strong finish. Thank you. Customers love the food, let me tell you. Don't start overcomplicating your menu. You got my word. This, this is a new beginning. Richard? Yes, sir. You're a smart guy. Mm -hmm. You're better than just sitting, meeting, greeting. Get in there. Get your hands dirty. I got you. We have come a long way. And this is just the start. Every day you walk in there, demand the best out of Richard, and you demand the best out of Jorge. Push each other. Yes, sir. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. It's a pleasure. Chef Ramsey didn't only change our business, he changed our lives. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Thank you. When I first got here, I met two owners that were completely clueless. One didn't know how to run a restaurant. Another one had no idea how to run a kitchen. They've both come a long way, clearly, but they've got an even longer journey now to rebuild this reputation in the community and to become a successful restaurant. Honestly, I wish them luck. <sighs> Breaking news, we've stopped grilling Caesar salad.
In the weeks that followed... Thank you, thank you for coming back out again. I know we well, you know, got we up the wrong foot. Richard and Jorge continued their community outreach. I appreciate the support. Thank you. And business at Park's Edge is definitely on the rise. Richard has taken a more active role. Okay, salmon. Wow. Can I get a New York strip on the window, please, for 43? It's coming right now. Thank you. Jorge has not only embraced the new menu, but has done a great job executing it. Okay, two shrimp and grits. Thank you. Second and bacon. Our future for Park Sage is not guaranteed, but I definitely have a very, very strong feeling that we are on our way to success. There's a new light at the end of the tunnel. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to Northern California OMG. to help a husband and wife team whose struggling restaurant is tearing their marriage apart. Just go inside. Funny about Ooh, dude. Saki, the longtime owner, is focused on all the wrong things. One shot tequila. And his wife, Jen, is on the verge of a breakdown. <gasps> no one looked in there? Seriously? The restaurant's food is all over the place. Seafood, steakhouse, pasta, continental. <coughs> and the chef has lost all of his power. I really feel my hand are tight. And to make matters worse, the conditions are so bad. Congeal blood. <laughs> this restaurant may have to close its doors for good. <laughs> Can Chef Ramsay help this unhappy couple? Are you going to help us? I just don't feed it, though. <laughs> Or will their marriage and the restaurant be impossible to save? Just stop. No one's ever going to want to come back here. <laughs> what is that? You're Disgusting done. crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't make you enough. Fremont, California, an affluent suburb located just outside of San Francisco, and home to Spin a Yarn, a landmark restaurant that was taken over by a Greek immigrant, Saki Cavanieris. I took over in 1995, was kind of dying at the time, and gradually I brought it back to life. Hello. With Spin a Yarn booming, it seemed as if nothing could come between Saki and his dream. That is until a new addition came into the restaurant. I took the bartender job at Spinny Yarn because I was desperate. Don't drop it, whatever you do. He asked me if I had an experience, and I said yes. <gasps> but I lied. <laughs> if you would have told me I would have been married to him with a baby two years later, I would have ran for the hills. Used to my wife with a straw. <sighs> Bring it over your head. <laughs> Jen's just a mess when she tries to help out in the restaurant. Here you go, sweetie. Thank you so much. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing. She is Saki's trophy wife. I'm not as stupid as everyone thinks. And the caviar moose, what is in that? Caviar? <laughs> I'm not book smart, I'm street smart. <laughs> when business started to slow down, Jennifer convinced Saki that a remodel might help bring the people back. I was given no budget. They don't put price tags on things. I was just told to go pick out what you like, and now I'm realizing I have expensive tastes. I was planning on spending 350000 at the most. Jennifer wound up spending almost $950,000. And after I remodeled this place, everything just went down. <laughs> that looks disgusting. The pasta is overcooked. The food isn't consistently good. It's not fresh. Have a good night. Things just kind of went like this. It is dead. It's empty. I'm stressed out, man. My dream of owning a restaurant has been, been really hard. You set the motherfucker work, on fire. Did you pay the insurance? Yeah, it's been hard on my relationship. What are you getting me some piece stuff for? Find your fucking getting you, dude. My parents will go days without talking. It's always a fight. It irritates me that I put my heart on my sleeve and... Uh, that's Jennifer. I have no energy anymore to fight with you, you know that? My parents are on the verge of divorce. Mom? Yeah. OK. Yeah. And the main reason is because of this restaurant. I don't know how we're going to bounce back from this. I feel like things are out of control. And I feel like we need help. After receiving an emotional letter from the owners, 
Chef Ramsay has decided to meet Jennifer at her home. Hi, Jen. Hi, come on in. Before heading over to the restaurant. Wow, who's that? Uh, that's me and Saki, Saki and I. What a gorgeous picture. Thank you. How long ago was that? Five years. Really? Mm -hmm. My goodness me. Right, how are you? Uh, I'm nervous. You're nervous? Why are you nervous? Um, because when I asked you over, I didn't think he'd actually come. I can't believe why Oprah's sitting in my living room. Um, how did all this start? It started because I was bartending at the right. restaurant. Is that how you mm -hmm. first met? That's how we met. Okay, great. Actually, I lied to get the job. How did you manage that? He just asked if I had experience. I said yes, but he realized when I poured my first beer out of the tap that I didn't know what I was doing because it was foaming everywhere. And it was just... So he was the owner. You were obviously shaking his uh, cocktails. Yeah. Clearly, he had a soft spot instantly. He did. Did you have a soft spot for him? No. No, why? He's not someone I would typically go for or at physical appearances. The age difference between both of you is what? 16 years. People think I'm a trophy wife or I'm gold digging. It was never like that. I mean, he wooed me for eight months. We went everywhere. We went to Hawaii. We went to shows. We went to concerts. And then I realized I loved him. They say a beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It really is true. And he's my beast. Um, fast forward. Your relationship with Saki now, how's that changed? It's not doing good. So just help me understand that. It's very strange because we remodeled, we took a risk, and the remodel was, you know, a million bucks. Damn. How can you amass such a large amount? Did you know the budget? In terms I of didn't have a budget. He told me to go pick out what I like. Five. That's like sending a lady into a designer shoe store with no yeah. price tags on the shoes. So it wasn't until after I found out that the bar was $40,000. And the little glitter tiles in the women's bathroom, I picked those out, but I didn't know they were 100 bucks each. So we can't all blame him. That's where I beat myself up and I get mad at myself. Because we don't own that building, we don't own that property. Saki has a 10-year lease. We've got 10 years to make it or break it. Wow. It sounds like the restaurant's under immense pressure. How do you guys talk to each other now? We don't really. That's what's the hardest part. Like, now I don't get to work with them every day side by side. So I'm trying to find my place in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. What condition is he in? I mean... The restaurant just really stresses him out because he wants to work more because he's trying to pull us out of this hole. <laughs> he is almost like ignoring the most important thing in his life, the family. Yeah. I'm grateful for the insights, let me tell you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. I feel like my marriage is at a breaking point. And that scares me. Look at that sign. What is that? A big capital S. Let's hope that doesn't stand for shit. Well, oh, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm Robin, how are you? Good, thank you. Good Erica. to see you. Nice Erica. to meet you. Hostess. Yep, I'm right this way. How are you? Good to see you, bud. You like a little fat penguin? I know, man. Huh? I am. I God am. bless you. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. You look more like funeral undertakers than you do waiters. Everybody hates the work bow tie and, and tuxedo shirts. Right hand up. You look like a penguin. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, March. onto that coffin. No, you don't that... bounce up and down. There you go. Together, together. You'll drop the body. Together, together. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Let's go. You show me to the table, please? OK, I'll show Thank you, you your table. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Excellent. Thank you, gents. Right. Can I be your chair Thank right you. here? Is Sakin? I'd love to meet him. Okay. Please, thank you. The restaurant's like old style. Can you come out here, please? Saki does need someone to push him because Saki is really old school. Hey, Chef. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Very well, thank you. I met your lovely wife, so. Oh, nice. wonderful, yeah. Now I understand that you went through a major renovation. Maybe you can show me around. Let's go out this way. I remodeled this place at the wrong time. And before I knew it, it was a big price tag. It was in that, it was too late to stop. I mean, oh so these are restaurants. Oh, wow. Bloody yeah. hell. Yes. Honestly. And it was still in here as well. This is very plush. Chandelier. And then these little tiles here is $50 each. $50 each? Yeah. So you get those stunning tiles and you put these shitty butterflies on there. Yes, my wife's favorite, favorite uh, butterflies. Favorite butterflies yeah. So is she a designer? 
No, but she likes the good things. I let her do whatever she wanted to do. It. She blames me for it. Wow. But that's how the husband and wife is, right? The husband takes the blame, whatever the wife does. Wow. The major stuff was probably right here. A uh, new fireplace. Wow, look at that marble on the bar. That's plush. Run it's quite expensive. Wow. So tell me about the budget. Sit down. So. Originally, it was supposed to be like $350,000. Right. You go from 350 yeah. grand to it's 900. 950, yeah. and 50, 600 grand over. It doesn't make yeah, sense. We got way out of hand. And the identity of the restaurant, what are we? It's seafood pasta. <laughs> seafood yeah. pasta? Continental Se cuisine. Continental cuisine. Continental cuisine. With seafood pasta. Well, uh, pasta is a seafood with them. Yeah. So it's a continental seafood Seafood restaurant. steakhouse. Seafood steakhouse? Yeah. Seafood steakhouse, pasta, continental restaurant. Right, let me uh, eat. I'm the one that makes the decision what goes on the menu. Victor is the chef and I'm the boss. Are you scared, Saki? Huh? I'm scared. What You're scared, do? huh? Don't worry about it. Just relax. You are sweating. Look at your shirt. I know I'm sweating. Why should I be sweating? That's embarrassing. I'll change your worry. shirt. Hi, how Gordon. You? How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. Your first name is? My name is Mary. Mary. In your mind, what's wrong with the restaurants? Um, I believe the food's outdated. Oh. Chef Ramsey's going to go, ugh. <laughs> um, what do you recommend? The lamb shank is very good. Well, from what I hear, I haven't had it myself. The baked patchouli with crab and base shrimp is very good for the seafood side as well, from what I hear. But what is it, a Greek restaurant, an Italian restaurant? Well, they've always had Greek owners, so they kind of throw their Greek twist into it. Wow. Um, right, let's start off. Um, I'll have a wonderful Greek sampler. Mm -hmm. um, crab Louis, please. And let's go for the filet mignon. Thank you. You got the day at the judgment, Saki. You want to share the dinner? Uh, you ready, honey? Yes, please. What's your order first? Greek sampler. We used to do everything from scratch. And now they're pulling sack over here. Saki, tie my hands the way things are supposed to be done. Chef Ramsey is going to see the truth. Here we go. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. This is the Greek sampler. Look at that. That is ghastly. Has that got mashed potatoes in there? It is canned salmon caviar mixed with some mashed <coughs> potatoes. Canned? Canned. They mix it with the mashed potatoes? Mm-hmm. So canned, canned. Canned. A Greek tragedy. Shit. It's like a canned sampler. Whereabouts in Greece are you from? I don't know, but I'll find out for you. If he served that in the Greek arse, they'd throw him overboard. <laughs> Thank you, darling. You're welcome. He said, if you served it in the Greek islands, they'd throw you overboard. And, and Saki, where are you from in Greece? I'm from, uh, uh, from, uh, Kalamata. Kalamata? Kalamata, yeah. OK. And where's this crab, Louie? Yeah, He's coming, yeah. Saki is from Kalamata. OK. So what, this is the? This is the crab, Louie. Wow. Mm, yeah. It doesn't smell that fresh. No, it doesn't. It, no. It's also um, canned. Oh, shit. Disgusting. Crab Louis was invented in the city. You think anyone serving it within a 50 mile radius would pay respect with fresh crab? Yes. How much is that on the menu for? 17.95. And that's the same with fresh or canned? Mm hmm Wow. Okay, then. Thank you. Crab. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm shocked. Is the next dish ready? What do you think of that one? So. The crab? The crab smells like fish. Like it shouldn't if it's fresh. It comes from the fish sea, tell them. Fresh frozen. Fresh frozen out of the can. How are you? Hey, how, how are you? It's kind of tough, you know? It's yeah. hot back here. Huh? Hot back here. Good. Ah, filet mignon. Wow. Damn. Now nah, look at it. Looks like a mud slide. <sighs> Rubbery. <coughs> now nah, teriyaki. 
Teriyaki sauce is ghastly. It's like cough medicine. That's their way of teriyaki sauce. Thank you, darling. O M G. Oh, the food's gross. Said your teriyaki sucks. Everybody loves a teriyaki. Okay, but if he says that the food doesn't taste good, you can't have an excuse for it. It's not an excuse. It's a fact. We need Chef Ramsay to snap something in my stepdad to wake up because right now we are at rock bottom. Don't don't comment about the food, dude. Don't comment about the food. I'm allowed to. Don't give me no advice. Just go inside, Daniel. I got enough Talk critics. Face facts. I got enough critics. Just go inside. Why are you being so crabby? There's a lot of stuff going wrong. Don't get mad at us when we're trying to help you. You guys go inside the dining room before I get pissed off. I'm up. going to the bottom of the totem pole. Okay. Just go inside. Go follow your mom, will you? Don't get mad at me. Oh, no, just follow your mom. Go follow your mom. No, 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 no. So, this is my restaurant just as much as it is yours. He is freaking out. Coming up, Jennifer and Saki's troubles are just beginning. What is that? When Chef Ramsay uncovers what's really festering behind closed doors. Jill blood. <laughs> Jen. And if that's not bad enough, there's more than just the restaurant that's on the line. I just feel like I've had it. <laughs> After being thoroughly disappointed with less than fresh food at Spinny Yarn. Canned, canned. Canned. Damn. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to have a little chat with the people responsible. Hi, Hello. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm Michaela. I'm their daughter. OK, nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> Are you, uh, you working here? Yeah, tonight. OK, great. Tonight. Yes. I look forward to catching up with you later. Okay. Um, <laughs> kitchen that way? Yes. Thank you. Hey, Chef. Can you um, introduce me to the team, please? Can all of you guys come over here, please? Uh, so, Chef Victor. Chef Victor. Nice meeting you. Uh, so, you're the head chef? Yes. OK, how long have you been the head chef? About eight years. OK. First off, I'm shocked. My lunch was horrific. The first thing that arrived was the, the sample platter. Why do you get salmon caviar, mix it with cold mashed potatoes, and serve it? Because that was the original recipe we have from, from here. That's the old recipe? Yeah. OK. Move on. Crab Louis salad. Why are you serving canned crab? The fresh crab is how to get the fresh crab. Oh, come on. We're in San Francisco. We're in the Bay. The filet mignon. The sauce was ghastly. It was just, it was worse than cough medicine. Like I say, just follow the recipe was here already. Oh, come on. You're the chef. Hey, what do you want me to do? Hey? Why don't you stand up for yourself? He can answer come you. On. Are you holding him back? I don't think so. Is he holding you back? Yes. What, how do I hold you back? I mean, I don't do much things about cooking. Saki, I, I, no one's pushing for standards. You're just going through the motions like a dead man walking. Where's the passion? Say something, man. Fuck, it's not saying shit. Tonight, I want to see how this place functions, OK? You guys, uh, yeah, set up. I'll see you shortly, yes? Damn. While the lunch was horrific, the meeting with Chef Victor and Saki was even scarier. And so Chef Ramsay is hoping to get more clarity on the workings of the restaurant tonight at dinner service. Hello. Hi, Chef. Hey, let's have a little catch up with you. Uh, toes off. Yes, yes. OK. But just minutes before the doors open, Gordon squeezes in a meeting with Jennifer's daughter to get a better insight on the fragile situation here at Spin a Yarn. So, Michaela, how old are you? I'm 14 years old. How many nights a week do you work in the restaurant? I try to help as much as I can. If I need to be here, I'll be here. Are you aware of all the sort of arguing and oh, fighting? Oh, yeah. When they're here and they have fights, I try to say, hey, guys, let's do this somewhere else. Well, you intervene in terms of being a referee? Well, sometimes I have to act like the adult. Crazy. They will go five or four days without talking. And it scares me that my parents are on the verge of divorce. And you're caught in the middle. It's kind of like living almost like in a nightmare that you really just can't get out of. We're at rock bottom right now. And it's just, it's a scary situation. OK, I'm here to help. So when well, I'm going to watch and be in the kitchen, you need me. Come and get me. OK. OK, okay thank you. Thank you, my darling. OK. 
we're not really a family anymore. <sighs> so I pray and hope that Chef Ramsay can bring my family back together. How are you today? You guys can come right this way, please. Have a good meal, you guys. A glass of wine with the straw, please. Um. So who expedites? Nobody expedites. I keep an eye on the, on the station. Keep an eye on the guys that run back and forth. What does Victor do? Victor is stays in the back. Victor's washing dishes? Yeah, I guess so. He's your head chef. Yes. You have no sous chef. What can I say? I don't have no help. We be so short hands, so we can do so much. Saki, you know, we need to spend the money. Oh. While the head chef washes dishes and the owner watches from the sidelines, entrees are making their way out to hungry diners. Bon appetito. Thank you. Thank you. But they're not exactly receiving a warm welcome from the customers. I cook better than this. Yeah. Would you like me to take it back and get you another cut? Yeah. OK, sure, definitely. <laughs> so he wanted medium rare, but this is too red for him. It's like really greasy. What's wrong with Kayla? Um, What's uh, wrong? This lady sent this back because the oil is like a soup. She's right. Oily and passes over coat. It's chaos right now. And the blame isn't even all on the chefs. Oh, no. Oh, oh, on. Well done. It's on my stepfather, too, because he's not doing the job that he needs to be doing. Oh, no. What's wrong with that? This one's cold. Oh, for fuck's sake, right, come man. on. Honestly, guys. How much food is coming back? Doesn't it bother you a little bit? I don't know what to say now. I'm so tired. I don't know that. Meanwhile, the head chef is washing dishes. I don't know how I got myself into this or how we ended up here, but I blame Saki. Jen, does anyone care around here? Prime rib coming back, cold in the middle. White, anemic fat. thought we were known for our prime rib. What do you need? I don't need anything. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Let's go inside the dining room before you get pissed off. For our lack of communication, it's the death of us. What's that smell? Huh? You smell them? It's, uh, you smell them? Well, yesterday. But they're not even cold. Well, they in the cooler. <laughs> in the cooler? Yeah. Now, what's in here? Raw meat, cooked meat. Oh, dear. When were they cooked? Oh, God. What's that? Chicken or turkey? Whatever it is, it's pink and lethal. Cooked raw chicken, no date. And that's next to a fucking bowl of strawberries with mole in there. Oh, scummy fucks. You, you, and you, come with me. Stay there. Look, look at this. Explain that. I don't, me. I can't. I'm you, humiliated oh, right now. Oh, you can't. Why didn't you check this, dude? I mean, honestly. Hold on, it gets worse. Hold on. I thought you cleaned the refrigerator. What in the fuck is that? It looks like the padding for my bra. No, that's uh, chicken. It's raw, it's pink. Just, just smell that for me. Just smell it. Please, God, for the love of God, can you open your eyes? Good. Hold on. That's the cooked meat. Look at this. Here's the raw meat. But it gets worse than that. Just have a look. <sighs> I'm going to throw up. Congealed blood. Here, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. all in there, huh? Just all sat in there. Just all sat, huh? Just all sat in there. Jen, uh. Jen, look at that. I mean, honestly, <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Where's Jen? <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> After discovering that Spinner Yarn's walk-in has spun out of control... Jill blood here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
Gordon's inspection has Jennifer on the run. Jen! Jen! <laughs> oh, fuck. <sighs> Where's Jen gone? I'm right here. You're responsible for 50% of this. We're talking about losing money, staring at it. You have to take responsibility. I can't believe what this guy's guys treat the food. How the guys treat the food, but you've got to be checking the nosaki. Come on. I hope you have a plan, because I don't know where to start. Uh, right now, I've got a plan. Get the fuck out of here. Unbelievable. You can point the blame, but there's no excuse for what happened tonight. In the end, for me, it falls back on Saki. He's the boss. His name is on everything. Jennifer, I bring the produce. I expect him to take care of it. OK, well, you knew Chef was coming to our fucking refrigerator. And no one fucking looked in there? Seriously? Well, the way they store it, they fuck it up. Just stop. No one's ever going to want to fucking come back here. <laughs> Can I just have a word with you both, please? Yes, sir. I'm disgusted, yeah. I mean, what can I say? I mean, just, I, I mean, I didn't expect to be this bad. Oh, guys. I don't know what to say, Saki. I'm, I, I, if I'd seen that before service, I wouldn't have let you cook anything tonight. Are you going to help us? Where do I start I when don't everyone's know. given up? No, I'm not giving up, chef. I have a lot to lose over here. Jen, if you're going to be involved, then get involved. If there's going to be a successful business with a successful marriage, you've got to be united. I try. Try harder. OK. I will. I'll be a bitch if I have to. Get back in there and get that place clean. Make them respect what you bought. <sighs> Fuck it. Let's gut it out. Right now, let's do it. Well, that's... Nobody goes home. Unbelievable. The last few years are last sight of the kitchen, but I need to start fresh and to spend more time inside the kitchen. Whatever happened, happened. Now, we've got to start it the right way, Victor. No excuses anymore. Let's get this thing going. Let's yeah. start fresh. All right. You know, I can blame Victor. I can blame anybody. But the bottom line is me. It's clear to Gordon that spinner yarn is destroying a marriage. Jen, how are you? Hi. Where's Saki? But ironically, this restaurant cannot be saved unless the couple is united. How are you? Good. Yeah? Kitchen nice and clean? We'll do that best. Really? I find it hard to gauge your best because I haven't seen it so far. There are some big issues here. Clearly, not just in the kitchen, but I think there's issues between both of you. There's no communication between you two. I'm going to call as I see it. I just feel like I've had it, though, because he's not going to change. I have no authority. You don't let me make a decision. It's just it's fucked. It's so fucked up. You're going to have to start manning up and understanding that you're destroying not just yourself, but your family at the same time. You're going to have to change, buddy. You're going to have to change rapidly. I would love nothing more than to have my wife next to me over here and work together. So why hasn't that happened? Because it's not ignorance, is it? No, I think I need to change. It's not good to have things in life and have nobody around with you to share it with. I'm going to change myself. I'm going to change me, OK? You have all my support. All right? I'll do anything. I want you next to my side, OK? Just I love you, OK? I love you, too. Yeah. Now that Saki and Jennifer have committed to being a team, Chef Ramsay has made some changes for tonight's dinner service. OK, first of all, tonight, this business is going to be run by the owners. How weird is that? You, Saki, are going to fall back in love with your kitchen tonight because you're expediting. OK. And tonight, we're going to do the most amazing prime rib, and we will carve table side. Tonight, this cart is going to be handled by... Jen. No. That's right. That's right. But you. I this is your restaurant. Yeah. No way. Trust me. Uh -uh. Oh, I'm gonna puke. What if I puke yeah, on yeah. the table? You Seriously. will not be puking on the tables. Forget that. Think of your business. You've been ignoring this business, but you want to be involved. There's only one way to get involved, and that's jumping at the deep end. Okay. I've got every confidence 
that you can do it. I'm feeling very nervous right now. I don't even know how to cut prime rib. Oh, I can't do this. Come here, come here, look at this. That is gnarly. Look how easy it is. <sighs> look. Hold the knife. No, 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 okay. I watch too much CSI, I can't do this. Open your eyes when you cut. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Oh, well, let go of it. Little one, grab it, grab it, that would like you. Fucking hell. Stop it. OK. Oh, my god. Please let me do this, and please don't let me gag. <sighs> For tonight's dinner service. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Chef Ramsay has added a table side prime rib. Two specials this evening. We got table side uh, prime rib. He wants to not only create excitement in what has been a morbid dining room, but he hopes to take some of the pressure off the kitchen. Okay, come on, guys, let's go. However, this plan relies on Jennifer overcoming her fears. Okay, Jen, big deep breath. Let's go. You all right? You look a bit nervous. Do you want to swap places with Michaela and I'll get her to slice it? No. No. Come on. Get it going. Jen. What? <laughs> Don't worry. It's OK. Fuck. <laughs> but I love you. All right. <laughs> oh, my god. She's freaking out because she can't handle serving fatty meat. She's going to have to deal with it. Two minutes. Where am I going? What table? Really? What am I doing? Prime rib's getting cold. Let's go. Oh. Let's go, Jen. As I say in Vegas, it's showtime. This is going to be an interesting night. Who's having the prime rib tonight? You guys? <laughs> OK. No, you can't. You can't. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm sorry. No, come on, Jen. I've never cut meat before a chef. No, stop there. That's, forget that now. That's gone. OK. We start again. We serve them at our best. Nothing but our best. He thinks I was being stupid, but I really didn't know how to cut the meat or how to handle it or what the rules were. The lights are on, but there's no one at fucking home. Oh! Can we have another prime rib? I hate me. Sally, it's right. There you go. Can we get the door? Every table, own it. And smile, Jen. Oh, my god. I used to like him. I don't anymore. How is everything so far tonight, guys? Good. Good? All right. Good to hear it. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. Nicely, not like you're about to stab Saki. There you go. Come on, Jen. Oh, I just want to hide. That's Jennifer. Where are you going? God bless America. Wow. I did a cartwheel. <laughs> Smile. Jen. Turn around. Don't walk backwards into a door. Oh, fuck me. Okay. <gasps> Jen, what you served out there? I can't let you do that. Wait, Control are you it. Yelling at me, dude? No, don't get all fucking into with me. My name's Gordon, not fucking Saki. I'm not yelling at you. Okay, sure. Okay? I'm trying. They deserve the best. Victor, and if you me. can't give them the best, then don't do it. We get worked up over nothing. This is how you work, and this is how you learn. If you don't want to learn, there's no point in you doing this. How long on that prime rib? Five more minutes, honey. Thank you. I'm not going to fail and I'm not going to cry. Brilliant. Here we go. I am definitely on board. I want to do whatever it takes. I took a one second time out. I sucked it up, got my head back in the game, went back out there. Are you guys ready? I think so. <laughs> Would you like the horseradish on the side or on the meat? Do you have a preference? On the side is just fine. On the side, you got it. OK, so there you go. Enjoy. Good. Well done. Good job. Thank you. I learned a lot tonight. I learned how to cut meat. <laughs> You did good. So did you. All right. All right. Coming up, it may be Spin a Yarn's biggest night. Please don't order the prime rib. But with success resting in the hands of Jennifer and Saki... If you run out of prime rib now, I'm going to flip my lid. It could turn out to be its biggest disaster. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now that Saki and Jennifer have proved they are committed to this restaurant... Come through, please. Chef Ramsay has given them a new and more focused identity. Spin a yarn, steakhouse. Oh, my Don't God. Don't take a menu and pass them along, please. Thank you. Oh, my God. God. No way. OK. When I first arrived, just under 200 dishes. Insane. This menu is in accordance to what you've got to work with. Easy, effective, and glamorous. 
and playing to your strengths. Let's start off down the end. You've got a delicious sweet corn chowder. Next to that, the carpaccio. So with onions, parmesan, arugula, and an aged balsamic vinegar. That's tight. Come to the focal point of the most amazing steakhouse. Start off with a grilled New York strip. Next to that, you've got the filet mignon. Stunning. Okay. Delicious lamb chops. We'll cook them on the rack. We won't open them up. A delicious prime rib, which was a big hit last night. Yay. The seafood, a wonderful pan-seared salmon, halibut, and scallops. Love it. And this menu is big enough for you to hit perfection. That'd be great. Now we can finally lift off of rock bottom, and it's all because of Chef. Jen, how are you feeling? I'm so happy. Excellent. Now, dig in, have a taste. Yeah? This is good, guys. Oh, my god. Mm. Try that. People are going to die to come back to eat this food. I think my customers are going to rave about it to everybody. Have you seen the new menu at Spinier? It's good. <laughs> Matt, you not wait to open the dinner and uh, see the reactions of the people that will be walking in. <laughs> I think they're going to be shocked. It's only minutes before relaunch night, and Chef Ramsay has an important announcement to make. And listen, I've just been told you've got half of the San Jose Sharks in for dinner tonight. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. my God. That's right. They're coming. When you see big names like that in their local restaurant, it spreads rapidly. That's the place to be in. Look after them, yeah? Have fun and sell, yes? We got to push the specials, especially the prime meal. I want my wife to work tonight. Make sure she cuts a lot of prime meal. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, if they all were prime meal, I'm going to shit my pants. It's relaunch night at Spin a Yarn. Hi, guys. Welcome to Spin a Yarn. And with the restaurant packed... I think I'm going to have the prime rib. I'll have the prime rib also. Thank you. And for you? I'll have the um, prime rib. The customers are finding one particular menu item irresistible. I want the prime rib. Let's go, Victor. Let's go and move the plate. Let's do it. Table 12. The table 42 is coming. And the crab cakes and the calamari on the order. It's coming, yeah. OK. Excellent. Now we're moving. Saki, we've been together so long, and I, hey, see Saki like this, it's made you motivated to do a better job right there behind the line. Come on, let's move it. With Saki expediting and supporting his head chef, the first appetizers are making their way out to the dining room. Wow. There you go. Enjoy, you guys. And, this is the 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 and the dishes are a hit. So are you going to share them? <laughs> oh, here she is. Stand by. Here's the dolly with the trolley. OK, <laughs> cart's arriving. Look at that prime rib, everybody. Wow. To die for. Who's having the prime rib? I'll have it medium. OK? Excellent. Hold on tight to that knife before we slice somebody's ear off. It's like huge pieces. Enjoy. Thanks. You bet. Yeah, I'm really surprised. It's the size of a door. A little bit thinner next time. We're here to make money, not lose it. All right, you have a lucky one. Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you a great piece of the meat. Wow. Today's your lucky day. Prime rib yes. for four. Oh. Jen, you don't have to give away half the fucking prime rib. With Jennifer continuing to carve big portions. She thought you guys were nice and big. And the San Jose Sharks arriving, the prime rib is running dangerously low. Did you see the sharks? Oh, my God. <sighs> sorry, sorry. The sharks are swimming closer. Let's go. Hello, sharks. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It took me a long time to come over and build up the courage to come over here and ask you, please don't order the prime rib. But I'm totally joking. <laughs> Okay. I need that ticket in here. It's a big one. Like burger? Sure. I'll get prime ribs. Yeah. I'm prime ribs. We got burger. Man. I haven't had prime ribs. Prime rib. You have the order? All prime ribs. Easy. How many's left? Only this. Oh, for fuck's sake. You are kidding me. I messed up. Ah. That's all. It's a big ticket. Oh, boy. See, they're all having prime rib. If you run out now, I'm going to flip my lid. It's relaunch night at Spin a Yarn. And with Jennifer carving massive portions, the kitchen is running out of prime rib. So how many's left? All of this? Oh, for fuck's sake. And with the dining room full of hungry sharks, the kitchen is at a complete standstill. If you run out now, I'm going to flip my lid. Victor. Yes. You have enough for 12, right? Uh, oh, my god. Oh, uh, boy. Give me a prime rib. You have a prime rib back there? Uh, oh, come on. I got one more. He had one up his sleeve. Victor, well done. I cook another one on my own, so we are an emergency. God, bless America. Beautiful, look at that. OK, let's go. Here we go. 
sharks now, yes? Work in harmony. Are you coming behind me with 12? I've got it right behind you. With head chef Victor coming through to save the day, Jennifer and Saki now work as a team to serve the San Jose Sharks. Is that too rare? Okay. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> that was hard. You did a great job. <laughs> Jennifer had a lot of confidence time. She didn't give up, that's for sure. Even though we had all these orders of prime meat, she got a little nervous, but came out to be good. How's your meal, guys? Oh, Thanks for coming. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it, huh? Yeah. Hope it was big enough. Yeah, was yeah. This is for you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You're the best. Thank Can you. we take a picture? Sweet. That's Thank nice. You. Thank you. Yes, How are you guys yeah. see yeah. again? That's my man. <laughs> I'm really proud of Saki. To have a successful restaurant feels surreal. It's so great to have the support of the community, and it feels good to be back on top. Really nice having you guys. You. Good luck. Have a great season, huh? It's been a crazy week, let me tell you. The difference from the start of the week to the end of the week has been night and day. The most important thing is the three youth. Like that, one little unit. All actively involved in the business, hands on. Jen, it felt tonight that you were handling that trolley for the last five years. Thank you. I feel like I finally have a role in this restaurant and I never thought it would be the queen of cutting. <laughs> well done. Thank you. And you, honestly, you've got one bright future, let me tell you. Thank you. Saki. Yes, sir. To see you falling back in love with your business is exemplary. You must not stop. You made us proud for our place. <sighs> Chef Reggie gave me new confidence to keep going again. I was kind of burned out with financially and everything, but now I think the future looks good. Well done. All right. Thank you. Well done. Look after your family. Thank you very much. Stay together. You got it. Yes. Thank you. you. Thank you, Chef. I'm telling you. 14. Wow. I am so grateful for Chef Ramsey. He saved our lives. He changed our lives. And you, Thanks. keep pushing that trolley. <laughs> and stop being so nervous with it. OK. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to turn things around and start a new future for my family. Good job. <laughs> Great job. Good night. Have a nice trip. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. And he's off like a ship in the night. <sighs> wow. Let me spin a yarn for you. Tonight, Jen proved that she's not a trophy wife. And she has gone from a spectator to a force with a trolley. But tonight, she's not the only one, because it's all about a team effort. And that's exactly what this restaurant needs to succeed. Teamwork. Wow. 80 grand on a bathroom. Holy crap. In the weeks that followed, the new menu featuring the amazing prime rib. OK, who are the lucky recipients? Continue to attract new customers from the Bay Area. We're falling behind, OK? OK, you know what, Saki? And while Jennifer and Saki's relationship still has its quirks. Kiss my ass. <laughs> they're both actually enjoying working together to make Spin a Yarn the place to be once again. I love working with Saki and um, communicating. And it feels good to do things right. It feels great. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay travels to an Italian bistro in Southern California. What the hell is that? Where one woman's dream has become her family's worst nightmare. Our house, our lives are at stake here. This former waitress is in way over her head. What are you going to do? I don't know, Gordon. And she doesn't even realize it. The rule. Is it that bad, Chef? Oh, dear. Not only is she a bad manager. I don't even know what to do. Her chef is completely clueless. He can't make a meatball? What a mess. Tonight, it's the saga of Charlie's. Chef, don't leave. A restaurant that is destroying not only the life of the owner. No restaurant anywhere in this country functions like that. But her family as well. It's not how you feel. It's what's going to happen to them if this doesn't work. <laughs> I'm just a failure. <laughs> what is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. Laverne, California, just 30 miles from Los Angeles, this suburb is home to a neighborhood Italian bistro called Charlie's. And in 2010, it was bought by the Leva family. Would you like a booth? 
I started working here 10 years ago. I was a waitress here. And then I had the opportunity to take it over, but I didn't have the money or the collateral, so I had to go to my mom and my sister. Pat and Val, both full-time school teachers, financed the restaurant and put their houses up as collateral to help Tatiana fulfill her dream. My mom and I don't know about the restaurant business, and so we put a lot of trust in my sister's experience to run the restaurant. Daddy, are we gonna have enough bread for tonight? Of course. When I took over the restaurant, I didn't want to change the menu or the chef. I just wanted to keep it as is because I love this restaurant. How are we doing? That's not good. But it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. I could sit here all day and have maybe four tables at the most. How many tables did you have, Jen? I only had one. That doesn't even pay for the cost of just running electricity. Who's going to bring the people in? I don't know. The problem with the restaurant is Tatiana. The fact that she feels like she doesn't have to change things, it's ridiculous. If they don't like this term of zoo, they're crazy. The best term of zoo in the world. Ah. The food, um, oh, it's disgusting. Casimero is our head chef. He's been here for 14 years, and he's pretty awful. Yeah. It's, not, it's a little yeah. chewy on that shit. Basically, the restaurant's suffering for it. Do we have any tables that are happy? When Tatiana manages the restaurant, usually that consists of standing around with a glass of wine in her hand. All right. She's very disrespectful. You're talking out of your ass. Rude. Stop it. I told you. Most people end up crying. Don't you dare. <laughs> I need a drink. Tatiana doesn't know how to handle being an owner. Don't drink so much, OK? My mom and my sister already resent me for asking them to put their houses on the line. I don't know how we're going to make it this month. They play the blame game. This is Tatiana's fault. We wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for Tatiana. But they didn't put a gun to their head. What are we going to do now? <sighs> if we don't get more customers, we would lose our houses. It is very serious. I really need Chef Ramsey's help. Oh, I'm scared what's going to happen. I just don't understand like what else I could do. Rainy day in California. What better way to pick you up than a nice lunch? Right, Charlie's Italian food. Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> when Chef walked in, I just laughed. Because <laughs> that's what, I, I don't know what to do with this nervous energy and this anxiety. How are you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and this is? Tatiana. Tatiana. Yeah. Is, uh, is Charlie in? No, he's not. OK. The restaurant's called Charlie. Who is he? Charlie was the original owner. Charlie owned it. Charlie owned it. So there's no Charlie? No, no. I used to work here as a waitress um, oh, okay. when right. Charlie owned okay. it. And then he sold it to another person named Simon. OK, great. And then when Simon ran this into the ground, he dumped it. Simon bought it off Charlie mm -hmm. and then dumped it on you. Just dumped it in general. And then I took it over because I loved this restaurant. We took it over. My mom and my sister. Oh, is it? Yeah. Please say hello. I'm Val. Val, nice to see you, darling. Nice to meet you. And this is? I'm Pat. Pat, nice to see you, my darling. Um, why don't you come over, Val and Mum? It'd be nice to catch up and get up to speed with what's happening. Right. Where can we go somewhere uh, We can go outside quiet? if you'd like. Shall we? Let's yeah. go outside. Yeah. Excellent. Tatiana needs to learn effective ways of doing things around here. So, um, first of all, it's so important that I catch up with what's been happening. Whose idea was this to run a restaurant? Her dream. I love this restaurant. I've worked here since I was 20 years old. I know, but working in a business to running a business completely two different uh, scenarios. Yeah, it's completely different. Two, OK. How much money did you need to get on the table before you took over? Mom put all her retirement money into it. Really? I put all that to that, you know, the house. And her house. My condo, yeah. So if the restaurant goes, your houses go. Wow. Um, and how much money did you put in? Um, probably like a thousand bucks. Okay. Financially, where are we? The restaurant's in debt at this point. Anyone That's not good. Me? And who makes the decisions here? Tatiana. Well, they have other jobs as well. So you have a full-time job and you come in here to run the restaurant? Right. Wow. 
So what's gone wrong then? I don't know. You don't know? Wow. So then what's the changes you made when you bought it? Nothing changed. OK. So Simon ran it in a bad way, didn't give a shit about the customers, and it was appallingly led. But you haven't changed anything. That's been a major issue. Help me understand, because I'm confused. The risk is little on your side, yet mama for you. And yet, you're not even in control of the business. Right. Wow. I just don't know what I've done so wrong. Like, I don't know. Uh, I think we've seen a much clearer, uglier side of her. This is the thing. I don't think they trust me or they... Well, you brought them into a mess. But what it comes down to is that she does not treat us as equals. Don't even start. You talk down to me, you bulldoze me, you do not treat me like an equal. Uh, you don't treat me like one third of this restaurant. Well, I have the burden of the money and I'm making $2 an hour. She gets paid that much, but she also gets a car. She gets her cell phone paid for, her gas. Wow. OK. So if you could get out of this, would you do it? Looking back, we did make a very you know, risky and stupid decision. My sister doesn't have that burden of losing her house, so she's never been really responsible. Listen, I'm back to eat. Nice to meet you, all three of you, and I'm going to see what I've got to work with. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's emotionally draining, and it's a scary situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Genevieve, and I'm going to be your server. Can okay. I get you started with anything? Let's go. Um, right, let's start off with the toasted ravioli. Okay. The uh, frutta de mare. Okay. Uh, the lasagna. It's not your typical lasagna, so be prepared for something different. Which means something different. It's primary. Save it, save it, save it. Are you sure? Absolutely. All right. And we're in California, so why not um, chicken pizza? Okay. Excellent. And who makes the bread? Uh, Casimiro, our head mm -hmm. chef. Yes. Ready? Thank you. Bread's dreadful. The dough ball. Wet, soggy, horrible dough. Damn. Do it, Casimiro. Toasted ravioli for the chef Ramsey. See. I don't like any of the food, so I really don't think that he will either. Oh. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. Which bit's the toasted bit? Yeah, I, I never rec have recommended the ravioli. I mean, they're raw. Yeah, a lot of people don't like that. They're either really raw or they're just like cardboard. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I mean, they're dangerous. Does she eat them? Tatiana, does she eat that dish? No. No, will you ask her to taste one for me? Okay. And then I think she'll 86 them. Toasted ravioli, really? Yeah, sounds like the owners are toast. He said, taste it and agree with him and 86 it. Don't say anything to the chefs. Just let them be calm. Calm with it. No, it's okay. Ridiculous. I can't take food back there. None of us can take food back there. That's not how it's supposed to go. You're supposed to go straight to the chef and say, this is wrong. Wow. This is the fruit of the mare. Fruit of the mare. Yes. Wow. It's a bizarre looking fruit de mare. Okay, great. Thank you, my darling. Pasta's mush. It's way overcooked. Oh my god. Strands of mozzarella. Is that mozzarella on top of it? Yes, it is. On a fruit de mare. And then the pasta. It's just mush. So it's almost like it's canned. Um, the mussels taste uh, like old style. Are they fresh mussels? I don't no. think so. And the shrimps, these ones are way overcooked. And Those these ones are grey. Strange. Yeah. This has been going on for like a month or two now. He's just been thinning out bad shrimp, and we don't know why. Genevieve doesn't shut up. And do you not tell the chef? <laughs> well, I can't take complaints to the chef. Seriously? Um, Tatiana doesn't really listen to any of us. <laughs> Wow, not good. What the hell is that? What it's is the that? lasagna. That's the lasagna? The lasagna is vile. 
It's embarrassing to serve that to Chef Ramsay. What's in the sauce? Why is it that color? It's pink sauce. She doesn't know what's in it. Pink sauce with lasagna. Is it his own recipe? Yes, it is. The sauce tastes bizarre. And the um, mouthful I had was um, stone cold. It's hot one side, cold the other. Is that microwaved? It might be. Don't don't answer a question you don't know. Oh. Wow. <laughs> right. Um, is there a problem with these microwave? Not that I'm aware no. of. It feels like the microwave's on the blink. Yes, it is. Wow. When a restaurant can't get food microwaved properly, by all time low. Let me answer these questions. Still, there's always hope for the pizza, especially when you look at nothing like that. All right, maybe we can win him over with the pizza. It's crispy, isn't it? No. It's como bien. Sí, pero no es como menos cocido. What's it? Oh, here's my pizza. Now this the garlic chicken. Oh, God, I hope he likes something. Oof. Doughy. It's so bready, so doughy, and got all this raw pastry underneath there. Oh, no, he doesn't like the pizza. It resembles nothing homemade. Oh, my God. They've got a pizza that's come out of the oven. That feels like something that's been frozen. He hates our pizza. He hates our pizza. What a shame. <laughs> oh, dear. Is it, is it that bad, Chef? Uh, yeah, it's not funny. Uh, I don't know what the giggles and the laughing is about, but the dishes have been dreadful. OK. I'm trying not to cry, but he's going to come after me. I can feel it. Oh, my god. We seriously have a kitchen in here. Coming up. I feel horrible. If you thought lunch was bad, you haven't seen anything yet. What are you going to do? I don't know, Gordon. As Charlie's Italian Bistro goes from bad. I'm just a failure. To ridiculous. If his house was on the line, he would be cooking like a fucking idiot. After a lunch in which every dish had a failing grade. It's hot one side, cold the other. Dreadful. Owner Tatiana refused to pass on any of Chef Ramsay's criticism. This is um, Chef Casimiro. Casimiro, how are you? The head chef. Excellent. And first name? Daniela. Daniela, good to see you. But the uninformed kitchen crew is about to be enlightened. So just explain, um, who's the head chef, please? Casimiro. Do you speak a little English, Casimiro? No. No. And I, uh, I'm upset. I mean, you have a really bad, depressing restaurant. But this place is a mess. And you know what? It's not even mediocre. The food is hideous. And you don't need me to tell you that. For bread, that's the kind of bread that you're serving. Touch it. It's soaking wet, it's bland, and it's a 1,000 miles away from anything called focaccia, let me tell you. It's embarrassing. Pink lasagna, stone cold in the center, piping hot on the right-hand side. Disgusting. I just, I trust them so much. I trust him. I let him, I let him do it. You I just trust let him do them? it. I just trusted him to, to know what he was doing because he's been doing it for so long. No, the problem is he's got away with it for so long. Fruit de Mare with the overcooked linguine in a seafood dish. No salt, the shrimps solid like a bullet, and mussels that didn't even taste fresh. Where are the mussels from? Store. Show me. I mean, come on. What a mess. I mean, wow. What? What else do you freeze? I don't know. You want to come see? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Well, if you don't know, let's find out. What is it that? You freeze meatballs? When were these made? We buy them. You buy them meatballs? He can't make a meatball? You know where this, uh, uh, said the meatballs are key? He said, yeah, we can. He can make a meatball, he doesn't want to. No, quieres hacer meatballs? No, no, no. Oh, wow. Can you make a meatball? Yeah. My hands are tied in this kitchen. I don't have any input on what goes on. Tatiana should step up to the plate, and she should know what's going on in the kitchen. That's her job. What is that? Noodles. Noodles? What's the chef expecting? A rush on pasta? Wow. How much pasta does one chef need? He's obsessed with it. It's all, all overcooked. What's in this one? Pizza dough. Holy crap. This is just for the pizza, not the bread. Not the bread. And this dough here? 
Same thing. Small and large. Small and large. Small and large. Look at this one, then. My god. What the fuck? This is what goes on daily. All that bread like this and all that pasta. Wow. What's he doing with all this stuff? I have to prepare in the mornings for a volume of people. There's not enough time to prepare everything with everything he has to prepare in the day. So what happens when he doesn't sell this? Where does it go? Throw it away. He throws it away. How much do we throw away? There are times where we've thrown away a lot of pasta because people aren't ordering it. Paddy and Val, this is your house. This is you. This is your life right here in the trash. Tatiana, what I'm more concerned about is the fact that you're oblivious. You're like an airhead that's got her head in the clouds. This is business. It was a unsuccessful business before. You picked it up and maintained that unsuccessful menu in an unsuccessful business. You come in, change nothing. You can't direct any form of criticism or standards to your chefs. I don't even know why you bought the place. And I certainly wouldn't pull my sister down and bring my parents into it to facilitate your ego dream. Don't you understand? Like, I look at my mother and I feel horrible. I feel horrible that Excuse I Excuse me. Her. Don't start looking for sympathy now. Who I'm wanted this place? Sympathy, but I'm I sorry. It wasn't your mother's dream. It certainly wasn't Val's dream. Or am I wrong? No, it was Tati's dream. Tati's dream, which has now come back to bite you on the arse. What hurts me is not how you feel. It's what's going to happen to them if this doesn't work. House gone, house gone. What are you going to do? I don't know, Gordon. I don't know. But why did you do it? Because I, I thought I could make it successful because I believed in myself. What, and not make changes? What the hell were you thinking? Where are you going? Wow. What a joke. I resent my sister for putting me in this position. She needs to be knocked off her high horse. And now Chef Ramsay's making her really see that she does not know it all. It's like, I just feel completely alone and worthless. And I don't know what to do. Night one is usually an observation night for Chef Ramsay, but things are so bad here at Charlie's. Hey, chef. I'll be two seconds, OK? He decides to make one change right away. Casemiro, Daniela. OK, we're going to make homemade meatballs. I want you to make me a meatball, and I want you to make me a meatball. I'd like to taste yours. I'd like to taste yours. I'll be back later, yeah? Casimiro shouldn't have a problem with since he's worked in an Italian restaurant for 15 years. And watching Casimiro in, like, I cringe because he doesn't know what he's doing. How are you? So, what did you do? You didn't fry them off? He's not even frying them off, he's just boiling them in sauce? Tatiana, when you make a meatball, you have a pan, frying pan, you soak the meat and you finish it off in sauce. You don't know that? No. No? No. What seasoning you put in there? There's just nothing in there. It's just like boiled meatballs. Look at them. It's like cat food. How are you cooking yours? I was sauteing. OK, good. Let me have a little taste of that. Bring it out. Oh, it's nice. Mm. Lovely. Soft. Yeah. Crumbly. Delicious. And we're going to use them tonight. They're going on the menu tonight. No me gusta eso. Fucking hell. You're the sous chef. You should be the fucking head chef. T Tatiana, I get nervous when a chef can't even make a meatball. I mean, honestly. And this young lady's flavor of her meatball is 10 times greater. Casimir couldn't make a meatball correctly, but. I don't think he is a bad cook. Necesitamos enseñarlo en this. Tú eres bueno. Casimir, you're bueno. Be strong. Be strong. 
as dinner service begins. Hi guys, welcome to Charlie's. Table for six. Our specialty tonight is spaghetti and meatballs. Chef Ramsay is giving a tutorial on meatballs in an Italian restaurant. They have gotta have a color on there that adds richness, a nice deep flavor. Okay. And are we ready to order or do we need to finish? Okay. Shrimp pilaf. Shrimp pilaf. Primero vamos a hacer spaghetti bolognese, fruta de mare y alfredo con pollo. Oh, God. Okay, we have this spaghetti con meatballs, spinach ravioli. Yeah, no, 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 I try to say something, Casimiro, about ticket times. He will just ignore me. Casimiro? Okay. What ticket is he working on now, darling? He's working on the... Uh, He's working on this one? Right, okay. I haven't even gotten to those. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. With Casimiro working at his own pace, the dining room's patience so hungry. is being tested. Yeah, we're just... I'm diabetic. I can't wait any longer. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh my God. platos. As food finally makes its way into the dining room. I am sorry, guys. Spaghetti with meatballs. Spaghetti with meatballs. Customers find out. I think the pasta is a little overcooked. It was definitely not worth the wait. It's more like Chinese food than Italian food. It's more like Chinese food. Spinach ravioli mas cocido. What have you done? What the fuck have you done? Stop. No, 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 listen, you fucking donkey. Danielle, come here. I want you to stop. What are you doing? No, come on. He said he was working and he couldn't watch him. Oh, come on. I know. Get me Tatiana, please. Please, darling. Is it not cooked? They're all kind of burned on one side. Where's Tatiana? She's feeling they're complaining about the meat. We need her now. We need her now. No! Chef needs you now. I'm having complaints about the meatballs. Yeah, yeah, l l listen, listen. But put that down. I've got a fucking bigger... No, I didn't say throw it away. Come on, sweetheart. I showed him how to cook one off. My back's turned to two minutes, and that's what I've got. Burnt shit stuck to a pan. He turned around to Danielle, hold on, and said to Danielle, I've got... Uh, I'm busy. I can't watch my meatballs. That's what I'm going to work for. What's your complaint on the meatballs? They said it was, like, toasted on one side but not toasted on the other. Really? How about telling your fucking chef? <laughs> OK, you up. cook it. Now he's getting upset with me because I caught him out. When a guy can't make a meatball or even season one, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And then when I watch a chef that cooks and sticks food up there, holds it, and we're not even talking homemade food. We're talking bought-in, store-bought. My God, it hurts. OK, you cook it. And look at that for a stinking attitude. Look at that. A disgusting attitude. Ask him to put his house in the fucking mix. If his house was on the line, he wouldn't be cooking like a fucking idiot. <laughs> now he thinks it's funny. You think it's funny? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a joke. <laughs> what does he want to do? He doesn't want to cook. He doesn't want to cook. Get your head out of your ass. Do we have any more spaghetti and meatballs? Do we have any more meatballs? Do we have any more spaghetti and meatballs? Or... What's it? I feel like I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I have no idea how to run a restaurant. Maybe I don't. Tatiana, you're not just responsible. I'm for so the dining room. So You're responsible for the whole thing. I'm sorry, but the whole thing. Because I had him on a pedestal. Come outside. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. I just thought he was something better than what you're Open showing your me. Open your eyes. I've I never seen did. anything so ridiculous. I know that. And to stand there with his arms folded and give me shit on the back of screwing up something that I went out and bought. Half an hour before we open, because I'm trying to install a little he bit of passion. He just kept telling me, like, I just don't have enough time. He cooks one dish at a time. A six top, and the other dish, you just sit there. And you're scared of that? Where the fuck do we go? I've been his friend for 10 years. I know it's I'm family. sorry. It's well, kids. OK, great. Kids. He's got kids, and so does your sister. 
It's your fucking business. Come on. Honestly, Italian cafe. Wow. <laughs> After Casimiro ruined the meatballs, what the fuck have you done? And has now refused to cook. Vas a cocinar? No. Chef Ramsay is frustrated, not Excuse only me. by the chef, but also by Tatiana's lack of management. I've been his friend for 10 years. I know it's I'm family. sorry. Well, kids, okay, kids, great. He's got kids. So does your sister. It's your fucking business. Come on. Honestly, Italian cafe. Wow. What a joke. <laughs> Chef, don't leave. Please don't leave. I don't know what to do. It's I, my fault. I just, it's, I, all I, my fault. It, it, it's just insane. No restaurant anywhere in this country functions like that. Just help us because I can't. I can't have it fail. No vas a ayudar me? What's it? When a chef outlast two owners already, trust me, there's something not quite right. Because if the owner previously, i.e. Charlie, was that fucking invested in his chef, trust me, he would have gone with him. him. He would have gone with him. It's not rocket science, Tatiana. And you're a smart girl. How could I have not seen this? Well, you're scared to upset somebody, yet you're happy to see all three family members homeless. But they rely on you to manage the restaurant. They depend on you to give them that security. I feel. Not some chef that won't even take on board what you're trying to say. Stand in there for five minutes, just watch what they do. That's if he's, you know, happy to cook again. So I need to fire him. I'm not asking you to fire him. I'm asking you to take responsibility. I'm so embarrassed by the restaurant in general, and it's all my fault. And I'm the only one to blame because I'm the owner, and I'm doing such a horrible job. Put all your orders in, we're closed. Put them in, I want to close. I guess I just have been walking around with like a sheet over my face and not seeing these little things that are so easy to see. Val, Mom, I need to talk to you now. You need to go outside. Okay. I'm mad at myself. I need to be the owner of this restaurant. We have to fire Casper. Thank you. All the mistakes that he's made tonight. He doesn't take any direction. He's giving chef attitude. He's, he's the problem. Can't even make a meatball. That's the only thing that I think is right. This hard. OK. And I need time to out. Oh, and you need time. I need to do it. Hi, everyone. Have a good night. Amber, get out of the kitchen. Casimiro, Marvel. Necesitamos hablar. Sí, dime. Casimiro, After finally understanding what her chef was really doing to her restaurant, Vas a cocinar? No. Los dos necesitan ir. Tatiana makes her first big change since becoming an owner.
is uh, Tatiana. Uh, I think she's crying in the bathroom. Tatiana let Casimir go. Okay. Okay. Listen, I know it was hard. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, I'm here. I'm here to support you. Okay. Okay, we've got two seconds. Let's have a quick word. Okay. Please. Val. Thanks, thanks. Honestly, I think the lie went on for you. I think you sort of yeah. woke up and started making some tough decisions. I don't think you've ever done that since you bought this place. Tomorrow's a new day. And, you know, I've got ideas, let me tell you. OK, good night. After one of the most difficult days he has ever had on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay is now completely focused on rebuilding Charlie's. Today's about moving forward. What we haven't got is somebody at the helm. We need a leader, like any good kitchen. I'd like to introduce you to someone who's pretty unique. Jonathan, come through, please. Oh, my God. Good to see you, bud. Chef, how are you Very well indeed, thank you. Now, this man knows how to put restaurants on the map. More importantly, he's been working with me for the last three years. He's opened four restaurants in the last five years. You've got him for the month. I am thrilled. We have a chef. It's like Christmas morning. <laughs> I'm so excited. Jonathan also comes with an assistant to make sure that we get this going. Oh, my God! Not only will he get this place consistent, he'll help find a young chef, train a young chef, and Tatiana, if there's one person you need to get close to, right now is this man. Come here, come here. <laughs> I'm really happy. Get everything set up for you guys and get you guys off the races, huh? This is definitely the beginning of a new Charlie's. Hair up, grab an apron, let's go. Now with the new chefs in place. Let's go, Tatiana. Okay. Gordon knows it's critical that Tatiana is familiar with the inner workings of the kitchen. So I just go maybe right to the, just to the right of it, right in the middle there. Perfect. When was the last time you made a lasagna? I've never made a lasagna. I've never made a lasagna, ever. That's crazy. Let's start off with mixing. Take your white sauce, nice and clean, with your plastic scraper. Good. Get close to it. You've got nothing to be intimidated by. Absolutely. I need to learn what needs to happen in a kitchen and how it functions. That's it. Good. Again, take your time. More. Faster. There's nothing complicated. I'm going to learn this restaurant from scratch. I want to take the baby steps and get better. Pretty much neck and neck. Well done. OK. okay. In the other 25 minutes. I don't know why I thought I couldn't do it. It is not difficult, I'm telling you. So you guys just made pizzas. Doesn't that look amazing? Yeah. Can you give me feel like I can do anything. Dig in. I just can't wait to get to work and prove to my mom and my sister that I can do this. I think the message is clear. Nobody's scared mm. to walk through that door yeah. and get their hands dirty in that kitchen. No, we're not. Tomorrow's a big day, let me tell you. I need everyone on their game. Good night, guys. Get some sleep. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much, chefs. Oh, my god. <laughs> Last night, Tatiana and her team eagerly learned a few of the new recipes. Good morning. Now Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil an entirely revamped menu. Ah, Here we are. Please take a copy of the menu and pass it along, please. Oh, my god. Uh, first of all, we have a dynamic, simple, clean menu, right? Now, let's start off with a homemade focaccia bread. Oh. Yeah. Seasoned with rosemary and garlic, drizzled in olive oil. Salads. We have the chopped salad. In there, you've got garbanzo beans, provolone cheese, salami, finished with some fresh Amalfi lemon. So it's got that really nice oomph to it as well. Entrees, pan-seared salmon, served with a white bean ragu. Phenomenal. Absolutely delicious. Next to that, we've got something that's a staple. Spaghetti meatballs, absolutely delicious. And then finally, pizzas, four of them. Margarita, prosciutto, zucchini, done with the shrimp and the meat lovers. Mm. And again, we have a massive asset there in that pizza oven, and we're going to take advantage of that. Right, thing. right. Yeah? Dig in. Let's oh go. Oh, my gosh. This is so beautiful. Mm. Mm. Oh, my God. I am thrilled. This is amazing. This is like the menu of my dream. Oh, my God. The mm. pizzas are incredible. Mm. Oh, my God. I love that. I know. I am excited for the new menu. I mean, it's beautiful. It's delicious. Chef Ramsay, you're my boy, dude. 
It's relaunch night as Charlie's opens its doors for dinner. Welcome to Charlie's. And the town of Laverne is anxious to give it another try. We'll go to zucchini pizza. And I'm gonna have the panini. So I'll put that right in. And with Chef Jonathan and Chef Peter running the kitchen. We got two fried calamari coming right now. It's up to Tatiana to make sure the rest of the team are up to the task. My name is Tatiana. I'm the owner. If you need anything, please let me know. Calamari go out on P1. The calamari is in there right now. Val, this order's up. It's the tomato soup, the Caesar salad. Order up, fried calamari. With the kitchen staff working together, food quickly makes its way to the diners. Tomato soup, did you guys order some calamari? Yes. But not all the customers are receiving their meals. You guys, your food's not even here yet. My yeah, I was gone. kind of hoping to show up at the same time. I have a question. Yes. Um, that was my entree, my dinner? Yes. And I know. It tasted great, but... It's the only thing that's out here. I know. I'm done eating, and they don't have no food. I'm going to go ask the kitchen right now? Yes, All right. Please. Nice, thank you. Pizza came out. The entrees haven't come out. Did they come all in as an entree? Yes. I'm trying not to cry, but this is really bad. Why are you guys not talking to each other? Why are you not talking to the chef, you guys? It's a nightmare. Danya. Yes, chef. How many pizzas we got on there? Two margaritas and a meat lover, chef. So you've got two margaritas and meat lovers on there. You've got three pizzas on, yeah? Yeah, I already did them, yes. Yeah, they're already gone. Fuck me. And it soon becomes apparent that there's a detrimental lack of communication between the wait staff and the pizza station. And I don't know if the meal has come out for this yet. Before you send a pizza, you've got to check in with Jonathan. You're sending your pizza in your own little world. We've got to stick together, guys. You have to talk to him. Yes, Chef. They need to communicate. I'm telling them, Chef. I don't know what to do now. It's relaunch night at Charlie's. And with some of the tables receiving incomplete orders, I'm done eating, and they don't have no food. A night that started off with so much promise is on the brink of disaster. They need to communicate. I'm telling them, Chef. They need to communicate. I don't know what to do now. I feel overwhelmed. I'm having a moment of, like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Come here a minute. Come here a minute. We're going to go down in history as the biggest fucking shithole in the van. You need to step up. I am stepping up, Chef, no, but, but I'm only one person. Nobody listens to me. Tomorrow, we're going to be fucking closed at this rate. Get them together and wake them up. Come on, please. This is ultimately my restaurant. I am the captain of the ship. Just come over here now. And I'm not going to give up. Audrey, over here now. Come here. Why are you guys not talking to each other? Why are you not talking to the chef, you guys? He talks. He's not Casimiro. Talk to him. If you don't know what's going on, talk to me. If you need help, ask somebody, OK? All right, get it? Yes. Get back to your tables. I can't do this alone. OK, the prosciutto pizza for Audrey on Cameo 7? Yes, I'm going to cook it right now. Yeah, OK, I'm leaving them here. Leaving them here. With Tatiana stepping up and organizing her staff. Talk to each other. Jen, you're, you're walking around. Everyone is now in sync. Is it almost ready for the prosciutto? The prosciutto is ready. Yeah. Let's do this. Me lovers. And entrees are quickly making their way out to the tables together. And here's pizza. Oh my Can't God. Through this. I need is it good? Knife. No. This is the best lasagna I've ever had. You okay? I love your oh gosh, it's So good. I know. So good. The customers are totally loving everything. They're happy. They're enjoying it. And I'm proud of this restaurant now. I'm proud of it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All tickets are gone. Tatiana has finally stepped up, and I am so proud to say that she's my boss. Give me five. Thank you for coming. Come back and see us. Oh, gosh, thank you. Listen, tough night. It wasn't expecting to be a perfect night, let me tell you. But trust me, overall, it was successful. Customers love the food, and what you did get an insight tonight too was the, the, the potential of this place. We can't give up. The foundation's here. Run with it. Yeah, yes. Good. Well done to you all. Can I have a little word with you, please? Good night, ladies. Nice. Good nice. job. Nice. Yeah? I definitely believe in my sister. She's learned what it takes to run a restaurant, and she's got the tools to bring this restaurant to greatness. Well done, well done, well done. You're courageous, you're bloody hardworking, and you're young. So you've got the energy now to take this place even further. I know what needs to change. I know what I have a lot of work sure. to do. But mark this as a significant day. This is no longer Charlie's restaurant, no longer Simon's. It's yours. This restaurant now is Tatiana's restaurant. Continue it. I okay? will. I'm going to make luck. you so proud. I can't wait to come back here. Yeah? 
You change lives, Gordon Ramsay. Come on. You really do. You changed my life. This has not just been about the restaurant. This has been about everything in my life. You are like an angel. You have no idea. I love him. He's literally saved me. And it's like a dream come true. <laughs> Wow, when I first arrived here, Tatiana's priorities were all in the wrong order. She was fighting with her family, arguing with the staff, and more importantly, paid no attention to her kitchen. We made a massive turnaround here, and now Tatiana has her priorities all in the right place. But more importantly, she's in control of her business, and I've got every confidence that this little bistro will be a huge success. After Gordon left... I've got the two steaks going. Okay, so I'm working the salad. Chef Jonathan maintained the high standards in the kitchen. Is there anything you want me to have the girls push right now? And immediately helped Tatiana launch the search for a new chef. Hi, how are you? And thanks to her transformation, not only is her business back on track... It's the first Charlie's staff meeting. <laughs> but so is her relationship with her family. I owe Chef Ramsay, like, everything. He has molded me into the business owner I need to be. When he comes back, he's going to be like, you've got it, Tatiana, yes. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. There's so much hate in my direction. Gordon is faced with a restaurant that is at war with its community. It's just about money. She's not in the right. She's acting like a bully. Owner Denise Whiting has become the most hated person in Baltimore. I was afraid for my life. What, death threats? But her huge public relations issues are just part of the problem. There's one way to do it here, my way. Because inside the walls of her establishment, there is trouble everywhere. Your ego is huge. People don't like you. The kitchen is run by a dictator. 86 of French fries. I have to redo everything. And the staff is ready to rebel. You're a rude bitch. Can Gordon institute a ceasefire? We've got a big issue here. It's not me you have to convince. It's the city of Baltimore. And save this restaurant from a city that would prefer that it didn't exist. The restaurant's gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. Hampton, Maryland, a proud community located just outside of Baltimore and home to Cafe Hunt, a restaurant whose name has special meaning to the local population. And what's your name, hon? Hon is a term of endearment. When you're being friendly, that's what you say. You say hon. Baltimore people love the word hon. It's their word, you know. Here, hon. Opened by entrepreneur Denise Whiting in 1992, Cafe Hun quickly became a local landmark. Cafe Hun hugs you when you get here. It's just food, family, and fun. With her business doing well, Denise decided to capitalize on Baltimore's love affair with the word hun. She not only trademarked Cafe Hun, but the word Hun as well. Denise wanted to make money. She wanted to sell her mugs, her t-shirts, her little knick-knack things, and it backfired. Denise Whiting, the owner of Cafe Hun, and she said she would go after anyone that uses the word Hun. Denise had Baltimore behind her, and then she announced that she trademarked Hun, and that ticked off a big portion of Baltimore. This thing gets Fun in this crazy way. They lodge a boycott on the restaurant. I mean, now I'm the villain. I'm the bad person. <sighs> Since the whole Hun controversy, there has been a decline in business. It's, you know, dropped dramatically. Since all this has started, Denise is taking out her frustration on her staff. Oh, come on. Really? What is this supposed to be? She can be very harsh. I'm surprised that I have anyone left in the kitchen, to be honest with you. I want you to go downstairs, and I want you to give me a roll of paper towels that are perforated. There's one way to do it here, my way. What's this, Johnny? Why is it sitting there? Is this for something? When we have somebody that's not able to lead us, we're serving terrible food, and it sucks. Just a heart to cut. Do you want any of my gristle? No. <laughs> it's pretty much been 
Hell, she's not helping in the kitchen. She doesn't even know what she's doing. She's gonna run us down to the ground, and if Chef Ramsay doesn't come in, we're screwed. We really are. I'm done. I'll go broke at this rate. It's not fair, and it's not right, that these anonymous people that are out there trashing your business, and people are listening. Is this what I'm supposed to keep doing? Am I supposed to keep fighting for what I believe in, for what I've spent 20 years of my life just building? After learning of the Hun scandal, Chef Ramsay stops by a local radio station, hoping to get a better understanding as to why the community has turned its back on this restaurant. Today's best music, Mix 1065. Have the best day ever. We'll see you tomorrow morning. It's JoJo and Reagan. All right, that's a wrap. Morning, guys. Hey, hi. Hey, hey, is this a good time? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. How are you? I'm Reagan. Reagan, nice good to see you. you. Hi, JoJo. JoJo, good to see you. Yep. Hi, I'm uh, Sarah. Sarah, nice to see you good all. Good to meet you. Likewise, um, thanks for giving a couple of minutes of your valuable time. Um, absolutely. I'm dying to find out in terms of a reputation, Cafe Hon. How is the food, Reagan? Oh, I, I've only eaten there two or three times, but the food is uh, is on the back burner. Why? When you talk about Cafe Hun, talk about Denise Whiting. She had trademarked the term Hun, which is a cultural icon in Baltimore. I mean, it's it's a, a term of endearment. Locally. Uh, locally. It's huge in this community. I mean, it just it represents friendliness, this welcoming. Hun is a word that was in our vocabulary in Baltimore wow. long before it was part of a restaurant yes. name. She went to a newspaper and said, I own it. I own the word. Locally, everyone's happy with the name of the restaurant, but they just weren't happy with her trying to own something that belonged to the town as opposed to her, right? Yeah. Sure. She was threatening businesses with lawsuits. The lawsuits, I mean, it went that far. She had, had apparently, you know, thrown out some cease and desist letters to people who were using it. She demanded legal fees from somebody that was making tourist stuff with just the word Hun on it that didn't say Cafe Hun. Oh, dear. What's the feeling now? Has the business suffered on the back of that? The people who were most offended were the people in that immediate neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, she's almost become the anti Hun. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you for the insight. Yeah, I'm here to help turn that place around. Let's turn it around. Yeah, but it's yeah. gonna be, let me say, we've got our work cut out <laughs> yeah, already. I haven't even <laughs> been to the restaurant yet. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Han. Good to see you too. Good to see you. Good to see you. Likewise. Do you know how to find the restaurant? Big pink flamingo, you can't miss it. So they get what, like it's a, a big pink flamingo on the outside. Like a full-size flamingo. flamingo. Oh, oh no. than full size. Uh, it's, it's... 60 feet or so. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, seriously. So look for a, a pink flamingo. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Rush it with a flamingo. Holy mackerel. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. Are you serious? Look at that. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hello, Chef Ramsay. How Welcome are you? Welcome to Cafe Hunt. Great I'm Deborah Harris, manager. Deborah, nice to see you. What is that greasy? I just made a dessert. <laughs> Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Thank you for that. I'm but, sorry. You know, I was just so excited to see him. I didn't even think about washing the whipped cream off. How long have you been the manager? I have been here 13 years. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you and I are going to talk later anyway. Yeah. Um, can, I, yes. can I meet the owner? Can I have a quick sure. word? Sure. Please, thank you. Then I need Denise. They're waiting for you. You're waiting for me? Oh, yes. Oh, OK. Oh, this must be. Like you to meet Chef Ramsay? How are you? I'm <laughs> great. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Um, let's go somewhere quiet, shall we? Okay, and catch sure, up and sure. spend a couple of minutes. OK. Denise is going to not, she's not going to be herself. I believe she's going to pretend to be that perfect little darling. And I hope that Gordon Ramsay really can see through any facade she will put up. You look unhappy. Mm -hmm. Come on. I know. Why, I why know. are you upset? <laughs> I mean, business pretty much was half of what it was last year. I've taken everything I have and put it in here. I mean, I completely evaporated my small IRA that I had. I sold a house. Everything's gone into here. My last 10000 went in two weeks ago. Oh, my God. I just didn't know what to do anymore. So what happened? How did it start going badly? The problem is 
I federally registered the Han as a as a trademark right. uh, years ago. Somebody picks up that I federally registered Han mm -hmm. and starts saying that I have stolen something from the city of Baltimore. Right. The newspapers, radio, television, they belittled, demeaned. I have people scream at me from across the street, just horrible things. It's got that bad? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was afraid for my life. You felt that threatened? Yeah. For yeah. your life? Yeah. What, death threats? Well, people wishing me dead. Why would they want to be so vicious to you? If they don't know me. I find it hard to believe that it's just because you registered the word hun and you've done nothing else. Nothing else. There's nothing else that managed to piss off anybody else. I'm, I'm not aware of anything else I've done. Did you not sue anyone? I never sued anybody. You didn't sue anybody? No. Did you threaten to sue anybody? No. I've done my homework before I got here. I did, I, you know See, what? you're not being fair now. Well, I did a cease and desist. You did? I did. Enforce a legal letter threatening to sue someone using that. Now, you've been very devious. Um, you know. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, but I'm not going to extract blood out of the stone. I want to work with you, but make it very different for me when you don't tell me the truth. Coming up, Gordon sees the dark side of Denise. Can I have everybody's attention? No, I got three steaks sitting here. I really don't care, Greg. And when she pushes the staff too far... Oh, God, we're all going to get fired right now. They start pushing back. You're a rude bitch, and I'm tired of it. People don't like you. After being disappointed by Denise's cover-up of the PR problems at Cafe Hunt... Time for lunch. Gordon can now begin to focus on the food. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Chef. And this is... Hi, I'm Janet. Janet, nice to see you, darling. How long have you been here? Almost 20 years. 20 years, wow. And this is... Hi, Lynn. Lynn, nice to see you, darling. How long have you been here? Eight years. Wow. Look at you. Lindsay. And this is... Amanda. Amanda, love the hair. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Nice to see you. I do this myself in the bathroom. Wow, wow, wow. The key is hairspray. Hairspray, hairspray, hairspray. Excellent. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Ooh. Amanda? Sorry, darling. Yes, Chef. Two seconds. Who is that on the front cover there? That's Denise. Is that Denise? Yes, that's Denise looking wonderful. <laughs> looking wonderful? Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Denise thinks that she's a rock star. And everything's just in your face, Denise. Um, right, what would you recommend? The Big Bay Club. It has our shrimp salad and crab cake. Well, let's start off with that, shall we? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll go for the much better the mom's Much better than mom's meat mother. As in better than mom's at home. Better than your own mom. Yeah. Wow. Okay, great. What else? So I've got to go for the Balmer fish and chips. It's Balmer. 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 Bal Balmer. So it's something like Baltimore. Oh, so you're okay. saying it quickly. Balmer. Balmer. <laughs> it's Balmerese. Balinese. Balmerese. Oh, Balmerese, right. Say the word Balmer. Balmer. Yes. Thank you, Hong. Ho. Hun. 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 Short for honey. Honey. Love it. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Hun. Hun, hun, hun. Fish and chips, Okay. Now it's in the kitchen, Sam. Okay, that's for chef. All right, let's go. All right, we can go on the big bag. You know, I used to just say, you know, serve good food and the people will come. This is what it should always taste like. This is perfect. Well, we continue to serve good food, but the people don't come. Big bag? Is that my big bag? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you taking that or you want me to take it? Go ahead. Tower of Seafood. Holy mackerel. Big Bay Club. What's in there? This is a layer of shrimp salad, mm -hmm. a layer of long crab cake, mm -hmm. bacon, and lettuce and tomato. Thank you. How the hell do you start eating sandwich this wide? Uh, I mean, honestly, squash it all down. I surrender. I have to break it down. Deconstruct it. Mm, wow. The crab is delicious. It's a very pleasant surprise, let me tell you. Got this nice layer of crab, and then these stone-cold shrimp. Underneath, horrible. Amanda? 
Yeah, gross. This bit here, I mean, they, they taste like they're a week old. Do you mind? God, they're ghastly. Taste of the fridge. Mm, it does have a weird aftertaste. That's, that's horrible, that aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It almost tastes like they're tainted. Yeah. That's a mess. I'll leave that one, darling. The yes, chef. They said the, uh, they said the shrimp tastes, the, they had like a weird aftertaste to it, like almost tastes like really? the refrigerator. What's the matter? Hmm. He said they taste like they're old. A lot of the menu items are crap. It's Denise's recipes, it's the way she wants it done. I don't, I don't understand. This is perfect. Denise never thinks she's wrong. This is perfect. And that's her biggest downfall. You got fries for me? Crispy, please. They're a little dark. Nope. Denise. They're a little dark. It's good enough. Are we happy with this? I'm taking this, Denise. Just take it. Denise does what Denise wants to do, and she won't listen to me. She won't listen to anyone else. No, I shouldn't have gone out like that. It's aggravating. Mm. English style fish and chips. Wow, English style. Yeah. Holy mackerel. House cut fries from fresh potatoes. And what kind of fish is it? Uh, codfish. Codfish. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is it me or is everything just greasy? <sighs> no? Yeah. OK, great. Thank you, Diane. Yes, Thank you. <clears throat> Horrible. Fries are not even crispy, they're just full of fat. All the batter's soggy. It doesn't even stick to the fish. It's dreadful. What a shame. Amanda? It's dry. Fish is dry? Well, the whole batter just sort of just almost like peels away from it. Those fries, what a shame. You don't like the fries? Well, it's just all soggy. Look at my fingers. Yeah. We have fish and chips. And the tastiest thing on the plate is the tartar sauce. It's a big disappointment. I love fish and chips. What a shame. Wow. So, Chef, the cooks are doing the best that they can with the way they've been told to do things. So, it's Nisa's fault. What's wrong? Greasy fish, fry, the batter's just falling off of it. And instead, the fries, they were mushy. Really? That's weird. Okay. And he squeezed it, and all this like grease was all over his hand. French fries. You know, you get some potatoes that are one way and some potatoes are another way. I'm mean, having a problem with the consistency of the potatoes. I mean, it's just making me crazy. Right. Do you have the meatloaf? Coming off. Like now. Thanks, Dustin. Sure. <laughs> Jeez. And this one is? And the meatloaf. Thank you. Much better than Mom's meatloaf. That is a very bold statement. Thank you. Thanks, sure. Chef. It's like a flamingo turd just landed on my plate. Rocky's raw. That's dreadful. What a shame. Damn. Chef? Damn, that was disappointing. It's the mm -hmm. actual flavor uh, of the meatloaf. meatloaf. Yeah, and the uh, demi glass is just mm -hmm. so thick. Salty. Sometimes it can be runny. Today it's actually thick. Well, it's just marred everything like a big thick varnish that just tastes yeah. like nothing. Whose recipe is this? Um, I believe it's Denise's. Denise's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Better than mum's meat, though. Thank God my mum's not joining me for lunch today. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Yes, sir. Wow. And will you ask someone to taste that broccoli? The broccoli's soft. I will, yes. And the yes, mesh chef. is cold. Yes, chef. OK, he wants you to try the broccoli, so the broccoli is almost raw. <laughs> the mash is cold, and the demi-glaze is too thick. And okay. the meatloaf is bland. OK. Every time he had a comment or a criticism, it's pretty ridiculous. I've been here for 20 years. I had to have done something right. Maybe he's not the answer. Are we done? Um, I go through the kitchen. Let's go and say hello and meet everybody. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, hello, Chef Lindsay. Uh, this is Greg. Greg, I'm Tisha. You work under Denise. Yes. Do you think she's going to listen to anything he says? I hope so. I don't think she will. She might snap, freak out like the <laughs> yeah. wicked witch. This is a comfort food restaurant, right? Yes. And when I think of comfort food, I think of meatloaf and other excitement. That's bland. And the Big Bay seafood sandwich, crab, delicious. But underneath, you've got these stone cold shrimp. It's horrible aftertaste. Fish and chips, the fish is overcooked. The batter is just falling off it. And you hand cut those fries. Yes. They're cooked dreadfully. Do you season them and taste them before they go out? We do not season the fries. You don't season fries? No, we don't. Is this you? Yeah. But you told them they can't season a fry. Fast food joints season fries, for God's sake. 
Does no one care? I mean, there's not much to say, you know. It's the, what we have. It's the menu that we have laid out, and it's the you recipes. Can do better. We can. Do you enjoy cooking this? I don't enjoy cooking our menu food. Perfectly. It's just dull. I mean, when we do try to change things, you know, it's always, oh, I don't like it like this. You know, we. Who we, doesn't like it? Denise. So you're telling me you can do better than what's on the menu? Yeah. I thought the problems were on the outside. You've got them on the inside and the outside. Combine both, and I'm amazed you're still open. I know that we have a good product, and I'm not going to let anybody get in my way, including Chef Ramsay. After discovering that Denise's food might be as bad as Cafe Hun's PR, Fucking flamingo. Chef Ramsay is anxious to see how the kitchen handles a busy dining room. Do this. How are you all tonight? Word has spread that Chef Ramsay is in Baltimore, and the dining room is full for the first time in a year. You got fish and chips working? And the kitchen is now dealing with a flood of orders. Got asparagus for that, and I can get you out of your hair. Yeah. Let's start falling to the table. Let's get there. Mac and cheese. All right, can you fix that asparagus so it's all nice and neat? No, I got three steaks sitting here. I really don't care, Greg. When Denise comes in in her chef clothes, it's like having a hurricane in there. She just goes hat dick and, you know, you know, oh, I want this done now, I want it done this way. All right, I want everybody's attention. Could I have everybody's attention? Debbie, I need your attention. Hello? Yes. This is asparagus, all right? I'm tired of seeing the asparagus dumped in a bin all different kinds of ways. You know, you start with the small things. We always get little lessons from Denise, and it's frustrating because you just can't stop. Then everything backs up, and it's, it's, it just causes a lot of problems. You cut off the ends, oh and you blanch them. You hold the asparagus and see where they break at so you know where to cut them. That's how it's OK. Them. All right. Ray, table one, you're waiting a long time. I really, really Everybody appreciate Everybody's been waiting a long time. I don't have time to stand around and watch her do this when I have other you know, jobs to do. I feel like I'm on the Titanic. I need that crab dip up for 22. Take this to 57. Despite Denise slowing down her kitchen with an asparagus lesson. All right, I'm taking the ab for 17. And that plate is very hot. And then your wings will be right out. Some of the dishes still manage to make their way out to the diners. There's a pool of grease underneath the chicken. Cafeteria would be the way I would describe it. <laughs> there is like a hair. I can't believe there's a hair. The turkey just like crumbling apart. It doesn't really taste it at all. What's wrong with that? Overcooked, and they said that looked like mush. What is that? Turkey for stuffing. They did not like this. I'm getting something oh else. Oh, my God. All right, this turkey, we're not serving it anymore. 86 the turkey. Any turkey on the board, 86 the turkey. I thought I was medium, didn't I? Yes, you did. OK, I'll get it medium. Table five wanted a medium steak. What's wrong? It's a well. Five wooden medium, this is well. I need a medium, Mitch. Give me those steaks. I don't want to use those steaks. Give me. Fuck it, give we me, don't have table 52. Give me all those steaks. Put them in there. Please alert all servers that we have no steaks. None what? of the orders I have no steaks for. Are you serious? Yes. Took the ones we had, threw them out. Threw them out. All this? He threw them all out. That's, that's the whole table. Denise threw them out. There's nothing I can do. Whole table 52. Denise yeah. threw them out. This is something that Denise normally does, 86 and things. 86 biscuits, you guys. They don't like it. 86 the pot pie. 86 the catfish. Instead of fixing an entree, in the moment, she pulls the entire food item from service. 86 Where? the steak. We don't have steak, OK? We don't have to redo everything. Oh, my god. This shit clean. Fuck me. I swear to god. You guys? 86 the french fries. Oh, my god. Wow. Fish and chips. We have the chips. We need to find out about all the tables that have french fries on their tickets that are not getting french fries. We are out of fries for the fish and chips. What would you like? Sweet 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 chips? Chips? Sure. 86 the sweet fries. 86 sweet fries. My car. We have nothing to serve after 86 every menu item. We die. Why are we 86 in the sweet fries? 86 sweet potato fries, and we got the motherfuckers cooking. I don't get it. I'm just, I'm, I'm in pain here. Thank you. Oh, my God. OK, as my nightmare continues, we're out of sweet potato fries. Out of sweet potato fries? Yeah. 
Denise kept pulling stuff. And I'd have to walk to the table and tell him he, the food's not there. And I can only apologize so many times to somebody. I'm embarrassed by it. You want a hug? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> As the menu items keep dwindling... Folks, we're out of pot pie. I'll take it off your check, honey. I apologize. The diner's patience is dwindling as well. What about these? They left. They left? I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything no. so dysfunctional. I've never seen a kitchen work so backwards. You can't keep customers waiting an hour for food and then 86 it. Find out the total amount that we can't I will, you, please. I will. Thank yes. you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, what the fuck was all that about? It was a ship channel. Honestly? Yeah. And is she always like that? Yes. How'd you concentrate like that you, in service? You can't. And you really can't. Why I mean, was she 86 and everything in the middle I, of service? I could not tell you. I've got 601 in boys and 150 almost in discounts, so that's $750 total. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is ridiculous. It is. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Crazy. Gordon Ramsay has got to get through her thick skull. If she doesn't take his advice, okay. we're not going to make it. I don't know where to start. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I, that was a disaster. Do you know we comped eight hundred dollars worth of food? Okay. You stop the team in the middle of service and show them how to put asparagus on the plate. We're focusing in all the wrong areas. How can you let it go this far? How can and you? Somehow I got, I got derailed. If I can simplify the menu down to something that's really manageable, and we just do wonderfully simple, delicious comfort food. Okay, listen, I've so. got to stop you there, because I, I uh, you're confusing me. Before you can talk about anything else, you've got to get the basics, right? You've got to get the core, the foundation, because I think you've lost the plot. Okay. You need to sit down and have a think. Because what this restaurant hasn't got is a clear direction. And restaurants run from the top. It starts from the top. And when the leader's gone, the restaurant's gone. I, I, I don't know where to start. I'm sorry. Jeez. Can we get these mats out of here? Clearly, Denise is in denial about how she mismanages the restaurant. Take a seat, please. So this morning, Chef Ramsay decides to pull together a staff meeting before she arrives. OK. Right, that was a tough one yesterday, yes? Yes. yes. yes sir. And the only way we are ever going to move forward is if we get out in the open. What's bothering you in the way that Denise is running the restaurant? Basically, when she's not here, it runs quite smooth. But when she comes in... The whole morale of the uh, restaurant just drops. She doesn't even have to say anything, but we know something's going to happen. We're afraid of what she's going to do. It's awful how she talks to the people. She goes up to one of the girls and tells them they're stupid, or she gets up to my face, tell her to fix her hair. Put a flower in your hair. That's why the customers aren't coming in, because you don't got a flower in your hair. She's getting too carried away. She focuses on a lot of the superficial things. She micromanages. It's insane. I mean, really insane. Last night, she went 86 crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. Nearly a dozen items. 86, the fish and chips. Uh, 86, the beef. Is this normal? Yes. She doesn't take responsibility for anything. So why aren't we standing up to her? We're all afraid to tell her anything That's negative. Okay. She'll fire them. She'll fire them, Gordon. Oh, She'll yeah. fire them? She told a couple of us, if you say negative things, I don't need you with me. I appreciate your honesty. However, you need to get that message across to Denise. You've got to start standing up for what's right. And I want you all to do that. Right now. Oh, my God. Oh my God. We're all going to get fired right now. This morning, Chef Ramsay has heard an array of grievances about Denise. She's getting too carried away. We're all afraid to tell her anything negative. He knows full well that for this restaurant to move forward, the staff needs to come clean with their boss. Oh my God. Denise is coming. We're all going to get fired right now. Come over, please. Uh, right. 
I saw a lot yesterday and I wanted to catch up with the team. And some of the crap they've had to endure and tolerate is actually quite horrific. I'm amazed that they're still here. I'm now going to ask them to open up and be honest with you. I didn't think we were going to have to tell her to her face what we thought. Debbie, please. Denise, you, um, you're a rude bitch. And I'm tired of it. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. You're just too mean with the, with the employees. You're talking to them like shit. Denise, you're the negative in the restaurant. You make me feel like I'm not good enough. Denise, I feel very unappreciated. I do anything you ask me, and you come in and scream at me. What is going on? Do you not trust me? Oh, Janet, I trust you. How do I know this? Unless you tell me. Wow. Thank you, darling. Greg, please. Hey, you're coming in, you're screaming, you're a hindrance on the lawn, you're a hindrance, you know, in the prep. You're controlling everything, and yet you've got a brigade front and back of house that are loyal and hardworking and can get the job done. Denise, your ego is huge, and you think because you're Denise Whiting, you can do anything. You have to stop feeling sorry for yourself that nobody likes you. We've already established that. People don't like you. <sighs> it is tough love, but this is so important. Debbie, what's the matter? Um, I'm just afraid about this place going out, out of business. After all I've put them through, I'm just so humbled and so grateful that they're still with me. To lose this business would be for me to lose my soul and everything that everybody does here. I love each and every one of you. I've just been off. And I know that. I know I've come into the kitchen and I've been difficult. I'm sorry that I've been a bit overbearing. I'm going to step back and let everybody do what they do so well. And I can only say that this is the beginning of a new day. She seems sincere now, but I'm a little doubtful about what she's gonna do as far as changing. Very doubtful in a way. Sad to say. Thank you. Now that Denise has recognized the morale problems of her restaurant. Hi, ladies. Chef Ramsey knows that he needs her to fully understand why the community continues to be upset with her. I put together a select group of people that I'd like you to hear from. OK. OK? Please, jump in the car. Headsets on, listen carefully, and I'll come back. Oh, my god, these people, they're going to crucify me. I'm going to be thrown to the wolves. Now, there's been some issues and some turmoil, and I would like to take this moment for you to help me to understand why Kathy Hun and its owner Denise have angered this community. Who would like to go first? What she really tried to do was appropriate an identity. It's like going to Australia and trademarking mate or y'all in the South. She's acting like a bully. Why is she a bully? Anybody who would like to use the word is at risk of receiving a cease and desist order. Uh, from her lawyers that says, change your name or else. And I have a website called Welcome to Baltimore Hun. And I see some desist letter that she sent. Wow, I mean, that's pretty severe. It transcends the restaurant industry. She had gone to the Maryland Transit Administration for their Hun ad campaign and forced them to give her creative control. Basically, the Maryland state government has to go to Denise Whiting for her approval. Do you remember what that 
legally she has the standing, but she's not in the right. No. And that's what people recognize. Yeah. It's just about money for her. It's not about Hamden. It's not about anything. It's just money. She pushes everyone around. She's focused on Denise Whiting, and if you don't like it, you're going to be sorry. I have seen her nasty. She's made a mockery of who we are and then tried to profit from it, and I think that's very egregious. The damage is done. All the citizens of Baltimore were the ones that stopped going. They are not going to go use that restaurant. No way, ever. What would it take for this community to embrace Cafe Hun again? She has to walk away from the, tra the trademark. She has to abandon it. She has to abandon it. claim to it, Get say it, it was a mistake. She does not own it. It doesn't belong to anybody. Right. I'm very grateful for your insight. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. How do you feel about what they said? It was a... Eye-opener? Yeah. I didn't get it before. I was just so angry at all the things that were happening and didn't know how to handle them, and I was in denial. I get it now. That's hard in there. There's so much hate. What? Directed in, in, in my direction, there but was you no... did go after a few people. You did send letters where they were absolutely freaking out to sort of stand up against. But when you threaten people, or they feel threatened, they're going to revolt. Do you realise you've made a mistake? Yes. You have to do something. You have to take responsibility and make a gesture. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. You're not just saying that because I'm here. Oh, God, no. You know, yeah, we've got a big issue here, and, 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 and it's not me you have to convince, it's the city of Baltimore. Everything in my life has been a disaster in the last several months, and I'm the only one that can change that. However, I don't, I don't really know what I'll do. It appears as though Denise has seen the error of her ways, and so Chef Ramsay decides to go ahead with the renovation of Cafe Hunt. Morning, ladies. Good morning. morning. Chef. Nice to see you. Today is the beginning of a new era. Are you ready to see your new restaurant? Yes. 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 Welcome to New Cafe Hunt. Jump in, please. Oh my God, that is so <laughs> gorgeous. Look at this beauty. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God. I always wanted the wall pink. I always wanted boxes for the teapots. <laughs> always, always. Gorgeous. Gone are those hideous colors. Now we have a consistent, bright vibrance in the local restaurant. <sighs> Let's look at the huge, stunning artwork. That is a tribute to Hun. Glamorous, gorgeous, and something that belongs to the restaurant. Let's get that right. I love it. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's clean. Everything just kind of blends together so perfectly. I really feel like we have a future in Hamden. Can't help but love it. <laughs> Welcome to the Flamingo Room. Wow. <laughs> Oh is this a party room or what? Look at the chandelier. What do you think? <laughs> Come on. Oh, we love it. I am so happy. It's like the sun came up over the Cafe Hun on a gorgeous day. It's going to be better. It's going to be Thank better you. than it's Thank you. Thank you. With everyone clearly overjoyed about the physical changes to the restaurant, take a little line up, have a look at this amazing food. <laughs> Chef Ramsay is now ready to unveil the revamped menu. OK, let's start off from the top, shall we? Hunt's chili, beef, tomatoes, onions, peppers, cheese, served with some cornbread. Cornbread. Traditional and classic. Hun's hot crab dip. This one's done with Maryland crab. It's gorgeous. Next to that, you've got the mini shrimp and crab rolls. Delicious. And the entrees, obviously the Maryland crab cake, this one's going to fly out the door. Thank you. Oh, yes. I love you for that. Next to that, classic fish and chips. Crispy, delicious. There is no soggy batter there, let me tell you. Absolutely beautiful. Amazing. Next to that, you got a delicious meatloaf wrapped in bacon, so with mashed potatoes, green beans, and obviously ketchup. Oh, that's beautiful. Yummy. That is so much better. Get a knife and fork and dig in, dig in, dig in. Amen. Oh, my God. Mmm. That's delicious. Really good. This is so perfect. This is better than I thought it could ever be. We could never have done this on our own. Fries are great. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel better? That's yeah. all streamlined. We're serving a brand new menu. It's just really simpler, but it's better food, and it looks better. So we're all psyched to serve it. It's going to be fun. Oh, my God. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. I'm having a mouth party. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now that the restaurant and menu have been vastly improved, Chef Ramsey knows that it is critical that Denise reach out to the community, and so he has made arrangements for her to do just that. This is an amazing opportunity. We're about to go live. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Good okay. luck. You may or may not have known Gordon Ramsay's been filming here in town over the weekend. We've heard that he's bringing Denise Whiting, the owner of Cafe Hun, with him, and that they're going to make an announcement of some sort on our show, and they just walked into the studio. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Gordon. How are you? Very well, Dee. Thank you. It's been a busy couple of days for you, we're sure. Very busy. Uh, yeah, we've uh, yeah, we've gone to hell and back. It's been a tough week. I'm going to hand you over to Denise. She's obviously very excited to be here. I just want to say, trademarking the word is not only almost killed me, but has just about killed the business. I didn't understand the whole culture and how passionate everybody was about, you know, Hun is in our hearts, and now I get it. I was just doing what business people do, and it was a misstep. I am so sorry for the animosity and the hatred and everything that trademarking a word, just a word, has done. Please forgive me. That must have taken a lot of courage to, to say that. But you never said you were going to give the trademark back. Is that what you're doing? You mean actually physically handing over the trademark? Yeah, yeah. Will you be handing it back? Do I want to do this? Maybe I don't. After alienating the entire city of Baltimore, Denise has an opportunity to make amends. You never said you were going to give the trademark back. Is that what you're doing? You mean actually physically handing over the trademark? Yeah, yeah. Will you be handing it back? Yes. Wow. This is amazing. I am taking that piece of paper that says it's registered. I'll get it from my attorney. I'll take it off the register. I can do that. That's that's <laughs> that's kind of stunning. This is for real. It was never mine to have in the first place. It's just a word. It's just wonderful to have this opportunity to be here to get. <sighs> I get a second chance. Please forgive me um, for everything that I've done. Denise, I got to be honest with you. I wasn't on your side over the last year. I'm on your side now. Thank you guys. Thank you, Gordon. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. This is an incredible opportunity that I've been handed, and I'm not going to take it for granted. All right, well, thank both of you for coming in this morning. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Maria's coming up next. It's 10 o'clock. Immediately following Denise's announcement on the radio, Chef Ramsay arranged for a press conference to make sure that everyone in Baltimore understands that Denise is giving up the trademark of the word hunt. I didn't mean to, to steal something or to take something, and I apologize. For the remainder of his stay, Gordon and his team got in the trenches with Chef Greg and his staff. Work as a team, work as a team. Where he implemented a new system. For me, it doesn't even look hot enough. Stone cold, come on, back in. And as Cafe Hun became a fun place to work at once again. Guys, you're doing a great job. You're doing awesome. John, thank you, Johnny. Beautiful. The people of Baltimore returned. I appreciate your saying thank you, and I really want you to do well. And the business is clearly headed in a positive direction. These are fantastic. A lot better than the old stuff. This big globe is heavy. Touchdown. <laughs> Chef Ramsay took a lost owner and put her back on the road to success. And nobody realizes that more than Denise Whiting. With all the odds stacked against you, you pulled it off. <laughs> I feel amazing. I've been given a gift, a great gift, and an amazing opportunity, and I will be forever grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a bloody tough thank week. You. I have my life back. I have my restaurant back. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. See ya. Thank you, guys. Wow. Good night, hon. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon may be in the city of brotherly love. All right, now I'm getting mad. But no one is feeling the love at Chirello's. Put it up, let's go! Chef Ramsay is in for a major struggle with a proud but misguided husband and wife team. The food was disgusting. I, I disagree with you. 
Well, one deals with the failing business. I don't know what you are doing! By fighting back. All right, now I'm getting mad. The other has given up. It's just so much I'm afraid of. Not surprisingly, the marriage is at its breaking point. What the hell is going on with you? Get ready for a night of raw emotion. It ain't her fault, it's my fucking fault. As Chef Ramsay tries to rebuild not just a restaurant. You've got to bounce back. But an owner's confidence as well. I shouldn't even be here. Tonight, failure might just be an option in Philadelphia. Do you know you can turn this around? Save your fucking money. Shut the door! What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. South Philadelphia, boasting some of the most authentic Italian restaurants in the country. And home to Chirellas. Good evening, Two. In 2007, Tommy and Dina DeFino opened this restaurant after Dina's parents closed the original Chirellas, which was located in Wildwood, New Jersey. My parents owned the original Chirellas. Phenomenal business, busy every night, packed. We just figured once we opened here, we would be just as successful here as Chirellas was in Wildwood. Hello, how you doing? When we first opened Chirellas, Tommy was fun and happy. How you doing? Great, great, great. Couldn't be better. But as business went down, who didn't come in? A four, a two, a four. Why? Like, I don't know. Tommy became like a completely different person. <sighs> the success in Wildwood did not at all follow me to Philly. Yeah. No, man. A lot of people didn't come in. Oh, don't worry about it. We have a great little restaurant. The menu is fantastic. Um, we have good food. And I can't figure out what the problem is. How's everything, ladies? Things too greasy. Yeah, it's your opinion. Mm -hmm. Tommy and Dina need to admit, like, our food fucking blows, and that's it. What happened with that? Show them like that. If they think something's wrong with that salmon, they go fuck themselves, all right? You have to put out what people want. And we're not doing everything. Not at all. Hey, you take the shot, man. I'm done. When there's problems in the kitchen, Tommy just goes, I ain't dealing with this shit, and he leaves. <laughs> he just goes down in the basement and lifts his little weights. <laughs> and he does his crazy sit-ups or whatever on the chair. We're all just practice his golf swing. That's a shank. <laughs> Maybe one time the golf ball hit him in the head because he is not himself and he's mentally breaking down. Anybody know what my check is? I lost the check. Unless it's down my ears. Is it down my ears? Is it? But I can't figure it out. When I see the restaurant doing poorly and I see an empty restaurant, it's the worst feeling you could ever imagine. Why, why is this happening to me, man? I, it's just, it's, I, I, gotta, I gotta pick myself up. Tommy can't deal with the lack of business. It's driving him crazy. Man, I ain't destined for this business no more, man. Maybe I don't know what to do. Over the last couple years, the stress, Tommy's just like drained from it. Let's get this night over with, man, because I want to get out of here. And I want Tommy to be happy because he deserves that. This is nerve-wracking. I'm not even doing enough business to keep my electric and gas on. I can't lose this. This was it. This was everything. I can't lose the restaurant. I'm dead. South Philly, known to the locals as the Red Sauce neighborhood, because this place is surrounded with great Italian restaurants. Now, I'm really looking forward to checking out Chirellas. It's small. Wow. Oh, hello. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. And your first name is? Dina. Dina. And the name Chirella came from? My, my father, oh, wow. my family. OK, we well. We had a restaurant in Wildwood. And how long was it in Wildwood for? 36 years. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And did you spend time there? Oh, all my life. Oh, you're not that old, are you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> we need Chef Ramsay's help because Tommy needs to take control of his business and himself to make things work. And that is our problem. And Mr. Chirillo, he oversees it? He's retired. Oh, he's retired. This wow, is wow. mine and my husband's place. May I meet your uh, husband? Yes. Please? Thank you. I can find where he is. Excellent. <laughs> Thomas, are you in the bathroom? No, I'm right here. Can you come up here, babe? 
Is he, uh, is he in the kitchen? No, Thomas doesn't cook. He doesn't cook? No. Hey! hey. Pleasure. Um, pleasure's all mine, bud. Pleasure. Good to see you. You, you look, uh, you look fit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, let's sit down. Let's have a, a catch up and let's find out what's going on, shall we? You got yeah. it. If I knew exactly why I needed help, I wouldn't need Chef Ramsay. So, Dina. Yes. So, whose idea was it to move that name and to buy well, South My Philly? father retired. Right. And we needed to figure out what we were going to do with our lives. I mean, mm -hmm. all we know is the restaurant business. That's all we knew. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with the restaurant, <laughs> Dina? What? Nah, no consistency. No consistency. Service, food? I think our food is better than the area's food around here. It's quality, right. it's fresh. But Dina just said you're inconsistent. What's inconsistent is the customers. So the food's consistent, but the yes. customers are inconsistent. Yes, right. I don't they, think they like they... Italian food. Come on. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I stand behind our food. But what's missing from the restaurant? We don't know what's missing. Customers. Well, OK. okay. In terms of how this place is run, I mean, who, who, who actually runs it? Me. You're in charge. And how many days a week are you here? Maybe two or three. And do you always agree with what Tommy's doing? Ready? Yeah. I don't agree with the way he runs the kitchen. You're not no. taking it seriously enough? Oh, I take it serious. It's just, there's not enough business. It's just... That's not the issue. The issue is you can't better your business the way you're running it. Please, the heck you're talking Well, he's asking a question. Well, man, he's asking a me. question. I'm here every day. You don't have you know. to be here every day. And I go home, and, and that's what I do. I, I, okay. I don't fully understand because why he, this place is not keeps working. He denying what the real issue is. I didn't think she felt like that. I, mean, I, I thought, we'll try. Can I just have a, uh, a word with this man on his yes. own for two minutes, please? I love my wife, but this restaurant has killed our relationship. It killed us. Listen, I can see you hurting. That's why I want a word with you personally, that's all. I'm embarrassed. She thinks I don't care of me. But it's my fault. It's not even my wife. I'm the man. Italian, I'm the man. I'm, I'm buried. I stay in bed because I'm afraid to get up. I'm afraid who's going to come after me? Who's going to shut my gas off? I need help here. I need somebody to help me, man. Because this business has been absolutely horrendous. And uh, it's the worst feeling you can ever imagine. Coming up. That's ghastly. I feel like I've just given birth. Gordon discovers how deep Tommy has fallen into depression. What the hell is going on with you? How far the restaurant has sunk. It's like cat food and how fed up Dina has become. All right, now I'm getting mad. It's fight time in Philly. Put it up, let's go! I don't know what you're doing! Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. After a disheartening conversation with Dina and Tommy. I'll give me now the tea. Thank you. Thank you. Chef Ramsay is hoping to find encouragement from Torello's menu. OK. Casual gourmet dining. Whoa. Wow, do they have veal? Uh, veal cutlet Johnny, veal parmesan, veal cutlet with roasted peppers, veal scalapino, veal sauvignon bocca, veal charella, veal sinatra, veal francese, veal piccata, veal masala, veal cutlet roberto, and veal maya. Wow, there's so much veal on here, I don't see any chicken. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven chicken dishes. That's insane. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. Your first name is? I'm Renata. Renata. Pleased to meet you. Me too. Is that real? All these veal and chicken dishes? Yeah. Damn. And these names, veal, Trella. Yeah. And down here, the steak, uh, Michael Anthony, these are all named after people. Yeah, they're all named after the family. So why have they got a veal Sinatra? Yeah, so I think they ran out of names. <laughs> Frank Sinatra is not a relative of the family. I think they had to get a little creative with it. So why not go with a Sinatra? He's a great singer, right? <laughs> OK, um, let's order, shall we, darling? Yes. Um, why not go for the Ville Sinatra? Sure. Yeah, and the steak surround. Let's go for that. Uh, mid rare, please, darling. Medium rare. Next, I'll go for the Land and Sea uh, Sherry. Is that OK if we use a New York strip for it? Oh. We don't have filet. Hold on a minute. No filet. Are oh, you are kidding me. It says filet on the menu. Yeah, I know. It's a problem. <laughs> mm, wow. How long has it been no filet? 
We probably haven't had it since I've been here. How long have you been here? Four and a half years. Wow. And does it still cost the same? Uh, yeah. Wow. We've changed the filet mignon to now a New York strip. And These menus are uh, straight from uh, when they had the place on the shore. These are the menus from the old restaurants? Yes. So they've never had their own identity? No. But why don't we just change Thank the menu? You. I've been saying that since I've gotten here. Wow. So are you going to get the landed sea charade or...? Yep, yeah, let's okay. go for that, yeah. How would you like your steak cut? Uh, mid rare, please, darling. Medium rare. OK. I think we're done, darling. All right, I'll be right back. Lovely, thank you. You need a veal sinatra, land and sea charade. I told him it was a strip, medium rare, he wants it. And steak charade and medium rare. Mom. Chef Rance, you probably not like the food, but it's the family menu, it's not a, my menu. Bathroom's downstairs, honey. Yeah, downstairs yep. to the right. Watch, Watch your step. step. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's that? You are kidding me. What the hell? What the hell is this? Oh, my God. What is this, the gym? Oh, shit. <laughs> Man, what's this guy doing? Oh, shit. That is incredible. It's like the surface of the moon. Tommy? Tommy? Would you like me to go get them for you? Yes, please. Sure. Oh, my God. Bang, straight through. He's in your office. Oh, God. Tommy? Yes, sir. What the hell is this down here? <laughs> it's, my, huh? it's, my, uh, it's my office. I want to get a membership at your gym. Is this, uh, <laughs> is this where you come to sort of relieve a bit yes, of stress? Yes, exactly. Do you work out in here? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. Oh, I've got these weights on my throw in the middle of the street. I swear to God. When Tommy gets stressed out, he goes downstairs, starts lifting weights, starts hitting balls with golf clubs. What's this? Yeah. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. There's holes in the wall. He's punched some holes in the walls. He'll say it wasn't him. It was. That wasn't me. Man. That wasn't me. And Are that on the wall there? That's my golf balls. So it's a driving range as well as a gym? Yeah. I broke a few TVs. Yeah. Wow. OK. All right, this coming out too. Is it steak coming? The steak's are in, all right? All right. I think Chef Ramsay will like our food. Thank you, darling. You know, I know you hear that on every show, but our food is great. So this one is what, darling? That's a steak serine. Steak. Oh, with the brujute mozzarella. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Man, uh, look at that. That is frightening. Oh Jesus Christ! I feel like I've just given birth. I guess that's the placenta. <laughs> wow. It's ghastly. Can I go up to see if he's all right? Please, boy. Mm. Renata. Yeah. Um, it's a mess. It's a clumsy mess. The steak is raw, and that is what is that? Brazilian mozzarella. What a disgusting combination. Tommy. Yes. Two seconds. Uh oh. Um, steak is raw, and that's supposed to be mozzarella and what? Brazilian prosciutto. Honestly, I mean that is uh, that's ghastly. Yeah. It's like someone's thrown up on my plate. Tommy, have a word with the chef, would you please? Yeah. I know my food's good. I know it's good. I know it's I mean, I'm pretty good. Trump. No, no, What? This was rare. So not good at all. It's rare. When the kitchen messes up, Tommy, instead of, you know, telling them to set their game up, like, let's go, like, he just mopes around. This is the biggest mistake in my life. Your Sinatra. Okay, thank you, darling. That is ghastly. Are you kidding me? Veals are specialty. I have people that order the veal Sinatra all the time, including myself. Renata, please. That's dreadful. Mm -hmm. It's just chewy. You know, they lost all the texture when they pound the veal. It's just such a shame. OK. This is the lean and sea cherry. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, dear. They're not actually lobsters. These are, these are crayfish, large crawfish. So I didn't get my filet mignon and I didn't get my lobster. It's a cheap imitation lobster. I'm going to 
hack that off there. That's bright white, so that's just overcooked as shit. Absolutely chewy as anything. My God. It's bland, it's chewy, it's, it's an insult to Italy. Renata, um, I would just like you to taste this. That's a crayfish, by the way. It's not even lobster. It's a spiny okay. lobster. It's a crayfish okay. too. But it's solid. Everything's overcooked. Jesus, Lord, help us. I'd like okay. Tommy to taste those lobsters. Sure. Thank you, then. You're welcome. Good day. You're going to run away. No, you're not. Cut it out. All right, pick yourself up and stop it. He wants you to taste the chewy lobster. So eat up, but I just had to taste the lobster. It was amazing. It was too chewy. You know, I'm getting, like, really pissed. I have really good food. Chef Ramsay might not agree with that. I think it was all right. But it still comes back to, I have really good food. But I know I do. No, that was foul. Um, I'm done to meet the chef. Yeah. Can I go back? Joe, let's get them out. <laughs> Tommy and Dina never thought every single meal that we would send out would get critiqued that big. OK, let's, let, let's come around, buddy, let's, so we can talk. But everything that we do here needs improvement. See the head chef? Yeah. How long have you been working here? Life almost close to five years. Five years. I'm going to tell you straight, if that's the best this restaurant's got to offer, it's embarrassing. It's 2012, and we're serving food from 1970. Are you it's happy with that setup? up It's not yours. I'm 28 years old. This man is older than me. But I mean, you don't let me change the menu. Like, you need to change something different. I can't blame him entirely. I've got to blame the individuals that he's working for. You two. Because you've handicapped him. So, you know, the stuffed entree first. And it was gross. Steak was raw, cooked one side. And if there's one thing you don't do to a New York strip, is stuff it. The land and sea. And you know that's not lobster, that's called a crayfish. So we haven't even got filet mignon and we haven't got lobster on the menu, yet the dish is titled with both the headlines, lobster, filet. But the horror for me today was to discover that you've got a menu that has screwed you from the first night you opened. It's absolute utter madness, and you don't need me to tell you that. I still stand, I still stand, by, stand, by, I still stand by my food. But you're in denial. You no, must... I'm not in denial. When you sit there and tell me that food is good and there's nothing wrong with it, you it must... It ain't her fault. It's my fucking fault. It's my fault I threw him to the fuck was. But where am I fucking going? You've to given him an impossible we task. Can we start a whole new menu? I think our food's still good. I, I, I disagree with you a little bit. Well, now you're in denial. The food was disgusting. Well, I, I disagree with that, but that's your opinion. Come on. You are going to have to get your head out your ass. With the owners and Chef Ramsay having vastly different opinions of the food. How you doing, sir? I've had better news. Uh, nice neighborhood. How are you? Yeah. Gordon is curious to see how the locals react during dinner service. Uh, what are you doing this evening? Tell me the uh, roles. Hosting. Hosting, great. And what are you doing? I waiter. Wait. Wow. Tommy tends to think he is a waiter. I'm going to stay in my section. Don't start it out wrong. And he needs to understand that he is the owner. He is not a worker. All right, I'll get the order in as soon as I can. Good evening. How are we? Right this way. There's some bread for you. I'm going to have the old mayo. I'm going to try the mozzarella and roast the pepper. Excellent choice. Hi, guys. Got a tie down here. Yeah. All right, first table in. Are you just going to read these things out? Tommy, who's expediting? Who's expediting? It's... Who, who, who's, who's expediting? I don't know. I'll let you know in a second. Wow. So no one calls out an order. No. There's no system. Uh, Philippe, that's normal. Even when I'm not here, that's the same. Every time it happens like this, every day. Every day. Are you not fed up? Sometimes Tommy and I are around the kitchen. So I have to do myself. Philippe, I don't know how far you want this done. Oh, it's wrong. He's the boss. I'm not the boss. It's fine. Despite no expediter and no real system in the kitchen, Felipe quickly pushes food out to the diners. Feel Johnny? Ravioli and the meats, Paul. But it quickly becomes apparent that the customers are far from satisfied. Yes. OK, I'll take off the meatball. What's wrong? Uh, they didn't like the meatballs. Just um, two seconds. Let me test the meatball. 
Tommy, yes. come in. I just want you to taste that for me. Come on. I mean, it's fucking disgusting. And if anyone tells me again that their food is amazing, I'm going to blow my lid. It's like cat food. Come on, Tommy. It's definitely up to Tommy to make sure everything goes out perfect, nothing comes back, and the restaurant wants to move. I mean, that's the main problem right now. I ain't care no more, man. How's everything, ladies? It's greasy and watery. And I tried to eat it, but I really don't like it. That's all right. John, what, what's the matter with it? Um, it's stringy and it's watery. All right, Tom. I think you need to go back in the back and check on your cooks. Keep going back there nervous, and just. I'm afraid. Tommy needs to stand up for himself. I'll go that expedite. Yeah, hey, you go expedite. You go expedite. You want to expedite? Yeah, you're acting stupid. Instead of him going back there and talking to his chef, he's hiding and leaving it up to me. And it's not supposed to be like that. All right, now I'm getting mad. Put the food that we need up. You're messing up my own friggin' restaurant. Give me table 10 and give me the pasta specials. What a nightmare. Honestly, Dina's, she's trying her best. Tommy, well, he's not even there. He's just all over the shop. No wonder there's so many complaints. This restaurant's just not going anywhere. It's such a shame. Look at that. That's disgusting. How's everything? It's oil. I got drain. Give me three bowls right here, real quick. Three bowls? Yeah, I'm going to drain these. It's too oily. What is all that? It's a bowl, Tom. Huh? He's putting too much oil. I don't want to go back there. So you're not going to say anything to him? Yeah, I'm going to. Uh... Yeah. Let me go back no, and see. No, don't. Get, get, get. No, give me the, give me the oil. Felipe, look. Just all swimming in oil. And you weren't going to say anything. You can't drain that off like that and then serve it back to the customers. They deserve better than that. Who said drain it out? No, that's what he was doing on the side. He's draining the fucking thing on the he side. Said a little bit of oil drained out. That's Who that's said? The, the, it's shit, the, the Tommy. Sugar, oil, yeah. But it's so simple. And do you know what? Hey, Tommy! This is getting embarrassing. My God. Dysfunctional owners and a dysfunctional kitchen. I'm already embarrassed in life. You can't embarrass me anymore. But guess what? I found out that you can't be embarrassed even more. In his rock bottom, you can hit even deeper than rock bottom. Put it up! Let's go! I don't know what you guys are doing! When I tell you I need him, I'm telling you that's the one. And everybody get it together. With Dina now firmly in charge of the kitchen. Craggy. Craggy. And Tommy retreating to the basement. Let's just put up the two tables and end it. This extremely rocky dinner service comes to an end. I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm just almost uh, lost of words. Even when food was coming back, no one gave a shit. No one gives a damn. We're serving shit. And you tell me your food's good. I think our food is really good. You're going to have to get your head out of your ass. And Tommy, I fell for you today. I just thought you were under immense pressure. But you hide like it's a game. I'm not here to play a game with any of you. I just, I'm the confrontation at the time right now, I'm not feeling that great. Confrontation? We're not even a confrontation. It's about being responsible, Tommy. Yes. Orichetti was swimming in oil. You're draining it off. This is not a time to be nervous and wimping around. But right now, you're all in denial. And do you know what? Do you know how you can turn this around and make money? Honestly, Dina, Tommy, stop and save your fucking money. Shut the door. After 24 hours of sheer frustration, dealing with owners in denial, Chef Ramsay decides to make a home visit. Hello. Nice to meet you. Always good to see you. To have a chat with Dina and her eldest daughter, Danae. Rough morning? Um, you know, I woke up a little upset because, like I said, I really feel I have good food. Mm -hmm. I, I stick by that. I know you're here to help me. Mm -hmm. But I was humiliated. I suppose, if I put it this way, outside that restaurant, there's better okay. and cheaper restaurants. OK. Your menu does not work in South Philly. So basically what he's saying is that your food isn't horrible. It's just that there's a million Italian restaurants in one area. You're right. I didn't say the food was horrible. I said it was disgusting. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Here, 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 here's the issue. Oh. Here's the issue. You're in denial that your food is good. It is. OK. Darling, if that's the case, 
That's the bottom line. I'm, I'm gonna go. Seriously, A, I'm not gonna waste your time. B, I'm not gonna waste my time. But more importantly, you know, I'm not gonna deal with someone that is that deluded. You want help? Yes. You don't like the help that I'm suggesting? Well, I guess I'm scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Scared of staying the same. You've got to, you've got to grasp a, a complete new change. And that's scary territory. I have great memories of Chirellas. And I've been doing this for so long, it's all I know. So it's very hard for me to get past the past, get on with this future. It's not working. It's the truth. I know what you're saying to me, that I have to go. The menu's outdated, things aren't right, the food's different. We'll try our best. OK. Um, I came by here this morning to talk about Tommy because there's this level of depression that's sinking this man, and you can see this figure just almost disintegrating. And I've seen small little fragments of a personality. There's oh, he's got there. such a great personality. OK. We need to get him back. Because I don't think he actually understands. No, no, he doesn't. This place just wiped him out. It wiped him out. It did. If there's one area that he'll listen to, it's the family. And I just think you need to tell him what he means to you and how we want to see him back at his best. Hey, good morning. Oh, my man. How are you, bud? Good. Take a seat, please. Sit down. How you doing? Good. Yeah? Good sleep? Nah. No, I don't think so, no. Let me tell you something. Um, I came to see uh, your family this morning because I'm concerned that you've lost that spark. Self-esteem is a sort of all-time low, and before I can make any changes, Tommy, I need you back. I need to see that spark. Dina. I want you back. I love you. I want me back, too. <laughs> Listen, I love you. I know you love me, babe. It's just so much I'm afraid of, you know what I mean? The problem with the restaurant's me. You know, it's me. I shouldn't even be there, you know? An owner should, should make sure everything runs pro. I, it's me, you know what I mean? I'm afraid. And I'm not the same person I was in my whole you life. You have I've to been... get that person. You gotta reach inside, Tommy, and pull it out. What person am I pulling out? You, the real you. The real what you. you. What the hell out? is going on with you? Pull it out. What do you mean, what person are you pulling out, Dad? Come what on. person am I pulling out? Are you kidding? The last seven years? Dad, because you don't think. Well, when am I pulling back? That guy out that's tired and exhausted and never sees anything good ever happen in his life? I don't like you it. You fucking feel your whole life, man. It hurts. You wow. failed your whole life. You feel your whole life. You got three beautiful kids. We love you. We want you to be happy. You have to pull yourself out of this. I got it. I know. I got it. You got your. We love you. I need a good day. We're so man. proud of you. I'm weak. You know. I'm body's you don't weak. think anybody's proud of you? It's not true. They don't understand, man. I'm so depressed. My whole life, I've been a failure. It's been awful. It's been an awful life, man. It is clear that Tommy's depression is one of the major problems to the restaurant. Like you it. fucking feel your whole life, man. It hurts. And Chef Ramsay knows that before he can make any changes, Tommy needs to change. How did you feel your whole life? You got three beautiful kids. We love you. We want you to be happy. You have to pull yourself out of this. I got it. I know. I got you. Got, you got your. We I need, love I need, you. I need, we, I need a good day. We're so you, proud I'm, of you. I'm weak. You know. Body's you don't weak. think anybody's proud of you. It's not true. You haven't failed. We love you. You, you know? failed. You have. You not haven't failed. failed. We're You're so a lucky good. man. You're an amazing kids, amazing wife, and I'm telling you, you know, you, you have know not it. failed. You can't give up. You've got to bounce back. Oh, yeah. I got to. Okay. I gotta get tough again. Come on. He needs need you. You 
back. Tommy Bones. I need, need the you. funny, charismatic, yes. witty, energetic I'm I'm man. I got it. That's what I need. I got to pull That's back what down. he's trying to exactly say. Exactly that. We can make great changes, but unless you're back... It's not going to work, I know. Nothing's going to work. Thank you. You're right. That's it. Not, okay. I want to fight, yeah. Okay, good. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Yeah, new day. It was important to hear from my family. Sometimes, you, you know, you get knocked down a lot. You don't realize you're not getting back up. I think it's time I gotta get back up, so. I'm a fighter. His nose don't look like this for a reason. Come on. Ow, man. Come on. God damn. Man. I love that guy. With Tommy beginning the day with a more positive outlook. Let's go. Uh, I want you in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to taste it. Yeah. Chef Ramsay is anxious to get Tommy more involved in the kitchen. What you've never, ever got to fear is your kitchen. This is the engine room. The more he sees you supporting him, the closer you guys get. I'm very happy that Chef Ramsay's doing this because Thomas doesn't have the experience in the kitchen. Right, now we're going to make some arrochetti. And he needs to understand that this is his entity. This is his business. Oil in. Garlic in. This is the first time I've ever been cooking on the line. Let alone with Chef Ramsay. That's pretty scary. <laughs> That's scary. So far, so good? You with me? Yeah. What's the matter? Stuff's tough, man. Way Let's wine. go. Where's my way wine? Nice. Good? That's enough? Little shake? No. Oh. Come on, you. Come on. Dude, what's the matter with you? God's sake. <laughs> it's very difficult, but if I know my, my kitchen, I can take holes, please. Run the way it's supposed to be run. Now taste the seasoning. Well done. Nice. Wow. You happy with that? I'm a chef now. Nice. Tommy was really proud of himself. Like, I made that Dina. Nice. Now that Tommy learned a few things with Chef Ramsay, it'll give Tommy a chance to take control of our business. It's going to be a new start for us. Well done. All right, let's go. With the rebuilding of Tommy's confidence underway, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night. And in just 12 hours, they transformed Chirellas into a slick, contemporary eatery. Good morning. Hello. Hey, Good morning. how are you? Well, Amazing. Good to see you. Are you ready to come inside? Yes. Ready to take your jacket. Yes. <laughs> come through. Come in. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, oh nice. Oh, wow. oh, my God. That's phenomenal. Oh, my God. How'd you do that first? Oh, my God. <laughs> it was an nice hall before, and now it's another table. We're going to use this bar to eat from. It's gorgeous. It's stunning, and it's a main feature as you walk in. It's gorgeous, yeah. It really is. Are you ready to see next yeah. door? Yeah, I'm ready. OK, great. Come through, please. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my god. Holy oh, shit, how'd you do that? Gone is that old-fashioned 70s mustard color. You have this nice, light, pale gray that opens up the room. The room looks yeah. twice as big. It it's looks huge. Fun. New light fittings. Look at the lights. Look at these lights there. They are unreal. <laughs> There is a feature in the center of this dining room, reclaimed wood, local wood, and it's part of the community, shelving adjacent. All these little touches give a contemporary feel to this dining room. It's there. so nice. You should be an architect, too. How the hell you know all this stuff, yeah. man? On the table, we got rid of those hideous cloths. We've got white, crisp linen, all new china. A very cool slab of slate, salt peppers. All these little touches give a contemporary feel to this dining room. You brought the yeah. neighborhood into yeah. the restaurant. It's phenomenal. It looks like the city. It looks like it should look. It looks like the neighborhood. The neighborhood would want. Oh, my god. I love it. You're phenomenal, man. Happy? Oh, my yeah. god, my happy. This is the best day of my life besides having my kids. <laughs> I love the look of the restaurant. It looks brighter, it looks bigger. We definitely will have our own identity. Not only has Chef Ramsay given the restaurant's interior a modern makeover. OK, come over, please. Wow, I got food not on me. He's also done the same with the 30-year-old menu. Right, the beauty of this menu, it's small, powerful. It sends out all the right messages. Yes. Gone are the 75 dishes. I like that. It looks wonderful. Oh, by the way. 16 veal, 12 chicken, all gone. Thank God. Now, let's start off from the top. Classic Italian antipasto. Next to that, you've got arancini, parmesan, smoked paprika, aioli, and parsley. Small but powerful. I'm like so temporary excited. Entrees, chicken parmesan. It's a staple, it's a classic. Veal, masala, oregano, masala, mushrooms, and spinach. It looks so good. After that, you've got a classic spaghetti meatball. Big, hearty dish that just Ooze, Italy. Arrochetti. This time it's not going to be swimming in oil. And Tommy's going to be taking it back and draining it. 
Dina, what do you think, darling? I love it. You I love it? Phenomenal. Tell me, what do you think? Oh, love it, man. Love yeah? it. Yeah, love it. Good, good. One more thing to talk to you about. Felipe's not going to learn how to cook this in a day. I know that. Right. You need help. Yes. I phoned an amazing, talented chef. He's been here since so first thing this morning. He's been in there, he's been working, and you need to get close to this guy. Gotcha. Yeah, please say hello. Good to see you, Chef Mike Trout. Mike, good to see you, buddy. Let me introduce you to our owners. This is Dina. Hi, Mike. Thank you. Nice and this you. is Tommy. Tommy, Hi, pleasure to Good to see you, Thank you very much. First of all, local boy. Train is not the best restaurant in the country, but more importantly, this man knows exactly what you need. I'm very, very excited with the Chef Mike Trout. Chef Ramsey definitely set me off for success. It's up to me now. Food looks amazing. Great new menu tonight. Let's get excited. Let's focus and have a great service. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a job. I've seen that short. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant. I mean, it makes me feel good. I don't have to worry about the kitchen as much, you know. Right, dig in, guys. Come on, dig in, dig in, dig in. Wow. That's good. I really like this. I really like that. Oh my god, that's good. That sauce is so good. That food is delicious. I mean, I could keep eating it, and I'm full. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, it's so good. Everything is good. Meatballs are good meatballs, dude. I like the meatballs. The new trails is fantastic. Thomas, taste this, babe. What is that? Just meatballs? Our menu was a dinosaur. What a difference from food. Thirty-six years of that menu, out with the old and in with the new. It looks so good. I'm so happy. This is a good life. Coming up. All right, Tom, they've been waiting for a while. It's the all important relaunch of Chirellas. I messed up on the table number. I knew it was running way too smooth. Will Tommy finally step up and take control? One little mistake, we don't collapse. Or will he crumble and take his restaurant with him? Tom, don't screw this up, please. It's relaunch night at Chirellas. Everybody know their menus? Yes, yes. With chef consultant Mike Trout. Guiding Felipe behind the line. You know, one at a time, one at a time. Don't get too far ahead of us. All eyes are on a re-energized Tommy. Let's go. Hello, hello, how are you? Three. Folks, welcome to the new Chirellas. How are you? Have a nice dinner. You're welcome. Relaunch night is a big night. Have a nice dinner. But if Tommy steps up and does what he's supposed to do, everything will be great tonight. Any folks at order? Yes. Yes. Can I have the Caesar salad? I'm going to have the buffalo mozzarella bruschetta. I'm going to get the strip, please. All right, check in, guys. First one. Order in. Soup, calamari, and buffalo. Let's go. Come on, come on. Let's go tonight, guys. Let's go. Come on. With Tommy leading his staff. Fire up four. Fire up four. Calamari, soup, and livers. Dishes are going out at a rapid pace. Service, please. Uh, pesto crostini. Oh boy, enjoy. <laughs> this is really, really good. While most of the diners are ecstatic with the new menu. I never eat this much. It's just so good. Can we get another one of those? That was so good. There is one table that is feeling left out. Yeah. I'm hungry. Renata, where is their dinner? I don't know. What table is this? There was one table. I could see they were getting a little antsy. I knew it was running way too smooth tonight. Tommy has to step up and really do what he's got to do. All right, Tom, Dina wants to know about table 20, because they've been waiting for a while. Cracking under the pressure, man. Yeah. I messed up a table number. I messed up a table number. I messed up on a table number. Tom, don't screw this up. Please. Tommy? I said to you, one little mistake, we don't collapse. Stay on top of it. Don't change it. Get on with it. Let's go. Come on. Chef Ramsey's definitely right. Take it easy. Relax. It's just a little bump in the road here or there. There's an owner. I got to go back there. Mike, I made a mistake on the table number, Mike. Clean it. 16 supposed to be 20. Coming right now. Thank you. You'll be out in about five minutes. She's all right? Hey, thank you. Nice. Keep it going. Come on, Tommy. Keep it going. Come on, come on, Ray. How are we looking here? How are we looking here? Coming right now. Table 20. Table, you follow me. Table 20. Here we go. Seeing Tommy step up and run to business was fantastic. Spectacular. Soup's right here. Enjoy it. Come on, let's go, Tommy. All good. Come on, baby. Lift it. Do your thing. It's delicious. Very good. I move this down, all right? We're good in here. We're good in here. We're good in here. We're good in here. Nice, good. nice. Good, good, good. Lasagna, baby. Bon yes. Tommy now is showing his true passion for this business now, his true love for this business. He's full of enthusiasm, he's full of life. Good job, Michael. Tommy's back. He's, just, he's himself again, and I'm very, very happy for him. Good job tonight, great job. I'm the boss. 
Okay. Well, how are we feeling? Great, great. great. Fantastic, brother. <laughs> you should be. I know. Uh, this restaurant looked and felt like a completely different restaurant than I first walked into at the beginning of the week. Let me tell you that. Tonight, Chirella's was the place to be in Philadelphia. Thank Let me you. tell you that. Thank you. You've got to maintain that now. You've got to keep it. You will. Keep cannot it. go backwards. To the team, well done. Please, please. And a great job, Mike Thank and Felipe. Felipe, Felipe, excellent. Um, can you have a quick word with you two, please? Uh, well yes. done. Good job. Good job, yes? Well done. Tommy just seems like he's a different person. He feels secure in running his business. He's Tommy. <laughs> OK. Did you notice how well your kitchen ran tonight? Excellent. Definitely. Yeah. The standard was night and day tonight. Oh, yes. You two work well together. Yes, you we do. do. And you've forgotten that. And your tenaciousness. He needs that. Yes. Yeah. And tonight, I could see and hear the old Tommy. And it's just, it's moving. But Torellas needs both of you. Dean and Tommy. I got exactly what you're saying. Yep. And you can do it. Yes. Yes. Chef Ramsey, he, he, he's a good man with a big heart. Uh, look after yourself, will you? Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, man. Look after yourself. We should have fixed me. But he did fix the restaurant, don't get me wrong. But he was here to fix me. And I hope I stay like this. Take care. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you consider the changes we made to the food, the decor, and how this restaurant was run, this is the biggest transformation of any Italian restaurant I've ever done. But I'm leaving here with one big question, and that is, will Tommy and Dina maintain the high standards that we set tonight? I promise you, only time will tell. In the weeks that followed, Fire up table 10. The combination of a confident Tommy. Yeah, baby. And a supportive Dina have made it possible for Torellas to maintain the high standards set by Chef Ramsay. It's decadent. Yes, really. And this once fractured couple is truly united as a team. When Chef Ramsay came to our restaurant, we were not thrilled at all with what he had to say. I got five right here. I got it. I know. All right, go. But with change comes really? opportunity to grow and be stronger. And I'm hoping that this will become the best Italian restaurant in South Philadelphia. New beginning, Chirella. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. New beginning, Chirella! Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay visits Philadelphia's Zocalo, hoping to get an authentic taste of Mexico. Dear, come back here and help me. Yeah, right. But what he gets instead is a restaurant that has completely lost its way. Greg. I gotta get this food out. Check on your floor staff. No, I Greg. Ironically, the restaurant that originally brought this couple together is now tearing them apart. Greg, I need big fire. Working on it. Come on. Someone shoot me. Greg spends all his time at the restaurant. The whole weight of this restaurant is on my shoulders. And Mary Greg, Greg, Greg. spends all her time complaining about the restaurant. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's a standoff with no end in sight. Do you still love him? I know. It's not surprising that Chef Ramsay is in for one of the most difficult challenges of the year. You've got a big issue. Now you're thinking it's my fault. I believe. Can he get this husband and wife working together as a team and not as enemies? This is my life, and I don't like my life. You don't want to miss the heartbreaking real-life soap opera of Zocalos. I feel so. It's hard for me to watch. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. University City, Pennsylvania. Nestled in the heart of West Philadelphia, this thriving neighborhood is home to two major universities. And smack in the middle is Zocalo an authentic Mexican restaurant run by longtime employees turned to owners, Greg Russell and his wife, Mary. I was a bartender, and my wife used to make fresh tortillas. And the tortilla station is literally right across from the bar. So we spent a lot of time flirting with each other, and one thing led to another. And the next thing you know, we're dating, we got married, and then we purchased Zocalo in 2008. Hi, welcome to Zocalo. When Mary and I bought the restaurant, it was a dream come true. I thought it would be a storybook ending, but real life is not a storybook. Let me say something. You need people help you in the kitchen. Dear, come back here and help me, yes? I go back, help. 
Yeah, right. Do what you want. When Mary and I bought the restaurant, I thought that we were going to be partners. Right now, Mary works three days a week. That's it. But boy, I'll tell you, when she is here. Greg, what happened with this banana? It's too dry. She'll let you know. I don't know what you're going to really make. Big satin with the pork, and you can already fresh. Come on, yeah, Greg. We sold six porks all night. I'm not going to leave oh, a big, yeah, yeah. huge stock yeah, pot full yeah, of pork yeah. simmering all yeah, night and then yeah, not sell it. Yeah, you, all right. You. This is a battle between them. Greg works all the time. He's all around restaurant working. Miss Mary, I ain't gonna say she's lazy, but she's barely here. Honestly, when she do come, she makes it very hard to work. Okay, I need B5 and B6 right now. B6 in my hand. No, B5 first. It's more stressful here at the restaurant when my mom's here. She likes to get her way. She's very, very controlling. What is Maria? And a lot of the problems come because she likes to tell everybody what to do. I know how to clean the table, but doesn't want to be there to work bring the food more fast, you understand? Kel, Kel. Can you please help me, man? Kel, like... Maria. What? Come on, Cochina, look at this. I didn't wipe this table. She comes across as. I, no, I, no. I don't even know what word to use for that. If you really want it to improve, then get involved a little bit more. I don't like working. I'm sorry, Greg. What I'm asking you to do is support the restaurant more. I don't want to speak now. Yeah, it's enough. I definitely feel the restaurant is running my parents' life. They don't have, uh, like, a marriage anymore, really. I don't know if our relationship is strong enough to withhold the pressures of owning a restaurant. What I do know is I'm pretty sure that our relationship is not strong enough to withstand the pressures of losing our restaurant. Okay, great. Look at those. Tin man. Wow. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Oh, look at this place. Hello. And? How are you? Oh, my God. I'm fine. Good. Nice to see you. Mary Russell. Mary or Mary? Mary. Mary. Mary Russell. What a beautiful place. It's gorgeous. Oh, I hope so. You wow. like it. Wow. I mean, it's authentic. Mexican, right? Yeah. Gorgeous. Do you want me to sit you? Please. I hope Chef Ramsey understand me because I have accent and he have accent too. <laughs> I, 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 I really like it. Thank you. Excellent. Come in. The Chef Ramsey is here. I'm a little nervous about meeting Chef Ramsey and, and having him critique the restaurant because I know how intense he is. However, you met my wife. How are you? Hello, Chef. I'm well. How are you? Good to see you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Greg, isn't it? Uh, yes. Good to see you. Sit down, but let's have yes. a catch up. Uh, please, take a seat. Um, take me back to the beginning. How did you end up here? How, how did you start off? The restaurant opened the summer of 1989. My sister was one of these sous chefs. OK. She called me up. She said, look, can you help me out? I said, sure, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I've been here pretty much ever since. Wow. What's the fascination with it? Every major change in my life has happened here. I met my wife here, you know, mm -hmm. her son was born while we were here. Wow, incredible. And I have yep. two girls. So okay. They okay. work here. Okay. So it's more of a family business than I thought. Oh, it's absolutely a family business. But, yeah. I mean, how's business been? The first six, seven months, I mean, we got great reviews from. You know, everybody loved it. So in terms of where we are now? This place is really slow. Now, no, no customers. What are we turning a week? We'd be lucky to do seven, 8,000 in sales a week, and wow. we need to be at about 15. So barely $1,000 a day? Yeah. There are days where our sales are $300. Wow. I don't think that it's the best restaurant in Philly, but I think it's, it could be the best Mexican restaurant But it's in not the same before when you start, really. It's not the same before. So the food's gone down? I don't think it has. Take me through a day. Um, wake up 5.30 or so, drop my son off at school at 6.45, um, stop at the produce market or you know wherever I have to shop because I do most of the shopping for the restaurant. Um, 
Arrive at the restaurant about 8 o'clock, 8.30. Washing out the carpets, I clean the bathrooms, I mop all the dining rooms, run down the bar. office, check my emails, check the bills, whatever. Then I go into the kitchen, set up the line, start to prep for the Sometimes day. Sometimes I have to run out, you know, in between lunch and dinner to get something. Cool. Dishes, start prepping for dinner, and clean up, and I usually get out between 11 and 12. Every day. Every day. That's a long day, Greg. It, it sounds ridiculous. When was your last day off? I worked every day for over a year. No break, no vacation, no nothing. No, just a year yeah. straight. Wow. Mary, where's your expertise coming? Are you the front of house? Are you the kitchen manager? What do you do? Hello. Hi. Sometimes my wife's not here. So, how many days a week is she here? <laughs> Only part time. Okay. That's another thing that we sort of butt heads on. Yeah. In terms of debt, where are we? We're looking upwards of three quarters of a million dollars. Three quarters of a million? I mean, that's a lot of money. And that's... For a place that's only making eight grand a week. <laughs> How are you managing? Owning a restaurant that is declining at a rapid pace and on the verge of losing your house and, you know, everything else is... It's a lot of stress. I mean, I can, I can feel the stress from here, but... I mean, we argue constantly, and it's oh, well. sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Here we fight too much all the time. It's not. It's not my life. This ain't me for in the beginning. She has told me on numerous occasions, if I can't meet my responsibilities and take care of the family, she'll move back to Mexico. I mean, I know that my wife thinks a lot of this is my fault. You know that it's not doing well, and I don't know if it's my fault. I know that's my responsibility, and that's the hardest part. So I'm not able to take care of it. Coming up. Greg, come on, hurry up. Gordon discovers why Mary and Greg can't work together. The food is late. What do you want me to do? Come on. And how fragile their marriage really is. My relationship is not the same the love. Can Chef Ramsay pull this dysfunctional restaurant together? You've got a big issue. Now you're thinking it's my fault. Or is this Mexican restaurant beyond saving? This is not the way to run a business. Within minutes of arriving, Chef Ramsay was greeted with a gloomy picture of the restaurant. I send this service right now. Yes, please. Now. now he's hoping that he can find some optimism in the food. How are you, darling? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And your first name is? Maria. Maria. I have to say, it's a huge menu for one chef on his own. How does he manage all that? I don't know how he does it, but he's here 24-7. How many days a week is she here? Three. Three. If that. Wow. Right. And she lost $19. The skirt steak, $23. So the food's not cheap, is it? No. No. Um, and what would you recommend? Oh, um, I don't, I don't know. I just never have it. Oh, really? You don't order your own food? Wow. It's crazy. I usually don't eat at Zocalo because the prices are not affordable at all. Okay, let's start off with the queso fundido. Yeah, okay, let's get one of those. Okay. And the uh, cochinita. The chili reno. And then uh, mochahete. Okay. Yeah, I think That's we're sure. done. Okay. Thank you, Danny. Water? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. This is for Chef Ramsey? Yes. Water in, please. This is Chef Ramsey's ticket. It's not a three Michelin star restaurant. I know that. Chorizo fundido. But I'm hoping that Chef Ramsey tastes our food and says it's not a lost cause. You know, that's all I can hope for. 125, yeah? Yep. Mary, who, uh, who does the prices? The Greg. Yeah? Yeah. 23 and a half dollars for entree. I mean, that's not cheap. Yeah. Here's the queso fundido and flour tortillas that you can wrap it up with. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Just like a greasy mess, so full of oil. I can feel my arteries just squeezing. Mary, is that microwaves? I don't know. I'm done, thank you, though. Can't really uh, afford a heart attack. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Children, see, we don't feel happy. Well, it's not good. Greg, are you putting that cheese on the microwave? Yes. Thank you. Here is the chili reno. Thank you. Ooh, that is a very weird looking reno. Salty. 
What is it? What is that? It's so rubbery. The cheese is dreadful. Usually the cheese is melted inside. But the spongy and rubbery, no? Honestly, that's dreadful, that stuff. Will you show that to Mary as well, please, honey? Yes. Damn. I'm starving. Greg, look at the cheese. Chef said it's rubbery what kind of and... cheese you use? It's queso friere. Queso what? Friere. Eh? What is queso friere? It's similar to the queso fresco, and it wasn't available, so I couldn't get it. Hi, Greg. He doing whatever he want. There's no Mexican. You don't want to do it the same. Don't do it. OK. He say the cheese is prier. Prier. He said it was what cheese? Prier. Greer. Prier. Greer. Uh, something that. That is no Mexican. No. That was dreadful. And this is the cochinita pibio. This is the cochinita. Corn tortillas. Corn tortillas, thank you. How is your cochinita? There's no seasoning. There's no... It's all very... Uh, no taste. It's all very bland. Hmm. Mm. I think it needs to dry. It's very dry. Why is that so dry? Before I make the cochinita really good, but now oh. I know. It's not better when you made them. Yeah, now. Now that no. Greg's making them, they're not as good. Yeah. I think you need to go back in the kitchen. I don't like the kitchen. In what way? It's all this. It's uh, just leave the floor is no for work. I don't like the kitchen because it's too tiny kitchen and it's too hot. Do you see the kitchen? It's too hot. Let me go and check in how you next molcajete. Excellent. Come on. That's really dry. That's serious. What you give to dry? I do it exactly how she says every time I do it. So if it's not working, well, then you come back here and do it. That's no good. What do you give it to him? I don't know. Don't check on your floor staff. No. Huh? Don't check on your floor staff. Hi. Hey, this molcajete is coming up. This one should at least blow his top this time. Let's see, we're batting a zero so far. <laughs> Here we go. Jeez. Okay. So, this is the mocajete. Like something out of Harry Potter. I feel like I'm having a facial steam. OK. That's the, uh, the cactus. cactus. Yeah. Cheese, PBGs. Let's have a little taste of the cactus first, shall we? There's your bit. It's like eating the inside of a golf ball. It needs to be more cooked. It needs to be seasoned, bland, bitter. They cook cactus like that in Mexico? No. In Mexico, they shoot you for that. Mm -hmm. It's like caca. I feel a little angry, embarrassed, frustrated. I think maybe he don't like nothing. <laughs> he said caca. What is caca? Come on, man. I stand by my food on a personal level. I'm like your little brother. I just feel so sorry for you right now. I am certainly not on Chef Ramsay's level, but I think that what we have on the menu is good, solid, quality food. Greg. Let's go through, big boy. Yeah? Uh, right. OK. Here's the thing. The food's below par. I don't know where to start. The queso fundido, that was hideous. Do you microwave it? We do part of microwave it. I mean, so when you microwave that cheese, all the fat comes out twice as fast, it becomes like an all slick on top, which is a disgusting. The conchonita pibia, it's dry. The cactus, bland. The chili, you know, that, that, that. the cheese inside there was weird. The it was a case of frere, it's called. It certainly wasn't worth the price, let me tell you. I, I felt almost like I was being robbed. You put your neck in a noose when you're charging $23.5 for that. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't pay it. I told her. Hold on a minute. I didn't come up with the prices. Oh, hold on a minute. You don't come up with the prices. You told me Greg does. Who does the prices? The Greg. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's not funny, uh, Mary. I didn't change the prices on this menu. Sometimes you say, Greg, what is the queso chihuahua? Oh, 
I tell you how much it is per pound, but I don't tell you to let charge me, let $11. Me finish, let me finish talking. I did not make a case of Fundido 1095. I said, why are you raising the prices? I think that's ridiculous. But you say to me, that is too expensive. Please. You didn't consult with me on the prices. The, on this I, price change, you did not consult with me. Who raised the prices? You. Yeah, I did it. You've got a big issue. Yeah, Let me tell you. The difference is only 50 cents or $1. I'm sorry. It's just a way of driving more customers away from the business. Let me finish talking. I don't know Mary, the you price can't I don't know the cost. You can't okay, let chase me revenue. Let me finish. Let me finish. You can't chase revenue by increasing the prices. Now you're thinking it's my fault. I right, believe. Come on, guys. Bye. While the owners blame each other for Zocalo's problems, Chef Ramsay knows that dinner service will be more enlightening than anything this husband and wife have said so far. Are you ready, right? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Everything's set up. I absolutely feel hope having Chef Ramsay here. Obviously, there's something that we're doing wrong, and we just need an outsider's perspective, and there's nobody else better to do that than okay. Chef Ramsay. How's the line work? Take me through it. Yeah, um, obviously, two fry laters, a grill, two ovens. This oven doesn't work. Only the one side works. Ready? You haven't got a handle. Well, that, yeah, but it doesn't work. It's a dinosaur, that thing. Yes. And you've got no pilots on either. The pilot lights don't work. I mean, we, you know, I carry the gas mask with me. As if you haven't got enough to do, so. Right. There are a lot of things that are not working as properly as they should. My old sous chef used to love to rip the top off. I just do what I have to do to make it work. It's like Frankenstein. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? Did you have any questions on the menu at all so far? I'm going to do the quesadilla. Me too. Sorry. Okay. I'll get the hueso fundido. Order in. Mushroom fundido. Mushroom fundido. Are we going to the microwave, or are we going to do it properly? Mm. Sounds like the microwave. Sounds like the microwave. Sounds like the microwave, yeah. The microwave is definitely like our big bailout. Because the food is always getting backed up. You see, here's the bad news. The microwave takes the fun out of the fundito. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Yeah. yeah. Fire B8, please. Fire H2, please. Fire J6, please. J6. No, no, don't worry about any of that. Yes, sir. Is one of these Fundita's mine? Yeah, I can't keep track of whose they are, dude. I need my guacamole for H6. You got to hold on. Is B4 coming up? I fired that 20 minutes ago. Everything's coming, dear. I only got two hands, all right? I'm getting really frustrated. My food should be up on the line, and it's not because Greg tries to do everything himself. Want me to start plating them up? Yeah, I got them, I got them. You're good for right now. Greg is definitely getting backed up. He's like, I'm here to help you. All right, can you grab me a... No, I'm Never mind. There is no question that Greg works hard in the kitchen. You good, boss? Want me to jump down there? I got him, man. But he also prefers working alone. What was mine? Which translates to painfully slow delivery of food. It's kind of hungry. It's been an hour. And unhappy customers. How long are you waiting? 10 minutes? 20 we minutes? We ordered like 40 minutes. 40 minutes? OK, yeah. let me check. Greg, I need B5 right now. Babe, I can only got two hands, yes? I Everybody's know, waiting. But it's only chicken enchiladas, mole, and pork. Come on. Do you want ice cold pork or do you want it hot? Oh, give me number five. B five, please. The food is late. Here, I'm working on them. I'm working on them. Oh, my God. There's seven of you out there and two of us back here. She's killing me, man. Yeah, I feel you. I can't take her coming back and telling me that I'm doing it wrong or it's taking too long. It's deflating. B five. It's coming right now, dear. OK, I got it. After customers wait as much as 90 minutes, Greg finally pushes food out of the kitchen. OK. But when the overpriced, slow food arrives, I don't like this at all. it does little to please the customers. It just tastes like someone like dumped a bunch of salt on it. The, the, this is really greasy, so I'm not sure. Really what? Greasy. Greasy? All right, pork, chicks, and tuaria, shrimp, mojo, sloppy bear. Greg. One enchilada's taking back because again. Babe, I gotta get this food out. Okay, but you need to understand what is the problem right now. I can't talk to you right now. Let me finish. Okay, dear. I don't get mad at Mary for telling me what the customer feedback is. And everybody is complaining with enchilada. But she wants me to sort of drop everything and listen to her. Despite Mary's constant critiques, come on, Greg. Greg keeps it together. All right, we're in the home stretch, man. This is the last table right here. And finishes dinner service. Thank you. Have a good night. 
Guys, can you just leave us alone for two minutes, please? No problem, no problem. OK. Greg, it's just not the way to run a business. You're so submerged into it that you, you don't even realise what you've taken on. And you have a wife that is happy to see you do that. So I'm pissed with her in the way that... I'm not saying she's driving you into the ground, but I didn't see any support there tonight. I'm sorry, I mean, I, it's a big difference between nagging and, and being supportive. The whole weight of this restaurant is on my shoulders. You know, she says, hire somebody to cook. Well, the money's not there. You know, whatever, what am I gonna do? Guys, can you just give me two minutes, please? Please? I'm worried, Greg. I don't know any other way to do it, Jeff. Have you ever actually like, sat down and said to me, I, I, I fucking need you in here, whether you like it or not. And if I didn't know the background, watching the way you two liaise with each other, I'd never believe that I was husband and wife. Ever. We don't act like husband and wife Ever. anymore. It's, it's just too dangerous, buddy. It's just, it's, it, it's so fragile in here. It's all built around just you. And between you and I, do you think that's healthy? Come no, on. I don't think that's healthy. Come on. My family depends on me. I don't want to let them down. You can't do it on your own. There has to be a way. There has to be a way. I can't let it fail. I mean, I just can't. Coming up, can Chef Ramsay mend Greg and Mary's fractured relationship? Do you still love him? And later. Talk to me, talk to me. Mary is on the warpath. Fire and fire. Hurry up. And nothing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Please. Or nobody. Please, go. We'll get in her way. Hurry up. What? Okay. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Without question, Zocalo has a lot of issues. But the one issue that needs to be dealt with immediately is the decaying relationship of Greg and Mary. And Chef Ramsay has a plan to do just that. Morning, Greg. Good morning, Chef. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, yesterday was a huge eye-opener. And I've got one very important question to ask you. Do you feel let down? Yeah, truthfully, I feel a little bit let down because I don't feel that I'm getting the moral support. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to do something for them, and I don't think that they see that I'm doing it for them. I think that they think that I'm doing it for me. But I don't think they quite fully have digested what happens if it does close. They've all told me, why don't you just close it? And I said, you don't understand what the ramifications of that are. We lose everything. Yeah. I mean, everything we lose. OK, come with me. I want okay. to show you something. I want you to watch something. I can't want you to sit down. <sighs> Um, watch this program. I think you're going to find it quite interesting. With Greg watching closely on the monitor... Anna, how are you? Hello. How are you? Hello. Chef Ramsay has arranged for a chat with Mary and her daughters, Gabby and Anna. Uh, I spent some time with Greg last night before we left. And I, I saw a lot of frustrations, a lot of pressure. Do you see how desperate he is? Can you read that or...? It's hard to read. We know that he's struggling, but he just doesn't speak out. So it's kind of hard for us to get it out of him. Yeah, it's just a, something that you see as a outsider. So he shuts down? Yeah. How long has that been like that? I say you? ever since, like, pretty much the restaurant started. I always say I'm like, I felt like my parents were much happier before they owned their own business. They would go out, have fun. <laughs> exactly. And right now, yeah. he's just living. I mean, surviving. Right. Do you think he's happy? No. The way I see it, the restaurant's sucking so much life out of him. And we try to get him to break out a little bit, but he just refuses to. He is just so stubborn. Like, he just will not leave sure. Zocalo. I don't think he He's can. Like the... He's such a one-man band. He does everything and anything. What would you do if you fell ill? What would you all do? I continue running the business. I personally don't think you can. I'm sorry. I really, I don't feel afraid. But how are you going to do it, Mary? How would uh, it work? I, for me, I put in one really chef behind the kitchen. But we haven't got money for salaries. If he stops, this business will close. I don't think you realize what he's doing for all of you. Everything he does is to keep a roof above your heads. Not because he loves doing it. And I don't think he feels that he has the emotional support. That's what's eating him away. I think that one of you can do a bit more. Mary, are you willing to support him? Do you think deep down inside you could do more? In here? Yes. 
I can. Why? Because I need thinking of myself too. He cannot do it alone. Yeah, but really, I don't want to do it something I don't like it. Let me put it this way, Mary. Both of you wanted this dream. Yeah. You but... encouraged him. This is your responsibility, whether you like it or not. Right now, you're only here three days a week. And when you talk to him, it's not done in a constructive manner. You nag him. You can't lay into him like that. He's your husband. When you guys met, you were deeply in love. Has your love changed now? Now it's not the same. My relationship is not the same, the love. I don't feel the same, the... Passion. I feel, yeah, exactly. Do you still love him? I know, and really... After confronting Mary about her lack of involvement in the restaurant... You're only here three days a week. And when you talk to him and you nag him, you can't lay into him like that. He's your husband. Gordon probes a little deeper about her relationship with Greg. When you guys met, you were deeply in love. Has your love changed now? Now it's not the same. My relationship is not the same, the love. Do you still love him? I know. And really... A lot. I think he needs to hear. As a matter of fact. Greg, come through, please. <laughs> Chef Ramsey, it's right. We're not being as supportive as we could be for Greg. We just are so used to him doing everything that we don't realize that it's affecting him negatively. Isn't that nice to see, ladies? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that on service last night. I wish I did. I know. Listen, I know it was hard. I appreciate it. Spend a couple of minutes together. Thank you, Chef. I listened to the whole thing. I saw it all. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, emotionally, I need your guys' support. I mean, I just, I do. I believe the support is there for you. Even though if we don't actually say it all the time, we do support you and whatever you need, just speak up. That's all we need. Yeah, let us know how. It's very difficult for me to ask my family <laughs> for help because as the head of the household, I always thought it was my responsibility to take care of my family. Take care of the family is not just you. I'm here. I'm here. He really is the person I love. The person really gave me all my life different and happy. And I think he is a good guy. A really good man. I wanna love you, change together. I respect what you say and it's possible to work together. It was a tough thing to watch, but it was sort of an eye-opening experience. While I may say, I can just do it myself. I can just do it myself. I need their help, and it's good to know that they're behind me. This is fantastic. Listen to you guys communicate. Can I just quickly show something? Sure. Yeah, please. Come through. Come in. Man. Holy crap. It's your new oven. Oh, my it's God. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Wow. You have the most amazing South Bend 10 gas ring burner. Stunning. Two superb, super hot ovens from my friends at Color Quit. It's gorgeous. It is a perfect piece of equipment for a small, busy kitchen, let me tell you. It's phenomenal. Oh, thank, thank you, you so Chef. Much. Unbelievable. I was floored. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's my first real new piece of equipment, and it's unbelievable. Clearly, a brand new oven will be a major help to the kitchen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. But Chef Ramsay's brand new menu. Come through. Wow. Mm. Oh, wow. Will make an even more dramatic impact on the future of Zocalos. Look at the menu. It shouts out fun, cool, hip. Yeah, it does. OK. Right, let's start off with this end. Queso fundita. Done beautifully. We've got the oven. We can do this. 
properly. Yeah. Nice. Our Bondigas classic meatball soup, robust and delicious. It's a lot cheaper than we're serving beforehand, but we need traffic in here. Next to that, empanadas. Got that nice authenticity to it. Quesadillas, chicken, pork, beef, or shrimp. I love it. We've lined it up with the fish, snapper, then with bell peppers, onions, green olives, and capers. Beautifully done, grilled, and taste. Stunning. I love it, Dad. Get some knife and forks. <laughs> Dig in. Mmm. The salsa is perfect. I actually really like the enchiladas. Wow, that is really good. I can't wait to serve our clientele the new dishes. I think that they're really going to enjoy them, and it's going to open this place up to a whole new demographic. I love the albonida. Mm. Oh, God, this is so good. To go along with the massive change of the menu. OK, let's go. Chef Ramsay has another surprise for Zocalo. OK, since I've been here, I've never seen such an antiquated way of ordering. So this is what you will be using. <laughs> oh, my God. What is oh, that? Oh, nice. This is your new POS system wow. provided by Zephyr Hardware and POS Lavo. Now, you go to the table oh with God. your tablet. Oh, the orders go straight through to the kitchen. We'll have the pictures of each and every dish. And Greg, this system can track your infantry, manage your sales. It's unbelievable. And by the way, you swipe the credit card here. Oh, <laughs> my God. You yeah. then sign on the pad. Oh there, God. take that. Oh <laughs> I'm like, it's so cool. You, you can do everything just from this one little device. I'm super excited to use the new POS system. That's <laughs> what? Our dream. Yeah. Mary, you OK? I say it's our, our dream that Greg and me wanted before, for a long time. Good. And I had the dream now. Good. This is a new beginning for us. We get to do it over and start out on the right path. You happy? Mm-hmm. Chef Ramsay knows in order to have Zocalo's kitchen run properly... Come in, come in, come in, come in. ...he needs the restaurant to be properly staffed. So he has created a program with Drexel University to supply culinary students to the restaurant. I'm working in a stunning little Mexican restaurant called Zocalo. Is there any possibility that I could take two very strong students and give them some on-the-job training? We have just the two students you're looking at. Oh, really? It's great training for the students, and it provides Greg with much-needed support. I want them to fit around you. Right. These guys, not just top of the class, but hungry and um, are keen to really get behind you on this one. They look good. It's absolutely a relief to have some help. We're going to mix this with some spinach and a little bit of what we call chihuahua cheese. They're going to make all the difference in the world. Nail it, yeah? Nail it, nail it, nail it. Uh, Mary, two seconds. Greg, two seconds, please. Now, this is where it really counts. I need you to step up, I need you to expedite. Yeah. But don't let the stamps drop. Right. You've got a brigade, so there's no excuse now. We okay. can do it. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. I'm really excited. I'm ready to change. And I'm ready to help together with my husband. As the doors open for the relaunch... How are we, darling? Welcome, welcome. There is clearly excitement in the air. For the first time in years, Mary and Greg face tonight's challenge, united as a team. OK, ready to order? I'll have the chicken quesadilla. I'm going to get the tacos. Push the send button. Yes. We're good. Now it's going to begin. Burrito carne asada, burrito chicken, mocajete, steak. I'm a little nervous going into service tonight. I have a team, but it's a brand new team. And I'm really rusty with delegating. And what I need to do is remember how to communicate. All right, here we go. I need steak for a mocajete. Got it. Let me know when you're ready to fire that. Good. Good, good, good. So next is quesadilla, shrimp, and pork chop. Drew, I need that chicken quesadilla right now. All right, Drew, do me a favor. Can you get that enchilada set up, rice and beans? So now next, X5. Hold so on, babe. Enchilada, quesadilla, chicken. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me one second, babe. Hurry up, hurry up. I'm tired. Say all the time. Talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me. X3, burrito, carnitas, and relleno. I told you twice. Hold on. Carnitas, relleno. Fuck. What's she doing? Greg's doing a great job. I could hear him talking to the kitchen, but Mary, she's just yelling at Greg, so nothing's getting done. OK, fire H5. Do not fire. Fire B6. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. I keep working with you, cereal. Why you not fire? Okay, why? I need the relleno, guys. They'll be next after this table. Hurry up. Oh, I need to know when I can drop that relleno. It's not even fire. Mary, don't talk about things that are fire. 
Stop. Mary's not helping. It's so frustrating. She's really just yelling. We don't need that right now. What we need is communication and to get this food out on time. How long for before? I need okay. before. Okay. Although both Mary and Greg are dedicated to making tonight a success. Yeah, but they have not gotten their food. There is a communication breakdown between the two. We have been waiting forever. Which is causing the kitchen to get backed up. Serious, Greg, uh, I can't believe. And Mary to lose her patience. What are you doing here? I'm reading my tickets. It's just, we don't don't see me. Anymore. Please, go, go, go to go up, please. When I'm uh, your food ready, I'd let you know. Greg, I need food going out of here. OK, yeah? Hurry up. I'm losing focus. I'm really worried that we're not even going to make it through service tonight. Fire on Jake, watch. Slow down. Oh, my god. Come on, guys, please. Hurry up, hurry up. It's 45 minutes into Zocalo's relaunch, and Mary's expediting is not at all in sync with Greg and the staff. Fire H5. Do not fire. Fire J1. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the kitchen is at a standstill. We have been waiting forever. How long has it been? 45 minutes. And a successful relaunch is in jeopardy. Mary, two seconds, please. Please. This could make or break this restaurant. Yeah. And it's so important to communicate. Okay. All right. Please. Yeah. I need to do better communication tonight. Babe, I'm sorry. I helped you. OK. Constructive help. Yeah. yeah. Please. Mary, tell me what's fired out there. J-A. All right. Go H1. one at a time. Wait a minute. J-A. Got it. What's the next one? H-4. OK. H-9. H-9? Yes. All right. Hold on. Everything's going to be a couple of minutes, because I just got reorganized here. Can you fire B-5 first, please? Yes. Jerome, I need all that right now. Help him out. I don't know if Chef Ramsey gave Miss Mary a pill or something to change her attitude. Fire J-2, please. J-2, fire. Thank you. But it was definitely like a different Miss Mary. All right, I'm waiting on two street tacos. Hey, just wait for the meat, the rest. That'll sell B4. Greg has everything under control. He's being the person that I was looking for to be, you know, years ago. <laughs> With little time to spare, Mary has made a major turnaround. This number, please. I know this one took a while. I'm sorry. Thank you. And is back on the same page as her husband. Two empanadas, J2. Two empanadas, J2. Pork tacos up. Thank you. And as a result, the kitchen is now running like a well-oiled machine. I like it. I love it. Tamales and tacos. These are the tamales with the short rib. Thanks so much for being so patient. Thank you. The shrimp is really good. Yeah, this is delicious. Yeah. Well worth the wait. Thank you. Awesome. Next table coming up, J9. J9, OK. Got a minute, 15 seconds, babe. I'm very proud of my parents working together and cooperating and helping each other out. That was really, really awesome. On the last two checks, just so you know. I love it. <laughs> In the beginning, it was a little hairy, but Mary really stepped up tonight. It's just a whole different attitude, which is much easier to respond to. That's a really good guy. Yeah? Very good. It's been a long time since we were able to work together. It feels great. All right, that's it, gentlemen. See you guys. Let me tell you something really important. When I first arrived, I saw you on an island, trying to survive, isolated, your family drifting away. But on the back of tonight's performance and what we've gone through this week, I see a completely different story. Watching you two working as husband and wife when it's constructive and it works, it, it sounds magical, let me tell you. You're good together. Mary, we've had our ups and downs. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> You know more than you let on, let me tell you. Expediting, you work bloody well. Greg, do you still feel that you don't have their support? No, I feel that I have their support, totally. They killed themselves tonight, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it from each and every one of you. This restaurant can be a success. Just keep supporting each other, like you did this evening, OK? Finally, the family coming together. I feel really incredible. My dreams is right there. Yeah. <laughs> Come go too far. I'll be back. Yeah, Don't you worry about that. <laughs> uh, well done, you. Chef, thank you very Seriously, much. Seriously, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay? You thank deserve you success. Really. Good job. Really. Look after each other. Okay? Yes. Good night. Thank you, Chef. Oh, family. Yeah. <laughs> we were at such a low point in the beginning that I didn't know whether we were going to make it or not. Yeah. But you're in the kitchen with me, yeah? Yeah. I feel a lot of hope for the future now. Okay. We can do it together, yeah? I can't remember a kitchen nightmare where I am rooting for the owners more than these two. Greg has to be one of the nicest owners I've ever met. Mary, well, there's definitely something about Mary. What a character. Amazing. 
Now, these two are on the road to success. My only hope is that they stay on it. In the weeks that followed, the dinner services at Zocalo's got smoother and smoother. Are you ready for your HA? Yes. Get ready. The Drexel students became an integral part of the brigade. This is J8 coming up first. Yes, please. All right. Mm, the burrito. Is it? And more importantly, Greg got what he always wanted, his family's support and his wife Mary back as a true partner. I have this bag. I have this Zocalo bag. I am so proud of what we've achieved together as a family. As long as we stick together, it's going to be a fun ride. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> Dating since 12 years ago. Sir, you're going to have to move your back. I feel like I'm hallucinating on burgers. A bison's penis. You should give up smoking. It's not good for your health. It's made you all wooden. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh shit! And you're all wee-wee all over them. Not good. It's wetter than a four-month-old diaper. Oh, God. Oh, my God. OK. One, two, three. Oh, bollocks.